Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter 161 On the dock, little Gu Yen cried out in anxiety. The cry of Gu Eagle is similar to a baby. Now Gu Yen is crying anxiously, which is even bleaker. It is really like a baby crying bitterly. Xiao Ai's face was worried after she understood Gu Yan's crying. Lord Wolf. She looked in the direction where the sixteen lights disappeared. The light escaping speed of the Urba God Man was too fast, and now it has completely disappeared into the night sky. Lu Heng patted her on the shoulder and said, Don't worry. With these words, Lu Heng turned to look at the bow horse beside him and said, If we don't come back in three days, you can go to the kingdom of mermaid and wait for us. I will certainly bring your master back. The silver white horse bent its front hooves and directly knelt down, making a dull howl like a drum, indicating that it obeyed. Lu Heng looked at the cabin and held out his hand. The cage with the fat bird in it flew into Lu Heng's hands. I will take care of the fat bird temporarily, so that you will not be attacked by evil people. Lu Heng said to the bow horse. Although it is the shape of a horse, it can eat lions and tigers and walk on the water. And it can easily travel thousands of miles a day. If it runs fast, it is possible to travel dozens of thousands of miles a day. As long as it doesn't meet strong cultivators, ordinary evil spirits can't hurt it. Of course, cultivators usually don't compete with a horse. But if it takes a precious bird, then an attack might happen. Throwing the soft fat bird lying in the cage into the netherworld, Lu Heng disappeared into the huge white wolf body. After explaining everything, on the deck, a light rose up and flew away with Xiao Ai towards the distance. That speed was a little faster than the sixteen lights of Urba God Man. On the dark earth, the bright city was instantly left behind by Lu Heng. The so-called escape spell has a rule that the higher your accomplishments, the faster you can fly. Even though there are different kinds of escape spells, powerful men can use ordinary escape spells faster than ordinary men can use top-level escape spells. Lu Heng was with low accomplishments and he didn't even open the heavenly gate, so his speed was slow. However, his foundation was heavenly thunder. The most ferocious power in the world was used to drive his escape spell, so even an ordinary escape spell was unreasonably fast. What's more, when Lu Heng was in Fushan City, he saw all the secret spells of the library. One of them was a secret spell of Fire Pass Country. It was named Sweeping Shadow. In Fire Pass Country, only a few people, including the country leader, can practice, which is extremely difficult. Lu Heng spent three days practicing this secret spell. Now he is spending it with all his strength and at a faster speed beyond the imagination of everyone, even beyond the imagination of Lu Heng. In the night sky, a flash of white thunder disappeared in the land of the Immortal Kingdom. The sixteen lights dived into the land of the Immortal Kingdom. Lu Heng wanted to catch up with them, so he had to follow them. Beyond the bright city, the vast land behind the city appeared in Lu Heng's view. The land of the Immortal Kingdom behind the city was so beautiful. Clear spring water, towering snow mountains, vast grasslands and lush forests under the snow mountains were as enchanting as an idyllic paradise however. What did not match this beautiful scenery was a faint gloomy atmosphere covering the land, making the world seem gloomy and desolate. The whole land was covered in a dark shade, without any bright colors. And the more people go in, the more gloomy it became. The land of the immortal kingdom was somewhat like the netherworld. Lu Heng felt slightly moved, but this was not the time to explore the secrets of the immortal kingdom. He did his best to maximize the light speed of sweeping shadow. Pale thunder flashed in the night sky, just like a fleeting meteor. On the earth, several black knights flew out of the city where Lu Heng passed. However, as soon as these knights rose onto the night sky, the pale thunder light disappeared from their view. It was too fast. The citizens of the Immoral Kingdom looked at each other. Just now, they witnessed the scene where the Lord chased Urba God Man, which was shocking enough. But now another uninvited guest was chasing the Immortal Lord. And faster than the Lord. The warning message was immediately transmitted to the country by special means. And in the gloomy Immortal Kingdom, 
the sixteen little kids named Urba God Man were close to the center of the immortal kingdom. There was a vast plain ahead. In the sky above the plain, dark clouds were surging and rotating noiselessly, forming a huge whirlpool. The gloomy death spirit reached its peak here. But this place was not as colorless as other places in the immortal kingdom, but has bright and dazzling colors. On the plain land, there was a sea of blood-red flowers. The Manjasaka flowers swaying in the night were the most dazzling colors in this gloomy world. A huge stone statue as high as 100 feet stood silently on the plain, among the scarlet flowers. The cold face, the flying dress, and the huge snake tail the huge stone statue in the scarlet flowers is just like the one on Fengiezu Island. But this human snake tail statue was much larger, and its face was more delicate and real. In the night sky, the colorful sixteen lights far away bypassed the vast scarlet flowers on the plain. As for the huge stone statue standing in the flowers, no one dared to approach them. One of the little kids ran away and shouted angrily. Luo Yujun. You Katoi. Don't bully us too much. The boss was angry and worried, do you think we ran so fast because we were afraid of you? Stop now, everyone can live together peacefully. Otherwise, you will be killed here tonight. Luo Yujun's strange laughter echoed in the chariot. Ha 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 are you really afraid of that existence? Luo Yujun laughed, I have received the news. Behind us, there is a white light chasing us. It's faster than you and me. It won't take long to catch up so it's to kill you. In such a situation, don't I want to pester more? A thousand years ago, you monsters broke into the forbidden area of the immortal kingdom and insulted me in public. Tonight, since I have the chance, I will send you sixteen monsters on the dead road together. Luo Yujun roared with laughter, which was full of killing intent. He had received a report from his subordinates that a demon with high accomplishments had come to the border, so he went to pay a special visit, but unexpectedly he met his enemy thousands of years ago. What's more, his enemy actually offended the white wolf. In such a situation, it's the ending to these sixteen monsters. Luo Yujun was in a happy mood, while in front of the sixteen lights, they were crying out. Insult you. We were just telling the truth. That's right. You are such a loser who survived and was afraid of death. From the beginning, you are nothing. You are just living with unorthodox spells. Do you really think you are very powerful? Looser like you in front of us, you don't even count as an ant. Unmale and unfemale demon, you just gained a bit of accomplishment by means of unorthodox spells, and you dared to claim yourself as a king. You make people laugh. Bah! Chapter, 162 In the night sky, the sixteen lights fled quickly, and the insult words were heard all over the land. At the back, the chariot monster followed closely, biting the sixteen lights. In the chariot, Luo Yujun listened to the shouting and cursing outside, and his face was in sour. He looked at the sixteen lights in front of him and said coldly. Monsters are just monsters. You never know what respect is. Since you don't know how to live, then stay in the immoral kingdom tonight. In the chariot, Luo Yujun lightly waved his sleeves and said lightly. Where is the Black Knight's army? Luo Yujun's voice fell, and suddenly a dense figure of knights appeared in the night sky ahead. Every knight wore black armor and was successful in cultivation. The ancient dark sky and black armor were connected with each other, and were strong like a dark sun rising. The battle array of knights was directly in front of the sixteen lights. Kill. In the battle array, there was a neat roar. All the knights raised their bronze halberds and pointed at the sixteen lights in front of them. This scene changed the face of all the Urba god man. Luo Yujun. The boss roared angrily, I think you really don't want to live tonight. The road was blocked in front, and there were pursuers behind. There were so many black knights in the immoral kingdom. They could not easily break through the battle array left in ancient times. However, behind them, except for Luo Yujun, everyone could see a streak of white lightning zoning in from afar. With the speed of lightning, he can catch up soon. At that time, they will face the pursuit of Luo Yujun and that old monster at the same time in the light, all kids' expressions were extremely ugly. The boss shouted angrily, Luo Yujun. 
you forced us. The little boy jumped anxiously. He directly opened his hands and shouted. Urba formations. The voice dropped, and the boss opened his hands and hovered in the air. And all the lights around him stopped escaping and flew toward the boss. Sixteen little kids now open their hands and hold the palms of the nearest one. In the night sky, sixteen little kids held hands with each other and stood in a long row. The evil spirit exploded, and the holy spirits roared and connected. The eight evil spirits and the eight holy spirits curled around each other, forming a strange circuit vaguely. The dazzling light burst out from among the sixteen kids illuminating the earth. Luo Yujun's chariot suddenly stopped in the night sky. Because in the dazzling light, a huge and ferocious arm stretched out. The huge arms, which were several miles long, were covered with strange blue fluff and dark red strange veins. Like an ancient evil crawling out of a nightmare, it was full of inexplicable evil spirits. Just an arm. Just an arm. It made Luo Yujun aware of some pressure. And in that bright huge light, there was an angry roar. Ow! The fierce roar seemed to be filled with hatred for the world. Once he was free from the light, he would kill all living creatures in his sight. The violent evil spirit was surging, and even overcame the gloomy death spirit in the land of the immortal kingdom. This monster! Luo Yujun's face changed slightly, and he thought of an ancient rumor. Maluo evil spirit! Is Maluo sword with you? Luo Yujun questioned loudly. In the bright light, the boss sneered. That's right. The Maluo sword is in our hands. Hum. If it wasn't for the suppression of Maluo sword, you can be arrogant in front of us. We will send you on the road tonight. Do it. When the boss's voice fell, there were sixteen shrill screams in the bright light. In the screams that came and went, it seemed that the Urba god man all suffered great pain. After the sixteen shrill screams, there was another angry animal roaring in the bright light. Another terrible and huge arm stretched out from the light. It was also covered with blue fluff and dark red lines. The moment the second arm stretched out, it waved angrily and hit the nearby snow mountain viciously. In the deafening noise, the several kilometers high snow mountain was knocked down by a blow. Among countless rocks, the flying snow rushed into the night sky under the influence of the shock wave. Luo Yujun's face changed and he immediately looked at the sky behind him. In the dark night sky, a thunder light was approaching rapidly. If there was a helper, maybe I can retreat tonight. However, as soon as Luo Yujun thought about it, he saw that the bright thunder light was flying straight toward him. And in front of the thunder, the plain was blossoming with scarlet flowers on the other side. In the sea of flowers stands a huge stone statue 100 feet high. The thunder light unexpectedly flew straight towards the flower sea here, and did not detour to the side. Does he want to fly straight here? Seeing this scene, Luo Yujun was stunned and shouted subconsciously. There can't be. Buzz. There was a strange dull sound, and the lightning, which was extremely fast, disappeared directly into the flower sea. It disappeared in everyone's sight in an instant. It was leaving the world directly. In the night sky, Luo Yujun's face was dull. He only shouted half of his words and found that the thunder light had disappeared. And in the bright light behind him, the sixteen little kids covered with cracks and blood were stunned when they saw this scene. Then the boss gave a direct order. Run! The bright light disappeared in an instant. The huge beast's arms turned into virtual shadows and dispersed in the world. The sixteen little kids covered in blood once again turned into sixteen lights and fled to the distance. This time, Luo Yujun didn't chase them. He stood in the chariot and looked in the direction of the Sea of Flowers in disbelief. Senior don't you know this Sea of Flowers? Chapter 163 In the night sky, sixteen lights scattered. But this time, neither the heavenly guarded army in front nor Luo Yujun in the chariot stopped. The Maluo evil spirit is an evil beast. It will cost Urba God Man a lot to summon it. But there are more troublesome things to deal with. Luo Yujun doesn't plan to tangle with those monsters for the time being. The thunder that flew into the flower sea on the other side was a cultivator with high cultivation bases. 
The news from the border, even more, said that this demon cultivator was extremely strong, and the city master could not see how strong he was. Now Luo Yujun couldn't see through the cultivator's details after seeing him personally. His magic eyes could only see the bright and dazzling light of the sky thunder, and judged that his cultivation base was far above his. But it is such a superior person with high cultivation bases plunged into the flower sea on the other side doesn't he know the meaning of this sea of flowers? This strange flower sea should be notorious to all cultivators. Luo Yujun was confused. Behind him, a figure dressed in black armor came near and bowed. Lord, said in Yuan, the general of the army, worried. That elder just flew into the sea of flowers. In the chariot, Luo Yujun sighed and said, I know your worry. The ancient battlefield is very dangerous. I'm afraid the elder won't be able to come out. But this elder is a man of great cultivation bases. I'm afraid he won't give in when he is dying. If his struggle before his death causes a deadly riot on the battlefield, it will be a disaster for the immortal kingdom. Silently looking at the seemingly peaceful flower sea on the other side, Luo Yujun made a decision. Close the kingdom. With a flick of his sleeve, Luo Yujun said, drive out all foreigners in the kingdom and block the port. No foreigners are allowed to enter the kingdom within a month. Gather the city leaders and the troops here again. Even if there is a deadly riot, the influence can be reduced. Luo Yujun's order was quickly passed on. The entire immortal kingdom, quickly mobilized. The merchants and travelers in the four border cities have all received the ultimatum from the immortal kingdom and are required to leave the sea area of the immortal kingdom within three days. The originally bustling ports soon became deserted. Even though many travelers are confused, they can only go away obediently and dare not stay. The bow horse that stayed at the dock faced the soldiers from the immortal kingdom who came to drive it away. Even if it was worried, it could only leave temporarily. But it could not sail a boat, so it jumped off the sea with Hua Feng's luggage and went straight on the waves. As for the boat that Hua Feng half rented and half bought, it floated alone on the wharf of the Immortal Kingdom. Later, because nobody was watching, it was driven away by someone in the chaos. This time, not only those foreign merchants were driven away. In the border cities of the Immortal Kingdom, there are some foreigners who settle there. These foreigners are usually responsible for the daytime jurisdiction, and they also have real estate status within the national territory. They can be regarded as the indigenous citizens of the immortal kingdom. But this time, they are also on the list of people who have moved out of the kingdom due to the blockade of the border. However, unlike the foreign merchants, these foreigners who grew up in the immortal kingdom only moved to the island outside, and they can come back when things are solved. In this regard, these foreigners who grew up in the immortal kingdom had no opinions. Because among their ancestors, such things was not rare. The immortal kingdom will be granted a state every hundred years, and it seems that some important ceremony will be held. Now, although it is less than one hundred year, these people have to obey the orders from the Lord. Three days later, the cold black airflow rose from the shoreline at the border of the immortal kingdom and rose into the sky, becoming a huge hood, covering the entire immortal kingdom. This black airflow wall was full of gloom. When people touched it, they would be directly frozen into ice crystals. It completely isolated the entire immortal kingdom from the outside world. At the same time, outside the sea of flowers, the deepest part of the immortal kingdom, was already full of soldiers wearing black armor. In the cold wind, Almost all the troops from all over the kingdom came here to completely enclose the whole flower sea on the other side. But none of them dared to approach the scarlet flower sea on the other side, and they were very far away. The only people who dared to approach the flower sea on the other side were the huge monster named Boi and Luo Yujun in the chariot. In the overcast wind, Luo Yujun lay lazily in the chariot, his figure looming between the swaying plain white curtains. Boi lay on the grassland, yawning lazily and its eyes on its back were slightly narrowed. However, this man and beast seem relaxed, but their attention was always on the other side of the sea of flowers not far away, always paying attention to the movement inside. Three days. It will be the time for that elder to formally enter the ancient battlefield. In the netherworld, Lu Hung had been walking forward. Xiao Ai followed him closely. 
they had been walking for three days and nights in this netherworld. At the beginning, Lu Hang tried to fly, but found that in this strange netherworld, the speed of flying was the same as that of walking. Whether you are flying fast, running hard, or walking slowly, as long as you go forward, the speed is the same. Such a strange phenomenon reminds Lu Hang of the knowledge mentioned in one of the bamboo slips from when he was reading books in Fushan City. Alien Realm There are so-called alien realms in this world. The so-called alien realm is an individual small world that is almost isolated from the outside world. Even the internal rules may be different from the outside world. The legendary cave paradise is one kind of alien realms. But alien realm is not only limited to cave paradise. And the source of alien realms is even more bizarre. The complete netherworld in front of them is obviously an alien realm, independent of the world. It's just that the order and rules of the alien realm entrance are so strange and powerful that even Lu Heng can't fly at a high speed. It's absolutely an unusual alien realm. And the more he walked in, the more clearly Lu Heng felt a strong death chi. The huge death chi is even bigger than the whole netherworld combined. Even Lu Hang, who holds Requiem Seal, can't help feeling palpitations. Is there a place in the world that is more deadly than Lu Hang's netherworld? It seems that he accidentally broke into a dangerous place. Chapter 164 In the dark world, Lu Hang is in a dignified mood, while Xiao Ai closely follows him and looks around nervously. The little girl knows that her cultivation is low, and she cannot help the wolf god when he is really in danger. But the heavenly thunder sword on her back can let the wolf god defeat all enemies. Before leaving Cold Feather Mountain, Xiao Ai asks Sister Qian. According to Sister Qian's telling, God's downfall thunder is a fatal disaster. Since ancient times, no one has ever been able to resist this thunder. Even the wolf god with excellent cultivation is able to stop the god's downfall thunder by relying on the special ability of heavenly thunder. If the wolf god's cultivation is not heavenly thunder, then no matter how high the cultivation is, it will not be able to withstand god's downfall thunder. Therefore, Xiao Ai never dares to be more than half a step away from the wolf god, so that when the he met an enemy, she can provide the heavenly thunder sword at any time. It was her greatest comfort to be able to follow the wolf god now. At the same time, Lu Heng feels the gravity in the little girl's heart and can't help sighing, saying, Don't be so nervous. My intuition tells me that nothing will happen in front of us right? Lu Hang said words that he didn't even believe, and he took Xiao Ai forward. They have been walking in this dark world for three days, but they can only move on. Because there was no way back. Once you want to turn around, you will find that the darkness behind you is a cold wall, which cannot be broken in any case. Lu Hang even split with the heavenly thunder, but the sparks didn't light up. The dark world directly swallowed up the power of the heavenly thunder. This was the first time since Lu Heng came out of the mountain that the power of heavenly thunder did not work. Although his intuition told him that as long as he summoned the heavenly thunder sword to face the darkness in front of him, he could definitely split the dark world. But the intuition also told him that if he did this, something terrible would happen. Therefore, Lu Heng resisted the urge to draw the sword led Xiao Ai to move forward in the dark world, and wanted to go to the end to see what was going on in this alien realm. Now they have been away for three days. The more they go inside, the more intense the death chi is, to the extent that cultivators like Xiao Ai feel uncomfortable. But at one moment, Lu Heng suddenly smelled a faint fragrance of flowers. Hmm. The fragrance of flowers? Lu Heng sniffed and recognized the fragrance of the flower. It was the fragrance of the Manjusaka. Lu Hang has smelled the fragrance of flowers many times on the bank of the weak river. He also remembered that before he bumped into the dark world, he did see a sea of Manjusaka in full bloom on the plain ahead. And a huge stone statue 100 meters high. Nyuwa stone statue. This place is not related to the great god, is it? Lu Hang whispered and continued to walk with Xiao Ai. However, as soon as they stepped out, they stopped in shock. In the next second, the darkness around them quickly receded. The cold wind howled in the sky and earth, enough to blow out the spirit of the cultivator. The violent evil spirit rolls on the messy battlefield and turns into a violent tornado. 
Wherever it goes, it will destroy everything. Broken armor, halberds, magic soldiers, and battle flags slanting on the corpse mound this scene, is a scarred ancient battlefield. In a flash, the little girl with silver hair and animal ears disappeared from Luhang and was sent to the nether world by Luhang, leaving only the dark blue heavenly thunder sword. Because this place is no longer the place where Xiao Ai can live. Even Lu Heng had to be completely supported by the power of heavenly thunder. Otherwise, the cold wind would be enough to blow away the spiritual and physical life of a cultivator who has not opened the door of heaven. However, compared with the harsh wind, what's more dangerous was the shadows wandering on the ancient battlefield. On the gloomy and terrible ancient battlefield, dark shadows wandered aimlessly among the mounds, seemingly without any clear minds. Their bodies are all dressed in the same black armor as the soldiers of the immortal kingdom. The armor is full of knife marks and sword marks, which are ancient and mysterious. However, the body under the armor is not the flesh and blood of a living person, but the clay sculpture with cracks. This scene reminds Lu Hang of the mysterious black knight he met at sea before. His heart sinks, and his white spirit is incarnated. At the same time, the whole ancient battlefield is seething. At the moment when Lu Hang and Xiao Ai appear, the originally aimless shadows all turn their heads and look at Lu Hang's location. Even though Xiao Ai has been sent away, Lu Hang still attracts the attention of all the shadows. Kill. On the ancient battlefield, the countless black knights all howl and rush toward Lu Hang. The fierce evil spirit is far more powerful than the original black knight. These knights who have lost their minds regard Lu Hang, an outsider, as an enemy they must kill. They all rush towards Lu Hang with a roar. In the face of the terrible scene of endless black shadows, Lu Hang takes a breath and dares not reserve anything. He points with one hand at the dark blue heavenly thunder sword suspended in the sky. Bang! A clear sound of the sword resounds through the ancient battlefield. The heavenly thunder sword, which has never been unsheathed since it was forged, now trembles slightly. It gives off a hint of cold sense. The dark red thunder light instantly lit up the dark ancient battlefield. The sword hasn't come out of its sheath, but just a trace of the spirit of the sword is not weaker than the terrible force of the front 10,000 troops charging. Lu Heng's eyes are frozen and he is about to use his sword. But just at the moment when he thought about using the heavenly thunder sword. Ha! Huh. Lu Heng, standing on the ancient battlefield, looks slightly shocked and suddenly finds that the scene around him is changing again. The scarred ancient battlefield disappears from his vision in an instant. The army of clay black knights roaring towards him is completely gone. What he steps on is soft grassland with flowers. The manjasaka on the other side of the river are in full bloom, emitting a faint fragrance. The evil wind blows out the spirits and the violent hurricane disappears. What appears in front of Luhang is a vast grassland. Snow mountains can even be seen not far away. But the world is shrouded in a layer of dark blood light that is painting everything. Not far ahead, there are huge stone tablets standing one after another. Each stone tablet is as high as 100 meters. Lu Heng, who is normal in stature, stands outside and watches as small as an ant when compared against these huge and abnormal stone tablets. At the end of the stones, in the center of the Manjasaka on the other side, there is a huge stone statue of thousands of meters high. The cold stone face and the snake tail below a human body is it a statue of Niwa. Lu Heng looks at the scene in amazement, a little confused. What happened? Why did I suddenly move to another place? At that moment, Lu Heng feels that someone has transferred him. But the unknown existence acted neither before nor after, it interfered just as Lu Heng wanted to attack so it is afraid that Lu Heng will attack those soldiers on the ancient battlefield. Chapter 165. In the gloomy and strange world, Lu Heng stood in a cluster of flowers enveloping the entirety of a river, he tensed up and scanned the area. Behind him, the heavenly thunder sword in dark cyan returned to the scabbard again, which seemed ordinary. However, Lu Heng's mind is connected with it. Once attacked, he will use the sword to kill the enemy at any time. He stood outside the huge forest of steels for a while, then walked towards the forest of steels. Who is there? Can you show yourself? 
Lu Hen believes that there must be living people in the Forest of Steels, and he must be a person with a high cultivation base. This strange alien realm may be related to the other party. The other party may even be in charge. The other party didn't want to see Lu Hang's sword, so he transferred Lu Hang urgently. Now he may ask the other party to send him away. However, after Lu Hang's words fell, there was no response from the empty forest. In the huge forest of steels, there was no sound. It seemed that there was really no living person. Outside the forest of steels, Lu Hang frowned and bowed his hands again. I'm Lu Hang from Hanyu Mountain, I accidentally entered here without malice. If there is anyone here, please show up. This time, Lu Hang used the method of voice transmission. His voice spread far away, and even caused echoes on the grassland. However, in the world shrouded in a dark red light, there was still no response. Only the huge statue of Nuwa stared at the earth coldly. It seems that there really are no living people in this strange grassland steel forest. Lu Hang stood outside the forest of steels, took a deep breath, and said. I broke into this place by mistake, but I didn't mean anything. Please take me away. Lu Hang expressed his intention directly. Since the other party doesn't want to show up, it's okay to send him away directly. This place in front of him is strange. Even with the heavenly thunder sword, Lu Hang felt some danger and didn't want to stay long. However, after Lu Hang's words fell, a blood red column of light unexpectedly lit up in the dark forest of steels. In the light column, Lu Hang vaguely felt the atmosphere outside. Obviously, that's the way out. Seeing the blood red light, Lu Hang took a long sigh of relief and thanked the blood red world in front of him. Thank you very much. After saying that, Lu Hang didn't delay, but walked straight towards the blood red light pillar in the deep forest of steels. The heavenly thunder sword, dark blue, silently followed behind him and was always ready to come out of the sheath. However, after Lu Hang stepped into this huge forest of steels, nothing strange happened. The death chi here has become so rich that it has almost condensed into essence. Even if the death chi of the whole netherworld were gathered together, it would be less than half of the death chi in the huge stone steel forest. How many people died here? Lu Hang walked slowly in the huge forest of steels with an awe-inspiring heart, and his eyes swept over both sides from time to time. In the grassland on both sides of him, those huge stone tablets, which are as high as ten meters, are like skyscrapers one after another. In the meantime, Lu Hang even felt like returning to modern society. But these huge stone tablets are much more frightening than the so-called skyscrapers. Each stone tablet is engraved with ancient characters. Lu Hang could not recognize the words above, but he could feel the murderous spirit of a sword on the modeled words, and felt the content carved by those ancient words. Tomb of Cloud Lord. Tomb of Black Feather God. Tomb of the Nine Demon Emperor. Tomb of Forget Dust Man. These huge stone tablets, which are hundreds of feet high, are one tombstone after another. Each huge stone tombstone has left a different flavor. Or evil and violent, or holy and peaceful, or ethereal and dusty, or cold and piercing. Each stone tablet seems to represent a top cultivator. What Lu Heng cared more about, however, was the material of the stone tablets. He has carefully observed that the stone tablets look ordinary, but they have a strong repression force. They are made of a rare demon stone. In the mortal world, a half-meter high demon stone is enough to suppress evil demons. However, the demon stones in this forest of steels are as tall as a hundred feet. If it is used to suppress demons and exorcise evil demons, Lu Hen doesn't know how it is necessary to use such a huge demonic stone. What's more frightening is the things that are suppressed by these demon stones. Is there anything suppressed under these demon stones? In the blood red world, Lu Hang walked alone between the huge demon stones and couldn't help swallowing saliva. The terrible conjecture made his hair stand on end. The god slaying heavenly thunder is invincible, but he can only use it once. At that moment, he seemed to understand why the dark existence dared not let him release the heavenly thunder sword here. With the majesty of the heavenly thunder sword, if he swept out of a space crack leading to the outside world here, or disturbed the things under the demon stones. That's a disaster. 
walking through those huge stone tablets, Lu Heng looked a little nervous and was ready to use his sword at any time. However, as he walked, Lu Heng suddenly saw a familiar name in the Forest of Steels in front of him. It was also a huge stone tablet with an ancient name engraved on it. However, Lu Heng knew that name. The Tomb of Emperor Xianyuan. Mumbling, Lu Heng read the name on the stone tablet. His face changed slightly in an instant. Emperor Xianyuan. Translator, Emperor Xianyuan is known as one of the five greatest emperors of China. The name. Is it Emperor Xianyuan he knows? Lu Heng was shocked and walked forward quickly. Here, he had reached the depth of the Forest of Steels. There were few stone tablets ahead. However, in the deep stone tablets, there are many names Lu Heng knows and doesn't know. The Tomb of Emperor Ji Qianhuan. The Tomb of Gongsun Xianyuan. The Tomb of Qi Yu, the King of Jioli. The Tomb of the Third Disaster Beast, Shi Ju. The Tomb of Emperor Xuanxiao. The Tomb of Suiren. The Tomb of Huashu. The Tomb of Yu Chao. When Lu Heng came to the end of the Forest of Steels, he saw a broken stone tablet only half a meter high standing alone under the huge statue of Niuwa. At the end of this huge forest of steels, there is only such a small ordinary steel. It is not the material of demon stone, but just ordinary stone. It is full of traces of weathering, and it has existed for many years. Even the inscriptions on it are vague. In the forest of steels full of huge magic stones, this simple and ordinary weathered stone tablet looks so broken. Although the inscriptions above are vague, the curve left by the engraver still makes Lu Heng clearly know the content of the stone tablet. Tomb of my brother, Fushi. Translator, in Chinese mythology, Fushi and Niuwa are brother and sister, and Fushi is also known as human emperor. In the blood-red world, Lu Heng stood quietly at the end of the forest of steels, looking at the broken and incomparably weathered stone tablet in front of him, he felt an indescribable shock. My brother. Fushi. Chapter, 166. Lu Heng was completely shocked when he felt the inscription on the stone tablet. Even though his previous experience has made him understand that Niuwa really does exist in this world. Moreover, the legend that Niuwa made people out of earth may also be true. But the truth of the legend may be different from the version known by Lu Heng. But despite that, Lu Heng was still shocked when he saw the tombstone of Fushi with his own eyes. My brother. Fushi. Is this steel built by Niuwa? Is Fushi the great god buried under the stone tablet? However, in the forest of steels, all the steels are magic stones with a height of 100 meters. Why is the steel here so common? Does it mean that Fushi has really died, then there is no need to suppress him? In the forest of steels in front of him, what is suppressed under each steel? Lu Heng looked back and looked at the huge forest of steels behind him again. In the gloomy blood-red world, one huge stone tablet after another stood silently under the gloomy sky. This time, however, in front of Lu Heng, what he saw was no longer a simple stone tablet. What he saw seemed to be ancient giant gods as high as a hundred feet, one after another. Under the gloomy and blood-colored sky, in the forest of steels, there seemed to be one huge ancient figure after another, looking at him silently. Lu Heng's heart was full of inexplicable confusion and shock. Lu Heng hasn't heard of many names from the Forest of Steels. But even the few names he knew had already subverted his cognition. The Three Emperors and Five Emperors, Qi Yu of Jioli. These familiar names should not appear in this world. Because this world is by no means the planet where Lu Heng was born. In terms of territory, the Land of Fire Pass country is already very vast. The distance between Hanyu Mountain and South Sea City is far more than 10,000 miles. If you go to the east, you can reach the East Sea Coast, which is more than 100,000 kilometers away. In contrast, the total length of the Earth's equatorial line in Lu Heng's previous life was only 40075. 2 kilometers. However, the Fire Pass country, with such a vast territory, only occupies a southern corner of this vast land. In addition to the Fire Pass country, there are more vast lands. But in such a wild and mysterious world, he unexpectedly saw those familiar names. 
In the gloomy and blood-red world, Lu Heng stood in front of Fuxi's tombstone, speechless for a long time. If it's just a coincidence, it's too coincidental. The shock of emotion made Lu Heng forget his purpose of entering the Forest of Steels for a moment. The blood-red light column not far away now began to flicker and disappear. Lu Heng was slightly surprised when he saw that the light column began to flash, and he thought he should leave. Even if he was confused, it was time to leave now. Even if he stayed, he wouldn't find anything. Lu Heng tidied up his mood and walked straight towards the blood-red column of light as it began to flash. But at this moment, Lu Heng's sleeves suddenly rose with a heat, as if something was burning. Lu Heng thought and waved his sleeve, and a blank yellow ancient scroll immediately flew out of his sleeve. Under the gloomy blood light, you can see that the yellowing ancient scroll is very thick, and its material is also very special. It seems to be made of some kind of leather, but it is by no means a common sheepskin. This book was sent by Gong Shu Jia when he was in Hanyu Mountain. Lu Heng didn't find any text on it, and it couldn't be read. Lu Heng almost forgot this book, but he didn't expect it to react at this moment. Under the dark sky, the moment when the yellow blank ancient scroll flew out, a dark glow unexpectedly flew out of the gloomy huge stone tablet forest. Poof! With a dull sound, the dark divine light fell into the yellow ancient scroll. Afterwards, everything returned to calm. When Lu Heng reached out to catch the ancient scroll, he was shocked to find that the original blank cover actually showed two big characters with fierce flames. Demon Sutra The two simple characters seem to be ferocious demons, full of fierce murders and monstrous magic. There is no superfluous description, no boasting words. The two characters on the cover are so simple but arrogant. Demon Sutra These two simple but arrogant characters seem to say that there is no demon skill in the world except this book. Stunned, Lu Heng looked at the silent forest of steels in front of him. He looked down at the yellowed ancient scroll in his hand and turned the page. As he had expected, the original blank pages now appeared dense text. What it records is an excellent hegemonic demon cultivation method. No matter who cultivates it, humans, demons, and ghosts, as long as you read this book, you can cultivate demon skills step by step. Even the heavenly thunder of Lu Heng can cultivate according to the demon skills on it. The most exquisite secret art in the library of Fushan City is as simple as rags in front of this demon sutra. It seems to have the ability to capture people's souls with its exquisite demon skills. People can't control themselves when they see it. They must cultivate according to the above contents. It's just that Lu Hang's heavenly thunder in his body kept him awake at all times. Even though this demon sutra is excellent, it can't perplex his mind. Lu Hang was just calmly browsing, and his mind was always clear. But this scene seemed to outsiders that Lu Hang was fascinated. Phew! In the forest of steels, a blue divine light suddenly flew out. Lu Hang, who was turning the book, was shocked, and immediately looked up, subconsciously reached out to catch the light. When the divine light disappeared, he saw that what he was holding was a green leaf. This leaf was very ordinary. It seemed that it was picked up in a hurry. But there was a powerful divine will in it. When Lu Heng caught the leaf, a wonderful cultivation method appeared in front of him. Divine Skill The two characters are simple and crude, but they are just as arrogant as the Demon Sutra. This divine skill is a cultivation method without any evil skills, but it also has fascinating charm. People can't help but want to follow the manual after reading it. Lu Heng kept awake and was not confused. Standing under the blood-red sky with a speechless look on his face, Lu Heng held the demon sutra in one hand and the divine skill in the other. Looking at the mysterious forest of steels in front of him, Lu Heng didn't know what to say for a moment. The existences under the steels are really not dead. Chapter, 167 Lu Heng didn't say anything. Until the blood-red light column on one side had begun to fade, as if it would disappear at any time. He finally sighed and arched his hand at the huge forest of steels in front of him. Thank you very much. After that, he took the demon sutra and divine skill into the blood-red light column. Although he still has a lot of questions in mind, they probably won't answer him. 
Although there were two lights flying out of the forest of steels, each of them gave him a method of cultivation, but there was no response after that. Lu Hang also knew that the reason why he got these two cultivation methods was only because of the chain reaction caused by the yellowing ancient scroll that Gong Shu Jie had given him. Otherwise, if he entered alone, he would not have such an opportunity. Therefore, he left quickly without hesitation. What's more, Lu Hang just entered here by mistake. His real purpose is to rescue Hua Feng. Now three days have passed, and he doesn't know what happened to Brother Hua outside. Urba God Man seems to be an evil being. Brother Hua might have fallen into their hands and something may have happened to him. Lu Hang was worried and didn't want to stay here any longer, even though there seemed to be a big secret hidden there. But for Lu Hang, saving Hua Feng is the most important. As for those two excellent cultivation methods, although the cultivation methods recorded on them are really fascinating, Lu Hang doesn't intend to really cultivate them. However, these two books can be used as reference for Lu Hang, and may help him to deduce his own cultivation methods more quickly. Of course, these will not be studied until Hu Feng is rescued. Taking the Demon Sutra and Divine Skill, Lu Hang stepped into the Blood Red Light Column without any nostalgia. The Blood Red World, the huge and mysterious Forest of Steels, and the giant statue of Niuwa, which is thousands of feet high. These mysterious things disappeared from Lu Hang's vision. He was standing in the middle of a sea of flowers on the other side of the river. In the middle of the sea of flowers in front of him, there was a statue of Niuwa with a human body and a snake tail. But the statue was only a hundred feet tall. Although it is huge, compared with the huge stone statue in the Steel's forest, it is far lower. And at the periphery of this flower sea, there were a group of soldiers in black armor standing densely. Lu Hang almost thought he was back on the ancient battlefield. But the bodies under the broken armor were not clay sculptures, but pale and emaciated human bodies. They looked like vampires. Lu Hang was a little surprised. Because he saw the monster Boyi and the chariot representing the Lord of the Immortal Kingdom not far away. He doesn't know how long these people have been here, but they are guarding outside. Lu Hang thought for a moment, arched his hand at Luo Yujun in the chariot, and said, I'm Lu Hang from Hanyu Mountain. In full view of the public, Lu Hang who suddenly appeared from the other side of the Sea of Flowers said. Next to his soul body, the huge wolf demon lowered its eyebrows and eyes, but it was more fierce. On the dark grassland of optical fiber, there was a strange silence. The soldiers, Luo Yujun in the chariot, and even the monster Boyi. At this time, everyone who saw this scene lost their words for a short time. All the people were shocked to see Lu Hang's appearance. He unexpectedly came out. Luo Yujun could hardly believe his eyes. This mysterious ancient battlefield is the birthplace of the immortal kingdom. Luo Yujun knew more about the danger of the ancient battlefield than anyone else. In addition once every hundred years, the ancient battlefield will be temporarily quiet, those wandering ancient war generals will disappear, and outsiders can find an exit to leave. In other times, the ancient battlefield was a death land that could only enter but could not leave. Once you enter by mistake, you are dead. Before the establishment of the immortal kingdom, this place was already a forbidden area for all cultivators. After the establishment of the immortal kingdom, Luo Yujun hid this ancient battlefield and prohibited outsiders from entering the border of the immortal kingdom so that the outside world almost forgot about this strange flower sea. However, among those old monsters who have been cultivating for countless years, the evil name of this flower sea has always been famous. Once every hundred years, Luo Yujun will enter the dangerous ancient battlefield alone. Avoiding the evil wind that blows out the soul and destroys all the evil storms, he struggled to find the dark sky black armor left on the ancient battlefield to arm his own people. Few people know more about the danger of this ancient battlefield than Luo Yujun. But now, it is not the quiet period of the ancient battlefield once in a century. It is absolutely impossible for anyone to come back alive after entering. But now, Luo Yujun stared at Lu Hang in white in front of him and felt the indescribable shock. And, a little shiver. Did he actually come out? And not only did he come out, but it also seems that he didn't get hurt at all. Even the dangerous and unpredictable ancient battlefield didn't cause any disaster. 
It is reasonable to say that if someone intrudes into it by mistake and fights with those ancient war generals, it will certainly lead to a deadly riot. The higher the cultivation level of the intruder, the more terrible the deadly riot will be. So Luo Yujun summoned his troops here to suppress the impending deadly riot. But now everything in the Flower Sea is calm, there is no riot in the ancient battlefield, and it seems that nothing has happened. This cultivator has come out. At this moment, Luo Yujun finally remembered what Urba God Man had said when they ran away. Do you think we are afraid of you? We are just afraid of the old monster behind you. At that time, he didn't think Urba God Man was terrible, so he didn't pay attention to this sentence. After all, he also knew that this wolf god must be a senior with a high cultivation base. However, after witnessing the existence of Maluo evil spirit, Luo Yujun realized that even if he took all the troops with him, he could not stop the legendary Maluo evil spirit. Urba god man does have the capital to be arrogant. But even Urba god man with the Maluo sword didn't dare to provoke the wolf god. Now this wolf god had broken into the ancient battlefield by mistake, and he could walk out unharmed. He looked like he just walked back from his back garden. Luo Yujun swallowed saliva and found that his estimate of the wolf god may be too low. This is no ordinary senior master. This is clearly an old monster from ancient times. Chapter 168 Urba God Man, those sixteen strange people, are monsters that existed for a long time. Before the birth of Luo Yujun, there were rumors about these sixteen monsters in the South Sea. However, they rarely come into the world, and they will disappear soon after each time they come into the world. A thousand years ago, Luo Yujun, had the first direct contact with the sixteen monsters, and the two sides formed hatred. The fight ended with Luo Yujun chasing the sixteen monsters for three days and three nights, and finally losing the targets. Therefore, although Luo Yujun knew that Urba God Man existed in the early ancient times, he didn't pay much attention to them. However, after witnessing the existence of Maluo evil spirit three days ago, he suddenly realized how horrible the sixteen monsters were when they were serious. Therefore, he could realize more clearly how terrible the wolf god is. Urba god man has been lived for countless years, but the wolf god is even older than Urba god man. He went in and walked out of the ancient battlefield as easily as walking in a garden. Luo Yujun hurriedly stepped out of the chariot. He saluted Lu Hang in front of him deeply. Wolf God, Luo Yujun saluted respectfully, and didn't even dare to give his name as the Lord of the Kingdom. In the face of such existence, the so-called King of the Immortal Kingdom is just a joke. How dare Luo Yujun boast? In the distance, Lu Hang saw Luo Yujun stunned for a while, and then suddenly saluted with respect. He immediately understood that this guy might have thought too much. How familiar this scene is. In Hanyu Mountain, after going downhill. It seems that every place and every new person who knows him has a similar reaction. Lu Heng bowed his hand in silence and said, The Lord, you need not be so polite. For the purpose of saving my friends, I have violated the laws of the Immortal Kingdom. Please forgive me. Lu Heng remembered that the border of the Immortal Kingdom was forbidden for outsiders to enter, so he talked about it first to get an understanding. As for Luo Yujun's misunderstanding, Lu Heng was too lazy to explain it. No one believes what he said anyway. If he explained it forcibly, others would think that he lied to others. Lu Heng just ignored it. After Lu Heng said this, Luo Yujun was shocked and hurriedly said, It's all right. The immortal kingdom welcomes the wolf god at any time. Looking at Lu Heng in front, Luo Yujun said again, However, Master Wolf God, you have spent three days in the ancient battlefield, and Urba God Man has escaped. Now I don't know where they are. We had no time to catch up, and we waited here for three days. With these words, Luo Yujun said his dilemma briefly and quickly, and showed his difficulty to the wolf god. After hearing Luo Yujun's story, Lu Hun was a little surprised and realized the danger of the ancient battlefield. He broke in without permission before. If it wasn't because the existence in the alien realm was afraid of his heavenly thunder sword, he might have been killed. After all, those war generals in black armor are really ferocious. With Lu Hang's current cultivation base, without using the heavenly thunder sword, it is really impossible to fight. 
Lu Hang took a long breath when he saw the dark blue ancient sword hanging beside him. Not bad. It is indeed necessary to prepare this trump card before going down the mountain. However, Luo Yujun has been talking about the ancient battlefield, but he never mentioned the mysterious forest of steels. Does it seem that he doesn't know the place? Lu Hang took a deep look at Luo Yujun and didn't talk about it much. Before knowing the situation, whether Luo Yujun knows it or not, Lu Hang doesn't want to mention it. What's more, there are more important things to be solved now. Do you know the residents of Urba God Man? Lu Hang asked, or what do they want to do? Do you have any guesses? This is what Lu Hang is most concerned about and doesn't understand at present. According to Gu Yan, those sixteen monsters came to find Huafeng, and the capture of Lian Tsai was only incidental. But Huafeng is young, his cultivation bases are not high, and his sect is ordinary. What can attract these sixteen monsters who have lived for many years? Why did they capture Huafeng? Facing Lu Hang's inquiry, Luo Yujun smiled bitterly and said, I don't know much about Urba God Man. They always appear and disappear mysteriously. But about the reason why they took away your friend. I have some guesses. Luo Yujun said, according to your introduction, Huo Feng's cultivation base is not high, and his Tao heart was broken. Now he is barely reshaping his Tao heart. It is reasonable to say that although it is rare to reshape the Tao heart, it is not too rare. But since it can attract those sixteen little monsters. Perhaps this brother Huo Feng remodeled Tao heart is unusual. Speaking of this, Luo Yujun's expression could not help but be serious. It is said that there is a so-called hidden sword in the world. Those who bear this hidden sword can easily step onto the peak of cultivation. But hidden sword can't be forced. The conditions for its appearance are extremely harsh, and it is only born among those who break their Tao hearts and can reshape their Tao hearts when their cultivation bases are low. The reason why I suspect that Brother Huafeng has hidden sword is related to the Maoyuo sword held by Urba God Man. Luo Yujun said, It is said that in ancient times, there was a fierce devil sword, which killed countless gods and demons. The sword was named Maoyuo. If this sword comes out, it will certainly cause trouble to the whole world. The Maoyuo evil spirit in the sword will gradually erode the sword owner's soul. In the end, either the sword owner turns into a devil or Maoyuo enslaves the sword owner, which is extremely dangerous. This ancient magic sword is now in the hands of Urba God Man. It is said that only those who have the hidden sword can be favored by the Maoyuo sword. As for other people, no matter how strong they are, they will be cursed and their vitality will be greatly damaged. Chapter 169 Luo Yujun's words made Lu Heng frown. You mean, Urba God Man was cursed for using the Maoyuo sword. Now they wanted to break away from the control of the Maoyuo sword, so they captured Brother Hua. Because Brother Hua has seen hidden sword, so they want to force the Maoyuo sword to Brother Hua. Do they want to free themselves from the curse of the Maoyuo sword? Lu Heng was shocked. If it is what Luo Yujun said, Hua Feng is really a man of destiny. Hidden sword. Lu Heng has seen relevant descriptions in the library books of Fushan City. Those who bear this hidden sword will master invincible sword skills. If Hua Feng really has the so-called hidden sword, he is no wonder a protagonist of his life. It's just that now Urba God Man has forced him to accept the Maoyuo sword. Lu Heng sighed silently and said, if so, it's really the doom of Brother Hua. He arched his hand at Luo Yujun in front of him and said, in this case, it's time for me to leave Urba God Man is so vicious. If they really want to give the Maoyuo sword to Brother Hua, it will be a disaster. I should go to find him. Lu Heng, regardless of how Luo Yujun responded, went away directly and disappeared on the grassland in an instant. Luo Yujun watched the pale thunder light disappear in the sky outside the flower sea. Although he wanted to keep the wolf god, he knew that the situation was really urgent, so he couldn't speak. However, it's not bad now. At least he thought that the immortal kingdom would lead to a deadly riot, but now it was just a false alarm. With a wave of his hand, Luo Yujun dispersed the army on the grassland, and then returned to the chariot and left here. Soon, the immortal kingdom, which was closed for three days, laid down the black gas barrier at the border again, 
and the four border port cities were all open to the outside world. Everything was restored to its former calm. The reason why the immortal kingdom was suddenly closed down this time was hotly discussed by outsiders. Because of the riots in the city that night, and the appearance of Urba God Man, the rumors were rife. However, in the end, the rumor was far from the truth. However, the main characters involved in these rumors had no intention to deal with them. Above the South Sea, a pale thunder flickered across the sky quickly. Around Lu Heng, Xiao Ai and Gu Yan have come out of the netherworld. They were also in the light and were led by Lu Heng to fly. Lu Heng also told Xiao Ai and Gu Yan about the situation of Huafeng and the things he might encounter. Everyone was worried and anxious. The Maoyuo sword is extremely dangerous. If Huafeng really becomes the master of the Maoyuo sword, it's definitely not worth it. After all, if Huafeng is a rare hidden sword, even without the Maoyuo sword, he will become invincible in the world. However, if he becomes the master of the Maoyuo sword, he has a great probability of becoming the slave of the Maoyuo sword. Neither Xiao Ai nor Gu Yan would like to see such a thing happen. Let alone Lu Heng. He took Xiao Ai and Gu Yan to search around the South Sea to find out where Huafeng is. In the Immortal Kingdom, when Huafeng and Lian Sai were surrounded by Urba God Man, Lian Sai secretly sent little Gu Yan out to find Lu Heng for help. Before Gu Yan left, he left one of his golden feathers to Huafeng. That golden feather is the natural spirit item of little Gu Yan. This golden feather can be refined into a powerful weapon for self-defense and killing enemies. And now, as long as Gu Yan is close to this golden feather, he can sense its specific location. Therefore, Lu Heng took Xiao Ai and Gu Yan to search around the South Sea, hoping to find out the specific location of Huafeng through Gu Yan's golden feather. Just such a search is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Even though Lu Heng's speed is extremely fast, it may not be so easy to search the whole South Sea. The dark valley was full of evil smell, which made the living uncomfortable. Huafeng struggled to sit up, rubbed his eyebrows and looked around. What appeared before he was a dark and closed valley. On both sides, there were dark strange rocks. When you touched them, you would feel the cold evil demon Qi. But the sky above was enveloped by a black evil demon, which could not see the sun at all. In the valley, there were some scattered bones. Some were humans and some were animals. Some skeletons had even weathered, but he could vaguely feel their power when they were alive. The bones in the valley were all cultivators with high cultivation bases. Huafeng, who was aware of this, felt awe-inspiring. He held the cold dark stone wall and stood up with difficulty. But at that moment, Lien Tsai's voice sounded in his ear. If I were you, I wouldn't touch that rock. Hearing this voice, Huafeng felt a little happy. In this strange and inexplicable desperate situation, it is really a pleasure to hear the voice of acquaintances. However, when Huafeng turned to look, he was stunned. In the dark valley, what appeared in front of him was a bloody head. Although Lien Tsai has a beautiful face, she has only a head left. Huafeng looked frightened and said, Elder Tsai. He hurriedly struggled to walk over to the bloody head and looked shocked. Your head. Ah. It's my head, the head on the ground said calmly, I was dismembered by those monsters, and my body was scattered into six pieces, and I was thrown into the valley with you. According to the statement of those monsters, they wanted to sacrifice me as a blood sacrifice to the Maoyuo sword. They also wanted to revenge. Because my master offended them in the past. If you walk around the valley, you should be able to get my body back. Lien Tsai calmly told the story and saw Hua Feng's mouth twitching. Although Hua Feng knew that a powerful cultivator would not die even if his body and head were separated, he was still upset when he saw a bloody head talking to him. He said, wait a moment. I'll go and help you pick up your body. With that, Hua Feng dragged his aching body toward the valley in front of him. Behind him, the head quietly watched him go, saying, actually, you don't need to bother. Lien Tsai said, I will die soon anyway. Even if you pick up my body, I will die. No need to bother. Chapter, 170 The words of Lien Tsai surprised Huafeng. But he walked towards the valley without stopping. 
This strange valley was covered with dark evil chi. In the air, there was also a creepy smell. It seemed that there was something evil in the dark. The dark mountain rocks on both sides were extremely evil and uncomfortable. Huafeng dragged his injured body forward in the valley, and soon came to the end. The front was a black air wall. Looking at the surging evil demon Qi, Huafeng knew that he couldn't touch it casually. Here, he saw Lian Tsai's body. Although full of blood, still maintained the integrity of the chest and abdomen. It's just lacking hands, feet, and head. Huafeng walked over and bent over to pick up the bloody body. Under the clothes stained with blood, he could even see the chest rising and falling slightly, and the heart was still beating. If you only look at the position of the chest and abdomen, it is almost the same as a living person. This was the end, and there was no way forward. Huafeng walked back with Lian Tsai's body in his arms and quickly returned to Li Tsai's head. He put her body beside her head and said, I'll go to the other end to look for your hands and feet. After that, regardless of Lian Tsai's reaction, Huafeng, half-bloodied, walked to the other side of the valley. In this deep and desolate valley, there was no grass. The scattered bones were left by cultivators. And near some skeletons, weapons of the dead were scattered. Even now, some of the weapons and magic weapons still exuded the aura that people dared not ignore. But now Huafeng was not in the mood to pick up them. He walked to the end of the valley and also saw a black air wall, so he held Lian Tsai's hands and feet and walked back. When he returned to the head of Lian Tsai, he found that Lian Tsai's head was already connected to her body. With a dry cough, Huafeng helped Lian Tsai put her hands and feet together with her body. Soon, Lian Tsai, who was completely recovered, stood up and waved, and the blood on her and Huafeng disappeared at the same time. Lian Tsai, who was no longer embarrassed, turned back into a gorgeous young lady. But now her face was pale. Although the body had been spliced back, the wound was not so easy to recover from. She looked at the gloomy valley in front of her, took a long breath, sat down on the ground and said. There is evil demon Qi in the valley, and I don't feel any spirit Qi. If I don't go out, I'm afraid I will never recover. With that, she looked at Huafeng beside her and said, it seems that you have a question to ask. If you have a question, ask it. There is no need to hide it in your heart. Lian Tsai looked serious. She neither flirted with Huafeng, nor deliberately showed off her charm. The indifferent and calm tone seemed to be a stranger to Huafeng. Huafeng looked at her cold appearance and was silent for a while. Then he asked, Is your master the legendary Gu Yu? Luna Pitch Mirror, The Lection of Chaos? What Huafeng said was the inheritance of a peerless beautiful woman thousands of years ago. The woman was named Gu Yu. Her cultivation method was called the Lection of Chaos and seduced many strong cultivators. A thousand years ago, there was a huge riot. She was denounced and hunted down by countless married women and became infamous, but she disappeared mysteriously and went nowhere. One hundred years after the disappearance of Gu Yu, her disciple appeared. Her disciple also made trouble and charmed countless heroes. The men who were seduced by her were almost unable to get one step further in their cultivation. But even so, there were also countless men who were eager to meet her. Therefore, among cultivators, Gu Yu and her disciples have long been notorious. But the terrible place is also here. Even if everyone disliked them, most people would be seduced by them without protest. Among them, there were even some very strong cultivators. So Huafeng was nervous when he asked this question. If Lian Tsai in front of HM is really a disciple of Gu Yu. When Huafeng's question came out, Lian Tsai nodded coldly. Well, what you guessed is right. Gu Yu is my master. Do you have any questions? Air. This. Huafeng suddenly felt uncomfortable when he looked at Lian Tsai's cold appearance. Did he have accidentally offended her? Or does the woman in front of him don't like her inheritance? Aware of this, Huafeng felt a little guilty. Did he misunderstand her? However, this idea just rose, and Huafeng was suddenly shocked and suddenly realized something. When his shifu told about the inheritance of Gu Yu, he mentioned that they were not only beautiful and charismatic, but also terrible, 
because they knew the hearts of people. Even if you want to resist, as long as you contact with them, you will unconsciously generate pity for them, and gradually believe in their various sweet words. Those who are enchanted by these evil women were not deluded by illusions but loved them from their hearts. Looking at Lien Tsai in front of him nervously, Hua Feng swallowed saliva and unconsciously stepped back. A little scared. Did I get trapped? And Lien Tsai, who had been observing Hua Feng's reaction, saw this little action and raised her eyebrows slightly. In her heart, inexplicable disappointment rose. Sure enough, again. She smiled and said, but compared with my heritage, what we should have a headache now is the current situation, right? The valley is full of evil chi. The exits on both sides and the sky above are blocked by evil chi. Even I can't break it. And even if we go out, there are still sixteen little monsters outside. With our current situation and strength, we can't beat those sixteen little monsters at all. Even if the wolf god is looking for us outside, it's too late. We will probably die here before the wolf god finds us. Lien Tsai calmly said terrible words and told the cruel reality to Hua Feng. Chapter, 171 The words of Lien Tsai surprised Hua Feng. He looked at the closed valley in front of him, which reminded him of his current situation. Suddenly, he felt some anxiety and inexplicable confusion. But why did Urba God Man imprison us here? Hua Feng was full of bewilderment, why did they stare at me? Is there anything on me worth coveting? The conversation with Urba God Man before he was arrested made Hua Feng understand that the so-called Urba God Man came for him. Lien Tsai was only incidental. However, Hua Feng could not think of anything worthy of the legendary Urba God Man's kidnapping are they going to use him as a hostage to ask the wolf god for something? Hua Feng was confused, and Lien Tsai continued to explain. The so-called Urba God Man are sixteen old monsters that survived in ancient times. They have the same mind. Before we were thrown in, they said that they would let me be the sacrifice of the Maoyuo Sword, and you would be the sword master of the Maoyuo Sword to help them escape from the Keija. Lien Tsai sneered and shook her head, saying, it is quite obvious that the sixteen little monsters found the Maoyuo Sword mentioned in the legends, they probably tried to use the magic sword forcibly and ended up cursed by the sword. And now they found you, they probably want to use you to remove the curse because you happen to be the legendary hidden sword, who is said to have the invincible Tao heart that is rarely seen in ten thousand years. Lien Tsai's statement shocked Hua Feng. Ha! Huh. Hidden sword? Me? He thought that Lien Tsai was joking, Master Tsai, please don't tease me at a time like this. However, after Hua Feng finished speaking, he saw Lien Tsai's serious expression. The two people looked at each other silently for a while, and Hua Feng's voice was a little weak, is it true? Lien Tsai nodded calmly. And the black cloud of evil chi suddenly opened above their heads. Eight lovely little girls lie on the top and say to the two people below. Hey, boy, are you willing to save your lover? Hua Feng looked up in amazement at the eight little girls above his head, and didn't know who they were. Lien Tsai on the other side sneered, Urba God Man are sixteen old monsters with eight males and eight females. These eight little girls are the remaining eight Urba God Man. Hua Feng nodded in understanding, then looked up at the eight little girls and asked, What can I do to let you leave Master Tsai alone? One of the little girls smiled and said, It's very simple. You must become the master of the Maoyuo sword and we will let the female demon go. Another little girl also nodded, Yes, yes. As long as you are willing to be the master of the Maoyuo sword, we can let you see the demon woman leave safely and swear to ensure that we won't go to trouble her again. We can also cancel the gratitude and resentment between her master and us. Before the other little girls spoke, Lien Tsai interrupted them coldly. Shut up. When the wolf god finds this place, you will die without a place to bury yourself. Lien Tsai's bad words made the eight little girls go silent. Later, one of the little girls said coldly, Hump. Since you don't know how to show humility, you will stay here for a few more days. The Maoyuo sword is at the bottom of the valley. This demon woman's energy will be absorbed by the Maoyuo sword constantly until she has no more energy left, then she will die hump. Boy, if you love her, 
you can beg for mercy, and we will come again. After that, the eight little girls flew away directly. The sky over the valley was again covered by evil clouds. The closed valley fell into darkness again. Huofeng was speechless, Master Tsai. He said, even if this request is somewhat unreasonable, we can talk about it slowly. Lien Tsai shook her head and said, these monsters are full of nonsense. They are all fake even if you accept their request, they will not let me go. Huofeng was curious, what hatred is so deep? Lien Tsai smiled at Huofeng, my master, Gu Yu, had charmed those eight little boys and absorbed a lot of their magic power. Didn't you notice? Only the females dare to show up because those eight male babies dare not approach me at all, for fear that they will be captivated by me just like how they fell for my master. Lien Tsai's charming smile made Huofeng's heart jump. At that moment, he almost felt out of breath. Is that the charm of demon woman? It's horrible. After he hurriedly lowered his head, averted his eyes, and tried to calm down, Huofeng realized the meaning of Lien Tsai's words. Immediately he raised his head in shock and looked at Lien Tsai in disbelief. Charm the eight boys absorbed their magic power. The legend of demon woman is terrible enough. However, the actual situation seems more terrible than the legend. Huofeng was frightened and didn't know what to say for a moment. If he ran into a demon woman outside, he would turn around and run without saying a word. However, he is currently trapped in the same place as Lien Tsai, even if he wants to run, he can't run. Huofeng swallowed his saliva and suddenly felt like he was at the edge of a cliff. After leaving the wolf god, it seems that the world suddenly becomes too dangerous. At the same time, above the evil valley, on a cliff in the mountain, eight lovely little girls scattered in the forest, sighing and waiting for the cry of mercy from below. One of the little girls thought for a long time, but could not help saying. Is this plan really feasible? Will that boy really be willing to die to save the demon woman? Another little girl sneered and said, isn't that nonsense? Even our eight brothers can't resist the charm of the demon woman. Yes, in order to survive, that demon woman will surely charm the boy to save her. The girls believed in it. However, the little girl who started to question shook her head and said, I don't think so. She lowered her head and looked down at the valley covered by evil, saying, This demon woman seems a little different from Guyu. Chapter 172 In the valley, time passed little by little. Huofeng walked up and down anxiously in the valley, while Lien Tsai sat lazily in one of the flat places, watching Huofeng doing useless work. For the two people trapped in the valley today, it is really useless to do anything. First of all, they could not break through the evil demon Qi that blocked the valley. Secondly, even if they broke through the evil demon Qi blocking the valley, they could not defeat the eight girls guarding outside. At that time, they will still be thrown in, and they may be severely beaten. For the two people today, what they can do is to wait for the wolf god to find here and rescue them. But since Urba god man dares to rob them, they must have a complete plan. Even if the wolf god has great powers, it may be difficult to find here in time. Hey! Lien Tsai sighed, looking at the figure of the man walking around, and filled with emotion. She cultivated hard all her life, but never thought that she would die so unknowingly. Compared with Yu Yu, her death is worse now. She will be drained of her spirit chi by the Malyuo sword in the valley until she is dead. As for the purpose of Urba God Man throwing her and Huofeng together, Lien Tsai can see it at a glance. But she didn't believe that those monsters would let her go, and she was disdainful to do such things. When her master taught her cultivation method, she was disgusted with the cultivation method that must go to charm men. In her opinion, the lection of chaos can be cultivated without absorbing the energy of men. It's just that the cultivation speed is not that fast. Although cultivating alone is boring and slow, it is much more comfortable than her master's method. Although the cultivation speed of her master and the creator of the cultivation method is fast, they are vulnerable to be backfired. The creator disappeared mysteriously. Up to now, no body has been found. Even the sex treasure Luna Pith Mirror has disappeared. Her master was surrounded and killed by women. Finally, 
she was thrown into the abyss of the South Sea and died without a place to bury herself. She took this as a warning. Of course, people are different. Her master enjoys the feeling of playing with countless men, but Lien Tsai doesn't like it. The only disgusting thing is those superficial men. Once they know that she is a demon woman, they either run away in a panic and fear being seduced by her, or they just keep pestering her and want to prove their man's strength by conquering her. These two kinds of men, the first makes her disdain, the second makes her nauseated. The boy in front of her, she thought he was not in the two categories. But now it seems that he is no difference from other men in the world. Lien Tsai was disappointed. However, Hua Feng, who walked up and down in the valley, knew nothing about Lien Tsai's complaints. Since he knew that Lien Tsai was a demon woman, he carefully distanced himself from the other party. Try to keep in touch with her as little as possible without offending her. But for now, it is still the most important to find a way out. Although waiting for the rescue of the wolf god was his only way of life, it was not Hua Feng's style to sit there helplessly. He scanned the valley inch by inch, trying to find a flaw in it. He looked over and over again at the white bones scattered in the valley. These seniors who died in the valley are all seniors who have made great achievements in their cultivation. They must have tried to find a way out when they were trapped here. Maybe one of them succeeded in escaping and left the escape method. However, although Hua Feng didn't bother to look for bones one by one, he never found a way to escape as time went by. It seems that those who died here didn't leave any last words. Three days passed quickly after they woke up. In addition to the three days of coma, Hua Feng had not eaten for six days. Hua Feng's body is stronger than that of ordinary people, and he has drunk several cups of peach blossom wine when he traveled with the wolf god. When Hua Feng's body feels tired, the residual effect of the cups of peach blossom wine will work to protect him from hunger and thirst. But this will not last long. After all, most of the medicinal power of the peach blossom wine had been used to repair and maintain Hua Feng's broken body. On the fifteenth day, Hua Feng finally felt hungry and thirsty. He was powerless and began to walk unsteadily. Not far away from him, Lien Tsai had already been lying down, peacefully lying in the valley, just like a real dead body. Feeling that the essence in the body was being sucked away, Lien Tsai weakly said. Come on, don't waste your time. You've looked around three times. If there is really a way out, you'd have found it long ago. For the first time in ten days, they talked. Now you can't walk steadily, so don't fiddle about. Lien Tsai said weakly, you are different from me. The Moyuo sword wants to take you as the master, so it has not absorbed your energy. You can stay here longer. Please find a place to rest. Don't waste your strength. Wait for the wolf god to save you. As long as the wolf god finds you, those sixteen little monsters will not be his rivals. At this time, Lien Tsai was already dying. Her energy from eight hundred years of cultivation was completely absorbed by the Mayuo sword, and she had only the last breath remaining. She finally struggled to speak, and only wanted to say the last word to the man beside her. After all, this guy is the last man she would see in her life. Not far away, Hua Feng sat by a dead bone, heard Lien Tsai's weak murmur, and then said after a few breaths of silence. Find another one find the last one, and if I can't find it, I'll give up. At the beginning, he really wanted to find a way out. However, seeing Lien Tsai haggard day by day, and finally had no strength to sit up and could only lie down and wait for death. For some reason, Hua Feng felt a sense of heartache in his heart. He doubted that this was the charm of the demon woman, but now he didn't think much about it. Li Tsai is dying. If Li Tsai's energy is completely absorbed by the Mayuo sword, maybe the magic sword that has been hidden in the dark will completely emerge and force him to take it. So although Hua Feng seems to be able to support it for a longer time, his time is actually the same as that of Lien Tsai's. After putting down the skeleton in his hand and the ring-shaped magic weapon beside it, Hua Feng took a deep breath and walked towards the next skeleton with difficulty. He murmured, the last one give up if I can't find it. Behind him, Lien Tsai watched his struggling back, smiled softly and said. Then take your time to find. With that, she closed her eyes and planned to sleep like this. 
He's looked for it three times. How can he find it? She didn't believe that there would be any way out. If those dead people could go out, they would have run away. How could they leave their bones here? In her opinion, this behavior of Huofeng is just a dying struggle. However, as soon as Lien Tsai's eyes were closed, the startled voice of Huofeng suddenly sounded in the distance. Gu Yu's note Master Tsai. Come and see. Your master, Gu Yu left a note here. Ha! Huh. Master Gu Yu's note. The eyelashes of the woman lying serenely in the valley trembled, then weakly opened her eyes and looked at Huofeng in the distance. Huofeng was sitting next to a corpse, holding a milky moon disc in his hand, and looking at her with a shocked look on his face. Even though the milky white disc emitting dim moonlight was far away, Lien Tsai still clearly felt the familiar smell on it. It was indeed the real Luna Pith mirror, the sex magic tool that disappeared with Master Gu Yu, rather than the fake she had made herself. Lien Tsai's eyes widened slightly. At that moment, looking at Huofeng sitting among the bones, she felt an incredible sense of absurdity. Could this guy really find a way out? Chapter 173 Huofeng took the moon white disc and walked quickly to Lien Tsai. Master Tsai, look, here is your master's suicide note. Huofeng handed the moon white disc to Lien Tsai. Lien Tsai, who was extremely weak, struggled and sat up with the help of Huofeng, holding the lost magic weapon of her sect for many years, and really felt a sense of divinity in it. My name is Guyu. I was captured by Urba Godman and thrown into this valley. In the valley, there is the legendary evil sword Maluo. Urba Godman threw cultivators into the valley to sacrifice the sword to suppress the curse of the Maluo sword. I have been trapped here for three days, and the Maluo sword has been robbing my vital energy day and night. There is not much time left. But Luna Pith Mirror is our sex keepsake. If it buried in this valley with me, I would become a sinner of our sect. If someone finds this mirror in the future, please send it to the disciples of my sect on my behalf. I will be grateful. Gu Yu. Lien Tsai opened her eyes and looked at Huofeng beside her. Seeing Huofeng's concern, Master Tsai, do you want anything else for your master besides this suicide note? Lien Tsai smiled and didn't hide, yes, in addition to this suicide note that everyone can read, Master Guyu left a message for the disciples of our sect in Luna Pith Mirror. Master Guyu knew that her time was running out, and she didn't want to give her cultivation bases to the Mayuo sword for nothing. She left all her untarnished divine power and lifelong cultivation bases in the Luna Pith Mirror, waiting for the disciples of our sect to get the Luna Pith Mirror. If I can inherit my master's cultivation bases and refine that part of Urba God Man's divine power, maybe we can break away from this valley. The words of Lien Tsai surprised Huofeng. Is that so? That's great. Master Tsai, you should accept your master's cultivation base. Huofeng looked excited. When he was at the end of his tether, he suddenly saw the dawn of escape, and he couldn't help getting excited. However, in the dark valley, Lien Tsai looked at him with a smile and didn't reply. Such a strange reaction calmed down Huofeng's excited mood. He realized something. Air are there any restrictions? Huofeng asked carefully. Lien Tsai looked at him with a smile and said, It is not difficult to inherit my master's cultivation base. After all, I am cultivating the same cultivation method as my master. However, it will be difficult to refine Urba God Man's divine power. Lien Tsai said with a smile, Since you know the legend of Demon Woman, you should know that my cultivation needs the help of a cauldron. Urba God Man's divine power is not of the same origin as mine. If I want to refine it, I must find an excellent man to help me cultivate it. Otherwise, I can't refine it alone. Hua Feng's face instantly changed. He unconsciously retreated half a step and looked at the woman in front of him with some fear. At this moment, he could not tell whether she was telling the truth or not. The meaning of her is he going to be the cauldron? Thinking of the fate of those men who were used as cauldrons by the demon women, Huofeng subconsciously wanted to refuse. While Lien Tsai smiled and appreciated Huofeng's reaction and almost wanted to laugh. Once she was harassed and despised men. When the men in the world saw her, they either ran away with fear and vigilance, 
or they were vexed by endless entanglement. She was disgusted and wanted to find a modest gentleman who could keep calm in front of her, neither afraid of her, nor greedy for her and disturbing her. But now, seeing the alert and frightened appearance of Huifeng, she somehow felt very interested and didn't feel disgusted or disappointed. She even deliberately irritated Huifeng with words and smiled at his embarrassed look. In the valley, there was a strange silence. Lien Tsai held Luna Pith mirror, smiling rather than laughing. Hua Feng's face was pale and uncertain. After half a minute, Hua Feng asked tentatively, Master Tsai, are you kidding? Lien Tsai had waited for a long time. Finally, when Hua Feng asked, she stopped teasing him. She stopped with a smile and said, it's not a joke. What Tsai said to Mr. Hua is true. To refine Herba God Man's divine power, I really need an excellent male cauldron to help me cultivate. Young Master Hua, you have the talent of hidden sword, and you meet this requirement. Of course, Tsai can assure Mr. Hua that if you're willing to help me cultivate, I will pay attention to it, and will never hurt your origin. At that time, Mr. Hua, you can also get the corresponding benefits. Lien Tsai said with a smile full of sincerity. It is also full of charm. Anybody who heard this charming beauty put forward such a request will be unable to control themselves. Even Huifeng couldn't help swallowing his saliva. Demon woman this charm is really irresistible. But if he compromises and obeys now, does it mean that he has fallen into the trap of the demon woman and will never be able to escape from it? Huifeng hesitated in his heart, only feeling that he was standing at the fork of the abyss. One wrong move and he will fall into the abyss. Lien Tsai smiled and appreciated Huifeng's hesitation and fear, and didn't open her mouth to interrupt his thinking. This man looks embarrassed. He is really cute. She smiled and appreciated Hua Feng's look for a while. Seeing that Hua Feng still hesitated, Lien Tsai sighed weakly. Young Master Hua, you are a man. It is not a loss for you, right? I have talked to this extent. Do you want Tsai to kneel down shamelessly and beg for your help? Lien Tsai looked wronged. What's more, even if I don't take into account your mood, do I dare not ignore the opinion of the wolf god? Lien Tsai said tenderly and plaintively, I know that my sect is notorious. It's normal for you to have concerns. But this is the only way for us to live after many days of getting along, won't you even give Tsai this trust? Ere this Huifeng looked at the weak and helpless look of the woman in front of him. Even though he knew it was acting skills, his heart couldn't help but tremble. He felt a great sense of guilt. That's right. He doesn't suffer from this kind of thing. Huifeng doesn't have any mental cleanliness. Although he never goes to any brothel, it's just unnecessary. He is also a man with man's desire. Now he is in danger again. Lien Tsai even carries out the wolf god as a guarantee. Huifeng carefully recalled Lien Tsai's respect for the wolf god. She would not risk offending the wolf god to squeeze him dry right. What's more, if he continues to hesitate, wouldn't he be inferior to a woman? Looking down at the beautiful demon woman in front of him, Huifeng said, in that case, it will only be a matter of urgency. I only hope that Master Tsai will keep your promise in mind and not hurt my origin. Besides, after this. In the valley, Huifeng hesitated and wondered if he should say that. After all, it seems inappropriate to say so. But Lien Tsai smiled. At the moment when Huifeng nodded, her plain clothes sleeves waved gently, and the soft white gauze flew out and landed on Huifeng's shoulder. Then the woman gently dragged Huifeng into her arms. Chapter 174 the ethereal and soft white gauze flew out layer by layer, wrapped around, and turned into a huge white flower. In the white yarn, the stars were misty, but they didn't seem dark. After being isolated from the outside world, they seemed to fall into the gentle milky way and surging water surrounded them in a fairyland. Huofeng was slightly surprised to see this scene. Lien Tsai leans gently in his arms like a bird. It was the first time that she used the cauldron cultivation method, and even she had seen the beautiful illusion around her for the first time. Her long index finger gently circled on the man's strong chest. Smiling, she said the words Huifeng hesitated to say. 
After this, what happened in the valley today would be regarded as a dream. Her soft hands silently wrapped around the man's neck, then her whole person wrapped around the man's body like a snake without bones. Finally, she looked at Huafeng and said with blurred eyes. I don't use magic to charm or harass you. After this, I will not tell anyone about it and you will not be disgraced. After going out, Tsai will retreat a hundred miles as long as you appear. The woman's plaintive and gentle whispers gave Huafeng a strong sense of guilt. He subconsciously wanted to say, no, I didn't mean that. However, the woman's finger gently pressed on Huafeng's lips stopping his words. Huafeng's ear rang with the soft sigh of Lian Tsai. I know that, you don't need to explain. In the shallow sigh, there seemed to be endless tenderness. At this time, the soft water flowing with faint starlight flooded the two people silently. The woman put her arms around Huafeng's neck, looked at him face to face, and said with a light smile. Please help Tsai cultivate. At that moment, Huafeng felt a thrill in his heart and felt the bliss that is hard to have in the world. The incandescent thunder quickly flew over the blue ocean, rolling several clouds. Lu Hung was depressed hiding silently. Even the little goo eagle who used to be lively was now so sad that it almost gave up hope. They had searched the South Sea for more than fifteen days, but they weren't able to find any trace of Huafeng. Lu Hung was worried. The South Sea is even broader than he imagined. Even though his flying speed is fast, it is far from enough to search every corner of the South Sea. Now, it had been eighteen days since Huafeng was captured. There was enough time for those sixteen monsters to cook Huafeng again and again. Although Urba God Man wants Huafeng to take the Maoyuo sword and be the master of the Maoyuo sword. But after Huafeng became the master of the Maoyuo sword, will the sixteen little monsters let him go easily? As long as Huafeng inherits the Maoyuo sword and lets Urba God Man escape from the curse of the magic sword, those sixteen little monsters will surely kill Huafeng. Otherwise, the hatred between the two sides is so great that Huafeng will not let go of these sixteen little monsters in the future. Urba God Man must also know this. In the darkness, Lu Heng closed his eyes with a long sigh. Along the way to the south, Huafeng, although not highly cultivated, has an outstanding mind and a kind disposition. Lu Heng appreciates him very much, and has also discussed the way of cultivation with him. Both sides are teachers and friends. But now he was caught under his nose. Lu Heng took a deep breath. For the first time since he came to this world, his heart has shown the so-called killing intention. Feeling that there is not much heavenly thunder in his body, Lu Heng directly took Xiao Ai and Gu Yan to the mountains below. Here is an island country on the South Sea, and its land area is not small. When flying through the air just now, he saw that most of the people on the island had three heads. It looks like the three heads country mentioned by Huafeng. However, Lu Heng is not in the mood to investigate the local customs now. After he fell into the mountain forest, he directly triggered the sky thunder and the dark clouds suddenly condensed over the mountains. Later. Boom. In the deafening loud noise, the heavenly thunder fell from the sky and directly fell into the white wolf's body in the mountain. Then in the flash of the electric light, the second and third. There were six claps of thunder, all of which disappeared into Lu Heng's body. Until this time, Lu Heng had dispelled the cloud in the sky and closed his eyes to cultivate. Lu Heng had been flying for fifteen days in a row, and his body has been exhausted. Although it is possible to regenerate slowly by absorbing spirit qi in the air, the speed is too slow. He directly summoned the heavenly thunder, absorbed the thunder, and wanted to recover his full strength in the fastest time. Then go to find Urba God Man. Even if he can't save Brother Hua, he would use the lives of those sixteen little monsters to comfort Brother Hua's spirit in the sky. In the mountains, the white wolf closed his eyes and refined the thunder. The thunder flickers, which contains the power of heaven's punishment that can't be ignored and it's frightening. Even little Gu Yen, who was still in his wits, could not help being afraid when he saw this scene. He knew that the wolf god was really angry. In the valley thousands of miles away, with the bright stars and cool and soft water flowing gently, Huafeng felt the happiness that all men dreamed of in the world. Chapter 175 
There are eight lovely little girls standing on the cliff above the valley. This is the forbidden area in the mountains where no birds or animals dare to approach. It is so quiet that you can only hear the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. One of the little girls suddenly spoke, breaking the peace in the mountain. She frowned at the valley below and said, It's been a day and a night. Is the demonic woman dead? This little girl's words made the other little girls react as well. Yes, it hasn't been heard for a day and a night, is she really dead? The girls looked at each other and reached a consensus. Open it. After that, the eight girls worked at the same time to arouse the evil chi cloud in the valley. They opened a gap between the dark evil chi cloud and saw the scene in the valley below. In the empty valley, a huge white lotus bloomed silently. Seeing the lotus flower, the eight girls looked cold and recalled a painful memory thousands of years ago. Suddenly, they were very angry. They are in dual cultivation. At that moment, the eight of them made a decision at the same time without saying a word. Eight bright divine lights flew out at the same time and directly fell into the valley below, instantly breaking the white lotus into pieces. But at this moment, a white light suddenly flew out of the corner of the valley and directly flew into the sky through the gaps of the turbulent cloud of evil chi. Into the sky with a burst of bright fireworks. The divine sense asking for help was transmitted in an instant. But there was nothing in the huge lotus that was broken. Lien Tsai and Hua Feng came out from a corner. The two of them had already left the white lotus, and the eight little girls' hateful attack didn't hurt them at all. Now when they saw Lien Tsai who was in high spirits, all the eight girls understood the situation. That demon woman Guyu left something for you down there. One of the girls said coldly, it seems that you're far stronger than before. Urba Godman's sarcasm made Lien Tsai sigh. She looked at the eight little girls above her head, smiled helplessly and said, at least we can protect ourselves now. The message for help has been sent out. It won't be long before the wolf god will find it. Before that, she just needed to protect herself and Huafeng from accidents. One day and one night of dual cultivation made her succeed in inheriting the cultivation bases of Guyu and refining the divine power of Urba God Man. But she found that she was a little too optimistic about the situation. The refined divine power doesn't increase her cultivation base too much. Now she was still no match for the eight little girls above her head. This is also the reason why she didn't dare to take initiative. Above the valley, the faces of the eight little girls were very unpleasant. One of the little girls gave a scornful poo and said, Even if you inherit the cultivation of the demon woman Guyu, you are just a bigger bug. There are sixteen of us brothers and sisters who are under the curse of that Mayuo sword, so we cannot exert our full strength in the outside world. But here, besides the Mayuo sword, we are not afraid of the old monster, White Wolf. What's more, you will not last until he comes. A girl looked at the man and woman below coldly and said, Since you have done dual cultivator, it seems that your relationship is progressing rapidly. So we will be more relaxed. Looking coldly at Huafeng, the girl shouted, Now you have two choices, the boy of Yun sect. First, be the lord of the Mayuo sword, or we will kill this woman who has been sleeping with you. Second, we will kill this woman first and take care of you slowly. Don't think about asking for help anymore. Even the white wolf can't save you from the Mayuo sword. The little girl sneered with confidence, us sixteen brothers and sisters have survived since ancient times. We are entrusted by the emperor and are even older than your blood ancestors. Because the Mayuo sword cursed us, our cultivation bases in the outside world plummeted. Or do you really think we are so weak? Today I will show you the power of the ancient ancestors. After saying that, the eight girls were radiant. When the powerful momentum came, Huafeng and Lien Tsai suddenly changed their faces and retreated. Huafeng's cultivation base is not high, so he could only feel that the eight little girls in front of him seemed to be stronger. Lien Tsai looked unbelievable because she could find that the eight little girls in front of her were more powerful than before. The bright divine light almost blinded her magic eyes and made her feel inexplicable pressure. She can't stand it, let alone resist it. At this moment, Lien Tsai finally understood why Master Gu Yu could not escape after being captured. 
With Gu Yu's cultivation, she can't defeat these eight monsters at full strength. Lien Tsai felt despair. At the same time, the white wolf, with his eyes closed and knees crossed, suddenly opened his eyes. Ha! Huh. At that moment, he heard Lien Tsai's cry for help. And along with the cry, there is specific location information. After Lu Hang received it, he immediately knew where Hua Feng and Lien Tsai are now. In the forest, the huge white wolf stood up before looking into the distance. I know where Brother Hua is. After saying that, Lu Hang turned away and disappeared with Gu Yan and Xiao Ai from this quiet mountain forest. Pale thunder flashed across the sky. Xiao Ai and Gu Yan were both happy and asked about Hua Feng's situation. Everyone thought Hua Feng was dead, but unexpectedly he was still alive. Hiding in the light, Lu Hang looked at the blue sea with solemn eyes. Brother Hua is still alive, but it seems that his situation is not good. When he decided to go to the place where Lien Tsai had asked for help, he felt a little solemn. It seems that the enemies waiting for him are not so easy to fool. Taking a deep breath, Lu Hang calculated the current measures. The Requiem Seal that can force people to be sent to the Netherworld, and the God Slaying Heavenly Thunder, these two. Should be enough to defend against the enemy, right? If not enough. Lu Hang took a deep breath and felt that it was almost time for him to release the thunder he had suppressed in his body for a long time. He just doesn't know if the energy of thunder, which has been accumulated for a long time, will really be as powerful as the old ascetic cultivator Jiomia said. Chapter 176 In the blue sky, pale thunder flew quickly. In the direction of this pale thunder, there is a country with a vast territory above the blue waves of the South Sea. Although it is located on the South Sea, the domestic land is vast and it can no longer be regarded as an island country. It is completely a smaller land. The people in the country are all black, their skin is as black as coke, and their faces look like those of apes. Besides, everyone eats charcoal fire, and has the ability to swallow smoke and spit out fire. It is called fire-hating country. In the southwest of this fire-hating country, there is a vast volcanic area called Lava Mountain Range. The sky here is covered with dark clouds like volcanic ash all year round. On the earth, the magma surges, and everything withers, leaving no green vegetation. There are no fewer than dozens of volcanoes erupting actively here. Earthquakes caused by volcanic eruptions are extremely frequent. Therefore, although this mountain range covers an extremely large area, there is no living creature. Even the citizens of fire-hating country would scratch their heads at the extreme environment here and avoid it from far away. In the center of this volcano, there is a vast magma lake. In the endless lake, what is surging is not water, but hot and fiery magma. The incomparable black smoke was steaming above the great lake. Even the air was twisted because of the heat. However, just below the lake of magma, there was a cave where lava flowed. A huge black monster, languidly soaking in the lava, listened to the eight little boys nearby who were full of evil demon chi complaining. Why doesn't the second sister let us near the valley, really? We were indeed cheated by Guyu once, but do we seem to be the kind of people who would fall down twice in the same pit? That's right. Guyu only stole a little divine power from us when we were unprepared. This descendant of Guyu didn't even have one tenth of her master's strength, how would we be cheated by her? Yes. The second sister clearly looks down on us. Even if Guyu stands in front of us now, we will never be moved. Don't mention it. When you mention it like this, I suddenly miss that bitch Guyu. Although her cultivation base is not high, she does have some special skills. If the second sister hadn't jumped out to stop us in those years, we would have enjoyed much. Ah. Women. Women's jealousy is terrible. The second sister must be jealous of Guyu. Of course she is jealous of Guyu. You can understand it by her short figure. Ha ha. Ha ha. Between the rocks beside the magma, eight little boys laughed and quarreled with each other. But the huge black monster in the magma was still lazily soaking in the bath, without paying any attention to the eight little monsters. But at that one moment, eight little boys suddenly stood up and stopped talking nonsense. The boss looked at the black giant beside him and said, 
something seems to be wrong. We have to go first. Brother Wudo, I won't bother you. The eight little boys got up at the same time, obviously going back. In this regard, the black monster was a little surprised, and finally turned to look at the eight little monsters. Compared with the eight little boys, the black giant beast with a head of nearly 100 meters is terrifying. But between them, their identities are equal. Wudo asked in surprise, what's the matter? Don't you have to wait for things to end before you can go back? Is it over? Is the boy of Yunmen willing to be the lord of the Maoyuo sword? The boss shook his head and said, no, it was the demon woman Lien Tsai who picked up some relics of Guyu and made great progress. She successfully sent a signal for help outside. Our second sister said that it might not be long before the white wolf comes to us. To be safe, we'd better get together, so as not to be sneak attacked by the old monster. The boss's story made Wudo nod to show his understanding. Well. Then, do you want me to go with you? Wudo said, I'm curious about the white wolf. The boss waved his hand and smiled with confidence. No need, brother Wudo, just keep soaking in your bath. Although the white wolf is also an old monster in ancient times, but who are we? We used to serve the emperor in those years. After living for so many years, what kind of heroes have we not seen? That old monster was not famous at that time, probably just a person who lived a long time and gradually promoted his cultivation bases as time goes by. Outside, we are afraid of him, but with the Malyuo sword besides, we are not afraid of him. It is true that he is stronger than us, but since ancient times, there have been many people stronger than us. How many survived? What's more, we have the Malyuo sword. The Malyuo evil spirit summoned by us is absolutely enough to defeat him. Besides, we also have the secret arts taught by the emperor himself. Even if the white wolf is not afraid of Malyuo evil spirit, he will not be able to break the secret arts of the emperor, will he? The boss smiled confidently and said, unless he is as strong as Zhu Jiuin, he can't defeat us. We will let him know that there are people stronger than him in the world. After that, the eight little boys left the cave where the magma was surging, and soon entered the huge lava lake outside. In the extremely hot magma, they were not affected at all, and flew directly into the sky, turning into eight evil demon chi and flying toward the direction of the evil sword valley. In the cave under the lava lake, the black giant beast named Wudo lay lazily back in the lava. Although it sometimes disdains these eight little boys, they have really lived long enough and is even older than it. At least those sixteen little monsters have never made mistakes in judging people. Although he doesn't know who the emperor in their mouth is, he guessed it is a powerful existence that is older than itself. Therefore, after the eight monsters left with confidence, he didn't intend to deal with this trouble again. He doesn't have the mind to meddle. It's better to continue soaking in the magma. He closed his eyes with this thought in his mind. But not long after the eight monsters left, Wudo and the magma suddenly felt a kind of smell approaching this place rapidly. My heart jumped. He quickly left the cave and floated to the lava lake, just in time to see a white thunder coming from a distance. The white thunder seemed to be in a hurry, so it didn't restrain itself and was not afraid to disturb other cultivators along the way. The dark and violent cloud spread rapidly in the air with the flight of escaping light. The power of heaven's punishment was surging in the whole sky. In a twinkling of an eye, the white thunder flew over this lava lake with a surging dark cloud and headed for the direction of the evil sword valley. At that moment, Wudo clearly saw the white wolf in the light. He saw the dark blue ancient sword too. As a fire beast, it instantly felt what terrible power was hidden in the sword. In the magma, the black monster looked toward the direction of the evil sword valley in disbelief. His heart was full of shock. The white wolf. Is Urba Godman really so confident to defeat the White Wolf? It turns out that these sixteen monsters have hidden strength in front of him. Chapter, 177 Above the lava mountain range, a pale light flew swiftly. The pitch-black billowing clouds followed behind with crackling lightning flashes, quickly covering the entire sky. Clearly it was in broad daylight, however where the clouds had gone, darkness shrouded the land, and a chill wind whistled. The wrath of heaven's punishment surged, trembling the hearts of everyone. 
It is a despairing scene as if the end of the world had arrived. In the lava lake, Wudo was not frightened by this exaggerated scene. It was not an evil demon, and it would not be panicked in the face of heavenly thunder. But as the god beast of fire, the dark blue ancient sword tempered by thunder and fire made its eyes round and shocked beyond belief. Can this sword be allowed by heaven and earth? If the sword were to be drawn from its scabbard now, with murderous intent and energy locked inside, it would be even more terrifying. Wudo swallowed his saliva unable to imagine such a scene. Therefore, when it looked towards Evil Sword Valley, its heart was filled with shock and fear. Urba God Man, these sixteen little monsters are even older than him. Although their cultivation is not very good, they are absolutely well experienced. The strange words occasionally heard from their mouths could even make Wudo, a god beast who has lived for countless years feel surprised. Wudo believed that these sixteen little monsters could have lived so many years without dying, and there must have been something that kept them alive. But facing this dark blue ancient sword. After a moment of hesitation, Wudo eventually lived the lava lake and headed in the direction of the evil sword valley. Those sixteen monsters could be considered its old friends of many years, so at this time of danger, it should still go back and check the situation. If the situation is not right, perhaps he can help them out. Wudo had these thoughts in his heart, but he hung far behind the cloud, not daring to get too close. Once the situation deteriorates, he is prepared to run. At the same time, eight evil auras descended upon the valley between the mountains, gathering among the eight little girls who remained here under the dark miasma of the evil sword valley. After landing, the leader rushed to ask, Second sister, where is the demon woman? The girl who he called second sister coldly looked at him without speaking. By the side, the third brother was also anxiously asking, Right, second sister, what about the demon woman? After she sent out the message, you guys didn't kill her, did you? After the third brother opened his mouth, the remaining few boys also started to chatter. Oh really? You guys didn't kill her, did you? That demon woman is our hostage, it would be a real shame to kill her. Keeping her in our hands can be used as leverage against the white wolf later on, right? Come on, grab her quickly, and bring her to threaten the white wolf. In case we can't beat him, this serves as a backup plan. Several little boys blabbered on, yet the eight little girls in the valley merely looked at them coldly and said nothing. Gradually, the voices of the eight little boys became weaker. In the end, they all huddled behind the leader, some of them scared. Second sister, why are you looking at us with that kind of look? Woo! I'm so scared. Second sister, don't be angry, okay? Cough. Second sister, as the elder brother, I must be honest with you. We are not worried about that demon woman, we just wanted to use her as a hostage. Don't think too much about it. After the leader spoke, the girl coldly laughed and said, it's a coincidence that we thought of the same place. We wanted to use the demon woman as a hostage, so we left her half dead instead of killing her. But now, judging by your character, perhaps it would have been better if we had just killed the demon woman directly. With a wave of her hand, the dark clouds draped over the top of the valley dispersed, revealing the scenery within. In the full of pits and hollows mountain valley, there was a bright and pure round moon suspended in the air. And the full moon cast a clean white light pillar that protected Huofeng and Lien Tsai in its center. Lien Tsai looked rather distressed now, although barely able to sustain the protection of Luna Pith Mirror, she had already been wounded and was no longer able to resist. The second sister said coldly, before I kill her, shall I let you go down and play with this demon woman? The big brother of the boys waved his hands hastily and spoke righteously, what are you talking about, second sister? We hate this demon woman to the bone. We just want to bite her flesh. That's right, let us eat it. After the big brother spoke, the remaining seven little boys quickly joined in. Upon seeing this scene, the girls all gave a cold laugh. Second sister was about to speak, but suddenly sensed something. All sixteen people in the evil sword valley looked up in the distance. They saw a bolt of bright white lightning flying quickly toward this place from the distant sky. After the lightning, dark and violent storm clouds surged behind it, closely following the lightning. Wherever it went, the sky was completely blackened and the earth was pitch black. 
Looking far away, the pale lightning seeping in seemed to pull a dark curtain rumblingly. Raging gusts of wind howl through the mountains and forests. The chilling power of awe and punishment terrified countless birds, causing them to shriek and flee in all directions. The terror in the sky of birds flying away brought a solemn look to the faces of the sixteen little children. He arrived so quickly. The big brother's expression became serious, this old fellow, as expected, has the power to control lightning. The spectacles had seen previously at sea by Mirage, were only conjectures made by them that the white wolf might have divine powers to incite the thunderbolts. But now, having witnessed with his own eyes the fearsome sight of the dark cloud surging, Urba God Man has finally come to a full realization of this matter. A little boy swallowed and was afraid. This. This old monster can't only summon thunder, but he can also control the heavenly disaster. He fearfully looked at the older siblings around him, this power, it is even more powerful than we expected. In the fierce gust of wind, the big brother was silent for a moment, before he gave a cold snort. What are you afraid of? We are existences who have served the emperor. Haven't we seen any big scenes before? We've survived the great disaster, so why should we be afraid of this little wolf? Today, my siblings and I will work together to show this arrogant white wolf what it means to be a true ancient hero. The big brother roared, form up. In an instant, sixteen human figures on the valley were all intertwined, stretching out their hands to grasp the hands of people around them. When Lu Hung arrived with the sweeping clouds, what he saw were sixteen children holding hands and forming a line, flying up into the sky. If someone who didn't know saw this scene, they might think it was just a group of children going on an outing together. Lu Hung was surprised for a moment, stopping in midair. Keeping a distance neither too near nor too far, he looked at the sixteen children in a row in the sky ahead and bowed to indicate his presence. My name is Lu Hung and I am here to look for my friend. Please lend me a helping hand, Urba God Man. Behind Lu Hung, the dark blue ancient sword on Shao Ai's back was humming softly, as if it couldn't restrain its desire to unsheath itself. Chapter, 178 Lu Hung showed his respect, indicating what his intentions were. Then, after a few seconds of silence, the eldest boy broke the ice. You rough and tumble wolf, why do you come to our door now? You must be trying to steal that hidden sword. Pfft. Your wolfish ambition is so obvious to us, do you think we don't know? The eldest boy sneered and said, I advise you not to think that you can make enemies everywhere just because you are strong. We are ancient existences who have survived the turbulent times, not just you are powerful. Our brotherhood had a resounding name in ancient times. Serve the emperor loyally and keep watch in the wilds. You brazen wolf, since you are familiar with the name of the empress, you must be aware of her elder brother, the emperor's majesty, right? The big brother proudly said, if we back off here, we can be good friends and meet again in the future. Otherwise, don't blame us for being harsh. The eldest boy's fiercely arrogant and old-fashioned scolding made Lu Heng feel a sense of agitation. The Empress. The Empress's brother. He couldn't help but think of the broken half-meter-high steel in the steel forest and the inscription on it the tomb of my brother Fushi. These sixteen little monsters claim to be from ancient times. He smiled and said, how do you know I know the name of the Empress? The big one yawned lazily, as if Lu Heng's question was a rhetorical one. He said, you daring fellow, to call upon the name of the Empress in the South Sea. Of course we know about it. We always keep an eye on the movements in the South Sea, and we will be there in time when something happens. This is a mission assigned to us by the Emperor. Do you understand what it means to have a mission? The eldest boy said proudly that all the little boys and girls around him were also honored. When Lu Heng saw the sixteen little boys and girls like this, he looked back at the valley shrouded in evil energy. At such a close distance, even though there was an evil presence hiding it, he could clearly feel that Huafeng and Lian Tsai were still alive in the valley. Therefore, his anxious feeling subsided. Lu Heng smiled and looked at the sixteen little monsters in front of him, silently summoning the deep yellow requiem seal behind him. On the surface, he calmly looked at the sixteen boys and girls, as if he was not in a hurry. He smiled and said, the emperor entrusting you to keep an eye on the South Sea is a sign of trust. 
I'm sure he is confident in your ability to get the job done, right? Lu Hang showered them with praises, and the sixteen boys and girls immediately had proud looks on their faces. The eldest boy hummed and said, of course. There are few people in this world who can be entrusted to do things by the venerable emperor. You may not have been famous back then, but I'm sure you know how great the emperor is. Even though you are of higher status than us now, it is because we have been cursed by the Maluo sword. We have been unable to advance for many years. If we had been cultivating since ancient times until now, our cultivation level would have been enough to make you tremble with fear. The eldest boy had a look of pride on his face, while Lu Hang just smiled slightly and said. Since you mentioned the Maluo sword, I also remembered it. That hidden sword which was taken away by you is my dearest friend. You sneakily took him away and forced him to be the sword's master. Even if the emperor himself came back to life and knew it, I'm sure he wouldn't support you, huh? Lu Heng mocked. Just as Lu Heng finished speaking, the sixteen little boys and girls all changed their expressions drastically. They flew back half a mile in an instant. The elder stared at Lu Heng with a look of terror, as if he had seen a monster. How did you know that the emperor had already passed away? You monster! Were you present back then? In the sky, the originally proud sixteen little monsters have changed their faces drastically, like they had seen a ghost. When the emperor passed away that year, they were present when it happened. They can be sure that there were no more than ten people present when the emperor perished. After the news was blocked, the remaining people who knew this news were all demons involved in the assassination of the emperor. Mommy! The sixteen little monsters screamed, turned around, and ran towards the evil sword valley shrouded in evil energy. They finally understand at this moment. No wonder they had never even heard this old monster's name before, so it turns out he is from the other side. He also participated in the siege of the emperor. The sixteen little monsters were so scared. Lu Hang looked up at the sky. He was puzzled as to why his words seemed to have scared the sixteen monsters into this state. But the sixteen monsters escaped and headed towards the valley, Lu Hang couldn't neglect this. What if the sixteen monsters hurt Huafeng and Lian Sai? When Lu Hang's mind moved, that mysterious yellow requiem seal suddenly flew out. In the instant that the sixteen small monsters turned and fled, they were swept by a cold, gloomy light. In an instant, sixteen semi-transparent souls were swept out and fell from their bodies. At that moment, they were all stunned. Soul seizing. They looked in terror toward Lu Heng behind them, paralyzed by these unseen measures. This kind of technique aimed at the soul, though never seen before, is indeed the sinister style of that group of demons. Who else but that group of demons would study such a sinister secret technique? You, 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 you. Don't come over here. The eldest boy shouted in fear, come any closer and we'll fight you. As soon as the eldest boy finished speaking, a clap of thunder resounded in the sky. Boom! With a loud bang, the thunder suddenly appeared. Yet this time, it wasn't one heavenly thunderbolt that descended from the clouds, it was three. The moment the three heavenly thunderbolts fell, they solidified in midair. Transforming into three giant beams of light flickering with lightning, they surrounded the souls of the sixteen little monsters. Between the lightning pillars, light was flashing and inexplicably connected to each other, forming layer upon layer of semi-transparent lightning walls. Sealing off all directions and transforming into a prison of heavenly thunder, trapping he sixteen little boys and girls inside. Lu Heng put all his effort into the thunder prison for the first time, and its power exceeded his expectations. The huge thunderbolt light pillar that reaches the sky and the earth is so large that it's frightening. At least it looks intimidating. Under the clouds, when Lu Heng saw the sixteen little monsters trapped in it, he laughed. He said, wait, what's the rush? The conversation isn't done yet. Chapter, 179 When Lu Heng smiled nonchalantly, the sixteen little monsters in the thunder prison shuddered. They looked into each other's eyes, and their hearts communicated in anxiousness. It's over, the old devil is about to kill us. He knows that we serve the emperor, so he came to take out his anger by killing us. What should we do? This demon is so arrogant. Should we fight him? 
We are all trapped, don't we have to fight rather than just surrender? The eldest boy looked up at Lu Heng in the sky and angrily shouted, You devil, no matter how strong you are, our sixteen siblings will absolutely not bow down to you. That's right. We serve the emperor and will never surrender. You demon, if you have the ability then come and kill us. The sixteen children's souls shouted loudly at Lu Heng. If this scene was seen by someone who was unaware of what was really happening, they would likely think that these sixteen little monsters were righteous characters and Lu Heng was an evil villain. Lu Heng was speechless. Do these sixteen little monsters have no conscience? You kidnapped an innocent person and perpetrated such an evil deed. Now, the family of the victims is at your door, yet you remain stubborn and insist that you were the ones who were victimized. Lu Heng sighed helplessly and said with a wry smile, Your faces are thicker than I ever imagined. As he spoke, Lu Heng tapped his fingers lightly and sixteen cute boys and girls rose up from his side. After losing their souls, the sixteen little boys and girls' fleshly bodies seemed rather dull. Lu Heng said, Your bodies are still here with me. When they saw Lu Heng controlling the sixteen flesh and blood bodies, the sixteen boys and girls in the Thunder Prison were all full of hatred. You devil! Don't use these insidious means and let's have a proper fight. That's it. To take out a person's soul. You are cheating. They scolded loudly in the Thunder Prison. Because they discovered that they could not generate a new body. With their cultivation, even if the physical body is destroyed, as long as the soul is still present, they can easily transform into a new physical body, not afraid of the damage to the physical body at all. However, they now find that they are unable to generate new physical forms. Although their soul was swept out of their body by that mysterious cold light, there seemed to be a connection between it and the body. When attempting to form a new body, there was tremendous resistance. Obviously, their souls were tightly locked in that physical body, and it was not easy to switch to a new one. This is obviously unreasonable. The cultivation path of a master is the soul, and to be successful in it, one's body can always be replaced. How can one's soul be trapped by the body? They all understand that this is certainly related to the cold and gloomy light that had just passed over their bodies. That beam of light swept away their souls, yet it also restricted them from forming a new physical body, leaving them to only appear in their soul form. Realizing this, Urba God Man all glared angrily at Lu Heng, cursing. Put our souls back in our bodies. What kind of hero uses such underhanded tactics? Faced with the curses from the little monsters, Lu Heng sighed and said, Am I not a demon? How can a demon be a hero? Lu Heng's mocking words made the little monsters look embarrassed. They all shouted angrily afterward, Good. This is what you forced us to do. Maluo evil spirit. Let you today experience the true Maluo evil spirit. Do it. The sixteen little monsters shouted in unison, and in the sky, the clouds rolled with thunder. Lu Heng watched the movements of the sixteen little monsters, awaiting for them to summon the demon monster. The strength of the monster that Lu Heng saw before in the Immortal Kingdom made Lu Feng feel a little worried. It is also because of this apprehension that Lu Heng didn't rush to rescue Hu Feng. He was very clear that the Thunder Prison he had set up looked threatening, but it couldn't catch the sixteen little monsters. If he went to save Hu Feng without solving the sixteen monsters, he might put himself in danger. Now that the little monsters have voluntarily summoned the demon monster, Lu Heng finally let out a breath of relief. Yet under the clouds, the sixteen little monsters sneered and said, You brought the thunder cloud here to kill Maluo evil spirit, right? Unfortunately, you miscalculated. Urba God Man coldly said, Maluo evil spirit doesn't belong to the five elements and is not of the categories of human, god, ghost, demon, or wickedness. It cannot be struck by heavenly thunder. Within the thunder prison, sixteen little boys and girls clasped hands and shouted in unison. Facing their mockery, Lu Heng nodded. I see. With a wave of his hand, the dark blue heavenly thunder sword flew out from Xiao Ai's back and soared directly above their heads. Within the scabbard, the sword's energy was not revealed, but at this moment, this dark blue bronze sword attracted the attention of everyone. Lu Heng prepared and smiled as he said, Please. 
Inside the Thunder Prison, sixteen small monsters were in a state of shock and uncertainty. The current situation made them understand that the sword was definitely extraordinary. However, they could not see what kind of killing intent was hidden in the scabbard. After a moment of silence, the eldest boy spoke first and yelled out. Bluster. Do it. Moluo evil spirit. In their angry yell, a brilliant divine light burst forth from within them. The sixteen small people standing in a row, hand in hand, were suddenly engulfed by the brilliant light. In the thunder prison, a huge light ball rose up, and the brilliance was dazzling. Outside of the thunder prison, Lu Hang's face was slightly solemn. He knows that the Maluo evil spirit is coming out. He is prepared. The heavenly thunder sword can be drawn out at any time. Then. Poof. Within the thunder prison, a strange dull sound rang out. Like the sound of a balloon being popped, that dazzling light ball also deflated like a punctured balloon in a flash, revealing the sixteen little boys and girls in the middle. After the radiance faded away, all sixteen small boys and girls, covered in blood and full of cracks, were stunned. They stared at the situation in front of them, looking utterly incredulous. Maluo Evil Spirit Where is the Maluo Evil Spirit? The eldest boy was both surprised and angry, unable to accept this reality. Why hasn't Maluo Evil Spirit come out? It is clear that, in order to summon Maluo Evil Spirit in its full strength, these sixteen people have paid a much higher price than they had in the Immortal Kingdom. However, after paying the price, the demon monster could not be summoned. Outside the Thunder Prison, Lu Heng, in the gaze of sixteen startled and furious little people, coughed and said. It's okay, you can try summoning again. Lu Heng, standing with his hands behind in a white dress, appeared to be very polite and said, I can wait. High up in the sky, the souls of sixteen little boys and girls had stiff expressions on their faces. This demon is too deceitful. Chapter, 180 In the rarely visited mountain forest, three giant thunder columns crossed the heavens and earth, forming a heavenly thunder prison to contain the semi-transparent souls of sixteen children from within. Even in the state of soul bodies, the sixteen children were still full of blood, covered with cracks, and suffering from great trauma. But compared to the trauma that the souls have endured, the humiliation they feel now is driving them mad. The sixteen little monsters, shocked and angry, glared at Lu Heng in the distance, cursing. Demon! You're going too far. Siblings, let's compete with him. The sixteen miserable little boys and girls shouted in unison and their bodies shone brightly again. They actually wanted to summon the Maluo evil spirit again. This time, even at the cost of soul damage, they will still summon that magic sword. In that moment the light shone, it faded away directly after. This time, not even the light ball appeared. And at the moment the light faded, in the evil sword valley not far away, the dark cloud shrouding the valley also silently dispersed. Huofeng and Lian Tsai emerged from the valley. The valley, previously lifeless and full of evil energy, has now returned to its original form and no trace of evil can be felt. If it weren't for the countless skeletons lying in this valley, almost no one would believe that this valley was once a desolate land that devoured cultivators not long ago. Within the Thunder Prison, all sixteen little boys and girls shook their bodies and vomited blood. The cost of summoning the Maluo evil spirit again is close to their breaking point. However, this time the summoning didn't have any effect. Even within their senses, the Maluo sword that was bound to them for long years had vanished within their cursed shackles. In their souls, there is no trace of curses or evil chi. Facing this mysterious demon, the Maluo sword has escaped directly. The sixteen boys and girls were spitting out blood, full of anger and hatred. Maluo Evil Spirit Between the mountains, the sound of sixteen small monsters wrathfully roaring with immense resentment rises. However, the Maluo sword, which they relied on as a strong ally, has indeed disappeared. It flew away even though it hadn't gotten the hidden sword yet. The sixteen little boys and girls became so angry that they went into a frenzy. In the far distance beyond the mountains, the demon beast Wudo, who had been lurking in the corner and observing the situation of the evil sword valley, saw this scene and quickly turned and fled. 
The dark blue bronze ancient sword hadn't been drawn out of its sheath yet, but it already scared off the Mayuo sword. If he goes help out, he will also die here. Although it is aware of these sixteen little monsters, it is merely passing knowledge. The two sides are not well acquainted at all. The evil sword valley and lava mountain are close and they are all ancient monsters, therefore, they have some common topics and Wudo would occasionally talk with the sixteen little monsters. Under normal circumstances, helping out is fine. However, this white-dressed man has clearly gone beyond helping out. The sword, which had yet to be drawn, had already suppressed everything. Who knows what other killing techniques the white-clothed man had other than this sword. Outside of the battlefield, Wudo left quickly and neatly without dragging things out, worried that he would be dragged into the battle. In the battle, above the Devil Sword Valley, the souls of the sixteen monsters in the Thunder Prison are now full of cracks and may break apart at any time. Lu Hung, holding the Requiem Seal, could clearly sense how weak the souls of these sixteen small monsters are. Now, not to mention Lu Hung, even Lien Tsai can kill them all if she wants. In the valley, Lien Tsai had already flown up to the sky, leaving Hua Feng alone in the valley. Facing Lu Hang ahead, Lien Tsai earnestly bowed with utmost respect. Thank you very much, Wolf God, for your rescue, if you have any orders in the future, I will do my utmost without hesitation. As for Hua Feng at the bottom of the valley, she seems to have completely stopped caring. Lu Hang looked at the two people with some surprise, feeling like something might have happened. But now there is no time to consider the relationship between these two. He nodded as a greeting. He then looked towards the sixteen little boys and girls in the Thunder Prison, saying, You now have two choices. One, chat with me. I'm still quite interested in some of the things you know. Two. No need to say more, let's go with two. Before Lu Hang could open his mouth, the blood-soaked eldest boy had spoken. It looked fearfully and apprehensively at Lu Hang, yet still maintained a fierce demeanor, and shouted, We sixteen siblings serve the emperor. We absolutely won't bow to someone like you, you demon. Don't even think you can get anything out of us, we'd rather die than surrender. After the eldest boy had spoken, his brothers and sisters also followed up with many angry curses. That's right. We'd rather die than surrender. You devil, don't even think about getting anything out of us. In the name of the emperor. We shall die for what we believe in. The eldest boy shouted angrily, no need for you to do anything, we will solve it ourselves. Brothers, let's do it. Okay. In the thunder prison, they shouted loudly. Seeing the generous and spirited appearance of the sixteen little boys and girls, Lu Hang was a bit stunned. He said hurriedly, Hey! At the moment when Lu Hang opened his mouth, sixteen explosions sounded simultaneously in the thunder prison. Those sixteen half-transparent little boys and girls exploded themselves directly and died. Turning into souls dissipating in the sky, without leaving even a single bit of soul fragment. Such an unsentimental and abrupt suicide act made Lu Hang have no time to react. Are these sixteen little monsters in the wrong script? You guys are monsters who coerce innocent people to feed the Maluo evil spirit. You are the real bad guys, okay? What kind of martyrs are you pretending to be now? Lu Hang in the sky, looking at the empty thunder prison, suddenly didn't know what to say. The dark blue heavenly thunder sword floated in the sky, silent and still, almost like a decoration. From start to finish, the sword never even came out of the scabbard, and the matter was already resolved. Lu Hang had a headache, so he summoned the Heavenly Thunder Sword with a wave of his hand. Lu Hang sighed deeply while a wave of regret filled his heart, as he silently ran his fingers along the sheath of the sword. To be honest, he really wants to experience the real power of the Heavenly Thunder Sword in action, but he can't find an appropriate target. Ah! In the vast sky, Lu Hang sighed and said to the Heavenly Thunder Sword, I'm sorry for you. The enemy didn't resist and killed themselves directly, there was nothing he could do. He was so impressed with the strength of the Maluo sword that he thought he could give it a good try, so he waited with anticipation. He didn't expect that after all the calculations, the result would be like this. The heavenly thunder sword was not even unsheathed, let alone the thunder within his body released. He didn't have time to do anything, 
before the sixteen monsters chose to self-destruct. Why don't you talk to me? If you talk to me a little longer, you'll not treat me like some kind of demon. Can any ordinary person come up with all sorts of random nonsense on such short notice? They are really irrational. Chapter, 181 Lu Hing doesn't know what Urba God Man has imagined him to be, but it likely isn't a benign existence or else the sixteen little monsters wouldn't have been so scared. It's a pity that he still plans to investigate further and find out the secrets of ancient times. It looks like he'll have to wait until the next time he sees Zhu Juin then. Lu Hang sighed in his heart, dispersing the thunder prison in the sky and the pitch black clouds, returning the heavens and earth to their original colors. Besides, although Lian Sai was injured, she was obviously much stronger than before. Lu Hang was surprised, but smiled and said, Congratulations, Miss Tsai, your cultivation base has increased a lot now. Lian Tsai didn't hide her emotions and sighed, My master mysteriously disappeared a thousand years ago, only to be sacrificed by this Urba god man in the valley. Now that I have entered the valley and gained my master's inheritance, so my cultivation has progressed greatly. Ah! She let out a long sigh and bowed deeply to Lu Hang again, saying, Thank you for your thorough guidance, wolf god. But now that this has happened, I can no longer linger here. Now it is time to fulfill my promise and leave. But Sai will never forget your kindness. If you're ever given an order, you just need to write a letter to the Luan Xi and Gu in the East Sea and Sai will be sure to come to serve you. Lian Sai's resolve was so adamant that it surprised Lu Hang. Especially in Lian Sai's words, it seems to imply something else. After Lian Sai said goodbye to Lu Hang, she also said goodbye to Xiao Ai and Gu Yan respectively. Finally, she turned towards the valley and said coldly, Mr. Hua, as promised, Sai will part ways here. May you have an auspicious future with a beautiful companion by your side. Sai shall not disturb your life anymore. As she spoke, Lian Sai turned and walked away. In the valley, Hua Feng finally couldn't hold back and shouted aloud. Hey! Wait a minute! He shouted behind Lian Sai's back, what happened before? At the moment when Hua Feng opened his mouth, Lu Heng clearly saw that Lian Sai, who was facing the valley, had a slight smile on her lips. Although the smile disappeared in the next second. That beautiful woman, facing away from the valley in Huafeng, still had a cold expression and didn't even turn her head. Under the sunshine, she left far away with a sentence, cutting off Huafeng's words. The things you left inside me, I will be able to get rid of them, so don't worry. After saying that, Lian Tsai immediately dissolved into the light and disappeared swiftly among the mountains. Only her loud and cold words echoed incessantly in the mountains, the echoes never ending. Don't worry. In the sky, Lu Hang, Xiao Ai, and even Gu Yan. The two people and a bird looked at Hua Feng in the valley with different eyes in an instant. Xiao Ai softly called out, Lord Wolf God. Ah. Ahem. This. I didn't hear anything, Lu Hang scratched his ear, saying, the wind was strong just now and I didn't catch what Miss Tsai said. It probably wasn't anything important, so there's no need to worry about it. Xiao Ai nodded in understanding. Although this was done, the silver-haired girl deeply looked at Huafeng in the valley and the direction in which Lian Tsai disappeared. That thoughtful expression looked as if she had learned something. At the same time, in a pitch-black world, there was a pitch-black pool of water. Within this pool of water, there was not a sound nor even a ripple, it was absolutely still. Suddenly, a small bubble arose in the dark pool in one moment. Gollum. In the sound, strings of bubbles rose densely. It seemed that something was about to emerge from this black pool which had been silent for thousands of years. More and more bubbles came, becoming denser and denser, until eventually, the whole pool was boiling. Finally, one after another, Small white hands reached out from the dark pool, revealing the adorable little boys and girls in the pool of water. Ugh. Crap. It hurts so much. Sixteen little boys and girls crawled out of the deep pool. Their faces were pale, and had frightened looks. Even after climbing out from the pool of water, they couldn't stop trembling. 
The enormous terror of passing through life and death was too much even for them, despite having experienced it several times. It was not until half an hour had passed that the sixteen small monsters lying in the edge of the pool gradually came to life. Some of them spoke. Motherfuck. This time it's a huge loss of vitality, it can't be restored in a few thousand years. Someone scolded, it's a miracle that we were able to make it back alive. That demon was the one who killed the emperor. Killed the emperor. What can we do? We can only escape in this way. Wait. The Maluo sword is really gone. You guys feel careful, that damn sword didn't come back with us. Oh. Really? I can't believe it. Did that damn sword really get away this time? My god. Last time it shrunk like a turtle, but this time not only did it shrink like a turtle, it even ran away. Isn't this damn sword an ancient magic sword? How come it doesn't even have any guts? There was a lot of swearing by the pool. They were all denouncing the damn sword that had tangled them for endless years. But at one moment, there was a faint voice. But. The Maluo sword ran away, isn't that a good thing? We won't be cursed any more afterwards. After this sentence was finished, there was a moment of silence at the edge of the pool. The eldest boy laughed loudly and slapped the little boy who had reminded him. He said, Yes, you are truly a genius. Ha ha ha. Yes. This is great news. It's a good thing. After the reaction, everyone was excited. Finally, the damn sword had finally given up sticking to them, and they were so happy that they wanted to dance. But their happiness didn't last long because someone weakly asked, but what happened to the Mayo sword? Where did it go? This time, nobody cares. The eldest boy snorted angrily and said, who cares where it went? It can go wherever it wants. Next time if I see that damn sword again, I'll have to take it apart. That's right. Take it apart. Let it know what pain is. Ugh. You said the damn sword ran away out of fear of the demon chasing it. What if the demon finds out we're still alive and comes after us? The sudden question silenced the waterside in an instant. After a pause, the eldest boy gave the little girl a slap with a dark face and said, Don't talk about it. He angrily yelled, Can't you say something nice? This transmutation technique is a secret technique granted to us by the Emperor, only we are able to use it in the world. How can that demon figure it out? The little girl covered her face with a look of grievance, but. Even the Emperor was swarmed by that demon. At the edge of the black pond, sixteen little boys and girls were staring at each other. Their faces showed that they were frightened. After a brief silence, someone swallowed their saliva and broke the dead silence. Hey big brother, shall we find someone for help? The eldest boy had a pained expression on his face and glared at them, saying who can we turn to for help? Those cultivators from ancient times have either passed away or disappeared, and now there are only a few people who have the power to fight the demon. Should we look for Zhu Jioin or the fire god? The eldest boy scolded, whoever wants to die, I can give him this glorious and arduous task. When the eldest boy spoke, everyone laughed awkwardly and fell silent. Whether it was Zhu Jioin or the fire god, when they saw these sixteen people, they were likely to start fighting without even a chance to talk. However, to their knowledge, there are only two who can deal with the white wolf demon at present. As for those who have disappeared. Their whereabouts are unknown. Where are you even going to look for them? The situation seems to be at a stalemate. But after half a second, the second sister suddenly mentioned a strange name. Do you all still remember the old man Jomie? The second sister looked at the siblings around her and said, We fought this old man when he passed through the South Sea last time. His cultivation base was very deep and profound. Furthermore, this old man has always been a righteous person with a good temperament. If we go to him, he may be willing to lend a hand to deal with the demon. The second sister's proposal made everyone stunned for a moment, and then they all remembered the old cultivator. Their faces suddenly showed surprise. That's right, this old cultivator is quite powerful he might be able to stand up to the demon called Lu Yuan. Shaw. What Lu Yuan? Isn't that guy named Fong Hung? Can you even hear correctly? 
Um. What was the demon's name again? The eldest boy asked. When this question came up, everyone was at a loss. I was so scared that I almost peed my pants. Who can still remember the name of that wolf demon? Exactly. I was so scared I almost pooped my pants, so how can I listen to that demon introduce himself? So none of you heard the name of the wolf demon clearly? The eldest boy looked gloomy at them. When the question was asked, everyone looked at him and said, Could you have remembered it? Um. No. The eldest boy shook his head silently. By the pond, everyone fell silent again. Until the second sister spoke again. That's it. It's just a name, so don't worry about remembering it, she said, let's go straight to the old ascetic cultivator Jomia and ask him to kill the demon. The old ascetic cultivator previously went north to wander the Northlands, most likely within the Fire Pass country. We should go to the Fire Pass country and find him, explain the situation to him, and ask him to help kill the wolf demon. With his generous spirit, he would definitely not ignore it. As for the name of this demon. The second sister said, it doesn't matter what he's called as long as we can get rid of him. At the edge of the pool, the little boys and girls all got excited. Oh. It makes sense. Listen to the second sister. Listen to the second sister. They shouted excitedly as if they had seen the scene of the white wolf demon being eradicated by the old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia. Chapter, 182 in the valley, the evil demon Qi has all faded away and the baleful energy remains unseen. Lu Heng brought Xiao Ai and Gu Yen down from the sky and came in front of Huafeng. Facing the wolf god, Xiao Ai, and little Gu Yen, Huafeng's face was slightly embarrassed. But Lu Heng had quietly instructed not to mention Lian Tsai's matter anymore. Therefore, Xiao Ai didn't say anything. Huafeng doesn't understand animal language, so even if Gu Yen kept calling out to him, he still didn't understand what the little Gu Eagle was saying. Facing the hesitant Huafeng, Lu Heng gave a slight smile and said, Brother Hua, may I take a look at your situation? In response, Huafeng had no objections and immediately reached out his hand, only to have his wrist caught by Lu Heng. In the valley, Lu Heng's heart moved slightly, injecting a strand of heavenly thunder into Huafeng's body. Wherever the divine thunder goes, it searches for any evil energy that may exist in the veins and flesh of Huafeng. The Maoyuo sword mysteriously disappeared, leaving Lu Heng anxious. Half a while later, Lu Heng finally retracted his hand and released Huafeng's wrist. He nodded and said, It looks like the Maoyuo sword is not hidden in Brother Hu's body. I checked three times and was unable to find any evil energy. Of course, it's also possible that the sword was hidden too deeply and I have overlooked it, Lu Heng said, Brother Hua, you are a rare hidden sword, and the Maoyuo sword's hard to resist such temptation. If it takes the risk and hides in your body, there is still a possibility to turn the situation around. After we part ways, if Brother Hua senses the presence of evil energy or heart demons, you can come to Hanyu Mountain to find me. Even if the Maoyuo sword is truly lurking inside you, with me here, at least it can be guaranteed that the Maoyuo sword will not dare to use force. Lu Heng smiled. These words are naturally not an exaggeration. The fact that the Maoyuo sword chose to flee before the Heavenly Thunder Sword's tip means that it doesn't dare to confront it directly. Otherwise, the magic sword can kill Lu Heng and take the soul of Huafeng. This Heavenly Thunder Sword, which is intolerable to heaven and earth, is the only one in the world that can destroy gods. Other than Lu Heng, even if others make a sword of the same level, they would not be able to protect themselves against the god slaying heavenly thunder. Lu Heng's assurance made Huafeng immensely grateful, so he quickly bowed and said, Thank you very much, wolf god. Lu Heng nodded, and looked upon the valley before them. He said, So many eminent people have died in this valley, all of the souls were absorbed by the Maoyuo sword. It would be quite a pity should their corpses remain here in the wasteland. Let us burn their remains. After living for a long time in the Fire Pass country, Lu Heng had also become accustomed to the fire passing cultivation of the country. As for Huafeng, he is already a citizen of the Fire Pass country and has no objections. So Lu Heng, Xiao Ai, and Huafeng moved all the corpses in the valley to the outside and built a big fire, 
reducing all the bones to ashes. As for the relics left behind by the dead, they were all magical artifacts that were still shining with divine light. Although their power was not bad, Lu Heng still waved his sleeves and directly buried these artifacts in the soil. Among the three people, whether it's Lu Heng, Xiao Ai, or Hua Feng, none of them are willing to move the belongings of the deceased. Therefore, burying them underground is the most suitable solution. At least it can prevent someone from unintentionally stumbling across the valley and taking away the belongings of these cultivators. Of course, if someone happens to come here and digs out the relics of a certain cultivator, it is their own destiny. When Lu Heng uncovered the layer of mud at the bottom of the valley, he indeed felt that there was a sword there and wondered if it was the Maoyuo sword. Yet when he stirred up the mud in the valley and brought forth the sword which had been hidden underground, he found that the sword didn't have a trace of spiritual glow or charm. Although the sword's body was sharp and the shape was exaggerated, it was indeed the Maoyuo sword, but it had already lost its charm. It looks like the Maoyuo sword's getaway was actually the sword spirit abandoning its sword body and fleeing. Lu Heng was amazed at such an astonishing escape. The sword spirit escaped, not even caring about its sword body. Where will it go afterward? Is it possible to just pick up a random sword and become the sword's new sword spirit? Indeed, the Maoyuo sword is quite extraordinary. After carefully inspecting the Maoyuo sword that landed behind him, Lu Heng, in order to avoid any future trouble, directly split the sword body of this demon sword into fragments by summoning three heavenly thunder. Even after losing its divine charm, it was still able to endure three heavenly thunderbolts. The material used to forge this sword is indeed not bad. The Maoyuo sword spirit that escaped will probably have a difficult time finding a matching blade embryo in the future. But that's not what Lu Heng needs to worry about. After rescuing Hua Feng, Lu Heng took him southward and arrived at fire-hating country. The vast area of fire-hating country is already considered a small territory. Strange beasts roam in the wilderness. But in this country, almost all the residents of fire-hating country can control fire. Most of the beasts are on the weaker side here. The dark-skinned people of fire-hating country gave Lu Heng a strong sense of deja vu. After arriving in the city, Lu Heng directly headed to the inn, where they presented the Fire Pass Country's road pass and then checked in to rest. For nearly twenty days, Hua Feng has not eaten a grain of rice. Even though he has benefited greatly in the valley, wandering on the line of death for a long time still has pushed both his psyche and body to the limit. After Lu Heng took him for a big meal, this young man went back to his room and fell asleep. He slept for three days and three nights. Meanwhile, Lu Heng and Xiao Ai sat in the courtyard, guarding Hua Feng and allowing him to rest peacefully, and incidentally, studying the two strange ancient books they had obtained from the mysterious steel forest. Divine Skill and Demon Sutra These two secret books have a strong appeal, making people powerless to resist wanting to be immersed in them and following their teachings. However, Lu Heng carries the power of the heavenly thunder, there is no need to worry about his mind being influenced. He was only curiously perusing these two secret books when he found that both of them had one point in common. Whether it's a human cultivator, a demon cultivator, or even a beast cultivator, everyone can cultivate the techniques recorded in the two books. There is almost no limit. Just after cultivating, the cultivation base and the power of law in your body will transform naturally. This strange cultivation manual has broken Lu Heng's understanding of cultivation methods. Demon cultivators don't really have any cultivation base, and they basically rely on absorbing the energy of heaven and earth and increasing their power as time goes by. Only the demon cultivators can improve their cultivation bases quickly. Setting aside demon cultivators, there are many other ways of cultivating power. The cultivation methods of the righteous and demonic paths are in opposition to each other, unable to coexist little Gu Yen is a prominent example but the two techniques can be cultivated by anyone. Such a strange situation gave Lu Heng a new inspiration. What he wanted to glean before was a skill that could cultivate his own heavenly thunder. After seeing these two secret books, he had a sudden inspiration. Perhaps. He could create a cultivation method similar to the two secret books, allowing everyone to cultivate it. Chapter 183 In the courtyard, Lu Heng was lost in his thoughts. 
the two methods gave him inspiration, which he had never thought of before. However, he saw some hope in these two secret books. Under the gate of Hanyu Mountain now, there is the demon cultivator Sun Yen, the Daoist cultivator Xiao Ai, an even more bizarre Gu Yen, and the strange one who cultivates heavenly thunder, himself. Xiao Ai and Gu Yen are now cultivating according to the cultivation methods of the demon race, making very slow progress. After all, Xiao Ai and Gu Yen are not real demonic cultivators. Even if Lu Heng were to develop a technique that allows one to cultivate the heavenly thunder body, he would likely be the only one in the world who can cultivate it. After all, besides him, who obtained the heavenly thunder by coincidence, no one else in the world can summon it. In the future, new cultivation methods will need to be tailored specifically for Xiao Ai and Gu Yen. If he can develop a cultivation method that allows everyone to cultivate, then wouldn't Xiao Ai and Gu Yen be able to cultivate with him too? Such a novel yet interesting idea made Lu Heng quite pleased. He was sitting in the small courtyard, intently reading the Divine Skill and Demon Sutra that he had in his hands. When he was in Fushan City before, Lu Hang had already read a lot of books and had a general understanding of the cultivation methods of the various parties. In the library of Fushan City's Fire God Temple, there are even cultivation methods for the magical path and the evil path. Lu Hang was fortunate enough to have seen these extremely secretive cultivation manuals. Of course, all the methods of cultivation put together are not as good as the two secret books in Lu Hang's hands. But those cultivation methods of a slightly lower level are varied and greatly enriched Lu Hang's knowledge. Now with these two top-level cultivation methods, Lu Hang instantly grasped their similarities and was filled with inspiration. In the small courtyard, Hua Feng had slept inside the house for three days, and Lu Hang also sat outside without moving for three days. Those two short works Demon Sutra and Divine Skill may be brief, yet they are profoundly mysterious. It could be said that they are the best of the secret arts that Lu Hang had seen. Some of the content in it, although unrelated to Heavenly Thunder, made Lu Hang have a deeper understanding and appreciation for his own Heavenly Thunder after seeing it. He had only gone through the materials for three days, but he was speaking as if he was sitting with two extraordinary beings, and he had gained a lot. Hmm. These two sets of cultivation methods, I could show them both during our next discussion. When Lu Heng put down the book, he shook his head and smiled, thinking of the two friends he had met in Dragon Falling Mountains. Jiu Mei and Zhu Jiuin. With their personalities, would likely be ecstatic upon seeing these two secret books. And Lu Heng, currently has not fully understood these two secret books. Even it can be said, barely started to understand. But now is not the time to read scriptures of methods. After receiving the two secret books, Lu Hang looked towards the small courtyard in front of him. Silver-haired Xiao Ai stayed by his side as usual, meditating in a cross-legged position, and waiting for Lu Hang's orders at any time. The little Gu Yen, without doing anything, was now squatting outside the cage of the sick fat bird, pocking it one after another, as if trying to stir its instinct for survival. What a pity that the fat bird was now too lazy to even move. It had already given up on escaping before. It had been trapped in the netherworld for the last ten days or so and was even suffering from the death chi, looking like it could die at any moment. Lu Hang suspected that even if a knife was placed in front of the fat bird and said it was going to be killed, the bird wouldn't even move a bit. Of course, Lu Hang didn't wake up because Gu Yen was pulling a prank. He looked at the door of the little courtyard and smiled, saying, Xiao Ai, go open the door. The silver-haired girl with animal ears stood up hastily, saying, Yes sir. The little girl quickly arrived at the entrance of the courtyard and then gently opened the gate. Outside the courtyard of the post house, there stood a tall and robust man wearing a scarlet long robe. In the fire-hating country, red is the most exalted color, and only the royal family may use it. The man in front of them was even more extraordinary, wearing a royal robe and crown with an imposing aura. Lu Heng stood up with a smile, bowed his hands and said, I'm Lu Heng of Hanyu Mountain, nice to meet you, the Lord of Fire Hating Country. Before the gate of the court was opened, he only felt that there was a powerful cultivator visiting outside the door. But he didn't expect that the one who came was actually the ruler of the Fire Hating Country. Faced with Lu Heng, 
the ruler of fire-hating country couldn't bear to be too disrespectful, so he quickly returned the courtesy and said. I'm Wu Ergon of the fire-hating country, nice to meet you too, wolf god. After Xiao Ai brought the tall and sturdy fire-hating country's leader to Lu Heng's side. Lu Heng smiled and gestured, please be seated, your majesty. Next they watched the tea ceremony, a very common ritual. Lu Heng didn't know the fire-hating country's lord, and was curious about his visit. But Wu Ergong didn't play dumb either, he smiled and thanked Xiao Ai for the tea, then looked towards Lu Heng and smiled. Upon hearing that the wolf god had arrived in this city's post office, I immediately rushed over. As one of the younger generation, I should not have come to bother you. However, there is an issue I must inform the wolf god about, so I have no choice but to come here. I hope the wolf god will forgive me. Wu Ergong's posture was very low. Therefore, Lu Heng became even more curious. The Lord, you do you know me? He is in the South Sea, it seems he doesn't have much of a reputation yet. But Wu Ergong's explanation immediately made Lu Heng understand. It's like this, Wu Ergong said with a laugh, not long ago, the ruler of the immortal kingdom, Lua Yuzuan, suddenly sent a message to the states of the South Sea. Saying that there is a marvelous Taoist cultivator looking for someone named Hua Fong in the South Sea, who is a disciple of the Yun sect. He was abducted by the infamous Urba god man. Luo Yunjun sent a message to all the countries, hoping that those in the South Sea would pay attention to the search. Although I am just the ruler of a small country, I have some enthusiasm and have long despised the Urba god man. Therefore, a command was recently sent out to all cities if there is any news concerning Wolf God or Hua Fong one must inform of it timely. Therefore, after you arrived at fire-hating country, I quickly knew the news. Wu Ergong's narration made Lu Heng suddenly enlightened. It turns out it is Luo Yujun helping from behind. It seems that the name of the ancient cultivator is very useful. The mere name of the ruler of the immortal kingdom would certainly not be enough to arouse the attention of all the rulers of the countries in the South Sea. This fire-hating country was so focused because of the fame of Lu Heng's ancient cultivator identity. After a friend was taken away by Urba God Man, this so-called wolf god still dared to go looking for trouble. It must take considerable courage. If such news gets out, it is feared that no country in the South Sea will dare to ignore it and will definitely help. If they can help, it might even build a good relationship and be of great help in the future. After all, Friendship with an old monster from ancient times is really useful in terms of human relations. Although Lu Heng is not some ancient cultivator at all. Oh, these people, too superstitious of the so-called ancient times. Is it only ancient monsters that can be powerful? In the Dragon Falling Mountains, the old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mie, who had been cultivating for only a few hundred years, could sit and discuss with Zhu Jiuin without losing his composure, couldn't he? Lu Heng sighed sadly. Seeing Wu Ergong's reverential look in front of him, he sighed helplessly in his heart. Knowing no one would believe him anyway he was too lazy to argue, but he didn't expect it to become more intense. Now that his fame has spread to this extent, it's probably impossible to stop the gossip that he is an ancient monster. In the small yard, Lu Heng sighed in his heart but kept a faint smile on his face. Meanwhile, Wu Ergong continued to tell his story. In the news sent back from the post house, I knew that the wolf god had saved his friend, so I was relieved. But I still want to know if the Urba god man. Wu Ergong was incredibly concerned about this matter. The sixteen little monsters ran rampant in the South Sea, occasionally coming out to cause trouble. Every time they appeared, there were always sea sprites and monsters following. Everywhere they went, they created chaos. What's worse, every time these sixteen little monsters appeared, they would kidnap one or two highly cultivated cultivators. Those who were abducted would disappear from the mortal world and never come back. Some descendants of the cultivators who were kidnapped encountered the sixteen small monsters hundreds of years later. They questioned where their relative was taken, only to receive the news that they had been cooked and eaten. Such atrocious behavior, whether true or false, has enraged the countries of the South Sea. Those sixteen little monsters were incredibly slippery, only appearing every few hundred years. Each time they were caught, they would disappear again and couldn't be found. 
Those cultivators who were taken away were mostly citizens of the South Sea countries, and they were the pillars of sex in each country. The South Sea countries all sincerely wished that the sixteen little monsters would just die directly. Seeing Lu Heng reconnect with his friends, Wu Ergong was filled with concern. Lu Heng didn't hide either. He smiled and said, When I found them, the sixteen little monsters gave up resistance and detonated themselves to death. I don't know if they left anything behind, but at least the sixteen small monsters in front of my eyes have had their souls completely wiped out. Even if they do have some kind of ancient secret way to stay alive, it would be hard for them to quickly return to do further evil. Lu Heng's narrative made Wu Ergong slightly excited. He quickly got up and bowed deeply to Lu Heng. I must express my gratitude to you, the Wolf God, on behalf of the countries of the South Sea. Thank you for relieving us of this disaster in the South Sea. Wu Ergong's gratitude and respect came from the heart. After all, the sixteen little monsters were too dangerous. Now that they can be gotten rid of, it is definitely a wonderful thing. Lu Heng shook his head and said, Lord, you don't have to thank me. Urba God Man's self-explosion was very simple, which made me feel suspicious. I suspect they didn't really die. It's just a kind of special magic that made me think that they were dead. Who knows, we may meet them again in the future. Lu Heng's words were sincere and genuine. Yet Wu Ergong still couldn't hide his joy, smilingly saying, no matter what, even if the Urba God is still alive. Being punished by the Wolf God, they definitely won't dare be arrogant anymore this time, we still have to thank you. Ha <laughs> ha. Chapter, 184 In the courtyard, Wu Ergong respectfully bowed to Lu Heng, and then sat back down. Then the purpose of this visit was discussed. Um. Cough. In my excitement just now, I almost forgot the important matter. Wu Ergong tapped his black head and smiled with a mouthful of white teeth, saying, It is an important matter that I need to tell the Wolf God. Wu Ergong said, The Wolf God, are you searching for Wu Gu of the Ten Witches of Ling Mountain? The question left Lu Heng somewhat astonished. How do you know? He didn't tell Luo Yujun about this, did he? Facing Lu Heng's surprise, Wu Ergong smiled and said, this matter was actually spread by that Wu Gu herself. He said, not long after Lua Yuzuan spread the news of you throughout the South Sea, the Ten Witches of Ling Mountain also shared the news that if you wanted to find her, you should search at Fan Jia Mountain. She will wait at Fan Jia Mountain for you until the Treasure Conference of the Mermaid Kingdom ends. Wu Ergong smiled as he explained the situation, but after clarifying it, Lu Heng was even more astonished. So Wu Gu knew Lu Heng was looking for her. She also actively spread messages outward. It seems that after they left Yutian Valley, the human face owl told Wu Gu the news. Lu Heng smiled and shook his head, saying, Thank you for reminding me, I understand now. After delivering the message, Wu Ergong didn't linger too long. After Lu Feng rejected his invitation to visit the country, he quickly departed. In fact, if it were not for the news that Wu Gu had to convey, Wu Ergong would not have come to disturb Lu Heng's peace. These ancient monsters are of strange temper. If you rashly intruded on him, it's likely to provoke him and incur enmity. Wu Ergong was content with the current situation, so he quickly left. In the courtyard, after Lu Heng sent Wu Ergong away, he no longer continued to look through the secret books. He could feel that Hu Feng in the room was about to wake up. Sure enough, not long after Wu Ergong left, at noon there was a commotion in Huafeng's room. The young man of the Yun sect, who had been sleeping for three days and three nights, finally dragged his tired body out. Huafeng was a little embarrassed when he saw the wolf god smiling to meet him outside the door. But what was more embarrassing was that he had not woken up for three days, and now he was holding in a stomach full of feces and urine. After hastily greeting Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, Hua Feng quickly ran off to the outhouse. After a long time, Hua Feng, exhausted and weak, stepped out gently and saw that the dishes had already been arranged in the yard. Lu Heng knew that Hua Feng had been asleep for three days and must be hungry, so he calculated the time Hua Feng would wake up and ask the post station to prepare food in advance. At the dinner table, Lu Heng smiled and said, Let's eat first, and talk afterwards. Hungry Hua Feng was nodding his head, 
and with both hands he started to wolf down his food. The experience at Evil Sword Valley left him with a deep psychological shadow regarding hunger. Now, after waking up from a three-day-long sleep and feeling incredibly hungry, upon seeing a table full of delicious food, he just wanted to wolf it all down. After traveling with Lu Hang for so long, he is no longer bound by convention. As for Lu Hang and Xiao Ai, they both watched him eat without touching their chopsticks. Halfway through their meal, Hua Feng was curious and politely asked Wolf God to join him for dinner. However, Lu Hang smiled and refused. Neither he nor Xiao Ai can accept the food tastes of this fire-hating country. Lu Hang was suspicious that if Hua Feng hadn't been so hungry before, perhaps he wouldn't be able to tolerate the flavor of the fire-hating country. Even Gu Yan resisted the food from the fire-hating country. The smell of food here really gives them a sense of poison. On the second morning, Lu Hang left the post house and went straight south. After knowing the location of Wu Gu, Lu Hang decided to go directly to Fan Jia Mountain. According to Hua Feng, Fan Jia Mountain is the core way to enter the Mermaid Kingdom. Unlike other countries in the South Sea, the Mermaid Kingdom is located in the most marginal area of the South Sea, and its territory is not on land, but underwater. It is a kingdom in the water. Although the people of the Mermaid Kingdom can also live on land, they prefer water. If people on land want to enter the Mermaid Kingdom, they need to go to Fan Jia Mountain, where they can eat the special gill grass of the Mermaid Kingdom. If one eats this kind of grass, ordinary people will be able to grow fish gills and survive underwater. The effect of the grass can last for a month. Of course, cultivators like Lu Hang and Xiao Ai don't need to eat gill grass. However, the number of cultivators is rare, and more ordinary people need to enter the Mermaid Kingdom. Without gill grass, you cannot enter the Mermaid Kingdom. Fan Jia Mountain, as the only entrance to the Mermaid Kingdom, is the first bustling port in the South Sea with a large number of seagoing ships and crowds all year round. Wu Gu would choose to wait for Lu Heng there, which was somewhat unexpected. Most cultivators like peace and quiet, but Wu Gu seems to prefer liveliness instead. Over the South Sea, Lu Hang, Xiao Ai, and Hua Feng stood atop the waves. Beneath their feet, the surging waves pushed everyone forward. Because of the lack of money, they are not planning to rent a boat. Although the fire-hating country is a willingness to provide boats, Lu Hang expressed his refusal. Directly mobilizing his spirit qi, he walked on the waves with Hua Feng and Xiao Ai. Although this is much slower than flying, it is easy and simple and doesn't require much effort. On the waves, with a salty sea breeze blowing, Lu Hang even had some spare time to look over Divine Skill and Demon Sutra. In fact, if it hadn't been for Hua Feng being taken away and delayed for too long a time, Lu Hang's nature would have been to prefer a slow sailing journey southward and enjoy the scenery along the way, rather than rushing like this. At their current speed, it only takes about half a day to reach the Mermaid Kingdom, even without flying. On the waves, Hua Feng wanted to say something but stopped. Since Lien Tsai left, neither Lu Hang nor Xiao Ai has mentioned anything about Lien Tsai. It's as if the team had never encountered this person. But this made Hua Feng feel uncomfortable. After a moment of hesitation, Hua Feng finally coughed embarrassingly and said, Um. Elder Wolf God, are you curious about what happened between Lien Tsai and me in the valley? Hua Feng's initiative to speak pulled Lu Hang's attention away from the secret books. He slowly collected the ancient scrolls in his hands, then looked at the young man in front of him with a seemingly smiling yet not smiling face and said, Brother Hua, do you want to talk to me? Faced with Lu Hang's smile, Hua Feng felt slightly awkward. But he still smiled and said, To my shame, this is the first time I've encountered such a situation. My heart is full of anxiousness and I don't know how to deal with it. The only elder I can tell now is you. Hua Feng grinned, indicating his difficulty. Lu Hang laughed and knocked Hua Feng's head with a book, saying, There's nothing I can do about this. When it comes to romance, you have more experience than me by far. Lu Hang's words made Hua Feng pause slightly. By the side, Xiao Ai's ears perked up slightly. Hua Feng was somewhat disbelieving, the wolf god, could it be that in all these years, you didn't have had any intimate beloved? In Huofeng's heart, Lu Heng, such a suave and extraordinary, 
powerful yet gentle and wise cultivator, must have several equally extraordinary companions. He, being a man, has already been overwhelmed by the demeanor of the wolf god. If it is a female cultivator, she would definitely be unable to refuse the charm of the wolf god. Huofeng was shocked, while Lu Heng smiled and shook his head saying, You have misunderstood me. Ha! He's been in this world for only a few years, it wouldn't take more than one hand to count the women he truly knows well, excluding Xiao Ai. Among those in the Qingming Grotto, they are even enemies. Where can he find any woman who will fall in love with him? In the mountain, besides the carefree Sun Yen, only Xiao Ai was by his side. Lu Heng smiled casually, but Huofeng didn't believe it at all. Would anyone not like such a graceful wolf god? Clearly, the wolf god doesn't want to mention it. After all, very few exist today who know what happened in ancient times. Perhaps in ancient times, there was a story of joy and sorrow, and the wolf god also had several couples who loved him. Just as time went by, now only the wolf god is still alive. A.I. Huofeng sighed and said, Actually, Huofeng and Mist Tsai had something happen between us in that valley. Thinking of the hardships the wolf god might have gone through, in comparison, Huofeng suddenly felt that the difficulties he was facing now were not so bad. He roughly recounted all that had happened in the Evil Sword Valley to both Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, letting them know of the events that had taken place in the valley. On the waves, Xiao Ai seemed to be deep in thought while Lu Heng helplessly smiled. He said, Brother Hua, your experience is quite like the protagonist of a story. Ha! Lu Heng shook his head, then said with a serious expression, But Brother Hua, you told us the story, are you worried about how to face Miss Tsai in the future? Well. Well. To be honest, yes. Huofeng had a mournful look on his face, originally, I was in fear and awe of Miss Tsai. I was afraid of the name Demon Woman, but also feared that Miss Tsai would take me to be her cultivation cauldron. She seems to look at me differently, but as a junior I was worried that it was just a means of bewitching my heart, so I was extremely cautious. The experience in the valley, I found out. Ah. Faced with Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, Huofeng was at a loss for words. Now that things had come to this point, he had no choice but to express his misery and said, I only found out after we did. That. To my surprise, Miss Tsai was still a virgin. Huofeng looked unhappy as he said, I thought she was used to men and women cultivating together, so when she made her request, I felt only disgust and resistance, but I couldn't refuse when it was a matter of life and death. But now I think it was too rash. I misunderstood Miss Tsai, I feel too embarrassed now. Huofeng said with a faint smile, now my heart is full of unease. Huofeng's frank words made Lu Heng nod in approval, indicating understanding. I see. But did brother who think of another possibility? Lu Heng said with a smile, why are you so sure that Miss Tsai was still a virgin? Could it be because she used some kind of illusion to cheat on you? Lu Heng's words, spoken with a smile, delivered a massive blow to Huofeng. Huofeng was completely baffled. Ah! Uh. He widened his eyes in shock with a look of disbelief on his face. Seeing his bewildered look, Lu Heng smiled and said. Of course, it is also possible that it is real instead of an illusion. Though Miss Tsai is not bound by convention, she is not coquettish. Maybe Miss Tsai is a remarkable woman who rises above the mud and stays pure, washing away all dirt without becoming adulterated. Lu Heng smiled and said, in any case, don't be blinded by prejudice. If you want to know the real truth, you have to go and see for yourself. What you see with your eyes may not be the truth. But what you cannot see with your eyes for certain is definitely not the truth. Without investigation, you have no right to speak. Lu Heng said something with a smile, which made Xiao Ai nod repeatedly. Mm, the wolf lord is right, the silver-haired girl chimed in. Lu Heng chuckled and patted her head, knowing she was thinking again about things in the mountain. In short, Brother Hua, if you have any worries, he should go to Wan Xinggu after this is over. Lu Heng smiled and said, Tsai knows me, so even if she really is the demon woman who brings chaos to the world, she will surely show me some face and not really drain you of your life force. 
If you ignore it, you may miss it, and you may regret it forever. Lu Hang smiled as he explained the situation to Hua Feng. Hua Feng nodded again and again, indicating that he understood. Xiao Ai was hesitant and asked cautiously. The wolf god, do you? Also have someone you missed? The little girl's sudden question made Lu Hang pause. He tilted his head and thought for a while, then sighed heavily before he smiled helplessly. Yes. We can never meet again. When he was terminally ill with no way out, his parents, who had been taking care of him and nurturing him without abandon, were the biggest concerns in his heart. But his death perhaps is also a kind of relief for his parents too. On the crest of the waves, Lu Hang sighed with a mixture of sadness and relief, and Hua Feng looked as if he understood something. I know it. The wolf god must have had some lovers in ancient times. The silver-haired girl with animal ears lowered her head, tightening her little fist, her expression serious. The wolf god once missed a very important person. But she will never let the wolf god miss anyone ever again. Xiao Ai will always be by the side of the wolf god. Chapter 185 Under the pitch black night, there was a huge mountain standing silently between the sea and the sky. This mountain was steep and precipitous, nearly vertical in its body, with a surface full of fine holes and no vegetation growing on it, looking like the most common reef in the sea. This reef was unusually large, covering dozens of miles. It stood like a giant in the blue waves of the South Sea. Underneath this vast and pitch-black reef rock, there were giant caves to the east, west, south, and north leading into the mountain's belly. The surging water waves beat against the sides of the cave, emitting a crisp splash sound. A small boat with a lantern lit at its bow, cruised through the enormous waterway and slowly entered the pitch-black giant mountain valley. Inside the water cave, it was not dark and gloomy. Instead, the cave ceiling was filled with brilliant stars, emitting a soft starlight that illuminated the long waterway. The little girl with a pair of fox ears tilted her head, curiously looking at the brilliant stars in the cave above her head. Behind her, the woman named Madame Green Bamboo looked at her with a gentle smile in her eyes. Don't look too long or you might find those stars falling in love with you and never letting you go. The little fox was somewhat puzzled by the doting smile of Madame Green Bamboo. Her two fox ears raised slightly and twitched, becoming even more curious. Grandma, what are those stars? How come they seem to be always moving? Madame Green Bamboo looked curiously at the little fox, hesitated for a moment, and finally smiled and patted her head, saying. Those are not real stars, but the eyes of South Sea giant snakes. They are the guardians of the Fangia Mountains waterway, who lie above the waterway all year round, watching the movements of passing ships. It's impressive indeed. Your level of cultivation as a small demon is not high enough to fill the gaps in their teeth. The terrifying words Madame Green Bamboo said made the little fox jump in fear. Ah! South Sea Giant Snake. She widened her eyes in disbelief as she gazed up at the dazzling stars above her head, unable to imagine that behind the beautiful stars lurked fierce giant snakes. The little fox was scared and scooted closer to her godmother, lowered her head, and didn't dare look anymore. Madame Green Bamboo looked at the little fox's frightened and cute appearance, smiled, stroked her hair, and said. Don't be afraid, Godmother is here. So long as you don't cause trouble in Fanjia Mountain, these snakes will never harm you. As they spoke, the small wooden boat sailed out of the waterway. In front of them was a huge watergate checkpoint. Looking beyond the water gate, the sparkling lights of the back could be seen. The city wasn't flat on the ground, but was instead densely packed, shining lights twinkling within dark caves. Even though Fanjia Mountain is massive, it is surprisingly hollow inside. On the rugged rocky walls, there were houses of different styles built one after another, all of them hanging on the rocks, as if they could drop down at any time. The lights that shined through the windows of those houses densely illuminated the rock wall, like an alternative starry sky. The vision of demons is extremely far-reaching. The little fox could clearly see the passages and suspension bridges between the houses on the cliff wall. The cool night breeze blew from behind the pass, causing the clothes of the mother and daughter pair riding the boat to flutter. At the same time, 
figures of the mermaid race appeared at the water gate checkpoint. Who? The chief of the mermaid people, wearing scales armor and unpretentiously, asked, Do you have an affair to break into the pass at midnight? At the gate, there was a soft but bright beam of light falling on the water's surface, casting a perfect image of the two women in the small boat. In the strong light, Madame Green Bamboo smiled slightly, then waved her sleeve, flinging out a piece of paper. She said, There's a travel pass, General, please take a look. Under the curious gaze of many mermaid soldiers at the gate, the paper gently floated down towards the mermaid general. After looking carefully twice, the mermaid general nodded slightly and said. It turns out that you are a friend of great sage of Fu Fong, coming to Fan Jia Mountain to find the witch Wu Gu for treatment. Let them pass. After gesturing to the subordinates at his side to open the door, the mermaid general said towards the small boat below. Which Wu Gu is currently in the warm fragrance pavilion, you can go there directly. When the mermaid general spoke, the iron gate of the pass slowly rose up. Madame Green Bamboo bowed respectfully to the mermaid general above, thanked him, and then steered her boat into the pass. Behind them, the startled mermaid people all curiously watched the two demon cultivators depart. On the little boat, the little fox was somewhat afraid and cuddled into Madame Green Bamboo's arms, being watched by a few curious eyes that made it feel scared. Madame Green Bamboo smiled with a gentle and calm expression, quickly sailing her boat out of the passageway and into the port of the Fangia city. At the passage, the mermaid general watched the small boat leave until the small boat had completely left the passage range, he asked. Does the divining mirror find anything abnormal? The deputy general replied, reporting to the general, the divining mirror showed no response. Those two demon friends are not of demonic evil. The mermaid general nodded, but his gaze stayed away, staying on that small boat that was getting farther and farther away. His eyebrows drew slightly together. Although the mirror didn't find anything abnormal, he had an inexplicable discomfort in his heart. The smiling blue-clothed woman, although she was a friend of the great sage of Fu Fong, gave him a very uncomfortable feeling. After thinking for a moment, he said, let it be known throughout the city and let them keep an eye on Madame Su. The orders of the mermaid general were succinct and clear, but didn't specify why they had to be done. However, as a long-term partner, the deputy general understood the worries of the general, and unconsciously looked in the direction where the small boat had disappeared. After hesitating for a few seconds, he finally said in a low voice. No need, general. That is a friend of the great sage of Fu Fong. With Fu Fong as assurance and the divining mirror didn't find anything, she's unlikely to be an evil demon. If we act rashly and offend her. This Madame Su is the first female demon cultivator to make even the great sage of Fu Fong yield in hundreds of years. The deputy general's worries are normal. Although the great sage of Fo Fong and the Mermaid Kingdom have a good relationship, his temperamental and impulsive nature is also famous in the South Sea. If they angered the demonic sage, it would be difficult to explain it to the higher-ups. The mermaid general thought for a while, and couldn't help but sigh, ah. All right, just tell the lord of the city that the great sage of Fu Fong has a friend coming to town. After that, the general paused, and then added, and tell the city lord, when Madame Su entered the passageway, the divining mirror didn't react. The mermaid general specially added a nonsense. The deputy general was a bit bewildered, but these words were not inappropriate, so he just nodded to indicate his understanding. Yes sir. I will send someone to inform the city lord right away. Chapter, 186 On the pass, the mermaid general's heart harbored a faint worry. And in the direction he was gazing, the small wooden boat had already docked inside the port of Fangia City. Like all the docks in the South Sea, this one was bustling with noise and excitement, and the sound of clamor never stopped coming. These men who make their living on the sea are always optimistic and cheerful, and they know how to enjoy themselves in a timely manner. Above the pier, there were various vendors hawking their wares, scantily clad women, and all sorts of tourists it was so lively to the point of being somewhat murky. The mermaid soldiers patrolled from time to time, so although the harbor was noisy, no major disturbances occurred. Even when two beautiful women like Madame Green Bamboo and Su Xiao Xiao appeared on the pier, 
the sailors and tourists there only watched from afar and no one dared to come over and cause trouble. After walking out of the pier and onto the main road ahead, the bustling and smoggy atmosphere finally subsided somewhat. Although the streets were lively and bustling too, they were much better in comparison to the areas around the port. Leading the little fox, they walked on the main road, smiling and politely declining the advances of several people who approached them to solicit business. The path beneath Madame Green Bamboo's feet began to climb upward, and the streets became narrower and narrower. In this vast space within the mountain, there were many buildings constructed on the rock walls, and among them were interconnected suspension bridges and cableways, connecting one area after another. The city in this mountain is not flat like a typical land-based city, but is three-dimensional and full of rich mermaid kingdom characteristics, after all, the cities of the mermaid kingdom in the sea are almost all structured in this manner. After climbing a distance with the little fox, Madame Green Bamboo could already see the signboard of the warm fragrance pavilion hovering in the distance above their heads. Even among the bright lights of the city, the illuminated sign of the warm fragrance pavilion stood out prominently. From a distance, it looked just like a palace floating in the clouds. With gauzy curtain dancing and lush leaves stretching, it was full of a poetic and picturesque atmosphere. Occasionally, graceful women appeared by the window, the wharf, and the corridor, who seemed to be as beautiful as fairyland, making people irresistibly want to approach. However, upon reaching this point, Madame Green Bamboo came to a halt, no longer proceeding upwards. On the swaying footbridge in the night breeze, Madame Green Bamboo turned to the little fox beside her and said. Xiao Xiao, I have brought you here. From now on, you must go to the warm fragrance pavilion to find Wu Gu yourself and plead for her to save you. You have been cultivating the traditional cultivation method since childhood, devoid of any demonic energy within yourself. You possess a unique and charming aura and an exceptional appearance. Wu Gu will not refuse you. Of course, that woman has a notorious reputation, so you must take good care of yourself and not let her take advantage of you. Madam Green Bamboo said with a smile. At this moment, they were standing on a secluded pathway's wooden bridge. Upon the small wooden bridge, there wasn't even a single light to be found. The little fox looked up and gazed at the brilliantly lit warm fragrance pavilion above her. With a mischievous smile, she said. Don't worry, godmother. Who will have the advantage in the end, who knows? The little fox grinned, revealing her sharp little tiger teeth. Her smile was somewhat mischievous as she said, Godmother, just wait outside for good news about your daughter. Humming with confidence, the little fox walked across the suspended wooden bridge and headed towards the warm fragrance pavilion above. And behind her, Madame Green Bamboo silently disappeared into the darkness, so as not to reveal her whereabouts. During this trip to the South Sea, they unexpectedly learned about the news of Wu Gu, which was quite a pleasant surprise for them. As an evil cultivator herself, she dared not provoke figures like the Ten Witches of the Spirit Mountain. Fortunately, from a young age, Xiao Xiao has never set foot on the path of the evil cultivator. In the face of one of the legendary Ten Witches of Spirit Mountain, she can go alone. With that thought, Madame Green Bamboo vanished into the darkness. And the girl with pointed fox ears walked on the winding and undulating walkway bridge, constantly heading towards the warm fragrance pavilion above. As the distance drew nearer, a faint and delicate fragrance wafted through the air. The closer one gets to the warm fragrance pavilion, the stronger the fragrance becomes. However, even outside the entrance of the warm fragrance pavilion, the subtle, fragrant night never becomes overwhelmingly strong to the point of discomfort. The faint and elegant fragrance, situated between the scent of flowers and that of a woman's body, emanated an intangible allure. Men, mere mortals, who caught a whiff of this aroma, would feel an unconscious itch and a desire to enter. However, compared to these superficial tricks, the environment of the warm fragrance pavilion is somewhat different, not as bustling and prosperous as an ordinary place where men seek pleasure and entertainment. The tranquil pavilion and elegant softly lit buildings, along with the clear and serene sound of the flowing melody of the zither from within the building at first glance. The warm fragrance pavilion appears less like a place of worldly pleasures and more like a location where scholars and literati gather to discuss philosophy. Upon witnessing such a spectacle, the small fox was somewhat astonished. This warm fragrance pavilion has some tricks. 
she giggled and without hesitation, walked directly toward it. The entrance to the warm fragrance pavilion is a secluded bamboo path that rustles in the night breeze. The green bamboo on either side of the path sways and as you walk a short distance, you come upon a clear spring. In the spring water, a graceful figure swam. When the little fox arrived at the lake, the cool spring water sounded with the sound of water. Among them, a tender and boneless figure was swimming and came to the lake. Amidst the sound of rushing water, a woman emerged from the spring. Her skin was delicate and appeared as though it could be easily broken with a mere touch. There was a myriad of tenderness in her laughter and the gentle arch of her eyebrows. The woman's figure was graceful and delicate, with no clothing covering her body like human women. She was half naked. Her exquisite collarbone and the deep groove in her chest were both exposed in front of the little fox's eyes. Only at the nipples, there was a layer of faint scales covering the woman's private part like tight clothing. However, the semi-transparent scales attached to the body seemed to have failed to provide any cover, instead, making it even more alluring. The little fox looked at the mermaid in front of her with great interest and said with a playful smirk, Sister, you have a truly exquisite figure. The mermaid gazed up and down at the demonic girl in front of her. Her eyes linger on the deep valley between the girl's breasts for a few seconds before she smiled faintly. Guest, since you have arrived at the warm fragrance pavilion, do you have a jade slip? The warm fragrance pavilion, although famous, doesn't entertain every guest who comes in. Only those who hold the warm fragrant jade slip are allowed to enter, and the admission threshold is extremely high. The girl in front of her had never been to this place before, which was why the mermaid asked this question. The little fox shook her head and said, I don't have the warm fragrance jade slip, I came to the warm fragrance pavilion to meet which Wu Gu. Please help me announce my arrival, sister. After the little fox finished speaking, the mermaid in the water smiled and shook her head, saying, Sister, you should go back. Which Wu Gu is not someone anyone can meet. During these days, those who come to see the queen are about 100, and they are all important figures from the South Sea. But no one has received an audience with the queen do you think which Wu Gu would make an exception for you, little sister? The mermaid girl smiled to persuade the little fox. Although the news of Wu Gu's presence on Fan Jia Mountain has already spread in the South Sea, only those prominent figures in the region are aware of her whereabouts at the warm fragrance pavilion, where which Wu Gu resides. However, which Wu Gu doesn't receive anyone with status, and certainly, she will not make an exception for this little fox in front of her. But the little fox chuckled and said, If you didn't inform her, how would you know that which Wu Gu doesn't want to see me? The little fox's insistence caused the mermaid girl to shake her head amusedly. Chapter 187 Everyone who comes to seek an audience with which Wu Gu at Warm Fragrance Pavilion says the same thing. She nodded and said, Well, sister, tell me about your background. Then I can go in and tell which Wu Gu. The little fox tilted her head and thought for a moment, then smiled and said, Here's what we can do, sister. You can go inside and tell which Wu Gu that there is a beautiful and lovely little fox outside who wishes to meet her. With your discerning eye, my little appearance isn't too bad, is it? As the little fox spoke, she confidently puffed out her chest. The playful inquiry also surprised Mermaid Girl. This little fox seems to have come prepared. How could she have such a thorough understanding of which Wu Gu's preferences? She cast a deep glance at the little fox and said, Very well, please wait a moment. After speaking, the mermaid girl leaned back and fell into the water, gliding like a lively fish along the spring towards the depths of the warm fragrance pavilion. After the mermaid girl left, all the other mermaid girls in the clear pond also swam over and lay on the bank with smiling faces, curiously looking at the little fox before them. They bombarded her with endless questions, all talking at once. Where did you come from? Your beautiful figure is truly pleasant to the eye. Are you a member of the Fox Clan? No wonder even my heart is moved by your beauty. Ha ha a little beauty like you visiting, which Wu Gu might actually receive you. By the pure pond's edge, their laughter filled the air with mirthful chatter. The little fox dealt with the mermaids with a playful smile, yet never revealing her own background. Soon, the mermaid girl who had left to give a report returned once again. 
Amidst the splashing water droplets, the mermaid girl leapt out of the water and elegantly landed by the side of the lake. The splashing water droplets turned into a thin misty cloud and gently cascaded onto her body, transforming into a delicate and graceful gown. She smiled faintly and bowed slightly to the little fox in front of her, saying, Which Wu Gu wants to see you please follow me, sister. Having finished speaking, the mermaid girl turned around and walked towards the warm fragrance pavilion. The little fox breathed a sigh of relief in its heart, while its face remained smiling. It bade farewell to the mermaid sisters in the pond and then followed the lead of the mermaid girl. Inside the warm fragrance pavilion, sweet melodies of the Guchin lingered in the air, accompanied by cool breezes that came and went in waves. Although located high up in the air, the warm fragrance pavilion differs from ordinary dwellings supported by brackets on the mountain rocks. The pavilions and towers here mostly stand suspended, without any support from the mountain cliffs. One after another, suspended plank bridges connect the courtyards and pavilions. Below every suspension bridge railing hangs an abyss of thousands of feet. The mermaid girl, adorned in a white veil, led the little fox deep into warm fragrance pavilion until they arrived at the most secluded and serene floating islet at its very heart. Here blooms the crimson and strikingly strange flowers, even in the darkness, their scarlet petals emit a faint blood-like glow. The little fox guessed that they should be the legendary mandala flowers. Upon witnessing this scene, she was somewhat taken aback. This legendary flower differs fundamentally from the ordinary rock garlic flower, despite their outward resemblance. Only in places of deep gloom and lifelessness can this kind of gloomy flower bloom, but on this small island in front of her, the mandala flowers bloom all over, yet without a hint of sinister ambience, it won't make people feel uncomfortable. Amidst this sea of flowers lies a small bamboo and wood courtyard. Within the fluttering gauze curtains, there is a certain ethereal quality that transcends the mundane world. The mermaid girl stood outside the small island and said to the little fox beside her, which Wu Gu is right here, sister. Just keep walking inside. After she finished speaking, the mermaid girl turned around and left. It is quite clear that the little fox must walk the rest of the road alone. The little fox hastily expressed gratitude, then took a deep breath before fixing its gaze once more upon the small island before taking steps towards the other side, through a sea of mandala flowers. In the midst of the sea of flowers, there was a small path leading to the bamboo and wooden courtyard. The little fox walked all the way and didn't dare to deviate from the path. Although these amaryllis flowers around her didn't show any evil death chi, she still didn't dare to touch them. Arriving at the front gate, the little fox gracefully bowed towards the courtyard and spoke. I'm fox demon Su Xiao Xiao. Which Wu Gu, can I come in? After the voice of the little fox fell, a gust of cool breeze blew and the gate of the bamboo courtyard opened wide. Wu Gu's voice echoed inside. Come in, I'm busy. The casual tone was quite different from what the little fox had expected. She thought she was going to meet a big sister who smiled wickedly. With a somewhat restrained gait, the little fox walked into the courtyard and glanced around. The courtyard before its eyes was tranquil and elegant, yet ordinary and unremarkable, devoid of any valuable objects. She followed the direction where which Wu Gu's voice had sounded and walked inside, passing by two bamboo houses, before finally arriving at the backyard of the bamboo house. However, the image that she saw left her stunned. In the small courtyard, there were piles of transparent bottles and jars, large and small. The largest transparent jar was as tall as ten feet, while the smallest one was no bigger than a soccer ball. These containers, large and small, there were filled with semi-transparent liquid, in which curious objects were immersed. The transparent bottles in the courtyard contained various body parts and organs of a young girl from the heavenly human tribe, her snow-white wings, beating heart, slender legs, fingers occasionally flexing, blinking eyes, and moving brain. In the center of those bottles and jars, a slightly disheveled woman was holding a transparent container and talking to the head of a girl inside the jar. How about it? Is the feeling in your right hand's five fingers still okay? Try gripping into a fist. Wu Gu said. And nearby her, in a transparent jar, a severed hand with all its five fingers obediently clenched into a fist. In the jar held by Wu Gu, the head of the heavenly human tribe girl blinked and said, It feels a bit painful, 
but I'll be fine. Wu Gu nodded with satisfaction and said, it seems like we have basically succeeded. After speaking, she turned her head and looked at the little fox behind her, examining her thoroughly. Her gaze lingered particularly on the deep cleavage between the little fox's breasts. Her eyes suddenly brightened up. Oh little girl, do you have something to find me for? Wu Gu smiled and said, my time is quite precious, so casually dropping by uninvited have you prepared for the repayment. The little fox's complexion was somewhat pale. The various bottles and cans in the courtyard and the young girl's head inside a jar blinking continuously. The impact of the scene before her was quite significant to her. Is this which Wu Gu of the Ten Witches of the Spirit Mountain? This image is too terrifying. Chapter 188 The Ten Witches of Spirit Mountain are widely known as the foremost shamans in the world, possessing miraculous abilities to transform decay into wonder. But regardless, this scene before the little fox's eyes is just too magical. The little fox's complexion turned pallid, and she found it somewhat difficult to accept. A seasoned cultivator possesses robust vitality, and even if beheaded, they will not easily perish. As long as their soul remains, they can even regenerate their flesh and blood. However, the scene before her eyes was different from a rebirth of flesh and blood. The various organs in those bottles and jars existed independently, but were also interrelated. For instance, the brain was capable of directing the movements of the limbs. This scene would surely startle even a cultivator who could regenerate his flesh and blood. The little fox's face turned deathly pale, while Wu Gu curiously looked her up and down and said. Little girl, do you have something to find me for? Said Wu Gu, as you can see, I am very busy. I don't usually see outsiders, but I made an exception for you today please speak up, why have you come to find me? Wu Gu got straight to the point, and the little fox also steadied her mind. Then, with a loud noise, she directly knelt down. Filled with deep sorrow, she pleaded, I'm suffering from a chronic illness and my time is running out. I implore you to save my life. Oh. Wu Gu appeared curious and beckoned with a wave of her hand, the little fox, who was kneeling on the ground, flew in front of Wu Gu and hovered in midair. Wu Gu gently stretched out her hand and placed it on the little fox's right wrist, sensing it for a moment before saying. I see. She released the little fox in front of her and let her stand on the ground. She said, Indeed, your illness is somewhat troublesome, but not to the extent that you described. It's not deadly as long as you keep your virginity and maintain your vitality. It won't affect your cultivation and lifespan. As for you saying maybe going to die Wu Gu smiled and said, Could it be that you have someone in mind and want to lose your virginity? The little fox blushed and quickly shook her head, No, no, Xiao Xiao doesn't have a beloved. I just learned that which Wu Gu is here and came to seek medical treatment. There is no one else in this world who can cure this affliction but you. If missed, I'm afraid that I will have to live the life of a widow forever. Even if I meet someone I love in the future, I will not be able to love. As the little fox spoke, her countenance grew increasingly mournful, as though she had already foreseen a future in which the object of her heart's desire spurned her. Wu Gu sneered disdainfully and said, what good are men? They are all disgusting filth. If a delicate and charming girl like you were to be taken advantage of by a man, it would be an utter waste of talent. After Wu Gu finished speaking, the little fox was about to plead, but at that moment, the outside suddenly rang with a mermaid's announcement. Madam, the person you have been waiting for has arrived. The sound transmitted through the whisper was incredibly gentle as it entered the small courtyard, but upon hearing this news, Wu Gu, who was sitting in the bamboo garden, suddenly jumped up. Her face was full of joy, has he finally arrived? She looked at the bottles and jars behind her and spoke to the head of the heavenly human tribe girl that was soaking in the transparent jar. Yur, please wait here for a moment. I shall go fetch that guy immediately. With his assistance, there shall be genuine hope for your salvation this time. As Wu Gu spoke, she hastily headed towards the outside, grabbing the bewildered little fox beside her as she went, holding on to her waist and taking her away from this place together. The little fox was stunned, but dared not break free, allowing Wu Gu to embrace her, and asked cautiously. Madam, the person you are waiting for who is it? Do you not know? 
Wu Gu looked at her and said, It's that wolf the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. It's an ancient monster from ages past. Recently, it was chasing after the Urba god man on the South Sea because the Urba god man had taken away his friend. That guy must have found his friend TSK he is the first one who can save the people who were kidnapped by the Urba god man. As an ancient monster, he is indeed powerful, even monsters like Urba god man got punished. Truly, the only one capable of dealing with an old monster is another old monster. Wu Gu enthusiastically delivered a long speech, while the little fox listened with a bewildered expression. She had also heard rumors about the Urba god man, but didn't know much about it. As for the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain it sounded like an ancient and powerful being who had lived for a long time. At the great sage of Fu Feng's place, she and Madame Green Bamboo only heard that which Wu Gu was waiting for someone at Fan Jie Mountain. But they didn't know much about who she was waiting for specifically. They only knew that it was a powerful figure who could let all the countries of the South Sea respect and were willing to help find his friend. Although the great sage of Fu Feng had a reputation in the South Sea, he was not a ruler of a country, and there was little knowledge about the deeper level. Although it is possible to explore, it is not necessary. What they demanded was which Wu Gu, and the person she was waiting for had nothing to do with them. However, stumbling upon the person now by coincidence is actually an opportunity. The little fox was also curious about the mysterious existence, wondering about his immense power. At the very least, when she goes back, she will tell Madame Green Bamboo about encountering such a powerful existence, and her godmother will surely be amazed and exclaim in surprise. Hee <laughs> hee. The little fox thought happily to herself as she obediently allowed Witch Wu Gu to embrace her waist. The two of them floated lightly and landed on the edge of this sea of flowers. On the suspension bridge ahead, the mermaid girl who had led her in before was now leading another group of people. That was a somewhat strange combination, with a huge and mystical white wolf walking in the front. Its entire body was covered in silvery white fur, which seemed to radiate even in the darkness, possessing a certain special and marvelous texture. It seems as though every single strand of hair is akin to a precious gem of the world. And behind the white wolf was a small girl with silver hair and animal ears. The girl looked very young, seemingly only around ten years old. But within her dark golden pupils, a faint divine light flickered, causing the little fox to subconsciously gasp and feel a strange fear. And behind the little girl was a young disciple of the Yun sect, with a light step and heavy breathing, low cultivation level, but with an intangible temperament that could not be ignored. A goo eagle, with horns protruding from its forehead, squatted on his shoulder, whimpering and yelping. And a rare bow horse lazily followed behind the crowd, carrying many items on its back, appearing unwilling to come here. The exceedingly peculiar combination caused the little fox to be slightly taken aback. Is this the ancient monster? Faced with such an ancient predecessor, even though she was curious in her heart, she dared not be impolite and could only obediently stand by. At this moment, Wu Gu released the little girl, smiled, and bowed towards the white wolf in front of her, saying. We humbly welcome the arrival of the wolf god. Wu Gu greeted with a smiling face, appearing very hospitable. Lu Heng, who saw this scene, was stunned for a moment, probably understanding what was going on. Wu Gu's reaction seemed overly enthusiastic, almost unsettling. Furthermore, in combination with which Wu Gu proactively disclosing the information to the public, enticing Lu Heng to come to this place to find her. The white wolf on the wharf smiled faintly and said, Madam, you are too kind. I have come to bother you, and I also need your help to treat Brother Hu behind me, hoping that Madam will not find me bothersome. Chapter 189 Since Lu Hang had guessed that the other person might have a request for him, he decided to get straight to the point and speak up. Anyway, Wu Gu must have heard the human-faced owl talk about Hu Feng's situation. Now that everyone is speaking openly, it actually saves time on beating around the bush. After Lu Hang finished speaking, Wu Gu didn't pretend to not understand and smiled, saying sure, sure and wolf god, come with me, we'll have a detailed discussion inside. And so, they set foot on the path in the midst of the sea of red flowers, heading towards the bamboo garden ahead. After surveying the surroundings, Lu Heng became somewhat curious. Because he could tell that these blooming flowers were actually mandala flowers, not mere common imitations. 
However, within this garden, there was no gloomy or lifeless atmosphere. Lu Heng asked in surprise, was this sea of mandala flowers cultivated by you? Wu Gu smiled and said, it's not a matter of cultivation, just a happy accident. Wu Gu said, a young lady came to me with a strange illness. She had been relying on expensive medicinal herbs since childhood to sustain her life. When she was seventeen years old, she almost died and her mother brought her to me, begging me to cure her. But at that time, the little girl was already critically ill, with her life force fading, and even I could not think of any way to help her. To save her life, I refined the water from the secluded springs using ancient methods in the Utian Valley. I purified the dark spring water and removed the evil death chi, transforming it into the refreshing bones water mentioned in Records of the Four Directions. Once again, in this place, I dismembered the pitiful dying little girl's organs and limbs, and soaked them in refreshing bones water to enable them to survive separately. As for the blooming of mandala flowers in this place, it occurs naturally after the dumping of abandoned medicinal residues. Originally, this area was a vast bamboo sea, but unfortunately, after the mandala flowers bloomed, everything withered away, leaving behind only this sea of mandala flowers. Wu Gu explained with a smile that she had already led everyone into the bamboo garden. The little fox, with her pointed fox ears, followed her timidly as Wu Gu refrained from introducing her, leaving Lu Heng and the others without inquiry. Upon entering the bamboo garden, Wu Gu didn't linger but promptly led Lu Heng to the backyard, where he beheld a collection of transparent vessels containing the body parts of the young maiden, each set apart in its own container. Upon catching a glimpse of the jars and bottles brimming with peculiar body parts, Little Goo Eagle let out a dreadful scream and hastily took refuge behind Xiao Ai. Lu Heng looked in amazement at the scene before him. Then he saw, at the very center of the jar, the smiling head of a young girl looking back at him. My name is Urenya. The Wolf God, nice to meet you. A head, immersed in a liquid similar to formaldehyde, spoke to him. Lu Heng, who once applied for medical school in his past life, twitched his lips, recalling some of the horror stories he heard. The scene before his eyes has such a strong sense of deja vu. He gave a bitter smile and sighed, saying, Which Wu Gu, is this your patient? It might not be appropriate to take us to meet her directly she is just a young girl, but we have already seen all of her heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and kidneys. Lu Heng said. However, apart from the internal organs, those body trunks immersed in the jars were tightly wrapped in gauze, with even the fingers carefully enveloped, leaving no inch of skin exposed. Lu Heng was reminding Wu Gu that such behavior seemed to violate the privacy of the patients. But neither Wu Gu nor the little girl inside the bottle cared about this matter. Wu Gu said, it's all right. In the presence of the wolf god, there is no need to conceal anything. When I first saw the wolf god, I knew immediately that your character was straightforward. Therefore, let's not waste any time beating around the bush. While speaking, Wu Gu looked towards Hu Feng who was standing behind Lu Heng. You came to me, no doubt wanting me to heal the young man from the insect. And I am waiting here for you with a request of my own. So, let us begin our conversation. Wu Gu smiled and said, I require you to attend the treasure conference in the mermaid kingdom and procure a precious treasure so that I may cure the young girl here. As a return gift, I am willing to take action to save this young man of the Yun sect but since the wolf god has come, I presume you also understand my rules regarding saving people. Wu Gu asked with a smile. Lu Heng hesitated for a moment and looked at Huafeng beside him, is there any protocol for which Wu Gu's rescue operation? Um well I am not sure about that, Huafeng scratched his head and said. He had only heard of the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain's unrivaled medical skills, but as for Wu Gu's rules for saving lives he truly didn't know. Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh when he saw Huafeng's bewildered expression. Later, he looked towards Wu Gu and said, we are ashamed to say that we don't know your rules please, we ask for your guidance. When Lu Heng inquired, he thought in his heart could this Wu Gu have some quirk. He was worried. What if I can't complete it myself? Wu Gu was astonished as she gazed at the white wolf before her, somewhat unexpected. Then, she said with a smile. It's actually very simple. I only save women and never save men. Therefore, 
as a woman of integrity, I can't break my rules. As long as this young man of the Yun sect eats my yin yang pill and transforms into a woman, I can save him. The wolf god, can you accept this proposal? Wu Gu's words made Lu Hing breathe a sigh of relief. Fortunately, fortunately, it's not asking him to kill someone, but just to let Hua Feng become a woman, um. Lu Hang was startled for a moment as he looked at Hua Feng's face that turned pale, but soon he realized what had happened. Suddenly, he was also speechless. Sex reassignment. He looked at Wu Gu in a strange way and said, Are you sure you want him to become a woman? Wu Gu nodded with a smile and said, Yes, but the Yin Yang pill's efficacy is limited. After taking it, the female body can only maintain its form for three years. After three years, it will return to its original state alas, what a pity. In Lu Hang and the other strange gaze, Wu Gu sized up Hua Feng and let out a regretful sigh. This young man from the Yun sect has good potential. If he were to become a woman, surely he would be an incredibly beautiful lady alas, what a pity. Wu Gu sighed and shook her head incessantly with an expression of unparalleled regret, causing Hua Feng to retreat repeatedly with a pallid countenance. This woman something's off about her. Chapter, 190 Amidst the bamboo grove, even the little fox, who was an outsider, looked askance at Wu Gu after hearing her bizarre proposal, much less Hua Feng who was directly involved. Wu Gu hesitated as she looked at the reactions of the people present, and then asked cautiously. Um. Can the wolf god not accept such a request? Wu Gu sighed in distress, but this is the only compromise I've come up with. My extreme aversion to males, even just ordinary physical contact, cannot be suppressed and would result in nausea and vomiting. If I touch them for a long time, my body parts in contact might even rot and emit pus. I refined the yin yang pill as a preparation to prevent myself from being unable to act when encountering a male in need of rescue. Even I have only three yin yang pills in my hand after consuming a lot of precious materials. As you, the wolf god, understand well, it is immensely difficult to reverse male and female characteristics, isn't it? This yin yang pill is the culmination of my lifetime of medical skill. The moment I discovered it, it was destined to be recorded in the records of the four directions and can be considered an extraordinary divine pill. Wu Gu was very distressed, it is not that I am trying to make things difficult, but if the young man of the Yun sect doesn't take the medicine, I really cannot apply needles and medicine for him. Lu Hain was somewhat taken aback by Wu Gu's self-explosive shortcomings. Extreme aversion towards the male gender. Does even the slightest touch cause nausea and disgust? What kind of strange disease is this? Does this kind of disease really exist in the world? Wu Gu, seeing Lu Hang's disbelief, couldn't help but sigh and say, If the wolf god doesn't believe me, I can demonstrate it for you. As Wu Gu spoke, she calmly extended her right hand towards Lu Hang and said, You can grasp my hand, and you will be able to perceive the changes. In the midst of bamboo garden, Wu Gu extended her right hand towards the white wolf. The massive white wolf pondered for a moment before extending its forepaw and placing it onto Wu Gu's palm. The two sides looked at each other for a while. Wu Gu was stunned, why no response? Could it be that the wolf god, you are actually? Wu Gu gazed at Lu Hang with an eerily intense look. Her aversion to men was an innate malady, which had been validated numerous times. However, when she held the wolf god's forepaw, there was no reaction. Could it be that the wolf god was female? Wu Gu's face was full of astonishment, as if she had discovered some great secret. Lu Hang withdrew his front paws and, after a moment of thought, said, Gu Yan, why don't you give it a try? The little Gu eagle that had been hiding behind Xiao Ai immediately flew out, flapping its wings and hovering in front of Wu Gu while uttering wailing cries. Wu Gu hesitated for a moment before tentatively reaching out to touch the small Gu eagle. Then, off. Upon encountering the small Gu eagle, an indescribable sense of nausea immediately rose within Wu Gu's body. It was as if all of her internal organs were turned upside down, nearly causing her to vomit directly. But she didn't let go of little Gu Eagle at this point. She even grabbed one of Gu Yan's claws, which frightened him and made him flap his wings several times. 
Subsequently, amidst the amazed gazes of the bystanders, Wu Gu's hand that held Gu Yan's claw began to gradually change color, a phenomenon beyond belief. First, a disgusting dark blue color appeared under the skin and then this dark blue color became thicker and deeper, eventually turning into clusters of pus. Wu Gu looked at the white wolf with a pale complexion and smiled bitterly, the wolf god, you believe me now, do you? When she released little Gu Eagle, her entire palm was completely rotten, flesh and blood had completely turned into pus and dripped sticky and gooey onto the ground. However, the next moment, Wu Gu's internal energy circulated and her spiritual energy rose. Her hand, which was left with only white bones, quickly regenerated and returned to its original appearance. For Wu Gu, the loss of one hand was not a serious injury, but the indescribable nausea left her physically and mentally exhausted. After Wu Gu's rebirth with a broken hand, everyone looked at her in silence, believing that she indeed can't touch males. Then, everyone discreetly glanced at Lu Heng. Their eyes were strange. Lu Heng felt a twinge of headache, coupled with a mixture of amusement and bewilderment. At this moment, he was truly like yellow mud falling off his pants, unable to express himself clearly. Very helplessly, Lu Heng looked at Wu Gu in front of his eyes and asked. Do you think that I am a woman? Which Wu Gu, what is the rule for determining maleness in this body of yours? I am certain that I, Lu Heng, am not a woman. Wu Gu, who had already barely recovered, turned her eyes and smiled at Lu Heng. Actually, it's quite simple. The wolf god, if you can let me check your body, perhaps the reason can be discovered. Such a situation with the wolf god is something I have encountered for the first time. Lu Heng nodded and said, All right, I just don't know how you will perform the inspection. Lu Heng was also perplexed as when he crossed over, he made sure that the original wolf demon is a male. Could it be that he was mistaken? Was he actually a woman? Lu Heng was also a little nervous. He definitely didn't want to lose his gender after crossing over. Wu Gu smiled and said, Actually, it's quite simple. The female and male division of cultivators is best recognized by examining whether the elemental energy within their bodies is of the yin or yang attribute. I claim to reject males, but in reality, it was due to a resistance towards the masculine energy within their bodies caused by my physical constitution. The wolf god, I just need to feel your pulse. Lu Heng nodded and said, understood, please do it. After speaking, Lu Heng once again extended one of his front paws and placed it upon Wu Gu's palm. In the courtyard, a brief moment of tranquility ensued. Wu Gu furrowed her brow as she sensed the condition inside Lu Heng's body, but the more she sensed, the tighter her brow furrowed. In the end, he was already wearing a wry and pained expression, as if she had encountered an unprecedented conundrum. After some time, she finally withdrew her hand and hesitated to speak. That. The wolf god. It doesn't matter, Lu Heng said with a smile, my innocence lies solely in your hands. Lu Heng spoke of the matter concerning his own gender identity. Wu Gu also understood and gave a bitter smile, saying. The wolf god's vitality is abundant with the power of Yang. You're undoubtedly a male. Just. She sighed and said, although the vigorous vitality within you is unparalleled, it is quite distinct from that of mortal men. This is likely due to the differences in the path followed by you and the common world. Consequently, your spiritual state is also distinct. Wu Gu spoke with a smile, yet her heart was filled with inexplicable horror that she dared not reveal, not even a single iota. The vital energy within the body of this white wolf before her eyes is not at all the same as that of ordinary men, but rather different from all beings in the world. His ethereal qi, which existed between reality and fantasy, frightened Wu Gu to the point where she almost believed she had misperceived it. In medical knowledge, such a breath can only appear above a long-deceased corpse that has already perished. But the white wolf in front of her eyes is clearly not a corpse. Not only that, but it also cultivated the heavenly thunder technique, with every inch of its flesh and hair purified by the celestial lightning, making it different from commonplace. To exist in such a way, with vitality and vigor surpassing all rationality, is beyond the realm of a corpse. But there was a strange smell of death on his breath. 
Wu Gu recalled the Yutian Valley scenery that she had previously seen through the human-faced owl's eyes. The water of the ancient gloomy spring, which had existed for countless years, was completely taken away by the white wolf. And beneath the water of the gloomy spring lay numerous ancient treasures and a cryptic and mystical gold seal of the highest antiquity. Due to Yu Renya's influence, Wu Gu's research on dark spring water was unparalleled. She knew that the mysteriously originated dark spring water must have its source, and it is highly probable that the source is related to death. However, in the world, one cannot find the origin of death. After all, no matter how high the cultivation level of the cultivator is, once they die, their soul will fly away and their spirit will have a hard time staying in the world. Throughout history, people have all believed that death signifies the end of all things. However, the white wolf in front of her shattered this common sense, which led Wu Gu to entertain a possibility. Perhaps the wolf god before her eyes, who has lived for an unknown number of years, is the origin of death. Only a special existence between life and death can control ominous things like the dark spring water. Even the cultivation base of the white wolf before her eyes were both in a state between reality and illusion and between life and death. Such an eerie state must be because he has already died before achieving enlightenment. The miracles or spiritual cultivates of later stages are incapable of transforming him into such form. Wu Gu smiled at Lu Heng but inside her heart, a storm was brewing. People always believe that death is the end, even she thought so. However, the wolf god in front of her shattered her perception, revealing that after death, there really are cultivators who can still continue to cultivate. Moreover, he had cultivated to an unfathomable level that was beyond people's comprehension. Indescribable confusion pervaded Wu Gu's heart. After death cultivation. How did he achieve it? Wu Gu felt shaken, while Lu Heng breathed a sigh of relief. I am still a man, which is great. I don't want to lose any important belongings after being reborn in this world. After putting his mind at ease, Lu Heng's mood relaxed, and he chuckled. Brother Hua, have you made a decision? Would you like to request Lady Wu Gu to heal you? Hua Feng also smiled helplessly. I have no choice. He turned to Wu Gu, took a deep breath, and said, Please, may which Wu Gu come to my rescue. Wu Gu nodded in agreement, but still looked towards Lu Heng who was standing beside her. Wu Gu said, Since it is so, I shall speak plainly. I require the deep ice white lotus from the South Sea Deep Trench to save a life. If the wolf god can assist me in obtaining this celestial treasure, I hope it shall cure the young man from the Yun sect. Wu Gu's words left Lu Heng feeling a bit perplexed. South Sea Deep Trench. Deep ice white lotus. These are unfamiliar terms again. He asked, May I kindly ask you to explain what is meant by South Sea Deep Trench? And what is meant by Deep Ice White Lotus? After listening to Lu Hang's question, Wu Gu didn't care whether the wolf god was feigning ignorance or truly unaware, and proceeded to explain. The South Sea Deep Trench is a black abyss that stretches across the end of the South Sea and is situated on the border of the Mermaid Kingdom. As long as one travels south and continues straight until the very end, one shall encounter a pitch-black abyss of unfathomable depths within the sea. Further ahead is the earthly place of peril where even deities would find difficult to pass. In the sea, goose feathers don't float. Above the sky, white thunder is difficult to pass through. And within the pitch-black abyss, it is even deeper beyond measure. Moreover, the dark seawater will absorb the person's blood and soul. Once fallen into it, it is feared that one cannot sink to the bottom and would rather be drained by the black water. That is the boundary of heaven and earth, the end of the world. It is called the South Sea Deep Trench. However, in such a perilous fantasy realm, atop the vertical abyss wall, grows an extremely rare ice crystal white lotus, known as the Deep Ice White Lotus, which is one of the most valuable medicinal herbs in the world. When the Treasure Conference of the Mermaid Kingdom, held once every twelve years, convenes, the waters are near the South Sea Deep Trench briefly clear, and the rate at which the black water consumes living creatures slows considerably. At this moment, if a top-level cultivator were to enter the water, there would be a great probability of finding the deep ice white lotus growing on the walls of the abyss. Wu Gu looked at Lu Heng and said, with my modest abilities, it would be difficult for me to retrieve the deep ice white lotus. 
However, if the wolf god is willing to venture forth, acquiring the deep ice white lotus would be an effortless task. Wu Gu's detailed account made Lu Heng express his comprehension. Indeed, if what you said is accurate, I can agree to your request and explore the South Sea Deep Trench to ascertain the truth. But the situation in that abyss is so strange, I'm afraid I can't guarantee that I can retrieve the deep ice white lotus. Lu Heng candidly speaks and Wu Gu doesn't mind, smiling and saying, it's okay, I believe in the wolf god. Even if there is a situation where we cannot obtain the deep ice white lotus, it won't be the fault of the wolf god. I will still treat the young man of the yin sect. Wu Gu's understanding nature made Lu Heng refrain from further words and nod in agreement with her. Very well, I promise you that I will go to the South Sea Deep Trench to retrieve the deep ice white lotus. Then he looked at Huifeng beside him and said, but as for Brother Hua's condition, should we have your check first? Brother Hua's situation is unique at present and may be more complicated than we have expected. Lu Heng's suggestion made Wu Gu shake her head, no need, we can just start. I am resistant to males, so please let the young man of the Yun sect directly take the Yin Yang pill. After finishing speaking, and seeing the hesitation on Hua Feng's face, Wu Gu laughed and said, Don't worry, the ten witches of Spirit Mountain are not just me. Even if I really can't cure your illness, I can guarantee to find the best doctor in the world for you. And I can assure you that if even the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain cannot heal you, then no one in this world can. As Wu Gu spoke, she walked straight towards the room and said, Youngster from the Yun sect, follow me. Let me first give you the Yin Yang pill, and then I will help you examine your body. Ah. Uh. Um. I'll be right back, Hua Feng said respectfully, bowing to Wu Gu before sincerely bowing to Lu Hang. Thank you for your care, I. All right, all right, just go in, the white wolf waved his front paw and said, Why are you so polite? Go in and cooperate with which Wu Gu's treatment, and resume cultivation as soon as possible. Your little love is still waiting for you to reunite. Lu Heng's joke instantly made Hua Feng's face turn red. But then came a long, heavy sigh. The Luan Xian goat in the East Sea. After taking the Yin Yang pill, he had to live as a woman for three years. After becoming a woman, how can he still go to the Luan Xian goat in the East Sea to look for Lian Sai? Hua Feng followed Wu Gu with a sighing and melancholic demeanor. And Lu Heng and the others left behind looked towards the little fox Su Xiao Xiao who was standing by the side. The little girl didn't interrupt during the conversation just now, and she doesn't seem like Wu Gu's attendant either. Lu Heng was a bit curious and asked, Might I inquire, little girl, are you also here seeking which Wu Gu's medical aid? Lu Heng's gentle tone startled the little fox, who quickly bowed in courtesy. The wolf god, my name is Su Xiao Xiao, and I am just an ordinary fox spirit seeking the healing powers of which Wu Gu. I didn't expect to encounter the wolf god here the wolf god, could it be that you are also a demon cultivator? Su Xiao Xiao was both nervous and excited. The white wolf before her was the strongest demon cultivator she had ever encountered in her life. From a young age, Madame Green Bamboo has forbidden her from setting foot on the demonic path and thus she has never had the opportunity to meet a senior practitioner from the demon realm. Until today, the most formidable demon cultivator she had encountered was the hardy and rough Great Sage of Fu Fong. But the Great Sage of Fu Fong was only somewhat famous in the South Sea, yet in front of him, the wolf god is so respected that even the leaders of the South Sea countries have to help him and the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain greet him. This wolf god senior is truly formidable. The little girl had always lived in seclusion in the deep mountains. How could she have ever encountered such a remarkable figure, let alone one who shared her own paranormal kinship? Her heart was suddenly filled with both familiarity and pride. We demon cultivators also have powerful and talented seniors. Seeing the magnificence of the wolf god, she, also a demon cultivator, even had a sense of pride and gloriousness. And Lu Heng found it a little amusing to see the excited and elated reaction of the little girl. He asked, what illness does Xiao Xiao suffer from? It's serious enough to need treatment from which Wu Gu. Could you tell me? Lu Heng quite fancied this naive and innocent little fox before his eyes. The feeling is similar to seeing a very obedient and sensible child while getting treated in a hospital, 
one cannot help but feel the urge to take care of her. Faced with Lu Hang's inquiry, the little fox hesitated for a moment but ultimately chose to divulge to the wolf god. I suffer from the soulless disease. My soul is unstable and difficult to hold on to for long periods of time. Not only does this affliction affect my cultivation, but it even. Even. The little fox said, blushing. Lu Hang had an epiphany and declared, I understand now. This type of soulless disease, he had previously seen it in the book collection in Fu Shan City. It is a rare ailment that poses no harm to mortals but is a great hindrance to cultivators. Those afflicted with soulless disease not only have their cultivation affected, but more importantly, because their souls are unstable, they are unable to hold on to their innate qi. Once they lose their innate qi, their souls may leave their bodies at any moment, transforming into wandering ghosts and dying exposed to the elements. In other words, once afflicted with this illness and beginning to cultivate, one must not break their celibacy. Broken celibacy will certainly lead to death. It can be considered as one of the most famous perplexing miscellaneous diseases in the world of cultivation, causing people to turn pale at the mention of it. Lu Heng scrutinized the little fox before him and inquired further. But Xiao Xiao, you came to see which Wu Gu alone. Did you not have any family or friends who could accompany you? The little girl's cultivation was not considered high, yet she was astute and clever. It was likely unsafe for her to be alone outside. Moreover, with her naive and carefree disposition, she appeared to be the type who had been well protected by her parents and had never experienced any hardships. However, it is quite peculiar for such a little maid to appear here all on her own. Lu Heng casually inquired, while the little fox hesitated once again. She looked at the wolf god senior in front of her, and thought about Madame Green Bamboo's identity as an evil cultivator. Finally, the little girl sighed and said, Xiao Xiao indeed had a relative who wanted to come with me, but she was unable to come here, so I came alone. At this moment, facing the upright and respected wolf god in front of her, she thought of his own Madame Green Bamboo, an evil cultivator. The little fox finally personally experienced Madame Green Bamboo's painstaking efforts in persuading her not to cultivate evil techniques and preventing her from contacting demonic creatures. Chapter 191 In the midst of the bamboo garden, Lu Heng conversed with the little fox before him with great interest. And the feather man tribe girl in that bottle occasionally interjected a few words. Only then did Lu Heng realize that the little girl soaking in formaldehyde in front of him was actually the daughter of the king of Featherman country. No wonder she was able to invite the ten witches of the spirit mountain, turns out she's a girl with a background. However, despite her noble status, this little girl is devoid of any arrogance and bears no resemblance to the mannerisms of some bureaucrat's offspring. In fact, she is more akin to an ordinary girl from a neighboring household quite distinct from the nobility that Lu Heng became familiar with after he descended the mountain. After detailed inquiries, it was revealed that Feather Man Country is actually a kingdom situated in the sky. All of its people are cultivators with formidable skills. However, despite a long lifespan, there were not many people in the country. According to Yu Ren Ye's account, the entire population of Feather Man Country is less than 10,000 people. Due to the scarce population and remote location far from the mundane world, the desire for fame and fortune is weak in Featherman country. Where the majority are reclusive cultivators who dedicate themselves to intensive cultivation and have little contact with the outside world. After all, in Featherman country, everyone cultivates fasting and doesn't need to eat. Besides their devotion to their deities, what the people of Featherman country love the most is cultivating themselves. Because of contentment, there is no desire, and therefore, no pursuit. Listening to you Renya talk about it, they seem to have a carefree attitude in Featherman country, where they would not tolerate any scheming disturbances while they focused on cultivating their spiritual practices. Regarding the little fox, Lu Hang had many conversations with her about topics related to spiritual practice. The little fox was deeply grateful, thinking that the wolf god was guiding her. However, Lu Heng was actually just gaining knowledge about the demon cultivator's training. After all, as someone who cultivated heavenly thunder, he was not following the same path as an ordinary demon cultivator. Afterwards, Lu Heng stopped talking. Hua Feng inside the house remained unable to come out, and Wu Gu had also lost her voice. 
After a weary night, Wu Gu walked out of the house and said, Thank goodness, I have fulfilled my duty and finally cured the patient. The wolf god, you can go in to see her, but for now, she needs rest, so please don't disturb her with loud noises. After speaking, Wu Gu dragged the little fox aside to discuss the request for treating the little fox's illness. After Wu Gu left, Lu Hang led Gu Yan and Xiao Ai into the house. Even the bow horse stood outside the window, sticking his head inside to peek. Upon pushing the door open, what appeared before the eyes of the crowd was a bed made of bamboo. Upon the bamboo couch, a delicate woman lay quietly in slumber. The thin bedclothes were draped over her body, concealing her bare form. The clothes of the Yun sect were piled up on the side. The quilt covering them exposed the fair skin and delicate clavicle of the woman. Even in the state of deep sleep with closed eyes, there is still a delicate and charming quality. If they had not known the truth beforehand, none of the people present would have thought this could be Huafong. The bow horse by the window let out a hushed whistle, grinning widely and revealing its sharp fangs, seemingly bursting into uproarious laughter. The white wolf wordlessly covered his forehead with his front paws, sighed, and seemed uncertain how to judge the situation. Xiao Ai fixed her bright and penetrating gaze upon her frail and stunning elder sister atop the bamboo bed, and after a moment of silence, she suddenly spoke. The wolf god, Xiao Ai looked at Lu Hang and whispered softly, Brother Hua do you think that sister Hua can become pregnant? The white wolf hesitated for a moment, then looked at Xiao Ai with an odd expression and said, Xiao Ai, your points of focus are truly cunning nevertheless, it is indeed a cause for concern. I will go and ask which Wu Gu about the situation. In case something bad happens, I must remind Brother Hua beforehand to keep herself pure as jade. The story goes that Lu Hang looked again at the woman lying on the bamboo bed, and couldn't help but sigh again. Alas, a femme fatale, a femme fatale. Brother Hua had just left the dangerous place but was transformed into a beauty who unfortunately lacked any notable cultivation skills. I hope her beauty won't bring her any disaster. In the following days, Lu Hang stayed at the warm fragrance pavilion. Hua Feng, who had turned into a woman, remained asleep and Lu Hang needed to talk to Wu Gu about going to the South Sea Deep Trench to acquire the deep ice white lotus. As for that the little fox, she left on that very day. Wu Gu offered to cure her, but the condition for the treatment was that the little fox had to serve as her menial for three years. The little fox left, presumably to seek her parents' opinion. However, it is not a bad thing to be with Wu Gu, and this little fox demon's parents should not refuse. Surely enough, not even two days had passed before the little girl returned, expressing her willingness to follow Wu Gu. The small bamboo courtyard in the Mandala Flower Sea briefly became lively. Lying on a bamboo bed and still not awakened, Hua Feng needs the little fox to wash his body every day. Yurinya was soaked in a glass jar, and Wu Gu checked her organ status every day. Lu Heng sat in a quiet room contemplating the demon sutra and divine skill, attempting to derive martial arts techniques. Xiao Ai diligently cultivated every day. The warm fragrance pavilion has been turned into a place of quiet seclusion by the people. However, Wu Gu and the master of the warm fragrance pavilion are old acquaintances. Wu Gu had previously transformed the tranquil suspended pathway into a sea of mandala flowers and the master had no objections then, so it is unlikely for her to object now. The master of the warm fragrance pavilion is somewhat famous in Fanjia Mountain and even the whole South Sea. However, she dares not come to disturb Lu Heng rashly. After Lu Heng checked in, the master of the warm fragrance pavilion refrained from disturbing the island. Lu Heng resides here primarily to await the convening of the treasure conference of the Mermaid Kingdom. According to Wu Gu's account, the days when the black water of the South Sea Deep Trench fades occur once every twelve years, coinciding precisely with the day of the treasure conference. Wu Gu has already sent a letter to the Mermaid Kingdom, and has obtained the consent of the ruler of the Mermaid Kingdom, indicating that on that day, the wolf god will be allowed to dive and pick the flower. So all Lu Heng could do was wait. In the Fanjia Mountain, as the day of the treasure conference approached, the atmosphere grew increasingly lively. Many extraordinary people and eccentric cultivators, 
have now traveled a long way across the sea to arrive at Fanjia Mountain, in preparation for attending the Mermaid Kingdom's biennial event. Above the South Sea, there are many vessels currently making their way towards the direction of the Mermaid Kingdom. It can be deemed exceptionally lively. However, during the time when various South Sea countries were all busy gathering and celebrating in the Mermaid Kingdom, a delightful little child had set foot on the land of the Fire Pass country, located far to the north of the Mermaid Kingdom. Appearing before him was South Sea City, the southernmost border city of the Fire Pass country. Before this, Lu Heng used to set sail from here. Compared to the increasingly bustling Fan Jia Mountain, the present South Sea City appears rather desolate. As the Urba god man was rumored to have been slain by the ancient wolf god, it no longer rampaged through the South Sea, causing the boatmen to be willing to venture out to sea. Thus, the scene of South Sea City was even livelier than when Lu Heng and his companions arrived. Standing outside the city gate, the little boy looked up at the large characters inscribed on it and whispered to himself. This should be within the territory of Fire Pass Country should we go into the city to inquire. Another voice echoed inside the little boy's body. The grilled crimson scorpion fish in South Sea City is truly remarkable. Even if you are unable to obtain any news about old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia, who is not to be missed, you must not pass up on this exquisite earthly delight. After the voice of the eldest boy fell, the voices of the others also began to chime in one after another. Absolutely, let's go into the city for a meal. We have been scared and avoided danger all the way, afraid of attracting that demon. We have suffered a lot of grievances, so it is time to take a break now. Go to the city and eat fish. Go to the city and eat fish. The delectable flavor of the red snapper caused a clamor amongst all those present. And then, the little boy with the character 5 carved on the back of his hand cleared his throat, silenced the voices of the crowd, and walked straight into the gates of the South Sea City. After arriving in the city, he didn't waste any time, and went straight to the post station in the central area of South Sea City. Even if the post station was right in front of the entrance to Fire God Temple, he didn't care. With their abilities as siblings, even though their souls were damaged now, without the suppression of the Maluo sword, the actual strength that they can display outside is even stronger. The priest of a mere Fire God Temple, they don't consider him important. Even if Emperor Lian Shan Kuei came, they would not be afraid of him. After all, even if they can't win, they can still run. The boy relaxed his mood and walked directly into the gate of the post station's restaurant. The post station occupied an extremely large area, which could even be called a small town within. It had pavilions, towers, guest rooms, buildings, restaurants, and pubs, all fully equipped to welcome merchants and travelers from the north and south. The adorable young boy walked through the entrance of the restaurant and in a childish yet endearing tone, spoke to the steward here. Chapter 192 Bring a private room and grill two fresh red drum fish. Then serve delicious food and great wine, I want to have a hearty meal. The astonishing words uttered by the little boy instantly captured the attention of all the diners in the restaurant. Among them was a red-haired woman sitting by the window drinking. Amidst the astonished gazes of onlookers, the adorable little boy grimaced ferociously and retorted with a curse. What are you looking at? A group of little brats who haven't even grown all their hair yet, do they have any opinions about your ancestor me? Haven't you ever seen your ancestor ordering food? Keep staring and I'll gouge out all of your eyeballs. Although the little boy had a childish tone, his fierce expression instantly brought about a hint of sinister energy. The diners in the restaurant are mostly traveling merchants, but there are also some eccentric individuals among them. While most are ordinary people, it is well known that there are many who are capable of rejuvenation, and thus human age cannot be judged by appearance alone. Therefore, despite the fierce scolding from the boy, nobody dared to reply. All the bystanders hung their heads in silence, refusing to provoke any further trouble. Only the red-haired woman gazed at the little boy at the door with wonder and amazement, and after her gaze lingered on the back of his hand for a moment, she showed a smile. Fun fun. Lian Shan Jing chuckled softly and, like everyone else in the restaurant, averted her gaze. But as she drank, she couldn't help but listen to the conversation between the young boy and the steward not far away. 
After scolding the crowd, the young boy turned to the stunned steward beside him and haughtily declared. Did you hear me? Hurry up and prepare a secluded private room, as well as good wine and dishes. You have delayed my time, I will skin you and use your hide to make a blanket for myself. The little boy uttered foul language, causing the fur-covered steward to furrow his brow. He is a righteous demon cultivator, whose true form is that of a mountain cat. He has been cultivating alongside the Wuzhu of South Sea City for several decades. Although he has not yet transformed, he possesses divine intelligence and abilities. Despite still having fur, he can also take on a half-human, half-demonic form for his travels. Therefore, he took on the job of managing the restaurant at the post office. This allowed him to witness the comings and goings of society while relying on his identity as a demon cultivator to keep the rowdy and unruly customers in check. When faced with a major problem, it cannot be immediately resolved and one may seek assistance from the wizards in a timely manner. Now that he opened his magic eyes, he saw the divine light shining on the little baby in front of him, indeed surpassing his cultivation base. However, the other party's attitude was so abhorrent. The steward said, please take a seat, senior, delicious wine and food will come later. After persuading the little boy with kind words and leading him into the private room, the manager promptly sent someone to inform the wizards of the fire god temple that a malevolent and vicious cultivator had arrived at their location. Later, he urged the kitchen to quickly prepare the roasted red snapper and delicious food and wine that the young boy needed. After the wine and dishes were served, the steward intended to go inside the private room to socialize and test the intentions of the senior guest. However, before he even stepped through the door, he was forcefully repelled by a wave of ominous energy. The voice of the little boy's milk-like scolding sounded inside the compartment. Everyone, retreat further away from me, for the sake of your own life. I will call upon you when needed, don't come closer otherwise. Shortly after, there was no sound coming from inside the compartment, and outsiders could no longer sense any movement inside. Upon seeing such a sight, the steward couldn't help but sigh and turn away. However, this spectacle happened to catch the eye of the wizard dispatched by the fire god temple to investigate the situation. The young wizard, upon witnessing the ferociousness of the person inside the booth, immediately showed a visage of anger. What kind of thieving scoundrel are you? How dare you come to South Sea City causing trouble? He angrily cursed and intended to charge into the door, but was quickly stopped by the steward. Wait a moment, Junior Ning, the steward stopped the young wizard and whispered, the senior in this compartment is not to be trifled with. Just offer him a meal and send him away, so that he finishes eating and leaves, thus saving us trouble. If a fight were to break out, there would likely be many casualties there's no need for that. The admonishment of the steward made Ning Zhongyi slightly surprised. He whispered, is what you said true? Is this little boy really so terrifying? The steward sighed and said, I used my magic eyes to observe, and his divine light was blinding. His level of cultivation may even surpass that of our Wuzhu so, let him go. In my perception, this senior is only here with the intention of satisfying his hunger. However, it seems that he has other important matters to attend to. After he finishes eating, he will most likely depart, since he is not one of those ruffians seeking to create trouble. Upon hearing the steward's words, Ning Zhongyi nodded. All right then. I'll listen to you. Not bad, this old senior is so fierce. I must report to my leader. I will leave it to you here. This is nature. Senior Ning, please take your time, said the steward seeing off the young and energetic wizard. He returned to his position and continued bookkeeping as if nothing had happened. And his conversation with Ning Zhongyi was naturally unknown to outsiders. Therefore, the patrons in the restaurant were quite curious and wished to stay and witness how the fire god temple would deal with the young troublemaker who caused a commotion here. After all, there are not many people who dare to make trouble in front of the gate of the fire god temple. However, the young wizard came and went, while the steward lazily attended to the miscellaneous affairs. Everything was calm and peaceful as if the fire god temple had no intention of tending to the young boy in the box. And so, time gradually passed by. Occasionally, from within that private room, a command could be heard, usually calling out for more dishes or drinks. 
Moreover, the majority of the additions were precious ingredients such as red snapper, and he continued to eat until the sun had set and the sky was dark, only then was the door to the private room kicked open. A lovely little girl came out of the private room, rubbing her belly and reeking of alcohol. When she arrived downstairs, she addressed the steward. Go go and prepare a well-furnished guest room for me. I will be staying in your city tonight. The little girl who walked out of the private room stunned all the people outside. Many people knew about the wicked little boy who came to the restaurant and called himself Ancestor, but now when he finished eating and came out, how did he turn into a little girl? Even the steward was somewhat stunned by this scene. He frowned at the little girl in front of him and glanced behind her throughout the whole afternoon, he stayed in the restaurant but didn't notice anyone entering the private room. Could it be an optical illusion that deceived his senses? However, inside the post station, there were magic arrays to guard against thieves and even wizards could not use illusion there. The little girl in front of him. The steward pondered briefly before smiling and saying, May I ask how many guest rooms are needed, senior? The little girl, reeking of alcohol, glared at him and shouted, Are you a blind and deaf stupid cat? I said one room. The best room. Can't you hear clearly? If you don't want your ears, I'll tear them off for you. As soon as the words fell off her lips, the little girl reached out to the steward standing right before her. In an instant, the pupils of the steward's eyes abruptly contracted. At that moment, although the little girl's movements were not fast, he could not dodge them. It seemed that his whole body was frozen, and it was difficult to even lift a finger, completely unable to move. As the fingertips were about to touch the ear of the steward, a light laughter suddenly sounded by the window. He he the wolf god has killed you once, yet you are still so arrogant, daring to rampage through the fire pass country. I was just curious to know if you were truly dead, but I never expected you to come knocking at my door haha this time, I will capture you and offer you sixteen monsters as hors d'oeuvres to the wolf god. The red-haired woman burst into laughter, instantly drawing the attention of everyone inside and outside the room. The little girl, who was reeking of alcohol, was even more startled. She quickly pulled her hand back and stepped back half a yard, looking apprehensively at the red-haired woman by the window. What kind of person are you? The little girl said in a low voice. Daring to meddle in my affairs, I reckon you're bored with living. The little girl remained ferocious and wicked, yet despite her harsh words, she was feeling slightly anxious. Until the red-haired woman spoke, she had not even noticed that someone was by the window, unconsciously ignoring the red-haired woman. Such a phenomenon is by no means normal. In theory, she shouldn't have missed any movement or sound both inside and outside of the house. However, the red-haired woman appeared suddenly and caught her off guard, as if she had been completely ignored prior to that moment. Moreover, this woman revealed their origins in one breath and even mentioned the wolf god the wolf god could it be a companion of that demon. At the thought of this, the little girl's heart sank and she cursed out loud. This is South Sea City, and the opposite is the Fire God Temple. How dare evil demons cause trouble in this place? Hey! Stupid cat! Go and inform your wuju that a demon has come here. The little girl shouted at the steward. However, after finishing her scolding, she was astonished to see the steward running towards the red-haired woman ahead, eagerly bowing to her in excitement. Lord! The steward's words surprised all the spectators inside and outside the restaurant. Lord! Is the woman in front of their eyes really the Lord of Fire Pass Country? In an instant, both inside and outside of the restaurant, a clamorous sound of people kneeling down resonated. The crowd, all on one knee, showed utmost deference as they paid their respects to the red-haired woman. Respect to you, our Lord. Even foreigners and cultivators from foreign lands would also bow down in respect. Such a situation immediately made the little girl standing there stand out as extremely unique. Chapter, 193 With a smiling and attentive gaze, Lian Shan Jing watched as the little girl grew both shocked and angry. Are you the lord of fire past country? Is Lian Shan Kue dead? And how exactly are you related to Lian Shan Kue? Lian Shan Jing gave a faint smile and said, I am Lian Shan Jing. I didn't expect you sixteen little monsters to still remember my father Hee Hee but since he's not here, let me be the one to entertain you today. 
As the sound faded, Lianshan Jing swiftly untied the wineskin from her waist and flung it into the skies. In an instant, a fierce gale arose and scorching flames suddenly appeared from the sky, transforming into an interwoven network of light that descended upon this place. The holy fire demon binding net that Lianshan Jing unleashed with the help of borrowed city defenses, was far more powerful than what Lu Hang had witnessed in Fu Shan City. At the moment when the holy fire demon binding net appeared, the little girl's face changed drastically. The ability of Emperor Yan's daughter is even stronger than she had imagined. Just the holy fire demon binding net alone, its power had already surpassed her father Lian Shan Kuei's. Fight with her. The voices of other people echoed within the little girl's body. Having seen the power of the holy fire demon binding net, Urba God Man knew that today there was no possibility of a peaceful resolution. This young woman actually possessed more strength than her father. With a flash of light, the little girl in the restaurant was immediately surrounded by indistinct figures. Sixteen lovely little boys and girls held each other's hands and stood in a row. The energy of evil and purity intertwined and rose to the sky, causing the roof of the restaurant to be lifted off in an instant. Amidst the flying debris of bricks and tiles, onlookers both inside and outside the restaurant quickly scattered in a momentary panic. Only Lianshan Jing and the steward were left, as well as the servants in the restaurant who had not left. Smilingly gazing at the sixteen little monsters in front of her, and facing their immensely powerful aura, Lianshan Jing chuckled and said. You guys eat and drink for free, and even dismantled my roof but it's okay, I forgive you this time. After all, you are the best gift. Ha ha ha. Lianshan Jing laughed heartily, waving goodbye to everyone in the diner as she leapt towards the sixteen little monsters with great force. The scorching flames descended from the sky in a net-like pattern. The wine gourd, magnified countless times, spewed a brilliant blue flame of terror. Confronted with Lianshan Jing's immensely powerful blaze, the sixteen little monsters collectively voiced their fury through curses. Petty tricks. You dare to show off. When we roamed the land in the past, you didn't even have a single hair on your body. But now you dare to act recklessly in front of us. When your father Lianshan Kuei was alive, he never dared to speak to us like this kill her. Today, let the Lord of Fire pass country fall. Yes. Kill her. Let the Lord of Fire pass country fall. Sixteen little monsters cursed in unison, as waves of divine light and evil energy surged into the sky. For a moment, the powerful might even cause the entire South Sea city to be filled with trepidation. Everyone looked with fear towards the direction of the relay station, unaware of what had happened. Half an hour later, within the pitch black and quiet waters of the pond, ripples formed on the surface. One after another, clean and tender little boys and girls crawled out of the dark and quiet pool, their expressions tired and fearful. Goodness that woman is so formidable. A boy's face was frightened, with lingering fear in his heart. Beside him, another boy struggled to crawl out of the water, and now lay weak and powerless on the ground, wriggling like a feeble white worm. Lianshan Kue unexpectedly gave birth to such a daughter no wonder he died early, who could bear such a terrifying daughter. Ouch it hurt so much. It was already miserable enough, and now I feel like I've died again. My soul is on the verge of shattering. It hurts so much. Okay, okay, stop cursing. Who isn't in pain right now? I feel like I'm about to fall apart into pieces. Awo knew we would be so unlucky. We've been careful for so many days, only to end up not encountering that demon, but instead running into the equally detestable Lianshan Jing Dam. If only the Maoyuo sword were still here, would have made that woman know the power of the ancient demonic sword. Stop the crap. With the Maoyuo sword in her possession, our abilities are suppressed, and we cannot have a chance to defeat that woman damn it, something is off about her. Why is she so much stronger than her own father? Why do you care why she is so strong? The headache now is how to find the old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia. That old ascetic cultivator is wandering in Fire Pass Country, but there is such a terrible woman in Fire Pass Country now how can we find the old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia? Yes, if we bump into her again and she kills us once more, we will really be in danger. Oh, it hurts so much dying twice, why are we so unlucky? 
the accursed old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia, where on earth has he disappeared to? He has made it so arduous for us to locate him. A uh, maybe we shouldn't look for it anymore. In the midst of everyone's complaints, someone suddenly whispered an opinion, even if we don't seek out Jiu Mia, as long as we hide well, the demon won't be able to find us. We'll return to the world when the time is right. However, as soon as the proposal was put forward, it was vehemently denounced and harshly criticized. What the hell are you talking about? That demon caused harm to the emperor many years ago. How can we just sit here and let this demon deceive and mislead people? We must find someone to kill him. At the very least, everyone must know that the demon is an ancient demon, not from our side. That's right. The emperor showed us kindness in the past. If we turn a blind eye to his enemies, what kind of people are we? Old Eleven, you can even say such nonsense, do you have any shame left? That's right. Old Eleven, you effeminate man, I've been disliking you for a long time. You, such a cowardly and weak-willed waste, are also worthy of being our brother. When the emperor died, we should have killed you and buried you with him. Let you go and accompany him. Enough, enough, everyone stops arguing. Old Eleven is afraid that we might die again considering our current situation, if we were to die again in a short period of time, that would truly be dangerous. The eldest boy stopped everyone's shouting and said, insulting him won't solve anything, what's important now is what our siblings should do next. After the eldest boy finished speaking, everyone looked at him. Someone asked, what should we do now? Big brother, you speak, I'll listen to you. Yes, let's listen to the eldest brother. The eldest brother, how do you suggest we proceed? What plans do you have, our eldest brother? Everyone was asking questions one after another. The eldest boy pondered for a moment and sighed, what good ideas do I have? It's nothing but continuing to search for the old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia. That Lianshan Jing may have colluded with the demon, whether out of deception or bribery, is unclear. However, regardless of the reason, after news of today's events in South Sea City spreads, the demon will undoubtedly know that we are still alive and will surely come looking for us again. We need to act low-key from now on, we cannot be reckless anymore. I'll be in charge of leading the team, and will keep a low profile as we sneak into Fire Pass country in search of Jiu Mia. As long as we don't run into the demon and the woman named Lianshan Jing head-on, ordinary wuzus and wizards won't see through our deception. When we find the old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia and explain the details to him, we'll go after the demon to settle the debt. Chapter, 194 In the tranquil and secluded place, Lu Hung was completely unaware of the tragic scene where Erba God Man was killed again by Lian Shan Jing. Even if he knew, he would only burst into laughter and find ways to locate the person and kill him again. He, who had been away for a long time, pushed open the door and stepped out, ceasing his cultivation of martial arts. In the bamboo garden, Hua Feng dressed in the attire of the Yun sect, was still bargaining with the bow horse. Hua Feng, who has been unconscious for almost half a month, now that he has recovered, astonishingly made rapid progress in his cultivation and advanced quickly. Hua Feng looks much better now than before, as he no longer appears as sickly as he used to. However, that ever-present broad-minded and fearless spirit, which the woman possessed despite her slender and beautiful appearance, added an unusual charm to her. On several previous occasions when Huafeng went out, he happened to come across guests looking for pleasure at the warm fragrance pavilion, which caused a little disturbance. Currently, there is a rumor spreading throughout Fanjia City that a new courtesan named Miss Huafeng has arrived at the warm fragrance pavilion. She is said to be the most beautiful woman in the South Seas and her mere presence fills people's hearts with delight. However, Miss Huafeng holds herself in high esteem and seldom shows her face, let alone deigning to receive visitors. Even to this day, not to mention receiving distinguished guests, most outsiders are unaware of her background, yet rumors spread. Regarding this matter, the owner of Warm Fragrance Pavilion has repeatedly defended themselves publicly. However, they were unable to stop the rumors from spreading at an alarming rate. Just because the treasure conference was approaching, the Fanjia Mountain was already bustling with all kinds of merchants and travelers from the north and south. Most of the merchants' attendants could not enter the sea and could only stay on the shore waiting for their leaders to return. 
These idle people mingled in the city and, out of boredom, made the name of the new Oiren at the Warm Fragrance Pavilion more and more famous. So much so that the Warm Fragrance Pavilion, which was usually quiet and peaceful, has recently been bustling with a continuous stream of guests, even more lively than this time last year. However, Huafeng is a friend of the Wolf God, Wu Gu's patient, so how dare the owner of the Warm Fragrance Pavilion offend him? All the distinguished guests who came to visit were turned away by the master of the pavilion. Seeing that the rumors were getting stronger, the pavilion master didn't even dare to disclose the news of the wolf god's presence here. She was afraid that the outside rumors would connect the so-called new Oiren with the wolf god and tarnish the name of the wolf god. However, Lu Hung was also aware of these things, especially the fact that Huafeng had not left his house since the rumor spread, and instead cultivated every day inside. He was born as a proud young man, but now he has become a woman's body and even rumor to be a courtesan this situation is truly difficult to bear. Even more dangerous is that, now that she is in her female body, her cultivation is almost non-existent, yet she still manages to create such a reputation. Attracting countless covetous people from inside and outside the city, making Huafeng extremely insecure. After she woke up, the wolf god told her a terrifying fact. Which Wu Gu said if brother Hua accidentally gets pregnant within these three years it's very likely that you won't be able to go back to your original state. Moreover, the yin and yang energy in your body will be imbalanced as a result, not only becoming a woman for eternity but also a mortal for eternity, and you will never be able to step on the path of cultivation again. Hua Feng, being a dignified man, would never commit foolish acts. However, now that he has an outstanding appearance, he may encounter lustful and malicious individuals who would resort to force. Whenever he thought of such a terrifying scene, Huafeng couldn't help but feel a chill in his heart. Therefore, she was too afraid to leave her place after coming in, but now, she is bargaining with the bow horse, wanting to go out and join the fun. Lu Heng became curious upon seeing her doing so. Lu Heng smiled and asked, Is Brother Hu going out? Upon hearing the voice of the wolf god, Huafeng hastily turned around and spoke to the white wolf in front of him, Indeed, I intend to journey towards the city. Tonight is the day of the opening gate of the Fanjia mountain and the rising of the moon blossom. I have heard various rumors while on land and my heart yearns for it. Now is the perfect opportunity, with an irresistible itch in my heart, to participate in the fun and expand my horizons. Huafeng was speaking the truth. This young man from the Yun sect was inherently restless, his greatest passion in the past being to wander the earth, encounter numerous marvels, and experience the local customs and cultures from different places. Keeping her inside the warm fragrance pavilion for around ten days without going out, was nearly suffocating her. Tonight happens to be the annual grand event in Fan Jie Mountain. The city is decorated with colorful lights and bustling with excitement. Huafeng cannot control the temptation and wishes for the bow horse to accompany him on a journey to the city. Thus, even if he encounters any mishap, with the bow horse around, he can readily escape back to the warm fragrance pavilion. However, after Lu Heng listened to Huafeng's vivid account of the bustling and lively atmosphere, he couldn't help but feel tempted as well. After residing in the warm fragrance pavilion for nearly a month, he was growing weary. Upon reflection, Despite being in Fan Jie Mountain, the most treacherous city in the South Sea, he had yet to venture outside and explore the local culture. Therefore, Lu Heng chuckled and said, In that case, I'll join in on the fun today. Let us, siblings ahem travel together. Lu Heng deliberately changed a word, teasingly. In the past, Hua Feng would have hurriedly paid his respects to the wolf god, and would not have dared to speak familiarly with him as if they were brothers. Now with just a slight teasing from Lu Heng, Hua Feng felt helpless and could only force a bitter smile, without being able to speak a word. Afterwards, Lu Heng also invited Xiao Ai to come along, and they stopped by to invite Wu Gu on the way. Wu Gu, being an obsessed medic, had no interest in any kind of commotion all she wanted was to stay in the yard and continue her research on Urinia. Urinia was quite willing to go, but now she is divided into big and small parts and can only envy them while soaking in a jar. Although Wu Gu smiled and said, you can ask the wolf god to take your head out, as long as you don't leave the range of Fan Jie Mountain, your head will not be disconnected from your body, and you can still watch the bustle. 
The behavior of going out for a walk holding only a head is too bizarre. Even though Lu Heng smiled and agreed it was a good idea, Yu Renye quickly declined. The little fox, on the other hand, had earned Wu Gu's holiday break and shouted for joy as she joined Lu Heng and his companions on their journey. So a wolf, a goo eagle, a bow horse, a little girl with silver animal ears, a little fox who hasn't fully transformed yet. And a beautiful woman dressed in yun sect clothing left the warm fragrance pavilion and merged into the busy crowd in the city. Although Lu Heng can use his soul to travel, he easily draws attention from cultivators due to the transcendental demeanor and impeccable appearance of his soul incarnation. Although the wolf's body was also tall, there were various exotic beasts of demon cultivators throughout the city, so Lu Heng was not particularly special, and thus he went out with his demonic body. After leaving the warm fragrance pavilion, on the outside deck walkway, there were crowds of people coming and going, jostling each other, much more lively than when Lu Heng and his group had arrived. And this is also a high place. Tonight's real bustling venue is on the plain below. When Lu Heng and his companions looked down from the trestle bridge, they saw that the city below was teeming with crowds. The crowded and noisy scene made Xiao Ai gasp in amazement. Although she had traveled around the South Sea with the wolf god, the lively and prosperous scenery of the human world was still a novelty for the little girl who had grown up in the mountains. Chapter 195 The usually reticent little girl unexpectedly revealed a hint of a smile and said. If I were to go back and tell Sun Yen, that monkey would surely be envious to no end. After speaking, the little girl suddenly noticed that everyone around her had become quiet. Slightly turning her head, she noticed Hua Feng, Gu Yan, the little fox, the bow horse even the wolf god, all staring at her with incredible gazes. It was as if they had seen a ghost. The little girl's heart immediately panicked, and she hastily asked, Has Xiao Ai done something wrong? Hua Feng and Bo Horse exchanged a look, unsure of what to say. Lu Heng smiled and said, It's nothing, just that Xiao Ai, you looked so beautiful when you laughed from now on, you should smile more often. Lu Heng's semi-joking remark immediately caused Xiao Ai to blush, she quickly lowered her head and dared not look at the wolf god again. Even in the connected section of the road below, she kept her head down tightly. The blush on her face spread to her ears. Her heart was beating fast but she couldn't say a word. Until they descended from the high ground and arrived in the midst of a vast city on level ground, passing through a lively and spacious crossroads. Lu Heng suddenly halted his steps, as if sensing something, and glanced towards a restaurant on the side of the road. Upon the third floor of the restaurant, there lay an open window where a woman named Lien Tsai was seen with an expression of surprise and hesitation while gazing in their direction, as if deciding whether or not to greet them. Now that Lu Heng was looking at her, Lien Tsai couldn't pretend to ignore him anymore. She smiled and bowed to Lu Heng below, saying. The wolf god, nice to meet you. Lu Heng glanced at Hua Feng beside him. It was obvious that Miss Hua Feng, who had a widespread reputation in Fan Jie City, was stunned by the unexpected encounter with Lien Tsai here. Lu Heng couldn't help but smile at Hua Feng as he gazed into Miss Hua Feng's eyes that were filled with both joy and fear. It seems that these two people are really meant to be, as they bumped into each other shortly after parting ways. He didn't even look at Hua Feng beside him, and walked directly towards the restaurant, while Lien Tsai quickly flew down and stood by the door to greet him. Miss Hua Feng, who was beside Lu Heng, was already of extremely beautiful appearance, attracting the attention of many passers-by on the road. Now, an exquisite beauty has flown out of the restaurant, whose grace and beauty are nothing less than this young lady of the Yun sect. Two stunning beauties stood by the side of the white wolf, immediately arousing curiosity and speculation among the people. It made them wonder which demonic hero had come to Fan Jie Mountain, accompanied by such unearthly beauties. However, Lu Heng and his companions ascended directly to the third floor, cutting off the curious gaze of those outside, and even their greetings were limited to a nod and a smile without excessive verbiage. Therefore, the passers-by outside became even more curious. And inside the compartment at this moment, after welcoming everyone in, Lien Tsai turned to Lu Heng with a smile and greeted him. It was a joy to see the wolf god again. Looking at the attire of this sister by your side, I presume she is the renowned lady of the warm fragrance pavilion, 
who has recently gained fame in the South Sea. Although I have just arrived in Fanjia City, sister, I have heard your name and it is truly a great pleasure to finally meet you today. Lien Tsai smiled as she exhibited the tactics she had honed amongst the female cultivators of her craft. However, as soon as she finished speaking, Hua Feng, who had been hesitant and speechless, suddenly turned black and became even more uncertain of what to say. Hua Feng's facial expression slightly changed, which made Lien Tsai slightly surprised did her words offend this companion of the wolf god. Although she knew that there was a mist from the warm fragrance pavilion by the wolf god's side, she only had a vague knowledge and didn't truly know too much. Now seeing that Miss Hua Feng's complexion was not good, Lien Tsai quickly looked at Lu Hang and wanted to apologize. However, the wolf god appeared in his white form, sitting there shaking his head and laughing. It seems that he was not angry about it. Lien Tsai breathed a sigh of relief, glad that she had not incurred the wrath of the wolf god. She quickly raised her glass to Huafeng and said, As an elder sister, I know I misspoke. I apologize to you, younger sister, and will punish myself with a drink. Please don't take offense. After speaking, Lien Tsai raised her head and drank a glass of watered wine. She planned to let the matter pass for now, and as for how she had offended the young lady with her words, she would inquire and apologize later. And as Lien Tsai raised her glass to drink, Lu Heng looked at her with a smirk and said, Actually, there's no need for Miss Tsai to feel estranged, for this young lady is not a stranger, but a friend whom you parted with not long ago. His name is Hua Feng, a disciple of the Yun sect. Not long ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, he transformed into a female body. Will you not? Puff. The sound of wine spraying sounded. After hearing Lu Heng's words, despite Lien Tsai's more than 800 years of cultivated character and broad experience, she couldn't help but spit out a mouthful of wine. Terrified. Hua Feng. She looked incredulously at the beautiful woman across from her, almost suspecting that she was in a dream. Is this beautiful lady Hua Feng? Lien Tsai almost fainted as if everything before her suddenly turned pitch black. Chapter 196 Inside the compartment, Lien Tsai was flabbergasted and almost lost all her elegance and grace. Facing her, Miss Hua Feng, who was well known in Fan Jia Mountain, had an awkward expression and didn't know what to say for a moment. Xiao Ai was sitting upright, looking serious, while the little fox was sneakily glancing around, enjoying the spectacle. Gu Yan was hanging upside down on the windowsill, his eyes rolling around incessantly, looking non-stop, but not saying a word. If the bow horse were present at this moment, seeing this atmosphere, he might whistle and reveal his white teeth once again. However, the bow horse was waiting for me outside and hadn't come up. The only one who could break the awkward atmosphere inside was Lu Heng. Lu Heng smiled and said, Is Miss Tsai so surprised because you think about the promise with Brother Huo? Last time when Lien Tsai parted ways with Lu Heng, she made a statement that she would never cause trouble for Hua Feng again, and even declared that she would retreat a hundred miles away from wherever Hua Feng goes. This time, she initiated the conversation with Lu Heng instead of turning around and running away, because she saw that Hua Feng was not around, so she came forward with a smile. Lu Heng was aware of her thought, and he knew that if Hua Feng came to Wan Xi and Gu to visit in person in the future, he would definitely encounter some setbacks and teasing. But Lu Heng is not a matchmaker or a god of love, he is not interested in dealing with matters of love affairs. If Hua Feng encounters setbacks and teasing in the future, but has the opportunity to gain a beautiful companion, it is not a loss and Lu Heng doesn't plan to intervene. Unexpectedly, these two foolish lovers, who constantly torment each other, have a deep-seated fate. Now that they have met in this place, Lu Heng took the opportunity to help resolve their conflict. He finished speaking, but Lien Tsai's expression was embarrassed. She was both startled and afraid. She was not afraid of the wolf god, but of Miss Hua Feng in front of her. However, she remained composed and smiled at Lu Heng, Wolf God, please don't jest. How can a man turn into a woman? To reverse the yin and yang energy and harmonize the body shape goes against common sense could it be that in just a few days, Hua Feng has already mastered the art of transformation to the point where even I am unable to see through it. 
As she spoke, Lien Tsai used her magic eyes once again to observe and confirm that the woman in front of her was indeed a true female, and not an illusory transformation. Only then did she let out a sigh of relief. Lu Heng's solemn expression made Tsai realize that he was not joking. This is indeed Huafeng, my brother who was abducted and held in the valley by Urba God Man for more than ten days if you don't believe me, you can ask her. Lu Heng's words made Lien Tsai involuntarily look at Huafeng. However, the beautiful woman in front of her hesitated for a long time, and finally forced a smile with a stiff expression, saying the wolf god, please don't joke around, I don't know who Huafeng is. The woman's voice was indeed very beautiful, but with such a stiff and forced tone, and those nervous gestures Lien Tsai, who saw this scene, was directly stunned. To be honest, if Huafeng had admitted directly, she still couldn't be sure. However, the barely exaggerated antics of the woman in front of her confirmed it, this woman is Huafeng. Lien Tsai once again glanced at Lu Heng, and saw the wolf god let out a sigh. Then, Lu Heng laughed and said, All right, I'm not joking anymore. Brother Hua has indeed departed from me, his injuries have healed, and he has continued on his journey. Miss Huafeng, whom I have just met at the Warm Fragrance Pavilion, is a friend of mine and a disciple of the Yun sect and the same name as Brother Huafeng, hence the little joke. I hope Miss Tsai won't mind. Lu Heng's words made Lien Tsai's expression strange. She looked at the wolf god in front of her, then at Miss Huafeng who breathed a sigh of relief beside her, and for a moment, she didn't know what to say. When they parted ways in the valley, she had imagined ten thousand scenes of saying goodbye to Huafeng, and how she could act to capture the heart of this young man. However, she had imagined ten thousand possibilities, but had never thought of the scene before her. Huafeng, the young man from the Yun sect whom she had set her sights on and taken her virginity, had turned into a woman. And she is so beautiful. Subconsciously, Lien Tsai touched her lower abdomen, her expression complicated. If it weren't for her 800 years of strong mental cultivation, Lien Tsai would probably have already had a breakdown by now. The atmosphere in the partition room was somewhat awkward. However, Lien Tsai is not the type of young girl with a childish mindset. Despite the strange situation in front of her, she quickly returned to her normal state. I see. The wolf god, you really gave Tsai a scarahabat, did Huafeng mention me before he left? Lien Tsai asked expectantly. Hm well Lu Heng pondered and said, since he has already left, there's no need to dwell on this matter. If Miss Tsai has the fate to meet Brother Hu again in the future, you can ask him then. Lu Heng's words made Lien Tsai sigh, with a hint of sorrow between her eyebrows. Did that unfaithful man not even mention me sigh as it's often said, a night as husband and wife leads to a hundred days of gratitude. Yet now, I am treated as a disposable shoe, without any affection left. Lien Tsai was originally extremely beautiful, but her current sorrowful appearance immediately evokes infinite compassion and sympathy. Lu Heng and Xiao Ai didn't say a word, but Miss Huafeng couldn't help but feel unsettled at the sight of Lien Tsai's heartbreaking expression. However, she hesitated to speak several times and ultimately remained silent. Lien Tsai expressed her sorrowful sentiments briefly. Despite receiving no solace, she composed herself, adjusted her demeanor, and resumed her smile, raising her cup to toast Lu Hang and others. I apologize for my momentary lapse of composure. Please accept my self-imposed punishment of a cup of wine, said Lien Tsai. Having spoken, she drank down another cup of wine. She had now transformed back into the graceful and artful demon woman, having seemingly escaped from all her previous grief. She smiled and said to Miss Huafeng, before coming to Fan Jie Mountain, Tsai had long admired Miss Huafeng. Meeting you now is truly as beautiful and extraordinary as the rumors say, and I am greatly pleased are you also a disciple of the insect? Ah, uh, um, yes, Huafeng replied hesitantly, not daring to look at Lien Tsai's face, feeling somewhat guilty. However, Lien Tsai seemed not to notice anything and smiled, that's great. I quite like the Yun sect's philosophy of cultivation. We can exchange our ideas on it later. After speaking, Lien Tsai looked towards Lu Heng and said, Is the wolf god and sister Huafeng currently staying at the warm fragrance pavilion? That's excellent. Tsai was also planning to stay there. 
It seems I will have the good fortune to hear teachings from the wolf god again. The words were said as such, but Lien Sai looked at Huafeng on the opposite side, smiling happily. Seeing this situation, Lu Heng had a thought in his heart and went along with the current. He smiled and said, That is indeed very good. Miss Huafeng is currently coveted throughout the city and has no one to rely on. Why not take care of her more, Miss Tsai? With you accompanying and protecting her, I believe outsiders will not be able to harm her. Lu Heng pushed Huafeng out with a smile. With Huafeng's current situation, looking so beautiful yet having little cultivation, it is indeed quite dangerous if she were to be separated from Lu Heng's protection. However, Lu Heng cannot always protect Huafeng. After the matter in the South Sea is resolved, he will have to return to Hanyu Mountain. It's impossible to bring Huafeng back to the mountain, right? Now that he has left Huafeng with Lien Tsai, he has found a suitable bodyguard for her. Also, it will be an opportunity for them to contact each other and build a better relationship, which is a win-win situation. Lu Heng's proposal made Lien Tsai's eyes brighten. She quickly said, I see, Tsai understands. The wolf god, you can rest assured that no one can harm her. Lien Tsai looked gratefully at Lu Heng, although she didn't verbally express her gratitude. But as they locked eyes, everything was communicated without words. Lu Heng smiled and said, Good. In that case, I can also rest assured. After a brief conversation, they directly threw Huafeng out. Huafeng, who was sitting next to them, surprisingly couldn't speak up or refuse. Because she currently had a notorious reputation at Fan Jia Mountain, there were countless people who coveted her. If she could have the protection of Lien Tsai, it would undoubtedly be much safer. Just. As Huafeng looked at Lien Tsai, who was smiling and calling her little sister, her heart trembled for some unknown reason, with a sense of foreboding. It was really difficult to not reveal any flaws in front of such a shrewd person as Lien Tsai. She had to ask Wu Gu and the others to protect her when she went back, and she definitely couldn't let any information leak otherwise, she would be too ashamed to face Lien Tsai. While Huafeng pondered in her heart, the atmosphere in the compartment returned to normal. Lien Tsai's joining eased Lu Heng's burden, and he no longer needed to worry about Huafeng's safety as much. After leaving the compartment, Lien Tsai followed Lu Heng and roamed around the city. Fan Jie Mountain today is bustling with incredible activity. Wherever Lien Tsai and Huafeng, the two stunningly beautiful women dressed in purple, went, they attracted countless admirers. Furthermore, these two gorgeous ladies were quite intimate or rather, Lien Tsai had displayed a great deal of intimacy. As soon as they stepped out, she naturally took hold of Huafeng's hand, behaving in a playful and intimate manner with no barriers, appearing like two close sisters. Lu Heng led the bow horse and Xiao Ai in front, as they walked, they unexpectedly became separated from these two people. Huafeng, who had been dragged into a jewelry store by Lien Tsai on the roadside, emerged only to find that the wolf god had vanished from sight. In the crowded streets, all passers-by, men and women alike, looked at her curiously and admiringly, attracted by her appearance. Chapter 197 Some of the men's eyes looked rather malicious. Fortunately, there was Lien Tsai by her side she instinctively looked at Lien Tsai beside her and said, the wolf god and the others got separated. Huafeng wanted to search for Lu Heng. However, Lien Tsai laughed and dragged her to another shop, saying, if we get separated, so be it. The things that women like us look at will definitely not interest the esteemed wolf god. With me here, you can rest assured that I will protect you completely. With a smile, Lien Tsai said, little sister, you are so lovely, but you always go out with a plain face. You are wasting your good looks. Today, as your big sister, I will help you look for something beautiful and make sure you are all dressed up nicely he he he. Lien Tsai grinned and dragged Huafeng away. In the midst of the bustling city, on a street far away from this place, Xiao Ai would occasionally look back and ask. The wolf god said Xiao Ai with some regret, are we just going to hand sister Huafeng over to senior Tsai like that? Lu Heng smiled and gave her a stern look, do you still want to keep watching the show? Don't worry, if you really want to see some excitement, there will be plenty to see when we get back. We will have to stay at the warm fragrance pavilion for a while, as will Miss Tsai. 
there will be plenty of festivities for you to enjoy. After Lu Heng finished speaking, Xiao Ai's face turned slightly red. Before she could say anything, the bow horse behind them let out a snort, revealing its gleaming white teeth once again. Laughing tremendously happy. The little fox was completely confused and had been holding back all along and finally couldn't resist speaking now. Is that Sister Tsai's sister Hua's lover? Lu Heng shook his head with a smile and said, Not yet, but it may not be long before it happens haha. There wasn't much discussion about the matter between Hua Feng and Lian Tsai, and Lu Heng managed to brush it off with just a few casual remarks. Walking on the street with the little fox, Xiao Ai, and the bow horse, as Hua Feng no longer needed protection, the bow horse chose to return alone. Thus, on the busy street with people coming and going, only the white wolf was left to walk with the two little girls who had features of the demon clan. Besides the shops that were already open for business on both sides of the road, there were also many foreigners selling goods on the side of the road. Occasionally, Lu Heng also came across some interesting small objects, but mostly he just glanced and walked away. It wasn't until he stopped at a stall with a pile of small objects that he saw a very interesting item. It was a very ordinary wooden ornament, without any divine aura, but its carved image made Lu Heng very interested. Stepping on lotus flowers, wearing a white robe and veil, with delicate facial features, a slight smile on the face, holding a willow branch in the right hand. This image white-robed Guanin. Lu Heng's pupils slightly contracted. He never expected to see a statue of white-robed Guanin here. There is no Buddha's orthodox transmission in this world, so why is there a statue of white-robed Guanin? Lu Heng gazed towards the vendor of the street stall, who was a young sturdy man with dark skin, obviously a sailor who frequently roamed the sea. These trinkets and gadgets, their origin unknown. The white wolf approached the stall, lowering his head to examine the small objects on display. Meanwhile, the idle and unoccupied sturdy man sat up straight with a pleasing smile on his face upon spotting a potential customer. At the sight of the white wolf approaching, the sturdy man was filled with excitement. A regular demon cultivator wouldn't be interested in these small objects could it be that he suddenly had a stroke of luck. After a while, Lu Heng finished looking at everything in the small stall and realized that they were just ordinary ornaments. Besides the white-robed Guanin statue, there was nothing else worth noting. Upon closer inspection, even the white-robed Guanin statue had some differences from a genuine one. The common image of the white-robed Guanin has always been portrayed with a kind and compassionate expression to accentuate her benevolence. However, the woman's carved face in this wooden ornament is not broad and large, but rather a delicate oval-shaped face. There is no apparent kindness or friendliness, but rather, an exquisite beauty is displayed. Between her eyebrows, there is a faintly savage air that is inconsistent with Guanin's character, indicating that she is not an easygoing person. Additionally, the wooden carving doesn't depict the Buddhist madra with both hands, indicating a lack of Buddha nature. This white-robed woman, who stands on a lotus flower, may resemble Guanin at first glance, but in reality, has nothing in common with the true Guanin image. Lu Heng was somewhat disappointed and asked, Where did you get these ornaments from? Lu Heng casually asked, and the strong man hurriedly smiled and said, Lord Wolf, these ornaments are treasures passed down from generation to generation in my family. Now that I have encountered some difficulties, I urgently need money, so I have taken them out to sell. Do you like any of them, sir? The white wolf shook his head and chuckled, saying, These ornaments of yours show signs of water damage, some of them still have uncleaned algae so, your family heirloom is preserved underwater. That is certainly an unexpected way of treasure keeping. The lie was exposed by the white wolf, and the sturdy man was not embarrassed. He smirked, scratched his head, and said, Lord Wolf has a sharp eye indeed, these trinkets were all retrieved by meager folks from a sunken ship in the sea and are hardly valuable. However, I indeed lack money, so I resort to selling these items, hoping to earn some funds. The sturdy man spoke frankly and Lu Heng simply nodded in agreement. I don't fancy any of these trinkets, except for the woman's statue with white lotus under her feet. How much do you want for it? He inquired. Um well if you desire it, I will sell it for three pieces of nine word blade. It is a fair price, replied the sturdy man. The little fox could not hold back any more and spoke up. 
You dare to ask for three pieces of nine-word blade for this waterlogged wooden carving? What a greedy demand! The strong man looked helplessly at the white wolf and said, Little sister, your words have really wronged me while a common water-soaked wooden carving may not be worth three nine-word blade, this woman's statue is different. Although they were both soaked in sea water, when I pried open the wooden box at the time, the entire box of wooden carvings had water marks and were wrapped in seaweed. But, only this woman's wooden carving was as smooth as new. Not to mention seaweed, it didn't even have a trace of water-soaked marks. Even the craftsmanship is much finer than other wooden carvings. So, three pieces of nine-word blade are really not expensive. The strong man defended so. After listening, Lu Hun was struck with a sudden realization. He stretched out his huge claws and gently placed them on the wooden sculpture, infusing a faint ray of heavenly thunder. However, the sculpture remained plain and unremarkable, without any trace of divinity. The heavenly thunder that Lu Hung infused vanished without a trace, as if it had sunk into the ocean depths. Although Lu Hung didn't inject much, normally, that wisp of heavenly thunder power would only be enough to blow up the wooden carving. But now it has completely disappeared without a trace, which makes it special. Lu Hung said, All right, I'll take this wooden carving. But I don't have any money on me, can I exchange it with something else? Lu Hang looked at Xiao Ai and said, Xiao Ai, give this young man five grains of heavenly thunder sand. Xiao Ai was stunned, five grains. The wolf god isn't that a bit too much. Although heavenly thunder sand was nothing to the wolf god, it was a rare treasure in the outside world. In the mortal world, a single heavenly thunder sand was worth a fortune, but the wolf god gave five grains in a row. Lu Hang nodded and said, Yes, five grains. After finishing speaking, Lu Hang looked at the man in front of him and said, Since you are so honest, I won't hide it from you. This wooden sculpture is indeed somewhat unusual, but I don't know its origin or the secrets within. Perhaps this wooden carving could be a rare treasure, but it could also be just a sculpture with some minor trickery. The specifics need to be explored carefully. So I will only give you five pieces of heavenly thunder sand if I have misjudged and this wooden carving has no secrets, then it will be my own misfortune. But if this wooden carving holds great mysteries and is worth far more than five pieces of heavenly thunder sand young man, please don't accuse me of deceiving you. Lu Hang's words made the man pause for a moment. Five pieces of heavenly thunder sand? He thought for a moment and asked cautiously, are they the heavenly thunder sand that the Li tribe has been seeking in recent years, which is worth a fortune? Lu Hang nodded with a smile. Yes, it is this kind of heavenly thunder sand. Five pieces of it are enough to make you live in luxury for your whole life would you like to exchange it? The man was overjoyed and nodded repeatedly. I'm willing, I'm willing. I'm willing to give you all of my wood carvings, Lord Wolf, as long as you give me the heavenly thunder sand. Then, Lu Hang looked at Xiao Ai, and Xiao Ai sighed silently and handed the five pieces of heavenly thunder sand to the man. Faced with the group of monsters in front of him, the sturdy man didn't bother to appraise them and joyfully ran away with five pieces of heavenly thunder sand. Only Lu Hang Xiao Ai and the little fox, who was at a loss, were left behind. Watching the sturdy man's happy back as he left, the little fox was somewhat confused. Senior Wolf God, the little fox asked timidly, he only needs three nine-word blades why did you increase the price without our consent? Wouldn't you be at a loss this way? Lu Hang shook his head and said, young one, you are mistaken. I have not suffered a loss, and of course, this young man may not have gained a profit either. This wooden carving is indeed mysterious, not an ordinary item. If I were to deceive this mortal young man after knowing its value how am I different from those demonic scoundrels who cheat and deceive others? You must know, there is no free lunch in this world. If I took advantage of this person, and bought this wooden carving for a cheap price of three nine-word blades. If this wooden carving is truly valuable, then the consequences of my actions today could be significant. If I deceive this young man today, who knows, one day I might have to repay him a hundredfold. Of course, even if there is no karma in the future. But I, Lu Hang, don't lack those five heavenly thunder sands, yet I have to deceive a mortal with a guilty conscience he with such a mentality, how can I achieve the Tao? 
Looking at the ignorant little fox, Lu Heng rarely said seriously, the way of cultivation is already difficult. If you want to make progress, you must not corrupt your Tao heart. Those who are greedy for small gains and lack sincerity in their hearts will inevitably not go far in the way of cultivation. Even those evil cultivators and monsters who can reach the pinnacle must have a broad mind, great wisdom, and great perseverance. Not to mention the righteous cultivators, whose cultivation is even more difficult. Lu Heng said, We are the righteous demon cultivators, and the cultivation time is extremely long. If we cannot maintain a sincere heart, and always think about small gains and lack a firm Tao heart, one day we will not be able to endure the loneliness of cultivation, and enter the evil path. Lu Heng's half-joking, half-serious words made the little fox bow her head in silence. At this moment, she once again remembered Madame Green Bamboo. Madame Green Bamboo, who cultivated wicked ways. Chapter, 198 On the street, the little fox's expression appeared somewhat bewildered. The things that the wolf god recounted were things that she had never heard before. Although Madame Green Bamboo always reminded her to walk on the right path and not the wrong path, Madame Green Bamboo had never told her why she must walk the right path. In the past, she thought that walking the right or wrong path was almost the same thing, it was all cultivation. However, after meeting the wolf god, the little girl personally experienced how precious it was to have the eligibility to walk in the sun and be upright. Both of them were demon cultivators who came to the warm fragrance pavilion for medical treatment, but only the wolf god could openly seek an audience and was respected by the countries of the South Sea. While Madame Green Bamboo could only hide her experiences in recent years and seek for help from her old friend the great sage of Fu Fong. Once she entered the city, she had to hide and not even dare to show her face, she was afraid of being discovered by the mermaids in the city. Even their methods of doing things, the wolf god and Madame Green Bamboo, are completely different. If Madame Green Bamboo wants this wood carving, she wouldn't kill the seller. But she will give no advantage to this mortal sailor. If it wasn't in Fan Jia City, but outside, there would be no need to worry about the mermaids, and it's possible that she wouldn't even give him money. The little fox's expression was somewhat bewildered and Lu Heng didn't continue speaking. For him, it was just idle chatting with this innocent and playful girl. After Xiao Ai put away the wooden carving, Lu Heng took the two little girls and continued shopping. Fan Jia Mountain is bustling nowadays and for Lu Heng, who's used to staying indoors, the crowded streets were a unique and refreshing experience. Especially the different races passing by on the streets, and the various strange and exotic clothing these peculiar foreign styles were something that he couldn't see in his past life. Like the three-headed people who argue while walking, the pitch-black fire-hating country citizens, and the seemingly weak but actually incredibly strong mermaid sand occasionally a few pale-skinned citizens from the immortal kingdom. All of these different races, along with the various exotic beasts they travel with, and some strange demon cultivators, formed a scene of chaos, full of fantastical images that made Lu Heng feel elated. This kind of chaos is something that the Fire Pass country, with its stable human order, cannot see. Up ahead, a fully armored crocodile walks alongside a beautiful girl with long rabbit ears, and the slightly buck-toothed girl is sweetly and intimately cooing to the monster that looks completely like a crocodile. In the rear, a three-headed person was arguing in front of a small stall. The middle head looked depressed, while the left and right heads were quarreling across the middle head. As they cursed, they even spat at each other. Most of the saliva landed on the hair of the middle head. On the left side, a white-bearded old man in a gray robe held a wooden staff and performed illusions with a smile on his face. He lightly tapped the staff on the ground and a green shoot sprouted from the cracks between the blue stone-paved floor. The old man chuckled and chanted grow the green shoot rapidly grew larger and taller, and soon became a giant, thick vine as big as three people hugging, reaching up so high that the top could not be seen. On the right side, a giant dog as tall as two men was lying lazily on the ground with its eyes half-closed and a collar around its neck. A short and muscular man was holding a whip and loudly shouting, selling exotic giant dog puppies only two years old, the true infancy period. Buy one to protect your house and never worry about demonic attacks again. These dazzling street scenes weren't just entertaining to Lu Heng Xiao AI and the little fox were also riveted, unable to take their eyes off, 
stopping to pause at many places. Even the two little girls who used to meditate in the mountain have never seen such a lively scene before. They were immediately drawn to it. Even little Gu Yen was thoroughly enjoying himself, forgetting all about his best friend Miss Huafeng. Lu Han took them around until midnight and witnessed the ceremony of Fan Jia Mountain of opening its door to the sky and guiding the moon's radiance. Although the ceremony was simple, it consisted of opening the huge rock in the middle of Fan Jia Mountain and using an array to direct the outside moon radiance into the enclosed mountain. However, after the ceremony, one could visibly feel the liveliness of this hermetically sealed mountain increase. This is probably the essential reason why the ordinary vegetation can grow even though this place is located inside the mountain and receives no sunlight. During their window shopping, Lu Hang and his friends coincidentally ran into Huafeng and Lian Tsai twice from a distance. However, Lu Hang and the others tacitly avoided disturbing the two who seemed to have already developed a harmonious relationship. Huafeng, who had been unable to accept reality after becoming a woman, showed no significant difference from an ordinary woman in just a few hours. Lu Hang couldn't help but sigh that under external pressure, human progress can be fast. From then on, Lien Tsai stayed at the warm fragrance pavilion. And every night, she snuggled up with Miss Huafeng, as close as sisters. At first, Huafeng kept refusing and resisting, but after a few days, she no longer complained when she saw her. During the day, the two of them were companions and at night, they slept in the same room. Occasionally, there were sounds of laughter and playfulness, just like best friends. Upon Lien Tsai's strong request, Miss Hua Feng's clothes gradually became more neutral from the initial masculine look. After that, Lien Tsai persistently persuaded her to wear her first skirt. Afterwards, Miss Hua Feng's attire became increasingly feminine. In the end, whether it was her makeup, clothing, hairstyle, or facial features, she was no different from any other woman. She was exceptionally beautiful, not weaker than the demon woman at all. Of course, none of this has anything to do with Lu Hang. Upon returning, he secluded himself once again, and took the opportunity to study the unique wooden statue of the woman. However, despite studying it for a long time, he had no results. The wooden statue of the woman didn't emit any divine light and appeared to be ordinary. Upon careful inspection, the internal structure was also plain, lacking any magic array or engraving. The only exception was that this wooden statue could not be destroyed by Lu Hang's heavenly lightning, as it was abnormally hard. Despite Lu Hang putting all his effort into a strike of his heavenly lightning, the wooden statue remained completely still and unscathed, as if nothing had happened. Such a situation left Lu Hang extremely surprised. This wooden statue was without doubt the toughest object Lu Hang had seen since he began his journey. Even the war general, who was hit by heavenly lightning, would suffer some injuries, yet the statue endured the attack without so much as a scratch. Apart from its toughness, Lu Hang pondered for many days and still could not find anything unusual about the wooden statue. Thus, he temporarily set aside the statue and refocused his energy on interpreting the demon sutra and divine skill. Lu Hang desires to derive a cultivation method of his own, but presently cannot afford to spend his time on an obscure wooden carving. In any case, keeping it at hand, sooner or later he will catch a glimpse of the truth if fate permits. Just like the ancient book Gong Shu Jia had given him before. Lu Hang didn't pay any attention to the ancient book. However, he never expected that the content of Demon Sutra would be revealed when he entered the mystical steel forest. Presently, apart from deducing cultivation methods, Lu Hang is also waiting for the arrival of the treasure conference. On the day when the treasure conference is held, it is also the day when the black water recedes in the South Sea deep trench, and he can go to the sea to gather flowers. Wu Gu has already been to the Mermaid Kingdom once and persuaded the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom to allow Lu Hang to go to the sea and pick flowers on that day. All Lu Hang has to do now is wait. The bamboo garden has returned to its former tranquility. The little fox has settled down and her elder has reportedly left Fan Jia Mountain. Leaving the little fox to Wu Gu, the elder is at ease. Lu Hang never had the opportunity to meet the other person until they left. Otherwise, he really wanted to meet this innocent and beautiful little fox's senior. She must be a righteous demon cultivator who could raise such a lovely little girl. 
Huo Feng and Lian Tsai's relationship grew stronger through their days spent together. They went everywhere hand in hand, almost inseparable, like sisters. Of course, even Lu Hang could see Huo Feng's resistance. But in order to play the identity of Miss Huo Feng well, she had to obediently follow Lian Tsai's manipulation. Thanks to the demon woman's legacy, Lian Tsai had the qualification to participate in the treasure conference. As the date approached, Lian Tsai took Huo Feng and left Fan Jia Mountain, entering the Mermaid Kingdom, and having fun in the underwater Mermaid Kingdom. Little Gu Yan wanted to follow, but was stopped by Lu Hang. To comfort the bird that was so badly hit, before leaving, Huo Feng secretly told Lu Hang to give the fat bird that had been locked up all along to Gu Yan for him to eat. This fat bird followed Lu Hang and his team all the way, originally intended as a gift for Wu Gu. But now that Wu Gu didn't need it, the fat bird stayed behind, lazily lying in its cage all day long. Having been to the Immortal Kingdom, entered the Underworld, and witnessed the power of Urba God Man's South Sea trip was an epic tale for this fat bird. Sadly, in the end, it couldn't escape the fate of becoming food, and was sent by Huofeng to be eaten by Gu Yan. However, after Lu Heng gave the fat bird to Gu Yan, the little Gu Eagle circled around the cage for a while, surprisingly chose not to eat the fat bird. But instead, whined and cried for a long time, half bullying and half forcing the fat bird to stick with it and play with it in the future. It seems that after Huofeng left, Gu Yan was indeed a little lonely. Naturally, the fat bird had no objection to this request. So, these two birds often flew together to play and frolic in the city. However, while the fat bird was free from the cage, it always appeared to be lazy and sluggish, as if it was ready to be eaten by Gu Yan any time. Lu Hang was bored and guided the fat bird to cultivate the demonic cultivation method. Surprisingly, this fat bird, despite appearing to be lazy, had decent talent and quickly learned to guide spiritual energy into its body, cultivating alongside Gu Yan. And within the ghost realm, those ghosts who were sitting and cultivating on the barren land had finally taken the right path. Occasionally, when Lu Hang went to observe the ghost realm, he could see the eerie aura around them. Compared to the beginning, these ghosts now had the appearance of ghost cultivators. However, it may take a long time to completely transform into ghost cultivators. But Lu Hang was not in a hurry. In the netherworld, these souls don't have to worry about dispersal. They have at least tens of years of ghost life. Based on the level of their cultivation before their death, they can now apply their skills to ghost cultivation. Several decades of ghost longevity is enough for everyone to become a true ghost cultivator. By then, the construction project of the ghostly netherworld can be put on track. Everything seems to be going smoothly. However, Hua Feng from the Mermaid Kingdom has recently encountered some worrying issues. The Mermaid Kingdom is an underwater city completely different from the land cities. Houses and buildings immersed in seawater need to be regularly cleaned of barnacles. Walking on the streets of the Mermaid Kingdom, the people passing by with their fluttering clothes and fabrics flowing in the water can be slightly obstructive. However, those wearing cumbersome clothing are all visitors from the land. The people of the Mermaid Kingdom don't wear clothing. The mermaid's body is covered with a level of fine scales, which can protect their privacy, body, and facilitate swimming in the sea. In the mermaid kingdom, only the noble royal aristocrats wear clothing during their travels, because they need to show off their status. There is no hot food here. All the food is fresh sashimi, where the most delicious part of the fish is selected and served directly. Of course, being the most prosperous capital of the mermaid kingdom, the city also has restaurants open to land tourists. Some restaurants even use formations to empty the seawater and create an underwater space with air for the land guests who are not used to fresh seafood. Huofeng and Lian Tsai, now, just walked out of such a restaurant. Crossing the fresh air courtyard, with the expectant gazes of beautiful maids, the two beautiful women walked out of the gate, through a transparent film, and stepped into the street outside. The icy seawater rushed in, instantly submerging the two figures. But this experience was not the first time, and even Huofeng was used to it now. Swimming fish passed by their side and burrowed into the coral on the roadside. If it weren't for the street buildings in front of them, one would almost think that they had just simply dived into the sea. Outside the restaurant, the two women smiled at each other. 
Lien Tsai was about to speak, but at this moment an annoying voice sounded. Ha 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 it seems that my luck is really good. I didn't expect to meet Miss Tsai and Miss Miss Huafeng again. Amidst hearty laughter, a tall and sturdy figure walked towards them from the other end of the street, surrounded by a group of men and women. They were all cultivators, and their cultivation was not low. However, everyone followed the lead of the tall man, who was currently laughing loudly and walking towards Huafeng and Lien Tsai. Upon seeing this man, Lien Tsai's expression turned cold, and she immediately stood in front of Huafeng, saying coldly. Mu Yeping, you really are persistent. We run into you every day do you really want to die that badly? Want to leave the city and fight right now? Lien Tsai's expression was displeased, but the man called Mu Yeping laughed heartily and said. If you want to fight, I would love to. But not just with you, Miss Tsai, I want to fight with both of you ladies together ha ha ha. Mu Yeping's smile was lewd, but his eyes were cold and emotionless. He stopped a few meters away with his group of men and women, issuing a provocative message as if teasing them. Lien Tsai and Hua Feng's expressions were both not good looking. The man before me is a berserker, a lover of battles with different opponents, who has achieved great renown thanks to his iron fists. Decades ago, after accidentally meeting Lien Tsai and learning of her status as a demon woman, he swore to conquer this scourge to prove his strength. Relying on his iron fists, he nearly beat Lien Tsai to death, attempting to force her to submit to his might. However, Lien Tsai used a secret technique to blind one of his eyes, which has yet to recover. Thus, a feud was born between them, and it so happens that they both attended the treasure conference in the Mermaid Kingdom, leading to a fated meeting. For the past six days, Lien Tsai and Hua Feng encountered this scoundrel at least twice a day, constantly being harassed. Especially after seeing Miss Hua Feng's beauty, this guy became even more excited and publicly declared that he would make both women surrender to him. Now that they had met again, even the elegant and graceful demon woman, such as Lien Tsai, was annoyed to the point of anger. Hua Feng behind her had an even colder expression in his eyes. The moment Mu Yeping appeared, Hua Feng instinctively clenched his fist. Along with a flash of killing intent in his eyes, a faint aura of demon leaked out. However, this trace of demon chi quickly disappeared and none of the people present noticed it. Chapter 199 In the early morning, the white wolf in the quiet room opened its eyes and woke up from the meditation. The books and leaves floating beside him also fell lightly and were collected by the white-clothed spiritual being beside him. Finally, there is some progress. A smile appeared on Lu Heng's face, who was dressed in white. These two sets of exercises are indeed the creations of the heavens and the earth, extremely mysterious. The secret techniques recorded inside are unparalleled in the world. Demon Sutra may not be voluminous, but it seems to contain the essence of the entire demonic path. Lu Heng, who has read extensively in the Fu Shan city, can find evidence of it in Demon Sutra. Conversely, the other book Divine Skill is equally impressive. Various orthodox cultivation methods have enchanted Lu Heng. If it were not for his foundation of heavenly thunder, these two exercises might have already confused his mind. With inspiration from these two books, Lu Heng's derived martial arts routine has begun to take shape. Although it's only taken slight form, as they say, a good beginning is half the battle. For Lu Heng, the most difficult part was actually getting started. With what Lu Heng has accomplished so far, he only needs to continue pushing forward with the inspiration he has attained. He believes that within a few years, he will be able to cultivate his own technique. A technique that both human and demon cultivators can perfect, a top-class technique. After putting away the two books, Lu Heng left the meditation room that he had been away from for a long time. Lien Tsai and Hua Feng have been gone for nine days now. There are only five days left until the treasure conference. It is currently the dead of winter in the twelfth lunar month. If it were in Hanyu Mountain, the snow would have already closed the mountain. Despite the lack of heavy snow above the South Sea, the Fanjia mountain area is still quite cold. This world is different from Lu Heng's past life. In the previous Earth, the climate differed among different latitudes. Even during the winter season, the weather near the equator and the polar circles were vastly different, not to mention the opposite seasons of the North and South Hemispheres. 
Whereas in the current world before our eyes, regardless of location or region, the four seasons and weather are the same. When deep winter arrives, not only does heavy snowfall occur over the South Sea, but even in areas beyond the Fire Pass country to the north, winter still comes around. This situation contradicts Lu Heng's geographical knowledge. But it indirectly confirms the extraordinary nature of the world before our eyes. It's possible that this is not just a planet. After leaving the quiet room, Lu Heng arrived in the courtyard and saw Wu Gu as busy as ever attending to the condition of Urinia. Although Urinia's condition has stabilized, Wu Gu has been tirelessly guarding Urinia, claiming to be helping her with her injuries, but in Lu Heng's eyes, it seems more like seizing the rare opportunity to study an experimental sample. The little fox Su Xiao Xiao stood by, assisting Wu Gu. This clever little girl has won Wu Gu's favor and has learned some rudimentary medical skills from her. Although she is still a bit clumsy now, she may achieve something in medicine in the future. Lu Heng greeted Wu Gu with a smile, looking around, but couldn't find Xiao Ai in the bamboo garden, which made him curious. This little girl usually cultivates outside the door, why isn't she here today? Lu Heng asked, and the little fox answered. Just now, Gu Yan and the fat bird flew back from the city. Sister Xiao Ai hurriedly followed them out. The 300-year-old little fox said so. Upon hearing this reply, Lu Heng felt somewhat surprised. Could it be that Gu Yan was bullied in the city, so he asked for Xiao Ai's help? Or maybe he found something interesting. However, Lu Heng didn't mind and calmly walked out of the bamboo garden, into the sea of blooming mandala flowers outside. He walked all the way to the edge of the flower sea, which was also the edge of this floating island. Here, there was a wooden observation deck that overlooked the street scenery of the city. Meanwhile, from several other suspended islets nearby, serene and elegant sounds of silk and bamboo music wafted gently in the cool breeze while overlooking the city streetscape from a high vantage point, evoking a peaceful mood. Occasionally, when faced with difficulties, Lu Heng would come here to relax. However, nowadays he was simply sitting here, killing time. However, Lu Heng had just sat down for a short time when he saw three small figures flying towards him from the streets of the city below. Standing here next to Lu Heng, Fan Jia city streets were so small that they seemed like a model. The three figures that flew over were as tiny as gravel. If not for Lu Heng's excellent eyesight, he wouldn't be able to see them at all. The first one flying in the front was a little girl with silver hair, animal ears and a dark blue sword on her back. Who else but Xiao Ai? Following behind Xiao Ai were Gu Yan and the fat bird. Under Lu Heng's gaze, Xiao Ai swiftly flew towards the floating island and upon seeing Lu Heng on the observation deck, she immediately changed course and flew towards him. Finally, she gently landed on the observation deck. The expression on Xiao Ai's face appeared somewhat anxious. The wolf god, something's happened to sister Huifeng. Xiao Ai's first words after landing left Lu Heng stunned. Huifeng something happened. He asked curiously, what happened? Don't be in a hurry, take your time to speak. With Miss Tsai's protection, what could possibly happen to her? Was she abducted by some obsessed bully? Lu Heng's inquiry made Xiao Ai shake her head. If she was indeed abducted, that would be preferable sister Huifeng killed the abductor who was trying to kidnap her. Now it has caused quite a stir, the news has spread throughout the entire Fan Jia mountain. People are talking about the infamous Miss Huifeng from the South Sea, who has an inseparable relationship with the demon woman Lian Tsai. Two days ago, the two of them encountered the crazed man Mu Yeping in the Mermaid Kingdom. This Mu Yeping has been boasting for thirty years that he will conquer the demon woman and make Miss Tsai his slave. Upon this encounter, both sides caused a great commotion. In the strictly prohibited combat zone of the Mermaid Kingdom, Miss Huifeng resorted to brutal sorcery techniques and heartlessly killed seven cultivators, including Mu Yeping. Among the seven unfortunate victims, aside from the maniac Mu Yeping, were two royal heirs of the Mermaid Kingdom while the remaining four were prominent cultivators from the distinguished South Sea, with disciples and acquaintances scattered throughout. Speaking of this, Xiao Ai's face filled with concern. According to rumors, Huifeng's sister and senior Tsai have been captured by the Mermaid Kingdom. 
they might have to face their cruel penal laws and suffer capital punishment. Xiao Ai's narrative left Lu Heng bewildered. Fighting and murdering in the Mermaid Kingdom? Lu Heng's brow slightly creased. Chapter 200 Hua Feng has just recovered from his injuries, but his cultivation has not yet been restored. How can he have the strength to kill, let alone to use demonic cultivation? His expression also became serious. Do you have any other news besides this? Xiao Ai shook her head. No, Gu Yan informed me of this. He overheard someone discussing this matter in the restaurant and hurried to inform me. I went to inquire in the city, but I couldn't find out more now that the incident has just occurred, there are several different rumors circulating in the city. The only thing that can be certain is that Huafeng has been captured by the Mermaid Kingdom. Sibir Tsai is injured and still unconscious, and to capture Huafeng and Tsai, the Mermaid Kingdom is said to have sacrificed a respected old general. Xiao Ai's news made Lu Hang's expression solemn. Has the Mermaid Kingdom also lost people? Looking down at the city below him, Lu Hang felt a little perplexed. He turned directly and walked towards the bamboo garden, quickly finding Wu Gu who was studying the Urania organs in the bamboo garden. Seeing the wolf god appear with Xiao Ai Gu Yan and the fat bird, Wu Gu was somewhat surprised. The wolf god was as usual, but Xiao Ai and Gu Yan looked very anxious. Wu Gu suddenly realized. What happened? Wu Gu asked, putting down what was in her hand. Lu Heng sighed and asked Xiao Ai to tell Wu Gu the news she had gathered from the city. Upon hearing it, Wu Gu was also stunned. Murder in the Mermaid Kingdom's capital. This is. Wu Gu frowned. I didn't detect any demonic energy in her body when I checked the young man from the Yun sect earlier. How could she be an evil cultivator? There must be some misunderstanding. Lu Heng sighed and said, that is also what I have been thinking but regardless of any misunderstandings, the most important thing now is to figure out what actually happened. Both you and I know that Huafeng currently has no cultivation and has no relation to the demonic path. Moreover, what we heard might be only rumors circulating in the city, which could be completely different from the truth. This incident came suddenly, and perhaps only by inquiring with the high-level members of the Mermaid Kingdom can we find out what exactly happened as you have some connections with the Mermaid Kingdom. Can you help us to investigate the situation? Lu Heng made a sincere request, and Wu Gu nodded in agreement. It's a small matter, I will immediately ask Ayu to gather information. Ayu, mentioned by Wu Gu, is the owner of the warm fragrance pavilion named Yu Ling Long, a stunningly beautiful woman who had met Lu Heng before. With high cultivation, she is the main reason why the warm fragrance pavilion holds such a lofty position in the South Sea. However, as soon as Wu Gu finished speaking, a figure appeared from outside the door, saying. There's no need to call me, I've already arrived. As the voice faded, a woman dressed in green appeared in front of the crowd. She first bowed to Lu Heng, then stared at Wu Gu and said, Calling me Ayu, I've been away from the warm fragrance pavilion for two days, and I've been to the mermaid kingdom and back. Have you ever cared about me, except for your bottles and jars? Yu Linglong's complaint had a feeling of a woman's long suppressed dissatisfaction in a secluded world. Wu Gu then awkwardly smiled and said, I was wrong, Ling Long, don't be angry, did you go to the mermaid kingdom to inquire about this matter? Wu Gu brought up the main topic. Yu Linglong became helpless and glanced at Wu Gu before turning around to face the wolf god with a serious expression. Actually, two days ago, I had already received the news. But at that time, the situation was unclear, and the information in my hand was not complete, so I didn't dare to disturb the wolf god. Therefore, I went to the mermaid kingdom alone to investigate in person. Now that I am back, I have barely figured out the situation at the time and have come to report to the wolf god. Yu Linglong said, indeed, the madman Mu Yeping and his seven companions were killed by Huafeng. However, there were more than just these seven people who were killed at the time, including an elder and the former general of the mermaid kingdom. Even Sai's injury was caused by Huafeng at the time. Huafeng, who had gone mad, went on a killing spree in the city, cruelly and viciously slaughtering Mu Yeping and his companions. The fighting in the city alarmed the nearby former general of the Mermaid Kingdom, 
who rushed to stop it and fought with the possessed Huafeng along with Miss Lian Tsai. Finally, they managed to restrain Huafeng, who was trying to flee, and the Mermaid Kingdom was able to apprehend him. But the price was the death of the former general and Tsai's coma from serious injuries. Yu Linglong spoke, looking worriedly at the wolf god, saying, now the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom has issued a letter, inviting the lords of the South Sea countries and righteous cultivators to gather on the day of the treasure conference. Which falls on December 8, at the extreme Hell Island, to execute Huafeng, destroy his soul and behead him as a punishment. Yu Linglong's message plunged the bamboo garden into a brief silence. Everyone who heard the news remained silent. The little fox instinctively looked at the wolf god but hesitated to speak. Wu Gu frowned and broke the silence first. Huafeng possessed by evil demons. Nonsense. That guy just recovered from his injuries, and has no cultivation base. Even if he was possessed, how much cultivation could he have? And he caused chaos in the mermaid kingdom, killing the maniac Mu Yeping this couldn't be Huafeng, it must be a demonic powerhouse disguised as him. Wu Gu questioned this. Yu Linglong chuckled bitterly and said, this is the news I went to great lengths to find out. It can be guaranteed to be absolutely true. The young man of the Yun sect did indeed fall into demonic path and also indeed killed someone. However, I couldn't find out why he fell into the demonic path or the details of the murder after falling into the demonic path. And now, the young man of the Yun sect is being detained in the extreme hell prison next to the South Sea Deep Trench. It's an ancient prison that hasn't been used by the Mermaid Kingdom for thousands of years. So this murder case is definitely not ordinary. At least, besides the news I know, there must be the truth that outsiders don't know but that truth is probably known only to the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom and the true mermaid upper echelons. Yu Linglong said helplessly, at the very least, it's not necessary to issue a demon eradication letter and invite all the South Sea colleagues just to simply kill a demon. Yu Linglong's words stirred something in Lu Heng's heart. He pondered for a moment and inquired, what if Huafeng is not just a mere demon, but the legendary Maoyuo sword master. He looked at Yu Linglong and asked, can the legendary Maoyuo sword really cause such a commotion in the mermaid kingdom? Lu Heng's inquiry caused Yu Linglong to be slightly stunned. The Maoyuo sword? She inadvertently exchanged a glance with Wu Gu and saw the shock in each other's eyes. Both women turned to Lu Heng simultaneously, anxious and with one voice asked Huafeng is the Maoyuo sword master. Seeing the reactions of the two, Lu Heng heaved a sigh and wryly said, it seems that the Maoyuo sword master truly deserves such a grandiose display. Lu Heng felt an intense headache. When the Maoyuo sword disappeared without a trace, we thought it had fled, but we never expected it was hiding in Brother Hu's body as it turns out, the most perilous place is the safest place. I think I understand the situation now, said Lu Heng. With a glance at the people before him, he proclaimed, the culprit is not Huafeng, but the Maoyuo evil sword. Chapter, 201 Lu Heng's decisive words caused both Wu Gu and Yu Linglong within the bamboo garden to frown. Lu Heng's account had already made them understand the situation. The young man of the Yun sect, who carried the hidden sword, was actually the owner of the legendary Maoyuo sword. Was he controlled by the Maoyuo sword during this turmoil in the Mermaid Kingdom? If so, it's no wonder that the Mermaid Kingdom has made such a big fuss. But the young man of the Yun sect is an acquaintance of the Wolf God. Yu Linglong looked at the Wolf God, feeling a slight unease. Senior Wolf God, do you do you know about the legend of the Maoyuo sword? Yu Linglong asked softly. Lu Heng nodded and said, I have read some relevant books before and I know a little about it. It is an evil sword that drives people mad. Huafeng must have been controlled by the Maoyuo sword to commit such a great sin. So, it was actually not Huafeng who killed people, but the Maoyuo sword, Yu Linglong concluded. Therefore, we only need to explain the situation to the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom and annihilate the sword spirit of the Maoyuo sword, then we can console the deceased Huafeng was innocent, Lu Heng explained. Lu Heng's narration made Yu Linglong sigh. She said, this matter, I think the mermaid kingdom over there also knows. But since the matter has come to this point, if the young man of the Yun sect is really controlled by the Maoyuo sword then. 
Yu Linglong worried, afraid it will no longer be possible to separate from the Maoyuo sword. Lu Heng's opinion was different. It may not be so serious, Lu Heng said. Unless the Maoyuo sword master voluntarily falls, it is not so easy to become a sword slave brother who left us only a few days ago. With his character, the Maoyuo sword is not so easy to enslave him. And this incident should be when Brother Hua and the madman Mu Yeping had a conflict, lost control of their emotions, and gave the Maoyuo sword an opportunity to take advantage of, leading to the current situation. As long as we remedy it in time, we should be able to bring Brother Hua back. Lu Heng looked at Yu Linglong and said, Since you know the path to the Mermaid Kingdom, can you guide me? I want to go to the extreme hell prison to visit Brother Hua Fong, learn about the situation of that day, and then decide how to handle this matter. Lu Heng's request caused Yu Linglong some dilemma. She looked hesitant and said, It's not that I'm unwilling to help as a junior, but the Mermaid Kingdom has now closed all its entrances and prohibited outsiders from entering. Moreover, unlike the South Sea countries, the Mermaid Kingdom is an ancient kingdom that has been passed down since the prehistoric disasters. It is mysterious, powerful, and unfathomable. It is rumored that there are even ancient monsters that survived from prehistoric times living in the deep abyss in their country, taking care of him in silence if the wolf god has any conflict with them. Yu Linglong was very conflicted. In her opinion, although the wolf god was powerful, it was an existence from prehistoric times. However, the mermaid kingdom was not a pushover and had confidence in defeating the wolf god. This was the reason why the Mermaid Kingdom didn't send anyone to inform the Wolf God after knowing that Miss Huofeng might be related to the Wolf God. In the view of the Mermaid Kingdom, the Maoyuo evil sword is causing chaos and bloodshed in the capital, and the Mermaid Kingdom has the power to deal with it without consulting outsiders. Otherwise, if the Mermaid Kingdom has to take care of even one evil murderer, it would have to bow to the opinions of outsiders what would happen to the authority and dignity of the Mermaid Kingdom. If the white wolf has any objections, it can come knocking at our door and settle it with fists. This sentence is said to have been spoken by the lord of the mermaid kingdom himself. Faced with such a resolute attitude from the mermaid kingdom, even these few strong ancient monsters would probably have to back down. However, Yu Linglong can see that the wolf god cares greatly for the young man from the Yun sect. Now that he is in trouble, the wolf god will surely not ignore it. If a conflict were to arise between the two sides Yu Linglong would not like to see either side suffer any damage. Seeing Yu Linglong's hesitation, Lu Heng smiled helplessly and said, Madam, you've misunderstood. My purpose in going is not to kidnap or protect anyone. I just want to understand the basic situation and then solve the problem accordingly, without any conflict with the Mermaid Kingdom. Lu Heng said, Brother Hua has an extraordinary character and is not easily tempted and enslaved by the Maoyuo sword. If he can be rescued but is killed as a Maoyuo sword master, it would be an injustice. Of course, if he really falls and becomes a slave to the Maoyuo sword, not only will the mermaid kingdom want to kill him, but also I, Lu Heng, will not spare him. My heavenly thunder is a convenient tool for eradicating demons. When it's time for the mermaid kingdom to execute, I can also help. Lu Heng said seriously, we cannot let an evildoer go, but we also cannot wrongly accuse a good person my purpose in going is just to confirm whether Brother Hua is worth rescuing, not to protect him. I hope you understand, madam. Lu Heng's sincere words made Yu Linglong surprised, but also relieved, and she felt as if this was how it should be. If someone else said such words to her, she probably wouldn't believe it. After all, those ancient monsters and highly skilled elders tend to be eccentric in temperament and extremely protective, and disciples who make mistakes will definitely try to protect them first, not allowing outsiders to harm them. But since the wolf god has been living in the warm fragrance pavilion these days, Yu Linglong knows that the wolf god is different from most old monsters. Its noble divinity and broad-mindedness are different from ordinary people. Therefore, Yu Linglong would not believe it if someone else said these words, but if the wolf god said it, she would believe it. And she is willing to go for it. She solemnly saluted and said, Since the wolf god speaks so, then I will take the risk. Although the mermaid kingdom is now forbidden to enter or exit, as the younger generation, we have our ways to enter. We can bypass the sea gate and head directly to the mermaid kingdom. 
Linglong will then introduce the wolf god to the lord of the mermaid kingdom. I believe with the wolf god's distinguished temperament, if the lord were to see you in person, there would definitely be a change in his perspective. Yu Linglong spoke in this manner, and Lu Heng responded with solemn courtesy, saying, If that is the case, then I trouble you. Saving someone is like putting out a fire. Although there are still five days until Hua Feng's execution, heading to the Mermaid Kingdom is not a short distance we must make every second count. After quickly dealing with affairs here, Lu Heng left the warm fragrance pavilion with Xiao Ai and Yu Ling Long. Since they are going to save someone, they naturally need to travel light. Therefore, Gu Yan, the bow horse, and the fat bird were left in the bamboo garden for Wu Gu to take care of. Only Xiao Ai will accompany her with the heavenly thunder sword. Before departing, Wu Gu sighed and eventually spoke persuasively, If the situation is impossible, the wolf god, you must remain calm. Wu Gu glanced at the sword on Xiao Ai's back and said, Although this sword is powerful, the mermaid kingdom is an ancient legacy with very deep waters, not an ordinary kingdom, the wolf god must take it seriously. Wu Gu said, Thirty thousand years ago, there was an ancient demon called Bifang, who was a notorious demon in ancient times this fierce beast survived the long years, and perhaps the wolf god, you also know it. Wugu Sanrio Conamardura Y Daijo, Sagun Los Registros de Los Diez Reinos, Este Demonio Entro en Conflicto con el Señor del Reino de las Serenas Ase Tridemil Anos, Creo el Chaos en el Mar del Sur Y, Finalment, No Se Que Uso el Reino de las Serenas. Logaron Mutar al Notorio Demonio Antiguo en el Mar, La Sangre Fluyo Durante Siete Dias y Siete Noches hasta Ahora, Todavía hay un área del mar en el reino de las serenas que esta muerta y roja como la sangre, sin organismos vivo es. Not only was Lu Heng surprised by Wu Gu's story, but even Yu Ling Long, Wu Gu's friend, looked astonished. Chapter 202 Is there really such a thing? Why haven't I heard of it from you before? Yu Ling Long curiously asked. Wu Gu then glared at her and said, The Ten Realms is a secret scripture of the Spirit Mountain. Only the Ten Witches of the Spirit Mountain are qualified to read it. Moreover, it contains confidential information why would I tell you about it? Do you want to gossip about it? Wu Gu's words made Yu Ling Long shut up, but she didn't refute her. That's because the contents recorded in the Ten Realms can't be easily leaked. Although others were present in the bamboo garden, only the wolf god and Wu Gu could hear each other. The other younger generation couldn't. In the face of Wu Gu's well intentioned persuasion, Lu Heng smiled bitterly and said, Thank you for your concern. I will restrain myself and never act recklessly. Yu Ling Long and Wu Gu are deeply concerned about his potential conflict with the Mermaid Kingdom, however, he secretly desires to express that with his current level of ability. If excluding the Heavenly Thunder Sword, he cannot even compare in sheer combat power to the war general they encountered in the South Sea. Where is his confidence to cause trouble coming from? Although the Heavenly Thunder Sword is formidable, it can only deliver one blow. If it actually comes down to it, even if Lu Heng can instantly kill the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom with a single sword strike, the remaining upper echelons of the Mermaid Kingdom would be enough to turn him into a wolf meat hotpot. Therefore, their concerns for him, Yu Linglong and Wu Gu, are completely unnecessary. Lu Heng has only been cultivating for a few years if it truly came to blows, he is probably not even a match for Yu Linglong, who is currently standing before him. However, speaking such words is futile Wu Gu and the others surely would not believe him. After Gu Yan was left behind, Lu Heng hurriedly left with Xiao Ai following Yu Linglong. In the small bamboo garden, the fox demon Su Xiao Xiao watched the wolf god's departing figure, hesitant to speak. Until the wolf god had completely disappeared, she couldn't help but ask, Your Majesty, if Miss Hua Feng really falls under the spell, would the wolf god really take action to kill her? This is something that the little fox can't let go of in her heart. The wolf god's style of acting is always at odds with her understanding. After all, Miss Hua Feng is the wolf god's good friend. Shouldn't good friends protect and not inquire about each other's affairs? But the wolf god said that if Miss Ho really falls into the demonic path, it will personally kill her. The little fox was perplexed. Wu Gu, who was studying the jar, 
didn't even lift her head and said, if others said it, I might not believe it because protecting one's own is an instinct for most people. But if it's from the wolf god, I can definitely tell you it must be true. Wu Gu added, don't be fooled by the wolf god's amiable and gentle personality, that's only for good-hearted people. Remember, he cultivates the power of heavenly thunder. What is heavenly thunder? It's the divine punishment that punishes evil demons and slaughters demonic creatures. If the wolf god, who cultivates the power of divine punishment, says he is a good person can you believe it? Wu Gu chuckled and said, the wolf god is kind to you because you are a righteous cultivator. If you were an evil cultivatoraha. Wu Gu shook her head and said with a smile, so my little girl, cultivate the right path well and don't take the wrong way. To be able to know the wolf god is your fortune, but also your death knell. Half jokingly and half seriously, Wu Gu said, with the wolf god's personality, if you can please him like this. If you ever encounter any troubles in the future, even if you are 10,000 miles away from him, the wolf god will surely come to your rescue. But if you ever fall into the wrong path of cultivation, the wolf god will even go to the ends of the earth to personally eliminate you. Wu Gu looked at the little fox with a meaningful smile. Demon cultivators are prone to taking the evil path. After all, while they are able to cultivate the right path themselves, their friends and family may not necessarily do the same if you encounter any evil cultivators, make sure to keep your distance from them. Wu Gu smiled and said, You know the wolf god, so you are easy to draw the attention of heavenly thunder. If you get too close to some evil cultivator friends and talk to them, you might even lure the wolf god to them and harm your loved ones in the process. Wu Gu's ambiguous look made the little fox's heart skip a beat, causing her to unconsciously put on a pleasing smile. I will bear in mind your majesty's teachings. At that moment, when caught in Wu Gu's smiling gaze, the young servant girl couldn't help feeling as though her deepest secrets were laid bare for all to see. It left her feeling tremendously anxious, had her majesty uncovered the truth about Madame Green Bamboo? However, after secretly watching for a while, the little fox saw which Wu Gu once again lower her head and focus on her own tasks. It appeared that her earlier remarks were merely casual and held no deeper meaning. After holding back for a while, the young servant girl couldn't control the urge to speak up. Um your highness the little fox asked cautiously, you just said that the wolf god won't show any mercy if Wafong has fallen into the demonic path. He surely won't be lenient but what if it's a different situation? The little fox demon said, if Wafong hasn't truly fallen, but just temporarily controlled by the Mayuo sword, there's still a chance to save her. However, she has killed so many people in the mermaid kingdom if Wafong can be saved and they still insist on executing her, what about the wolf god? The little fox hesitated and couldn't find the words to say. Upon hearing the little girl's concerns, Wu Gu fell silent for a few moments before putting down the transparent bottle in her hand and sighing. This is exactly what I'm worried about. Wu Gu said, if Wafong has truly fallen to the dark side, then it's alright, but if he hasn't, the wolf god will surely protect him. The mermaid kingdom has always been unwelcoming to outsiders interfering with their affairs. The wolf god's reputation may be influential in other countries of the South Sea, but not there. If the mermaid kingdom insists on killing Huafong, knowing the temperament of the wolf god, this matter may not end well. Wu Gu spoke, her expression worried as she glanced towards the south. The little fox also grew concerned. Then if the wolf god really conflicts with the mermaid kingdom, can can the wolf god save sister Huafong? The little girl hesitated and asked softly. Wu Gu remained silent for a moment, then shook her head slowly. I am not sure about that the wolf god is an ancient deity with exceptional abilities, and he has an awe-inspiring sword at his disposal. Although it has been sheathed, it has already caused fear to arise. But it is also not easy to be involved with the mermaid kingdom since their mysteries are unknown to outsiders. If these two sides really fight. After considering for a long time, Wu Gu could only smile bitterly and say, I don't know who will win or lose, but one thing is for sure, a large number of South Sea aquatic creatures will die again. Chapter, 203 Wu Gu's worries were unknown to Lu Hang. Now, he is leading Xiao Ai and following Lady Yu Linglong, leaving Fan Jie Mountain. 
To the south of Fanjia Mountain lies a sea mouth that leads to the Mermaid Kingdom, known as Sea Gate, an important gateway. However, it is now blocked and forbidden for outsiders to enter or leave. Lady Yu Linglong is leading Lu Hang on a different path. Leaving the Warm Fragrance Pavilion, crossing the city on Fanjia Mountain, in a secluded corner, there is an elegant and tranquil small courtyard. Pushing open the gate of the courtyard, one beholds an elegantly arranged space. The pavilions and terraces, rockeries and flowers, are laid out in an orderly fashion, exuding beauty without appearing disorderly. It is clearly a work of great craftsmanship. However, Lu Hang and his companions didn't come to visit the courtyard. Following Yu Ling Long, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai passed through the courtyard in one door after another, finally arriving at a pond hidden between the mountain rocks. The pond is only a few meters in size, not very large and looks like a private pool, but it is deep and not visible. Yu Ling Long walked to the edge of the pond and gently shook a bronze bell. The crisp sound of a bell echoed among the rocks, and soon there was a reaction in the pool of water. Faintly, there was a huge dark shadow swimming underwater. Yu Ling Long turned to the white wolf and Xiao Ai behind her, explaining, there is a sea monster underwater called the speed fish, a huge fish. The mermaid kingdom raises them as aquatic mounts for transportation, which can quickly bring us to their city. After speaking, Yu Ling Long directly leaped into the pool and disappeared from Lu Heng's sight. Xiao Ai glanced at Lu Heng and saw the wolf god nod, so she also leaped and jumped into the water. Then, it was Lu Heng's turn to jump into the pool. In the instant that the huge white wolf jumped into the water, a huge gaping bloody mouth appeared in his sight. However, Lu Heng remained unwavering instead of panicking as the monster devoured him whole. As he traveled through the gushing currents, he passed through the creature's esophagus and arrived at a small, solitary island aided by the flow of water. On the shore, Yu Ling Long, the tower master, was waiting for Lu Heng with a smile on her face. Behind her, there was a small bamboo garden, with its buildings as beautiful as they were in the warm fragrance pavilion. Looking around, he didn't see the bloody walls of the beast's interior, but instead saw surging seawater. To his surprise, there were fish swimming in the flowing water. This bizarre scene left Lu Heng awestruck. Yu Linglong chuckled, one trait of this fast-moving beast is that once inside its body, one can directly observe the outside scenery. However, what outsiders see is a large fish, they cannot see the person inside the fish's belly. Therefore, some noble aristocrats of the mermaid kingdom keep a speed fish as a travel mount. As we are inside the fish's belly, we can travel south without worrying about being detected even if we encounter the mermaid kingdom's patrol teams. Saying so, Yu Linglong gently shook the bell in her hand. Amidst the crisp sound of the bell, Lu Hang saw the surrounding fish swiftly retreating behind them. The mouth of the water pool above their heads disappeared from view. This huge beast had already started swimming at an incredible speed. However, despite the incredible speed, Lu Hang and his companions inside the fish's belly felt no bumps or jolts. Yu Linglong said, the wolf god can take a rest for a while. Even with a speed fish, it will take a day and a night to reach the mermaid kingdom. You can rest for now, and I will call you when we arrive. Lu Hang nodded and said, if that's the case, then I trouble the master. After speaking, Lu Hang didn't go inside but sat down in the courtyard, closed his eyes, and meditated. Although there was no feeling of shaking inside the speed fish's body, its swimming speed was extremely fast. Those occasional sightings of the rocky islands were quickly left behind. Such a fast speed that even airplanes from his past life couldn't compare. But such a fast fish still had to swim for a whole day and night to reach the mermaid kingdom the borders of the mermaid kingdom were indeed as vast as the rumors. Inside the fish's belly, Lu Heng closed his eyes and waited to arrive at the mermaid kingdom. In front of this speed fish, Yu Hailing, the lord of the mermaid kingdom, had just received the report from the maritime patrol team in a huge underwater city close to the South Sea Deep Trench. The usually calm South Sea Deep Trench has recently experienced strange disturbances. The extreme hell black water, distinct from the clear waters of the South Sea, has occasionally surged and intruded into the South Sea area these days. Wherever the eerie black water flows, vitality ceases and all things wither. Despite the fact that the black water will soon fade away, 
the sudden abnormality in the usually calm South Sea Deep Trench prompted the entire Mermaid Kingdom to take swift action. More than ten times the usual number of maritime patrol teams are patrolling around the abyss day and night, keeping watch for any possible changes. Even the forbidding abyss, which was marked as don't enter by the living, the Mermaid Kingdom dispatched several people to dive down and climb down the steep cliffs to check on the situation inside the abyss. And now, what you hailing heard was a report from the exploration beneath the extremely steep cliff. According to the investigation of the Sea Patrol, there is currently no appearance of the evil creatures recorded in the extreme hell black water. The water area beneath the extremely steep cliff is also in a normal state, and there is no phenomenon of evil energy surging. The recent mutation in the black water is likely to be induced by the evil energy of the Maluo evil sword, and it is nothing unusual. However, even so, you hailing dare not take it lightly. She frowned and ordered, continue patrolling and don't take it lightly. If there is any change in the situation, report it in time. We must not affect the execution of the Maluo sword sword spirit. The Mermaid Kingdom has guarded the South Sea for generations, warding off anything that might come out from the South Sea deep trench. However, those evil creatures that were recorded in the ancestors' records have never appeared. So much so that the mermaids have forgotten what those so-called monsters of evil were like. Nevertheless, no one dared to underestimate the abnormality of the Blackwater. The warnings passed down by the ancestors are deeply engraved in the heart of every mermaid, and they dare not forget. All factors that may lead to an abnormality in the Blackwater must be completely eliminated. For example the Maluo Sword Sword Spirit. After dismissing his subordinates, Yu Hailing headed towards the direction of her ancestor's shrine. However, she hadn't gone far when she saw the rushed minister of the Ministry of Personnel coming, so she stopped and waited for him. Your Majesty! The anxious minister of the Ministry of Personnel brought bad news, news has come from Fan Jia City that the wolf god is no longer at the warm fragrance pavilion and seems to have crossed the sea gate directly into our country's waters. The news from the Minister of the Ministry of Personnel made Yu Hailing's face slightly serious. As expected, Yu Hailing said calmly, the wolf god previously searched for the South Sea all over for his friend and even killed the Urba god man. Now that his friend has trouble, he will surely not sit idly by. Chapter 204 But his departure was so sudden that even the Fan Jia Mountain didn't notice was it Yu Linglong who helped him? Yu Hailing's inquiry made the Minister of the Ministry of Personnel slightly embarrassed and he had to say, Your Majesty, it is currently uncertain whether Pavilion Master Yu is helping him. But in the warm fragrance pavilion, there is indeed no trace of Pavilion Master Yu. The subtle response from the Minister made Yu Hailing sneer. As expected this woman dared to bring even the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain into our country, an opportunist who prioritizes her own interests. She seems to truly lack a sense of priority. Faced with the derision and mocking of the Lord, the minister's face was awkward, and he dared not respond. Instead, he tried to persuade him. Perhaps there is another reason for this, whispered the minister, although she has always been capricious, she also knows right from wrong, and her heart must be inclined towards us, the mermaid kingdom. Maybe it is the wolf god is forcing her. The minister's quiet narration made you hailing shake her head. Forced. Humph. If it's true that she's being coerced, that would be convenient. It's definitely this woman being too clever for her own good. She probably thought that with the wolf god's temperament, there would be no conflict with the mermaid kingdom, so she took it upon herself to lead the way. I have long declared that no matter what, this Maluo sword master must die. I am warning her not to bring that wolf into our kingdom, otherwise, there will be a conflict between the mermaid kingdom and the wolf god, sneered Yu Hailing. But I didn't expect this woman to be so foolish as to bring the wolf god into our kingdom. Yu Hailing looked towards the north, as if she had seen the sight of a speed fish carrying a white wolf hidden in the seawater and quickly swimming towards here. After a moment of silence, Yu Hailing subdued the mockery and anger on her face, and regained her former solemnity and dignity. She said to the minister, since the wolf god has entered the sea, let us prepare for battle. The wolf god is powerful, but the mermaid kingdom is not to be trifled with. The Maluo evil sword is of great importance and must not be disregarded. The Maluo sword master shall surely perish this time. 
If the wolf god is willing to be reasonable, then we can behave courteously towards each other. But if he refuses, then we shall make him behave that way. At this point, Yu Haling's face was very cold. Thirty thousand years ago, we had already destroyed an ancient mythical beast. It's no big deal to destroy another one now. Prepare everything according to plan I am going to the ancestral shrine. With those words, Yu Haling waved her sleeve and headed directly towards the direction of the ancestral shrine. The minister stood in place, watching the back of the Lord leave, unable to help but let out a sigh, feeling quite helpless. The Maluo evil sword is an object that must be eradicated for the mermaid kingdom. It is said that this sword is related to the South Sea Deep Trench. Just the presence of evil energy within the country has already caused the Blackwater to mutate. If the Maluo sword were to completely unleash its demonic power, no one knows what would happen in the South Sea Deep Trench. Therefore, any possibility that could lead to the Maluo evil sword's rebirth must be destroyed. Although the Maluo sword master has not been completely controlled, he must also be eliminated. However, the resolute actions of the mermaid kingdom may be unacceptable to outsiders. Especially the acquaintances of Maluo sword master. O oh ninth prince, why are you so confused? Feeling the anger of the lord, the chief minister could only sigh helplessly in his heart. After this incident, the owner of the warm fragrance pavilion, who used to wander leisurely in Fanjia city, is probably going to have a difficult time. However, despite feeling countless emotions, the minister didn't dare to delay and quickly left the court to proceed with the original plan. Since the wolf god has entered the sea, the mermaid kingdom will probably face an ancient deity next. A mysterious deity who cultivates heavenly thunder and is not recorded in the ancestral teachings. In the face of such a being, no one dares to take it lightly. The mermaid kingdom underwent various changes swiftly, due to a series of commands. Many citizens with lower cultivation were urgently relocated to secure areas and waiting for the situation to be resolved. Many businesses within the capital city have also closed their doors and ceased their operations. Therefore, the once lively and bustling mermaid kingdom during the treasure conference has now returned to its former state of quietness. Those guests who reside in the inn and are waiting to participate in the treasure conference are now very curious and start to inquire about the reasons behind the unusual incidents in the city. However, most people are unaware of what has happened. The only thing people can be sure of is the unusual behavior of the mermaids, which must be related to the recent murder case. Several days ago, the madman Mu Yeping who died miserably in the mermaid kingdom, along with his seven companions and an old general from the mermaid kingdom the death of these eight individuals can be considered a great event. Especially the six companions who traveled with Mu Yepeng, each one was a noble and highly skilled cultivator, and their ancestors were also all prestigious figures. It is rumored that one of them was even a noble from the Yoshion country in the north. Now that everyone has died and news of their deaths has been sent back, the relatives of the deceased have already rushed to the South Sea. The treasure conference, and also the day when the demon murderer will be executed, will take place five days from now. It is bound to be a grand gathering. The mermaid kingdom has opened the legendary extreme hell island, where the demon is to be executed on the only small island in the South Sea Deep Trench. By the time arrives, the treasure conference will also be held on the extreme hell island. This mysterious island, which only existed in legends, will now be revealed before everyone's eyes. Therefore, many people in the city look forward to the treasure conference. Even the strange behavior of the mermaids has not diminished people's expectations. And in such a warm atmosphere, the doors of the mermaid kingdom were open, and a special group of guests arrived. In the sea full of swimming fish, the foreign visitors were all dressed in fur and wore cool clothing, both men and women, even calling themselves barbarians. The burly man at the forefront had a tiger-like back and a bear-like waist. He was tall and mighty, yet his face was filled with world weariness and his eyebrows and eyes bore a heavy burden of sorrow. His bare upper body was covered with enigmatic black lines, which even made people hesitant to glance at him. Compared to the noble guests in the mermaid kingdom, this group of people seemed so plain. However, none of the cultivators who saw them dared to underestimate them, all showing a solemn expression. The Lee Tribe's Han Hai Department. Why are they here? The cultivators in the capital city recognized the identity of these savages, 
and some even recognized the identity of the man at the head. Priestly Pa. He's actually leading them. Hasn't the Lee tribe always abstained from the treasure conference? Right. Why are they here this time? The priest is present such grandeur. Could it be that there is a treasure at this treasure conference that has attracted this group of Lee people who have high standards? TSK the Lee people have all arrived. This treasure conference is going to be lively. Chapter, 205 Inside the capital, the atmosphere became lively due to the sudden arrival of the Lee tribe people. Not only did those who enjoy hustle and bustle come out to watch, but with the Lee tribe's reputation preceding them, and now with the high priest of the Lee tribe leading the team. Even the quiet loving cultivators couldn't help but leave their residences to see this mysterious and unfathomable Hanhai department of the Lee tribe. Above the long street with surging seawater, the Lee tribe people, dressed in cool clothing and resembling wild men, all followed behind the high priestly Pe, indifferently making their way through the streets of the mermaid kingdom. Faced with the curious onlookers along the street, this group of Lee tribe people seemed to be completely unaware, not even giving them a glance. Eventually, under the guidance of the caretaker, the Lee tribe people settled into a secluded small courtyard. However, after the Lee tribe disappeared, the atmosphere within the capital didn't cool down, but became even more lively. For the mermaid kingdom, the Lee tribe can be considered rare guests. Especially the Han Hai department, although often adrift at sea and close to the mermaid kingdom. This group of Lee tribe people has never been attracted to the treasure conference held every twelve years by the mermaid kingdom that can attract heroes from all over the world. Now that the Lee tribe people have participated in the treasure conference, it is definitely a new and fresh thing for people. Many spread the word and tell their friends as new topics of conversation. It's just that the Lee tribe people are not easy to provoke, so although people are curious, they dare not go to their place to cause trouble. Li Pe, the priest of the Han Hai department, is known as the genius of the Li tribe, which is rare in a hundred thousand years. Once he split the East Sea with one sword, killed the evil demon King Heiko, and his reputation shook the world. Even though he has encountered great changes and his cultivation has been stagnant for many years, he is still one of the top characters. Who would dare to tease his beard? Moreover, even without mentioning the priestly Pe, the people from the Han Hai department who came to the city are not to be trifled with by ordinary people. Although the Li tribe's nine clans have a small population and don't involve themselves in worldly affairs by wandering through the world, every member of the tribe is born with extraordinary powers. In the past, regardless of whether it was a demon or the ruler of a great nation, any entity that clashed with the Li tribe's nine clans ultimately met with downfall and destruction, whereas the tribe remained unharmed. Although the Li tribe's nine clans have interfered little in the affairs of heaven and earth throughout the years, their very existence cannot be ignored. Regarding the sudden arrival of the Li tribe's people to the city, speculation and discussions never-endingly swarm within the various open restaurants and taverns. Everyone is curious as to what kind of treasure could have lured the Li tribe people, who are famously known for having such high standards when it comes to exotic treasures. After all, the Li tribe were fond of metallurgy and the world's top divine weapons often came from the Nine Li tribe. Therefore, the ability to invite the Li tribe, who have always been uninvolved in the world of spiritual cultivation, must be due to the emergence of a precious treasure. Inside the tavern, Madame Green Bamboo sat by the window listening with a smiling countenance to the conversation of two young cultivators passing by. Discussing the remarkable abilities of Han Hai department, and laughed as she turned to the great sage of Fu Fong on her seat. Even the Han Hai department's priest has come in person, it seems that this year's treasure conference will be more lively than usual. The great sage of Fu Fong, who wore a scholar's gown and looked frail and weak, laughs heartily and says, I had heard rumors before that this year's treasure conference would feature a rare treasure that only occurs once in a millennium. I hadn't paid much attention, but now that I see priestly Pe, it appears likely that this rumor is true. As he speaks, the great sage of Fu Fong quaffs half a jar of wine and says, Later on, let us go to the post house and inquire. Since Li Pe has come, he must have insider information. We might even be able to make a windfall ha ha ha. Madam Green Bamboo's lips twitch at the sight of the seemingly frail scholar guzzling wine with his head thrown back. She actually wanted to remind her brother, whom she had met over three hundred years ago, that if he was going to act, 
he should do the whole thing and cultured people don't drink like that. But knowing his personality, even if she could remind him to be careful here, he would show his true colors somewhere else. Anyway, the great sage of Fu Fong has made a great reputation in the South Sea, and no one dares to laugh at him. With a slight smile, Madam Green Bamboo said, Brother Tiger, do you know the priest of Han Hai Department? This is a fresh piece of information. Who was the priest of the Li tribe? How could he be acquainted with the great sage of Fu Fong? And they seem to have a good relationship too. Three hundred years ago, the little the great sage of Fu Fong that still needed her help unexpectedly rose to fame and surpassed even her, a practitioner of the dark arts, in just three hundred years. Madame Green Bamboo smiled at the seemingly refined gentleman in front of her, but her heart was filled with a bitter sense of sadness. The ancient legacy is truly extraordinary, as in just three hundred years, the great sage of Fu Fong has carved out a vast territory. In comparison, she, a devil who cannot endure loneliness and turn to the dark arts, is simply a joke. Both are demon cultivators, but with different destinies and luck, the difference in their situations is truly vast. Madame Green Bamboo felt conflicted while the meek man before her just smiled. Thirty years ago, during the migration of the Han Hai Department, I encountered them at sea. The iron-eating behemoth that the Han Hai Department had been raising for generations was a giant turtle the size of an island. At that time, I was chasing a rare tomb fish in the sea. The tomb fish had a human face and a fish body, but it had hands and feet, which was extremely peculiar. It was said that the flesh of the fish was also extremely delicious. I chased after it for three days and three nights at the intersection of the Western Sea and the South Sea. Using various tactics to encircle and intercept it, and I was about to catch the tomb fish, but suddenly a huge island appeared in front of me. When the tomb fish escaped to the sea area in front of the island, a huge monster head suddenly emerged from the sea and swallowed the tomb fish that I had chased for three days and three nights. At that time, I was so angry that I wanted to take out the roaring goose sword and slay the giant turtle that was trying to steal the prey. But little did I know that this turtle was an iron-eating creature that had been raised by the Han Hai department for generations. At the moment when the blade pierced the sky, it attracted the Han Hai department's priest Li Pu on the island. I battled him on the sea for two hours and was eventually defeated and convinced by his palm strike, but priest Li Pu didn't bully me for having lower cultivation. Not only did he help me repair the cracks on the roaring goose sword, but he also warmly entertained me with good wine and food. Finally, he personally tailored a set of armor for me, which was very hospitable. I stayed on the island for more than two months before saying goodbye and leaving. Occasionally, when I was bored, I would go to drink with him. I even helped him find more than a dozen heavenly thunder sands that he had been searching for before. With our relationship, if I were to personally inquire about the inside information, he would definitely tell me. The great sage of Fu Fong wiped the oil stain off the corner of his mouth with his sleeve and suggested, let's pay a visit to Han Hai department after this meal. Seeing the uneasy expression on Madame Green Bamboo's face, the great sage of Fu Fong quickly reassured her, Ching Jia, you don't need to be nervous. Li Pu is a good person and doesn't discriminate against supernatural beings. Plus, with me introducing you, you don't have to worry about him looking at you differently. The great sage of Fu Feng's comfort caused Madame Green Bamboo to smile awkwardly and nod. However, she didn't actually want to visit the Li tribe how formidable was the high priest of the Li tribe. She could hide her aura technique from the great sage of Fu Feng in front of her, but she might not be able to hide it from the high priest of the Li tribe. In order to avoid the mysterious and unpredictable man in white on land, she had come to the South Sea incognito, relying on the protection of the great sage of Fu Fong in front of her to barely calm her nerves. However, the great sage of Fu Fong was clearly no match for the priest of the Li tribe if her identity as an evil cultivator was exposed. At most, the great sage of Fu Fong would at most sever ties with her due to the bond of gratitude for saving her life. But if that priest of the Li tribe saw through her then it would be dangerous. She didn't want to escape from the mysterious and unpredictable man in white, only to fall into the hands of the priest of the Li tribe. While the great sage of Fu Fong indulged in his food and drink, Madame Green Bamboo pondered about how to politely refuse the invitation to join the Li tribe. Suddenly, there was commotion outside. The desolate street became lively once again. 
Madame Green Bamboo was taken aback and turned to look out of the window, only to see a huge exotic beast, Boy, carrying a carriage appearing at the gate of the city. Behind the carriage, followed four columns of black armored riders. The armor of each black armored rider was full of the scars of time, mottled and ancient. Many armors were even covered in cracks. The warhorses under them were also draped in ancient armor. Between the armors, one could vaguely see the blood-red eyes of the warhorses, which were terrifying like nightmare monsters. Faced with these four columns of black armored riders, no one dared to show a sneering expression, no matter how shabby their armor was. Because even the cultivators on the South Sea, who have not personally seen them, must have heard the prestige of this mysterious black armored army. The Immortal Kingdom. The Dark Armor Army. The great sage of Fu Fong widened his eyes and wore an expression of disbelief. And that carriage of Boi's Luo Yujun has arrived. The great sage of Fu Fang's eyes almost fell out of his head. Isn't that old monster supposed to never leave the immortal kingdom? Why has he come to the mermaid kingdom? Could it be that the treasure obtained from this treasure conference is so valuable that even this old monster, who has not left his house in thousands of years, has been brought out? The great sage of Fu Fong was dumbfounded, while Madame Green Bamboo was shocked in her heart. Chapter, 206 Although she didn't recognize the carriage of the master of the immortal kingdom, she had also heard from the great sage of Fu Fong about those few existences that cannot be provoked in the South Sea. Apart from the mermaid kingdom and Han Hai department, the immortal kingdom, which is mysterious and inscrutable, is the first to face the challenge. Luo Yujun, the ruler of the immortal kingdom, who has lived for countless years, and the immortal kingdom people who are rumored to be immortal and have never opened their borders, possess a powerful and terrifying army. If the Li tribe's Han Hai department was surprising for being attracted by exotic treasures, then this eerie army formation in front of them is quite peculiar. This Luo Yujun, the ruler of the immortal kingdom, could not be attracted by ordinary treasures, not to mention these knights in front of them. Madam Green Bamboo furrowed her brows and asked, Brother, are these four columns of knights what you previously mentioned as the Immortal Kingdom Praetorian Guard? The great sage of Fu Fong nodded and said, Yes, they are indeed the Praetorian Guard of the Immortal Kingdom. These four columns of knights, a total of forty men, may seem few in numbers, yet they are capable of fighting against thousands of enemies. The armor they wear is the highest quality among the black armor troops. It is rumored that even in the Immortal Kingdom, there are only forty-five Praetorian Guards, each of them being the most elite force in the kingdom. Their helmets and armor are ancient and fierce, possessing an incomprehensible power that is godlike. The forty-five Praetorian Guards marching together have far more power than ten thousand ordinary black armor troops. With forty of them accompanying him, the Immortal Kingdom has truly brought out their best soldiers it can be said that they have mobilized the entire country's strength. The great sage of Fu Fong also sensed that something was amiss, his expression furrowing as he spoke. He said, if Luo Yujun only came to attend the treasure conference in the Mermaid Kingdom, why to make such a big fuss? Traveling with forty Praetorian guards is like a national expedition is Luo Yujun coming here for a fight? The great sage of Fu Fong walked to the window and frowned as he watched the carriage of the Immortal Kingdom and the forty accompanying Praetorian guards pass through the streets below. At this moment, the streets had become desolate once again. The passers-by who were excited to see the sovereign's carriage from the immortal kingdom became worried after seeing the forty Praetorian guards, and couldn't help but feel frightened. Anyone who saw this scene would never believe that Luo Yujun came simply to attend the treasure conference. Walking into the mermaid kingdom with forty Praetorian guards in tow, this display seemed like a confrontation rather than a casual visit. And these two kingdoms, above the South Sea, are equally mysterious and infamous. Even if outsiders cannot determine which side is stronger, it can be assured that neither side is one that an ordinary person can provoke. Therefore, compared to the lively scene when the Han Hai department entered the city, when the Beast Boy carried the carriage into the city, although there were many onlookers on both sides of the street, no one was making loud noises. The quiet and dead atmosphere seemed inexplicably heavy. On the second floor of the wine shop, after the great sage of Fu Fong and Madame Green Bamboo watched the carriage of the Immortal Kingdom disappear, Madame Green Bamboo whispered. Maybe something big happened in the city, even the Lord of the Immortal Kingdom was alarmed thinking about it, 
perhaps the arrival of the priest of the Han Hai department may also be related to this matter. Madame Green Bamboo's speculation made the great sage of Fu Feng shake his head. The frail man dressed in a scholar's gown stood by the window and said, Why worry so much? We will go ask Li Pu and know everything soon. After speaking, he took Madame Green Bamboo downstairs to settle the bill. Later, the two prepared to leave and pay a visit to the residents of the Li tribe's Han Hai department. However, just as they were walking downstairs, there was a commotion at the city gate. It seemed that another important character had arrived. Upon hearing the commotion, the great sage of Fu Feng couldn't help but stop and stand by the roadside with curiosity on his face. Who else has come? The mermaid kingdom is very lively today. The great sage of Fu Feng's words were also the voice of many passers-by on both sides of the street. Everyone stopped and watched, waiting for the main character at the city gate to enter. Soon, the procession entering the city appeared in the sight of the people. However, compared with the previous Han Hai department and the immortal kingdom, the momentum of this team entering the city was much weaker. Coming into view at the end of the street was a team of less than a dozen people, all dressed in black robes. As they walked, their robes seemed to be empty. If not for their exposed faces, one would almost think that there was nothing under those black robes. They have neither a fearsome reputation nor the ferocity of the Praetorian guards. This team of a dozen or so people appears to be just an ordinary merchant caravan entering the city. If it had not been for the fact that the leader of the Mermaid Kingdom's naval patrol was there to greet them, hardly anyone would have taken this group seriously. However, upon witnessing this group of strangely dressed black-robed individuals, the great sage of Fu Feng's face changed slightly, clearly recognizing their identity. Madame Green Bamboo beside him was taken aback, quickly asking in a low voice, Brother, do you know these black-robed people? The great sage of Fu Feng remained silent, but his eyes stayed fixed on the group of black-robed men until they disappeared from sight. Only then did he let out a sigh and whispered. These are the people of Wuchi country, led by their ruler who is the most enigmatic and mysterious presence in the South Sea. If we delve deeper, the inheritance of my Roaring Goose Sword sword is somewhat related to Wuchi country when I discovered the ruins where I found Roaring Goose Sword, it was the capital city of Wuchi country from a hundred thousand years ago. The great sage of Fu Feng's words left Madame Green Bamboo shocked and dismayed. A hundred thousand years ago. For ordinary cultivators, a hundred years is already considered a long time scale. Even for the top cultivators, thousands of years of time are difficult to endure. Ten thousand years of time is enough to erode many national inheritances. Yet, Wuchi country already existed one hundred thousand years ago. She looked incredulously in the direction where the group of black-robed people disappeared, whispering, but why has this Wuchi country, with such ancient history, never been heard of above the South Sea? The great sage of Fu Feng sighed and said, all because this country has always been focused on internal cultivation, never venturing into the outside world. Even if they occasionally go out, they never proclaim their reputation outside. I was able to know their names because I had a brief encounter with the lord of the Wuchi country when I received the Roaring Goose Sword. Later, after I met Priestly Pu, he enlightened me and I learned how terrifying these mysterious black-robed men are. The great sage of Fu Feng looked around and whispered, according to ancient legends, Wuchi country was a vassal state of the ancient demon, Candle Dragon, and they have been worshipping it for generations. The great sage of Fu Feng's whisper scared Madame Green Bamboo so much that her face turned pale. Candle Dragon The infamous name of this ancient demon is known to everyone in the world. As an existence with a notorious reputation since ancient times, it has survived the chaos of the ages and still holds a fearsome reputation even in modern times. It is one of the most terrifying beings on the current stage. Wuchi country actually worships the Candle Dragon. No wonder it has survived for tens of thousands of years. However, the priest of the Li tribe who was able to expose the background of Wuchi country, it seems that this mysterious and unfathomable Li tribe has a history even longer than rumored. Madame Green Bamboo was shocked, feeling like she had been drawn into a mysterious struggle far beyond her level. When the grand and vast curtains were drawn, a demonic cultivator like her seemed to be less than insignificant when compared to the tiniest of ants. First, the Li tribe's Han Hai department appeared, then the ruler of the Immortal Kingdom, 
which had been closed for thousands of years, made their way into the city with the Praetorian guards. And now, even ancient legacies like Wuchi country have come to light. What exactly has happened to the mermaid kingdom before their eyes? Just the appearance of these few factions on the stage was enough to scare the crowd, not to mention the unknown number of equally powerful entities lurking in the shadows, yet to be discovered by the people. Are these mysterious and terrifying entities really only here because of the Treasure Conference? Although the Treasure Conference has a prestigious reputation, it doesn't seem quite noteworthy enough to cause such a great disturbance. Chapter 207 Inside the Mermaid Kingdom, the atmosphere started to become peculiar. None of those present were fools. At first, when the Lee Tribe's Hanhai Department appeared, people assumed that the Lee Tribe was drawn there by some exotic treasure. After all, the Lee Tribe people were fond of metallurgy and were especially keen on all sorts of exotic treasures and divine weapons. If a rare divine artifact really appeared, it was perfectly normal for the Lee Tribe to be drawn there. But soon after came the Lord of the Immortal Kingdom, and that's when things started to get strange. The ancient demon of the Immortal Kingdom never leaves home in thousands of years, and cannot be lured out by any rare treasures. However, in addition to the Master of the Immortal Kingdom, another group of mysteriously cloaked figures arrived with great pomp. Although most people are unaware of Wuchi country, the commander of the Sea Patrol himself guided them, which is just as impressive as Hanhai Department and the Immortal Kingdom. The few elderly people who have been cultivating for a long time, upon seeing this group of black-cloaked men, were reminded of a mysterious legend from the South Sea, and their faces could not help but change slightly. Although Wuchi country is mysterious and prestigious, it is still in the forefront of the South Sea. Even if one has not seen it, one must have heard of it. Even the Wuchi country, with its association with the Candle Dragon, has come this is more startling than Lua Yujun leaving home. The knowledgeable seniors have started to discipline their disciples and forbid younger generations from loitering outside. Observant individuals can sense that the once lively mermaid kingdom, bustling with the treasure conference, is now experiencing a change in the winds. As the atmosphere in the mermaid kingdom began to change and the streets grew increasingly desolate, a massive speedfish emerged from the sea, appearing in the waters near the mermaid kingdom. Once this exotic beast disappears underwater, Unless it actively disengages from its white thunder or is detected by a powerful magic user employing magic eyes, it is difficult for ordinary people to detect the vanished speedfish. Consequently, as Lu Hang and his group trek south, passing various mermaid cities and encountering several mermaid patrol fleets, no one notices the speedfish swimming alongside them. Now that they had arrived at their destination, the enormous beast emerged from the water of its own accord, revealing its true form. The capital of the Mermaid Kingdom is located in a vast coral sea. The city is built on the seabed cliffs, with delicate coral and swarming fish, truly exceptional in beauty. Even the most beautiful seascape of Lu Hang's past life cannot compare to the unexpected beauty of this place. Walking out of speed fish with Xiao Ai, Lu Hang turned around and bowed to Yu Ling Long, saying with a smile. In that case, Lady Yu Ling Long, please go back first. Let me handle the following matters, and there is no need for you to trouble yourself any further. Letting out a sigh, Yu Linglong returned the gesture and said, May the wolf god have a safe journey and everything goes smoothly. In fact, she wanted to enter the city with the wolf god, but her identity was sensitive in the mermaid kingdom. The wolf god also didn't want her to be too involved in this matter and politely declined her request to accompany him. Therefore, Yu Linglong could only see him off to this point. In the midst of the seawater, Xiao Ai and Lu Heng watched as Speedfish closed its big mouth, turned around, and disappeared back into the water, before looking at the distant mermaid kingdom lying on the seabed. Unlike their imagination, although the mermaid kingdom was located in the picturesque Coral Sea, a gigantic and immense city wall was built around the perimeter of the city. This massive wall rose to a hundred meters high, standing in the seawater like a towering celestial canopy, evoking awe in people. The strange weapons on the city walls, although not emanating any divine light, gave Lu Heng a subtle sense of danger, all of them being deadly weapons that could threaten him. For the first time since Lu Heng's debut, these weapons that were merely placed around the city walls were able to give him a sense of crisis. If those weapons were to be manipulated by someone, 
This mermaid kingdom didn't possess the sublime and delicate beauty associated with the mermaids, instead, it was a rigid and terrifying underwater fortress. Moreover, the most subtle thing was that the fortress of the mermaid kingdom city walls was not primarily defending the side where Lu Heng and the others were located, but instead defending the southern side. On both sides of the city, there were equally high gigantic walls extending outwards, resembling a vast underwater great wall. And this heavily fortified mermaid kingdom was the central hub of this underwater great wall. The mermaid kingdom is already situated in the far south. Beyond this country lies only the enigmatic and mysterious South Sea Deep Trench, save for a few desolate border cities. Why did the Mermaid Kingdom build such a grand and magnificent underwater Great Wall facing south? What were they defending against? Lu Heng sighed in his heart, the secrets of the Mermaid Kingdom and the South Sea Deep Trench must be more terrible than ordinary people imagine. Just the weapons on the city wall made him feel uneasy, who knows what oddities are hidden within the city. There are even rumors of an ancient power that exists within the mermaid kingdom. As expected of the kingdom that was able to slay the ancient divine beast by Fong, its heritage and power are something those ordinary countries of the South Sea cannot be compared to. Lu Heng traveled south all the way, the only ones who could have such a faintly looming presence as the mermaid kingdom were the equally mysterious immortal kingdom. The other kingdoms, such as the three-headed kingdom and the fire-hating country, although their people possessed various abilities, cannot match the grandeur of the mermaid kingdom. However, Lu Heng didn't come here to fight, as he brought Xiao Ai, who carried the heavenly thunder sword, and went straight towards the fortress gate in the distance. He was composed and tranquil. The appearance of a girl and a wolf in the sea quickly caught the attention of the patrolling marine forces guarding the city gates. With Xiao Ai by his side, Lu Heng swam towards the top of the massive fortress wall and soon arrived at the Grand Gate. Although the walls of the Mermaid Kingdom were towering, the city was not within the walls, but rather a hollow garden suspended underwater, aligned with the top of the city walls, like a gigantic lid, covering the entire fortress. As for what is hidden in the interior space, nearly 300 meters high, beneath the construction of that city, it is the secret of the Mermaid Kingdom, unknown to outsiders. When Lu Heng and Xiao Ai arrived at the city gate, they were greeted not by the guarding sea patrol general, but by a middle-aged mermaid dressed in plain robes. Mermaids, regardless of their gender, have exquisite and gentle facial features. Although this middle-aged mermaid is already old with wrinkles at the corners of his eyes, he still appears elegant and amiable. Facing Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, the middle-aged mermaid bowed and said, I'm Yu Huifeng, the imperial minister of the mermaid kingdom, greeting the wolf god. In a flash of white light, Lu Heng's spirit manifested in front of everyone. He also bowed to the imperial minister eunuch before him. Master Yu, you are too kind, Lu Heng smiled and said, since Master Yu knows me, I presume you also know the purpose of my visit? Lu Heng went straight to the point, without any pleasantries, which made Yu Huifeng slightly surprised. But then he smiled. Yu Huifeng chuckled and said, the wolf god is decisive. I won't cross swords with you. Miss Huifeng is now imprisoned in the extreme hell prison, and in four days, she will be transported to the extreme hell island for punishment if the wolf god comes to claim her, I can only apologize. Chapter, 208 At the city gate, Yu Huifeng said apologetically as follows. Behind him, both inside and outside the gate, the standing mermaids were all taut and nervously watching the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain in front of them. Although the mermaids didn't know much about the reputation of this wolf god. But the moment the wolf god appeared, the entire mermaid kingdom had already entered a state of highest alertness. In seemingly peaceful town, they were already on high alert. In case of conflict, they could respond at any time. And this level of mobilization only exists in legends and is used to deal with the existence of ancient mythical beasts. Could the white wolf in front of my eyes be an ancient monster that is no weaker than by Fong? But just by its aura, it doesn't seem like it. The mermaids were nervous, but the white wolf in front of the city gate shook its head and said. Master you misunderstood, Lu Heng said, I didn't come here to ask for my friend's safety. I just know about the evil deeds of the Maoyuo sword, so I wanted to meet Miss Huifeng and see the situation. Lu Heng said in a serious tone, Please believe me, Master, I hate the demonic cult more than anyone here. 
If it is really a demon, I will not show any mercy. Lu Heng's sincere words conveyed his genuine feelings. Yu Huifeng appeared hesitant for a moment, then sighed, then please let the wolf god accompany me into the city. The extreme hell prison is of great importance and we need the consent of the monarch to enter the wolf god can come with me to the city to rest, and I will inform the lord after he finishes the ancestor worship. Yu Huifeng's sincere words also made Lu Heng nod in agreement. Thank you for your trouble, Master Yu, but may I ask how long it will take for the Lord to finish the ancestor worship? Lu Heng smiled and said, Don't take four days and nights until the day of execution. Yu Huifeng smiled slightly and said, The wolf god, please don't joke, it won't take that long. At the latest, by tomorrow's sunset, you will be able to meet the Lord. Lu Heng pondered for a moment before nodding his agreement. Very well, then we shall trouble Master Yu to lead the way he said. Not at all, not at all. The wolf god has arrived, and we are honored to receive you, said the man respectfully. Yu Huifeng courteously ushered Lu Heng and Xiao Ai into the city, with over a hundred fully armed mermaid soldiers following closely behind. Each and every one of those mermaid soldiers was a highly skilled marine combatant from the mermaid kingdom's naval forces. The presence of over a hundred naval soldiers immediately captured the attention of the city's inhabitants. An even more terrifying figure has arrived. The spectacle is greater than that of the Immortal Kingdom and the Han Hai Department combined. The chief minister personally greeted them, and they are accompanied by over a hundred naval soldiers. This news quickly spread throughout the city, alarming everyone. The previous arrival of three consecutive protagonists had already made the atmosphere of the mermaid kingdom strange and tense. Now, an even more terrifying presence has appeared. The chief minister greeted them personally, accompanied by hundreds of warriors. This grandeur they've never heard of it before. And the various characteristics of that protagonist quickly spread with the news. It immediately reminded some knowledgeable elderly people of a statue of the wolf god that was rumored to have been recently transmitted from the South Seas. The famous monster, Luo Yujun, from the South Sea, was being helped by all the countries in the South Sea to find his missing friend. Even the enigmatic wolf god has come to the mermaid kingdom. When this news came, the great sage of Fu Fong had just paid a visit to the Han Hai department and returned to his own courtyard. Upon hearing this news from Madame Green Bamboo, the great sage of Fu Feng's face lit up with excitement. Has the old demon senior also come? Quick! Sister Green, let's go meet him. The great sage of Fu Feng was extremely excited. Madame Green Bamboo, on the other hand, awkwardly smiled and said, Brother, this may not be appropriate we are not acquainted with that old senior, it would be too impolite to seek an audience with him casually. She had just found an excuse to decline to go to the Han Hai department together with the great sage of Fu Feng, but now, unexpectedly, the great sage of Fu Feng was going to meet the wolf god excuse me. He is an ancient demon senior from ancient times, why should he meet with you? How come the great sage of Fu Feng has no knowledge of manners at all? Madame Green Bamboo felt a headache. However, the great sage of Fu Feng laughed, saying, You're wrong, Sister Green. Who says we are not familiar with the senior? Your little girl Xiao Xiao is acquainted with the senior wolf god at Wu Gu's place, isn't she? We are younger seniors, just go and say hello, and senior wolf god won't be upset at most, if he gets angry, we can just leave for the sake of Xiao Xiao's face, even if he gets angry, he won't endanger our lives. The great sage of Fu Feng chuckled. Madam Green Bamboo couldn't help feeling speechless after hearing this. The great sage of Fu Feng seems to possess some intelligence, but his brazen conduct betrays a lack of concern for offending his seniors. With a sigh of resignation, Madame Green Bamboo remarked, I think it's best not to go. If we happen to have the chance, I already paid my respects to him at Fan Jie Mountain. How could we, mere youngsters, bother such an ancient being? Anyway, he's currently residing in the Mermaid Kingdom and is most likely attending the treasure conference. We'll have plenty of opportunities to meet him, there's no need to ruin the impression by barging in now. It's unseemly. Madame Green Bamboo's analysis made the great sage of Fu Feng ponder and nod in agreement, indeed, indeed, Sister Green has a farsightedness. Anyway, the old senior wolf god is in town, 
and there will be plenty of opportunities to get to know him well but let's not go to pay our respects today, we can still go to observe him from a distance. The great sage of Fu Fong was excited and rubbing his hands together, the old senior is passing through the town now, so we don't need to go out of our way to bother him. We just need to stand on the side of the road and watch. To be honest, I've long admired this old senior and have wanted to meet him for a while. Even if we can't go to pay our respects today, it's enough to take a glimpse from afar. The great sage of Fu Fong chuckled, Sister Green, aren't you curious about the great demeanor of this old senior from the demon tribe? Didn't you say that you admire him a lot? We can take a glimpse from afar and see what kind of style makes Xiao Xiao praise him endlessly. The great sage of Fu Feng's words sparked a slight movement in Madame Green Bamboo's heart she was actually moved by the great sage of Fu Feng's words. Indeed, though she was an evil cultivator, she was also filled with admiration and curiosity for the senior demon clan elder who Xiao Xiao greatly respects. However, as an evil cultivator, she couldn't possibly show herself in front of that elder. But if she were to hide in the shadows and take a peek from afar, it wouldn't be impossible. Madame Green Bamboo stood up and said, let's go then. Saying so, she led the way outside, it's getting late, maybe we won't have a chance to admire the senior wolf god's elegance. While walking, Madame Green Bamboo held her chest. For some unknown reason, when she made this decision, her heart beat faster. This breathtaking feeling left her quite perplexed. Perhaps meeting the wolf god will bring her great fortune. Chapter 209 Above the city, a huge ray sailed by, followed by hundreds of fully armed mermaid battle soldiers. Yu Huifen, on the broad back of the ray, smiled as he introduced the various aspects of the city below to the wolf god. In the mermaid kingdom, flying too high is prohibited, similar to the no-flight zones in some countries. People have never heard of someone showing off by parading on a ray across the city like Lu Hing did. Down below, many cultivators who had received the news silently looked up at the huge ray gliding across the sky and the figures on it, saying nothing. The Mermaid Kingdom is the most mysterious and powerful nation above the South Sea. The most distinguished figures in the world are those who can enjoy such treatment in the Mermaid Kingdom. Although many Taoist masters came to the Mermaid Kingdom for the Treasure Conference, no one else could be entitled to such treatment. Accompanied by hundreds of soldiers and the minister, the treatment he received was nothing less than that of the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom's inspection tour. What's more, the one receiving such treatment is not even a human, but a demon statue. Looking up at the white-clad man on the manta ray from the Long Street, the great sage of Fu Fong felt both envious and admiring, and couldn't help exclaiming, a real man should be like this. Due to the nature of cultivation, not all demon clans can withstand the long and lonely years. Some demon cultivators, who used to be friends, have surpassed themselves in cultivation within a decade or two, while their progress has been limited due to our nature as demon cultivators. Such a comparison can easily lead some demon cultivators to a mental breakdown. Compared to vanity, the existence of enemies is even more frightening. In the world of cultivation, once one enters society, they are inevitably involved in various struggles or chaos. For demon cultivators, this is the most terrifying thing. Because the cultivator I accidentally offended today may become powerful in a few decades and come seeking revenge. Therefore, the demon cultivator clan is the one with the most evil cultivators among the dark cultivators. There are always a large number of demon cultivators who, due to various reasons, make a wrong decision and step into the evil path while advancing rapidly in their cultivation. Their evil cultivation techniques not only confuse people's minds but also require many cruel acts to be performed in order to cultivate them. Such as blood consumption, such as robbing men of their yang energy and women of their yin energy. Although the cultivation world doesn't discriminate against demon cultivators who follow the righteous path. However, how can a demonic race that frequently produces evil demons be welcomed? Most demon cultivators live very humble lives in the cultivation world. Even if there is a part of demon cultivators who quietly endure loneliness and work hard on cultivating. Finally achieving great success and becoming a prominent demon leader, they receive praise from people who admire their steadfast and unshakable nature. However, the suspicion and vigilance in people's hearts still persist and don't fade away. Demon cultivators can be classified into two types, 
those who have already become evil monsters and those who have the potential to become evil monsters. This viewpoint is the mainstream in the cultivation world. This is because even the accomplished demon kings could possibly step onto the evil path in the future. After all, the promotion that demon cultivators receive after stepping onto the demonic path is too conspicuous and tempting. Therefore, every demon cultivator could take that step. As a result, demon cultivators in the cultivation world have always found it difficult to gain genuine friendship and respect from others. Most of them only have some drinking buddies and can only dream of others' sincere admiration. But today, the great sage of Fu Feng saw a scene he had never imagined before. It turns out that even the demon cultivator, when reaching the pinnacle of his cultivating, can possess such grandeur. Even the minister in charge of the mermaid kingdom had to come out to greet him, accompanied by hundreds of soldiers. At this stage, what does it matter if outsiders remain wary and suspicious in their hearts? Even if their hearts are filled with fear and trepidation, they must still remain cautious. Not only must they remain cautious, but in their hearts they must also pray that the wolf god will continue to follow the righteous path and never stray into the ways of evil. Otherwise, such an existence once having fallen into the realm of evil would bring calamity to the world. The great sage of Fu Feng's heart swelled with emotion and intense heat upon seeing this breathtaking scene. Isn't this the very picture he had dreamed of? Let the world never dare to underestimate again. A true man should be like this. The great sage of Fu Feng's heart was surging, while Madame Green Bamboo beside him was full of doubts. The man in white on the huge ray gave her an extremely terrifying sense of familiarity. However, she couldn't see the face of the man in white due to the distance. She just watched from afar at his every move and grandeur, which was actually similar to the devil she encountered in Fu Shan City. Can't be this unlucky. Madame Green Bamboo was filled with fear, bewildered and helpless. Could it be that the wolf god, widely rumored in the South Sea, was the same evil star she encountered in Fushan City? However, that person's divine soul was radiant with brilliant lightning, obviously belonging to a top human cultivator, and not a demon. Regardless of how high a demon's cultivation level is, their divine soul always reflects their true form and cannot take on a humanoid appearance. The wolf god before her, on the other hand, was an ancient demon authenticated by various sources, and its true form and divine soul must be that of a wolf. Perhaps the current appearance of the man in white clothes is just a coincidence of transformation. After all, the transformation of the man in white clothes is not uncommon. That person is the adversary of the Green Hell Cave and has helped the Fire Pass country in obtaining some clues about the secretive doings of the Green Hell Cave according to reason. He should be helping the Fire Pass country to eliminate the evil demons of the Green Hell Cave on land, and it is impossible for him to be idle here in the South Sea, still flaunting the wolf god's prestigious name. At the thought of this, Madame Green Bamboo's heart trembled slightly. As the enormous ray swam away, Madame Green Bamboo and the great sage of Fu Feng stood on the street, looking up at the magnificent scene of the hundreds of soldiers escorting it. The great sage of Fu Feng couldn't help but marvel, Senior Wolf God is truly unparalleled in his vigor. Sister Green, we must find an opportunity to get to know him, as it is not in vain that we, as demons, have come to this world. While the great sage of Fu Feng was deeply moved by this, Madame Green Bamboo was lost in thought. Ah yes. The picture of watching the giant ray leaving, the fear in her heart, never dispersed. Moreover, the great sage of Fu Feng beside her was going to pay respects to the wolf god if he truly is that ominous figure. Thinking of that possibility, Madame Green Bamboo couldn't help but hold her breath, her face turning pallid. No it won't do. Even if it offends the wolf god, we must see this through today. We cannot rashly charge in like this. With this in mind, Madame Green Bamboo gritted her teeth and lifted her head to gaze fiercely at the back of the gigantic ray. Her magic eyes opened, directly fixating on the white-clothed man on top of the ray. Then. Sister Green, we will hm. Sister Green. Chapter, 210. The great sage of Fu Feng, with an expression of fascination on his face, watched as the ray swam away, saying to the woman beside him. However, as soon as the words were spoken, the great sage of Fu Feng realized that something was wrong. 
he turned around abruptly, only to find no one beside him. The woman in the green dress who had followed him and admired the glory of the wolf god together had disappeared without a trace. Not even a trace of breath was left. The empty streets felt as if no one had stood beside him from the very beginning, as if he was talking to himself. Such a situation immediately left the great sage of Fu Fong confused. Hey, Sister Green. Where are you? On the long street, the man dressed in a scholar's robe quickly turned his head to look around, but couldn't find the figure of the demon elder sister who had once saved him. He even opened his magic eyes and desperately looked around, but still couldn't find the figure of that woman in green clothes. It seemed that at that moment, the woman in green clothes disappeared from the world, without any news. The great sage of Fu Fong became anxious in an instant. On the long street, echoes of his urgent shout resounded. Hey, Sister Green. Where have you been? The thin man in a scholar's robe panicked and shouted, Don't scare me. We're not kids playing hide and seek anymore. The great sage of Fu Feng's loud shouting quickly attracted several passersby. People all looked strangely at this shouting scholar, not knowing what he was calling for. The great sage of Fu Feng shouted anxiously several times, and seeing that no one responded to him, he became worried and disregarded the ban on the airspace of the Mermaid Kingdom. He swam directly upwards, trying to swim to a higher place and use the magic eyes to find the missing woman in the green dress. However, just as the great sage of Fu Feng was a few meters off the ground, he heard the voice of the priest from the Li tribe. The voice contained a hint of curiosity. What are you shouting about? This area is prohibited from expanding upward be careful not to attract the mermaid's patrol by swimming so high. Upon hearing this voice, the great sage of Fu Feng quickly turned back and saw that priestly Pu, accompanied by several members of the Hanhai department from the Li tribe, was heading towards him. Upon seeing an acquaintance, the great sage of Fu Feng quickly lowered his stature and anxiously said, Li Pu, have you seen my sister? She's a female demon cultivator in a green dress with a bamboo leaf mark on her forehead. She's the big sister of the demon clan who saved my life before, as I mentioned to you earlier. The great sage of Fu Feng exclaimed anxiously, although my sister's cultivation is not advanced, she has a stunning appearance and a slender figure that often attracts the attention of lascivious men. She was standing beside me just a moment ago, and now she has vanished. Nowadays, the mermaid kingdom is in chaos. Will she be abducted by a powerful lecherous cultivator using secret techniques? The great sage of Fu Feng's face was anxious, while Li Po's countenance became peculiar upon hearing his words. She disappeared in the blink of an eye. Right beside you. Li Pe said, with your cultivation level, brother, even if you were distracted, I believe no one could have taken your sister away unnoticed. Li Pe pondered for a moment and then said, perhaps it was your sister who voluntarily employed the cloaking technique to leave. Didn't you mention it before? Your sister is proficient in the art of cloaking. If she left while you were unprepared, there is a high probability that you wouldn't have noticed. Li Po's words made the great sage of Fu Feng pause. He was somewhat perplexed, but why would my dear sister suddenly leave my side without saying a word did something happen? The great sage of Fu Feng was completely confused. Meanwhile, Li Po looked at the great sage of Fu Feng in front of him, then gazed at the enormous flying ray disappearing into the sky and the mermaid soldiers following along, when a sudden thought struck him. Li Pe asked, Are you and your sister here to pay homage to the wolf god? The great sage of Fu Feng nodded and didn't hide, Yes, I heard the wolf god had entered the city, so I quickly brought Sister Green to come and admire senior wolf god's extraordinary bearing. But I never thought that Sister Green suddenly disappeared mysteriously. The great sage of Fu Feng's face was anxious, obviously still worried about the missing woman in green. Li Pe continued to ask, Did your sister Green see the wolf god's figure before she disappeared? Did she disappear suddenly after seeing the wolf god? The great sage of Fu Feng also nodded and said, Indeed, she disappeared suddenly after seeing the wolf god at that time. I was intimidated by the wolf god's extraordinary bearing and distracted, so I didn't notice that Sister Green had been abducted. The great sage of Fu Feng's words made Li Pe shake his head and say, Brother, Please put your worries aside for now. Your sister Qing is definitely not kidnapped. 
There's no way someone could have taken her without your perception in the South Sea. The origin of the Roaring Goose Sword is so great. With this weapon in hand, no one can use trickery in front of you. Lipa said with great certainty, even if the wolf god were to make a move, it would be impossible to hide his hostility from the Roaring Goose Sword. So your sister Green should have left on her own. Lipa looked at the figure of the wolf god leaving in the distance and smiled, as for why she suddenly left let's ask the wolf god together, maybe then we will know. Lipo's words made the great sage of Fu Fong look puzzled, does brother Lipa know the reason for Sister Green's departure? Lipa shook his head with a smile and said, it's hard to say for now. If we say the wrong thing, we may offend someone. Let's go and inform the wolf god about this matter. Perhaps he can give us a definite answer. Lipa had some suspicions when the great sage of Fu Fong paid him a visit and mentioned his demon clan elder sister. A demon cultivator acquaintance who had been separated for three hundred years suddenly left his home and came to the South Sea to seek refuge in Li Lipo's casual inquiry. It was discovered that the great sage of Fu Fong knew little about his sister's experiences during those three hundred years. Lipa became curious and formed some conjectures at the time. Now, when Sister Green heard about the sighting of the wolf god from afar, she turned around and fled hee hee if he guessed right. The time when Sister Green went south to seek refuge with the great sage of Fu Fong is almost the same period when the wolf god was wandering in the Fire Pass country. Given the magnanimity of the wolf god, it is unlikely for a righteous cultivator to become his enemy. Despite having such thoughts, Li Pe kept his views to himself and maintained his insistence to introduce the great sage of Fu Fong to the wolf god. The great sage of Fu Fong was bewildered and failed to comprehend how meeting the wolf god could lead to the revelation of Sister Green's disappearance could it be that the wolf god possessed knowledge of all that occurred in the world. Thereafter, a look of astonishment crossed the great sage of Fu Fang's face as he realized something. Um, Brother Li Pe, did you already know the wolf god? The great sage of Fu Fong asked with great shock. Li Pe sighed and smiled bitterly. You finally figured it out yes, I am indeed acquainted with the wolf god. I left because I heard that the wolf god was coming to the mermaid kingdom, so I went to pay my respects. Patting the great sage of Fu Feng's shoulder, Li Pe smiled and said, Since you admire the wolf god so much, I'll introduce you to him on my way there. As fellow demon cultivators, the wolf god is sure to like you. Chapter, 211 Stepping on the back of a huge ray, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai arrived at their residence in the Mermaid Kingdom. Surprisingly, it was not arranged in the inn, but in a secluded courtyard near the palace. The pavilions, towers, buildings, and furniture were all of top quality. Even in the courtyard, there were graceful and charming mermaid maidservants waiting at all times. It can be said that it was a top-notch configuration. However, Lu Hang, as always, let Yu Huifeng take away all the maidservants without needing their service. Lu Hang ignored the hundreds of mermaid battle soldiers guarding outside the courtyard. They claimed to be protecting the wolf god and preventing outsiders from disturbing the peace, and Lu Hang believed them. After all, these soldiers would not enter the courtyard and disturb his time with Xiao Ai. After politely seeing off Yu Huifeng and agreeing to meet with the lord the next day, Lu Heng smiled and returned to the courtyard with Xiao Ai. The once bustling courtyard, filled with many mermaid attendants, now appeared desolate and empty due to their departure. After closing the gate, Xiao Ai quickly ran back to the side of the wolf god, her face filled with worry. The wolf god. Xiao Ai fretted, judging by Master Yu's attitude, it seems that the mermaid kingdom doesn't want us to meet Miss Hua. Lu Heng laughed heartily and said, didn't they say that we'll be able to see Brother Hua before sunset tomorrow at the latest? How could you say that they aren't sincere? Without thinking, Xiao Ai cast a brief glance outside and pursed her lips. This is clearly a delaying tactic Master Yu initially stated that the Mermaid Kingdom absolutely had to kill Miss Hua, regardless of her condition. Then they changed their tune, only to avoid a confrontation with you, the Wolf God, at the city gate. They're just trying to deceive us with this delaying tactic, she said. Today, he said tomorrow tomorrow, he will say the day after tomorrow. When the day after tomorrow passes, The treasure conference will be here and Miss Hua will be executed. How can we even see her then? 
Xiao Ai exclaimed indignantly. The aloof little girl only reveals such an expression in front of Lu Heng. Lu Heng looked at her with amusement, couldn't help but ruffle the little girl's hair, and asked, since you've seen through Master Yu's intentions, why didn't you speak up and mock him then? Xiao Ai's face turned slightly red, standing still and letting Lu Heng mess up her hair, her body slightly stiff. It wasn't until Lu Heng retracted his hand that the little girl, blushing, whispered. As long as the wolf god is present, Xiao Ai has no right to speak if I speak, it would be impolite, and others would laugh at the wolf god and say that his subordinates are not strict enough. The little girl's serious storytelling made Lu Heng even more amused. This little girl is really precocious. In Lu Heng's previous life, girls of Xiao Ai's age were still playing jump rope. How could they understand so much Xiao Ai's mother is really clever, she taught Xiao Ai so much. Lu Heng smiled and said, next time when you encounter such a situation, speak boldly and speak your mind out. No one dares to laugh at you. What kind of strict supervision Xiao Ai is not my subordinate. You can say whatever you want to say in the future, and no one will laugh at you. With a smile, Lu Heng said, and I always get along well with others, so some things are better left unsaid face to face. After all, we have to maintain a certain level of elegance. But you, Xiao Ai, are different. Those words that I cannot say, you can say on my behalf. If you had said those words at the city gate just now, maybe Master you would not have come forward, and we might have seen Brother Hua today. Lu Heng's half-joking and half-serious words made Xiao Ai stunned for a moment. Afterwards, her face turned redder. With her head down and her sleeves twisted, the little girl mumbled, but the wolf god, Xiao Ai's careless words will surely cause gossip among others. Seeing the little girl's shy demeanor, Lu Heng couldn't help but laugh and said, what's there to be afraid of? Your only ten children speak their minds, say whatever you want, no one will care. Lu Heng's words made the blushing little girl directly stunned. Children speak their minds without thinking. At that moment, there was a sudden announcement sound outside the door. The informer is the naval commander who stayed here. Reporting to the wolf god, Priestly Pu of Hanhai Department wishes to see you he says he knows you from the past. The concise announcement made the little girl with a blank expression quickly turn her head and look outside. Lu Heng appeared slightly surprised, Priestly Pu. What brings him here? Leading Xiao Ai outside, Lu Heng replied, Please let Priestly Pu come in, he is indeed an old friend of mine. Very well. Outside the courtyard, the response of the naval general could be heard. Lu Heng walked to the front door and opened it. Sure enough, he saw a familiar figure coming towards him from not far away. The burly figure, with mysterious black patterns on his upper body and a face that appeared old and tired from the ravages of time leading the way was the priest of the Li tribe's Hanhai department, Li Pe, whom Lu Heng had seen before. Apart from the two Hanhai department tribesmen accompanying him, there was also another thin and weak scholar whom Lu Heng didn't know. However, the thin and weak scholar was surrounded by a strong demonic aura, and there was a faintly ominous feeling about him. It was clear that his true nature was not as frail as his appearance suggested. Lu Heng chuckled and bowed. It has been almost a year since we parted ways at Hanyu Mountain, and I never thought I would encounter Priestly Pe here again oh, Priestly Pe, are you also here for the treasure conference? As Priestly Pu approached, he carried a large wine jar and smiled, saying, I heard that the wolf god will be visiting the mermaid kingdom, so I took the liberty of coming to pay my respects. I am not here for the treasure conference, but for the wolf god ha ha ha. While laughing heartily, Priestly Pu glanced at the surrounding mermaid battle soldiers. As expected, upon hearing Priestly Pu's words, the faces of the mermaid battle soldiers all changed. The significance of Priestly Po's statement was understood by everyone present the only one who may not have understood was the great sage of Fu Fong. While the mermaid's expressions changed slightly, Lu Heng seemed unfazed and continued to smile. I have no possessions here, even my lodgings were arranged by Master Yu. If you come to me, you may not find anything. Lu Heng's words caused Li Pe to burst out laughing. He tapped the wine barrel in his hand and said, Therefore, I brought a 500-year-old vintage today this is a treasure from my Hanhai department's collection. 
I invite the wolf god to taste it and see if it's not inferior to the spring jade wine of the Shifen department. Li Po's smile was bright and cheerful, completely different from the melancholic and sorrowful man he had first met. Although the injury from forging the heavenly thunder sword had not yet completely healed, this young priest from the Li tribe, who was the most talented among the nine tribes, had undergone a transformation. His demeanor and bearing are far superior to last year. Chapter 212 Without delay, Lu Hang led Li Po's group straight into the courtyard. However, after Li Pa and the great sage of Fu Fong entered, the two burly men from the Han Hai department who had accompanied Li Pa didn't enter the door. Instead, they stood on either side of the entrance and guarded the courtyard. As the mermaid battle soldiers who also guarded the wolf god watched in confusion, the two burly men directly glared back at them and cursed. What are you looking at? Have you never seen muscular men before? Their aggressive attitude left the mermaid battle solitors at a loss. They are the backbone of the mermaid kingdom and any one of them, if placed outside, would already be a top cultivator with the ability to suppress a city or a region. Now, with hundreds of soldiers gathered here, how dare these two strong men from the Li tribe challenge them? The mermaid battle soldiers all held an unshakable expression, but the rampant chi and strength of these two strong men from the Li tribe were far above them. Even within the Han Hai department, they were among the top few. Apart from these two strong men, there were also the priests of Han Hai department. The tiger demon great sage of Fu Fong that had made a name for itself in the South Sea in recent years, and a mysterious and unfathomable wolf god in the courtyard. Remembering the instructions of the chief minister, the mermaids didn't dare to provoke them, but silently averted their gaze. Later, someone spread the news that the Han Hai department priest had worshipped the wolf god. Outside the courtyard, the mermaid battle soldiers were feeling depressed. Inside the courtyard, Lu Heng reunited with old friends, and both of their moods were elated. Lu Heng smiled and said, Before you left in a hurry, you didn't have a chance to taste the spring jade brew actually, I have some here, given to me by Miss Chen. This wine is already fragrant, but soaking it with the peach blossoms of my back mountain peach garden adds vitality, making it a healing elixir. After drinking a cask, Priestly Ju has quickly recovered. Now that Priestly Pa has come, coincidentally I have also brought a pot of spring jade brew. Although it's not as much as a cask, it can still aid in your recovery. As Lu Heng spoke, Xiao Ai took out the pot of peach blossom brew and placed it on the stone table where the three of them reunited. The moment the bottle stopper was opened, a refreshing aroma of wine floated out, and Li Po's eyes brightened up. Indeed, full of vitality. He laughed heartily and opened the vintage wine he brought, saying with a smile, The wolf god is kind, and Li Pu is not being insincere, so I will accept this fine wine. Although the 500-year-old wine I brought cannot cure wounds, its aroma and flavor is no less than the spring jade wine. I invite the wolf god and brother tiger to taste it. As for this miraculous healing wine, Li Pu gratefully accepts it ha ha ha. Li Po's laughter was extremely hearty. The great sage of Fu Fong, on the other hand, felt somewhat uneasy. Although Li Pe had already introduced him to the wolf god upon their arrival and the wolf god had nodded his approval, the great sage of Fu Fong was still nervous. Moreover, he had something even more important to ask when he came here. The great sage of Fu Fong couldn't help but say, Brother Li Pe, my sister Green. Oh, right, almost forgot about that. Li Pe smacked his forehead, looked at Lu Heng and asked, Do you know a female demon cultivator known for her exquisite beauty, wearing a green robe, and bearing a bamboo leaf mark between her eyebrows? She is the one who saved my brother Fu Fong three hundred years ago. Has the wolf god ever met her? Li Po's inquiry left Lu Heng feeling somewhat amused and helpless. Exquisite beauty, green robe, and a bamboo leaf mark between her eyebrows those are such vague characteristics. Other than the bamboo leaf mark, I could find several female cultivators that fit that description just by walking down the street could you provide more detailed information? After Lu Heng finished speaking, Li Pe turned his gaze towards the great sage of Fu Fong. The great sage of Fu Fong waved his hand and a translucent figure of a woman in green appeared beside him. Her beautiful eyes were both enchantingly seductive and exquisitely dignified, radiating an exceptional grace. This is my sister Green, have you met Senior Wolf God? 
The great sage of Fu Feng said. The great sage of Fu Feng looked eager. Lu Heng looked at the appearance of the woman in green in amazement and shook his head, saying I have not seen any woman with such a face but. Lu Heng furrowed his brow, seeming hesitant to speak further. Upon seeing Lu Heng's hesitation, the great sage of Fu Feng quickly reassured him, Senior Wolf God, what do you want to say? Lu Heng shook his head and said, This matter is complicated and somewhat offensive but if I must speak, although I don't recognize the appearance of that female cultivator. There is a familiar feeling between her eyebrows similar to the demon I encountered several months ago. Lu Heng's words made the great sage of Fu Feng's heart skip a beat. He immediately thought of a certain possibility. A demon the great sage of Fu Feng's face changed slightly. Priestly Pu beside them spoke, could you share with us your encounter with that demon, wolf god? Lu Heng laughed helplessly and said, the story is simple. It happened several months ago when I was staying in Fushan City. In the courtyard, Lu Heng didn't hide anything and narrated the encounter with the Green Hell Cave Demon and Madame Green Bamboo's affairs that happened back in Fushan City. However, he didn't mention the relationship between Madame Green Bamboo and the body he currently inhabited. At present, except for Lu Heng, it is unlikely that even Madame Green Bamboo, who was involved, knows the relationship between Lu Heng and the original wolf demon. Even if Madame Green Bamboo were to investigate Lu Heng's identity and hear that he came from Hanyu Mountain, she would not be able to compare Lu Heng, the famous wolf god, with the wolf demon who was lured into the evil way by her in the past. The difference between the two is simply too vast. After Lu Heng finished speaking, Li Pu looked at the great sage of Fu Feng beside him. The great sage of Fu Feng today has a complex and conflicted complexion. Obviously, after Lu Heng finished telling his story, he understood what was going on. He also figured out why Sister Green disappeared after seeing the wolf god it was obviously out of fear. After a moment of silence, the great sage of Fu Feng suddenly stood up, his face looking unpleasant. Senior wolf god, Brother Li Pe, please forgive me for temporarily taking my leave. The great sage of Fu Feng's expression was somewhat ferocious. Seeing this, Lu Heng was curious and asked, Where are you going? The man in the literary robe clenched his fists, his face full of anger, I'm going to kill someone. Facing the wolf god and Li Pe, the great sage of Fu Feng had no concealment. Li Pe and the wolf god glanced at each other, while Lu Heng remained silent. Li Pe then spoke. But Sister Green is your lifesaver though she has saved your life, you want to kill her and she may die without peace. Li Po's words didn't alleviate the great sage of Fu Feng's anger. Instead, he became even more furious. I will repay the debt of gratitude for saving my life. The tiger demon in scholar's robes roared in anger, why are demon cultivators discriminated against in this world? Why is it that when we demon cultivators walk on the streets, people avoid us like we are stinky rats? It's because there are too many scumbags who willingly fall into depravity and cultivate evil ways. As members of the demon cultivator clan, those who cannot resist temptation and tread the path of evil are betraying and tarnishing the reputation of all the demonic races in the world. Such scum, even if they were my life-saving benefactors, must die. Had I known that my savior was a demonic creature like this in Fong, I would have rather died than suffer such humiliation. The great sage of Fu Feng's teeth grated loudly, his eyes bloodshot. Now that she's come crashing through the door I'll kill her, then kill myself. It'll save me from a lifetime of such humiliation. Chapter, 213 The great sage of Fu Feng's through grinding words clearly indicated that he was infuriated. He was furious not only for being deceived, but even more so because his savior turned out to be a demon cultivating an evil path. He had lived his entire life with integrity and righteousness, but in the end, his life was saved by a demon. Such a miserable life, it's better not to have it at all. The great sage of Fu Feng, full of anger, was about to leave, but Li Pu quickly stood up to stop the great sage of Fu Feng. Calm down brother, please calm down. Li Pu looked at Lu Heng's expression, somewhat helpless. Lu Heng also advised, brother Fu Feng, indeed you need to calm down. Even if you chase after her now, you certainly won't be able to find Madame Green Bamboo. Lu Heng said, Madame Green Bamboo is already skilled at stealth. 
she infiltrated Fu Shan City without being detected by anyone. As an evil cultivator, she followed you for months without you feeling any evil aura now that she intends to escape, you may search the South Sea but still won't find her. Lu Hang's words were like a bucket of cold water, instantly making the great sage of Fu Fong stunned. After he realized this, his anger subsided slightly. Upon seeing this, Lu Hang seized the opportunity and smilingly suggested, Shall we sit down and have a nice chat, exchanging the information we know about each other? Perhaps we can find a loophole in Madame Green Bamboo's plan and catch her. After pondering for a few moments, the great sage of Fu Fong furrowed his brows and spoke. I have an idea. He looked at the wolf god in front of him and said, When that demon joined me, she brought along a fox demon, her goddaughter named Su Xiao Xiao. Senior wolf god may have met her before. The great sage of Fu Fong proposed, now that Xiao Xiao is serving which Wu Gu in the warm fragrance pavilion, if Madame Green Bamboo escapes, she will surely try to find Xiao Xiao there. I just need to go to the outskirts of the warm fragrance pavilion on Fan Jia Mountain and wait. I will definitely catch her. The great sage of Fu Fong immediately came up with a solution, impressing Lu Heng with his quick thinking. Although the great sage of Fu Fong had a violent temper, he was not simple minded. However, is Su Xiao Xiao that girl actually the adopted daughter of Madame Green Bamboo? Yet there is not even a trace of evil energy on her body. Lu Heng was somewhat surprised and asked, You said that Xiao Xiao is Madame Green Bamboo's adopted daughter, but she is not an evil cultivator are you sure they are really mother and daughter? The great sage of Fu Fong instinctively wanted to nod, but then hesitated. Ah oh well I am not really sure, the great sage of Fu Fong scratched his head and said, I didn't think much about it before, so I didn't inquire about their experiences. But it seems that Xiao Xiao respects Madame Green Bamboo very much, and the two have a good relationship. Lu Heng shook his head and said, What the naked eye sees may not be real Xiao Xiao is not an evil cultivator, she is not of the same kind as Madame Green Bamboo. Besides, this girl is innocent and not a practitioner of evil ways. Which Wu Gu also sees her in this way, that's why she took Xiao Xiao as her disciple. The relationship between Xiao Xiao and Madame Green Bamboo may not be as simple as it appears on the surface. When Madame Green Bamboo fled and went into hiding, she may not have intentionally gone to Fan Jia Mountain to find her. Lu Heng's words left the great sage of Fu Fong a little bewildered. But if we don't go to Fan Jia Mountain, we won't be able to find that demon for a while. Lu Heng looked at the tiger demon who became confused by a few words and couldn't help but laugh. Going to Fan Jia Mountain is possible, but you don't have to go, Fu Fong. With Madame Green Bamboo's hiding technique, even if you go to Fan Jia Mountain, you probably won't be able to find her. It's too simple for her to hide from your magic eyes. The simplest way is for us to write a letter and send it to Witch Wu Gu at the Warm Fragrance Pavilion in Fan Jia Mountain, explaining the situation and asking her to pay attention on our behalf. Although Witch Wu Gu is a physician, her cultivation is superior, and ordinary monsters dare not show themselves in front of her. This is also the reason why Xiao Xiao, that little girl, has been in the Warm Fragrance Pavilion for so long, and even Madame Green Bamboo doesn't dare to go to the Warm Fragrance Pavilion. Therefore, entrusting this matter to which Wu Gu will be far more effective than you traveling such a long distance. Lu Heng's words made the great sage of Fu Fong nod repeatedly in agreement. The wolf god is right. Therefore, please swiftly write a letter, using the Roaring Gu's sword to deliver it to Fan Jia Mountain. As he spoke, the great sage of Fu Fong raised his right hand, revealing a tattoo on his wrist. The soaring lines transformed into a vicious crimson cloud magpie. In a flash of red light, the crimson cloud magpie tattoo flew directly from his wrist, transforming into a dazzling red light that surrounded and danced around the great sage of Fu Fong. The great sage of Fu Fong said, My roaring goose sword can travel at light speed, covering thousands of miles with ease. With it, I can definitely deliver the letter ahead of the demon to Fan Jia City. As the great sage of Fu Fong spoke, the intense red light emitted a low growl, and the ferocious aura instantly overflowed, like a primordial beast had appeared. The slightest hint of the aura agitated the water current in the small yard. Upon seeing this scene, Lu Heng was somewhat surprised. This sword is truly remarkable. 
Li Pe chuckled and said, This is an ancient inheritance. Even in the records of my Li tribe, it was only vaguely mentioned. It's a great blessing for Brother Fu Fong to inherit this sword. As Li Pe spoke, the fierce aura emanating from the Roaring Goose Sword had already stirred up the air currents and approached Xiao Ai's side. In the courtyard, the silver haired girl with animal ears had an expressionless face, but behind her, the heavenly thunder sword was impacted by this aura and emitted a crisp sword cry. Clang! As the sound of the sword cry rang out, the water in the courtyard suddenly stopped flowing. The surging aura instantly rolled back and shrank into the red light beside the great sage of Fu Fong. Even the originally ferocious and terrifying red light has now shrunk behind the great sage of Fu Fong, as if it has been scared. Such a scene almost made the great sage of Fu Fang's eyeballs pop out. This sword. With disbelief, he looked at the sword behind Xiao Ai, then at Li Pe next to him with a shocked expression. He remembered clearly that when he first saw this roaring goose sword, Priest Li Pe said that it was the best in the world, and that there was no divine weapon stronger than it in the world. At most, it could only be similar to it. But now. The great sage of Fu Fong was shocked, while Li Pe just laughed. Don't look at me, I wasn't just bluffing when I said that your roaring goose sword is indeed the top level divine weapon in the world. But the wolf god's heavenly thunder sword is an existence that even the heavens and earth cannot tolerate. On the day the sword was forged, even three god slaying heavenly thunders were unleashed to destroy this divine sword. If it weren't for the wolf god's extraordinary abilities and enduring the three divine tribulations to protect this sword, this sword would not have survived in the world. Therefore, this sword should not have existed in the world, and your roaring goose sword is still the top level divine weapon in the world ha ha ha. Chapter, 214 Li Po's words left the great sage of Fu Fong stunned. The matter Li Pe spoke of was more shocking than when he saw his own roaring goose sword frightened off. Three god slaying heavenly thunders. Protected by the wolf god's single-handed effort. He looked at Lu Hun in disbelief, and his entire worldview collapsed. Can the wolf god withstand three god slaying heavenly thunders? This completely contradicts his knowledge and common sense. How terrifying is the divine cataclysm? A usual heavenly punishment is already enough to make one fear and tremble. The Nine Heavens Thunder is unanimously recognized as the most terrifying killing power in the world. In ancient times, the great demon Candle Dragon once withstood the Nine Heavens Thunder in the South Sea and survived, which shattered the worldview of countless people and shocked this world for thousands of years. It could be called an incredible and unparalleled feat that can be called earth-shattering. Above the Nine Heavenly Thunders, there is the God-slaying Heavenly Thunder, which only a few people know of its existence. Each one of them is countless times stronger than ordinary heavenly thunders. The appearance of the god slaying heavenly thunder is to eliminate those beings that are not tolerated in the world. It is true annihilating power. Once it appears in the world, it is here to completely destroy, with no mercy. Compared with the heavenly thunder, the god slaying heavenly thunder is a completely different kind of destructive power. One god slaying heavenly thunder can annihilate all living beings in the world. To destroy the heavenly thunder sword of the wolf god, this world even had to summon three god slaying heavenly thunders in a row. How powerful is this heavenly thunder sword? And even more terrifying than this is the wolf god in front of him. Three strikes of the god slaying heavenly thunder is already a calamity that no one in the world can withstand. Or one could say, even one strike of the god slaying heavenly thunder is enough to kill all living beings in the world. With just one's own strength, one can withstand three strikes of the god slaying heavenly thunder. Does such an existence really exist in the world? The great sage of Fu Feng's mind is already confused by the extremely shocking deeds. He cannot even speak. Seeing the dull and horrified expression made Lu Heng smile bitterly and shake his head. Lu Heng said, although what priestly Pe said is not false, the description of three god slaying heavenly thunders is greatly exaggerated. Lu Heng smiled bitterly and said, It was just a coincidence that I happened to help this sword survive heaven's punishment. As for stopping three gods slaying heavenly thunder I only managed to withstand half of it. Otherwise, how terrifying would that god slaying heavenly thunder be? Even one strike would be enough to destroy my body and soul. 
If all three god-slaying heavenly thunders were to come at me, I wouldn't have the chance to joke with you here. Lu Heng appeared sincere and spoke the truth. The great sage of Fu Feng hesitated for a few seconds before nodding repeatedly and saying, Absolutely, what the wolf god said is true. The god-slaying heavenly thunder is indeed very terrifying. Faced with the modesty of the wolf god, what else could he say? Not to mention enduring the god slaying heavenly thunder three times over even if the wolf god's words were true and he only endured half of it, that still qualifies as a terrifying achievement that shakes the heavens and earth. The god slaying heavenly thunder could any living being withstand even half of it? Hearing the wolf god speak such words shows a lack of common sense for low-level cultivators. Saying I only endured half of the god slaying heavenly thunder is like a wealthy heir saying oh, I'm so poor. My family only has a few hundred tails of gold left. We're close to poverty. In the eyes of wealthy children, having only a few hundred tails of gold in the family is an extremely impoverished situation. But in the eyes of the common people. The great sage of Fu Fong was shaken in his heart, and for a moment didn't know what to say. Even the evil demon he had just been eager to kill, was now pushed aside and temporarily forgotten. Li Po on the side then spoke with a smile, breaking the tranquility in the courtyard. All right, the wolf god's letter has been written. Brother Fu Feng, you use the roaring goose sword to deliver the letter to the warm fragrance pavilion. Li Po's words woke the great sage of Fu Feng up. He quickly came to his senses and realized that the wolf god had written a letter, and was now laughing at him. Faced with the wolf god in front of him, even if the wolf god's gaze was gentle, the great sage of Fu Feng dared not be disrespectful. He quickly and respectfully accepted the letter and said, Please, senior wolf god, leave a trace of your divine power, pointing the way to the warm fragrance pavilion, so that the roaring goose sword can determine its location. The great sage of Fu Feng's words made Lu Heng nod. Very well, hand me the sword, Lu Heng reached out his hand. And the roaring goose sword, having already faded its red light and revealed its divine appearance, was indeed a vicious sword. However, with the heavenly thunder sword by its side, the sword no longer dared to show its ferocity. Its divine light was restrained and at first glance, it was no different from ordinary iron. Its vicious appearance from earlier was completely transformed. While Lu Heng reached out, the great sage of Fu Feng promptly and respectfully handed over the sword. The exaggerated roaring goose sword gently landed in Lu Heng's hand. Lu Heng smiled and said, This sword is indeed extraordinary. From the moment he held it, he keenly sensed the power of the sword. With this sword in hand, even enemies with higher levels of cultivation could be easily slain. Truly a top tier divine weapon, even though it lacks the annihilating power of the heavenly thunder sword, it can already be considered a rare treasure in the world. The great sage of Fu Feng's ability to inherit this knife shows a profound blessing. Lu Heng felt a deep sense of emotion in his heart. However, as soon as the words fell, the roaring goose sword in Lu Heng's hand went through a strange transformation. A brilliant light immediately emanated from the blade. In the midst of the fierce and brutal aura, an extremely excited roar could be faintly heard from the sword. This ferocious roar was full of intense emotions, as if it were a demonic beast that had been separated from its owner for countless years, finally reuniting after wandering alone for tens of thousands of years. That kind of excited and thrilled emotion immediately infected everyone in the courtyard. Even the cold and reserved Xiao Ai couldn't help but raise her head, looking astonished. The wolf god Xiao Ai said in disbelief, This roaring goose sword is it yours that had been lost? Xiao Ai, with a shocked expression, voiced the confusion that everyone in the courtyard felt. Li Pe, the great sage of Fu Feng, all of them looked at the highly excited Roaring Goose Sword, as well as the wolf god emanating that divine light, with disbelief. This scene was clearly a reunion of the master and servant. This sword was actually the wolf god's. Everyone was stunned. And in the divine light, Lu Heng's expression was equally shocked. Because amidst the excited and ferocious roar, he faintly understood the content of that roar. That roar seemed to continuously be shouting the same sentence. A sentence full of excitement, emotion, and sadness. Descendants of Xianyuan. Descendants of Xianyuan. 
In the extremely exciting roar of the roaring goose sword, Lu Heng's expression in the courtyard was silent. He looked down at the sword in his hand, bewildered and unable to let go of the disbelief and confusion in his heart. This roaring goose sword is actually related to the world he came from. Chapter 215 Descendant of Xian Yuan Three simple words, yet they seem to contain the endless pain and loneliness of the roaring goose sword. In its exuberant roar, there is a joyous reunion after a long separation, as well as a heavier sadness. That kind of emotion is like being abandoned for hundreds of thousands of years, only to be found by its owner again. Although it is joyful, it has been lonely for hundreds of thousands of years. Feeling the emotions within the roaring goose sword, Lu Hang in the courtyard fell silent for a while, sighed heavily and said. I am not your master. You already have a master, don't mistake it. As he spoke, Lu Hang lightly stroked the roaring goose sword with his hand. Strangely enough, as Lu Hang's fingers brushed past it, the divine light on the roaring goose sword obediently dimmed. When Lu Hang's hand passed over the entire blade of the roaring goose sword, the shining light on the sword dissipated completely, and it returned to its previous appearance of ordinary iron. Incredibly well behaved. After leaving a trace of spiritual imprint containing the location of the warm fragrance pavilion in the sword, Lu Hang handed the roaring goose sword to the great sage of Fu Feng beside him. Okay, the mental imprint has been left, brother Fu Feng, please send the letter away. Lu Hang's expression was calm, as if nothing had happened. However, facing Lu Hang handing over the knife, the great sage of Fu Feng was suddenly shocked and stepped back several steps, his face full of fear and repeatedly waving his hand. No no. The great sage of Fu Feng said in fear, the wolf god, I accidentally found your magic weapon and had no intention of seizing it. Senior wolf god, please don't make fun and take back this sword quickly. In the dazzling moment of the shining divine light of the roaring goose sword, the great sage of Fu Feng was almost frightened. According to the account of Priestly Pe, this roaring goose sword is an ancient heritage, so distant that even within the Nine Li tribe, there are only vague records. You must understand, this is the Nine Li tribe. A tribe full of fanaticism for divine weapons. Even for their vaguely recorded divine weapons, one possibility remains, that this sword's history is even more ancient than that of the Nine Li tribe itself. But this sword is nothing more than one of the weapons lost by the wolf god. Moreover, judging from the appearance of the wolf god, he didn't even recall the history of this sword until the roaring goose sword excitedly recognized its new master, causing a slight expression of realization to appear on his face. Looking further at the wolf god's heavenly thunder sword. Obviously, the wolf god didn't lack divine weapons at all, and he had already possessed countless numbers of them. This roaring goose sword is just a sword he used in his long years, the kind that was forgotten when lost. It makes one wonder, how old exactly is the wolf god? A conservative estimate would place him much older than this ancient roaring goose sword. The great sage of Fu Feng's expression was shocked and fearful, while Li Po beside him had a solemn expression on his face. The heavenly thunder sword was a weapon he had participated in crafting, so the thoughts that the great sage of Fu Feng was having were also present in Li Po's mind. Furthermore, he thought even more. This roaring goose sword has a history of at least hundreds of thousands of years. However, the age of the wolf god is evidently beyond that of the roaring goose sword. Originally thought to be an ancient predecessor from an ancient era, the wolf god has survived the earthly catastrophe. But now it seems that the era where the wolf god exists is definitely more ancient than that ancient era which they knew of. Such an extended period of time, even those ancient divine beasts called to have a long lifespan, surviving through the earthly catastrophe, should have perished. However, the wolf god has survived until this day. Perhaps this is the reason why there is no mention of the wolf god in ancient records. Even in their eyes, the ancient times were not the era when the senior wolf god was active. In the courtyard, the great sage of Fu Feng quickly declined while Lu Heng sighed helplessly. Lu Heng said, this sword is indeed not mine, but I have some connection to it. However, even I have not yet figured out the reason for this matter. Therefore, this sword still belongs to Brother Fu Feng. Lu Heng said, it was just a little excitement and a momentary loss of control when it first saw me. It has returned to normal now, hasn't it? 
Brother Fu Fong, you are the rightful owner of the Roaring Goose Sword, so it should be returned to you. Lu Heng never takes what belongs to others. With a rare serious expression, Lu Heng's words left the great sage of Fu Fong unsure of how to respond. So the great sage of Fu Fong subconsciously turned to Priest Li Po beside him to seek help. After all, Priest Li Po was familiar with the wolf god and understood it better. Facing the great sage of Fu Fang's plea for help, Li Pa nodded and said, Since the wolf god has said so, why don't you take the sword now? Only then did the great sage of Fu Fong breathe a sigh of relief and respectfully walked up to receive the roaring goose sword from Lu Heng. After taking the sword, the great sage of Fu Fong knelt heavily on the ground and knocked his head. Thanks to the wolf god for giving me the sword. His serious look clearly mistook Lu Heng's gift of this sword to him as intentional. Lu Heng had a speechless expression. Even though he was used to being misunderstood by others, at this moment, he was still a little bit headache. This sword is not mine. And Li Po on the side, seeing the awkward atmosphere, chuckled and spoke up. The wolf god said that there is some fate between this sword and you. Does the wolf god know the owner of the Roaring Goose Sword? Li Po originally thought that this sword belonged to the wolf god. But when the wolf god spoke solemnly, he realized that he was wrong. Because the wolf god had no reason to lie to them. However, because of this, Li Pu became increasingly curious about the ancient ancestors who forged and owned this sword. The ancient predecessors who could forge this sword must have been the eminent predecessors of metallurgy. Perhaps their ancestors from the Li tribe have some fateful connection with it. After all, the top divine weapons in the world, even if not forged by the Li tribe, must be related to them. Perhaps it is even their ancestor. Li Po was full of curiosity, while Lu Heng sighed and said. I don't know the owner of this sword, but if it is truly the Roaring Goose Sword that I know of, then its owner should be Gong Sun Shenyuan, who is known as the Ancient Sage and the Yellow Emperor. When Lu Heng mentioned this name, he subconsciously looked up at the sky. Thankfully, there was no thunder. It seems that the name Gong Sun Shenyuan is not taboo like Niwa's name. Lu Heng continued, Legend has it that during ancient times, Gong San Shenyuan collected the copper of the first sun to forge the Shenyuan sword. After the sword was made, there were still some materials left that automatically solidified and cooled in a sword furnace, and turned into a new sword. At the moment the sword was formed, it emitted an evil aura. The Yellow Emperor feared that this sword would bring disaster to the world, so he took the Shenyuan sword and tried to destroy it. Unexpectedly, at the moment the Shenyuan sword fell, the Roaring Goose Sword turned into a red cloud magpie and disappeared into the sky with a red light. This is the Roaring Goose Sword that I know. After finishing his story, Lu Heng looked at the sword in the Great Sage of Fu Feng's hand and sighed, I just don't know if this Roaring Goose Sword in my story is the same as the one you have. As Lu Heng finished speaking, the Roaring Goose Sword in the Great Sage of Fu Feng's hand trembled slightly. Although there's no divine light evident, it's quite clear that it's an answer. Li Pa chuckled and said, looks like it. Lu Heng also smiled, but looked at the Roaring Goose Sword in the Great Sage of Fu Feng's hand, his heart filled with confusion. This Roaring Goose Sword is it really the same one as that of the Yellow Emperors? But Li Pa said before that the sword has a history of several hundred thousand years could it be that the Yellow Emperor Shenyuan lived tens of thousands of years ago? But tens of thousands of years ago, the earth would have only had monkeys, right? Chapter 216 In the courtyard, Lu Heng felt melancholy. In a foreign land, seeing a divine weapon with some connection to his hometown left him not only shocked but also somewhat homesick. However, even though the Roaring Goose Sword was from the same place as him, it could not tell him how to go back. It is true that there is talk of sword spirits and blade souls in divine weapons, but unlike the legendary stories Lu Heng had heard before, these spirits cannot take on human form or communicate with their owner. They have simple thoughts and emotions, yet they cannot match the intelligence of humans. To learn about the journey of the Roaring Goose Sword and how it came to this world, one might have to go to the place where the great sage of Fu Feng found the sword. Lu Heng restrained his emotions and watched as the Roaring Goose Sword turned into a crimson cloud magpie in the great sage of Fu Feng's hand, carrying the letter Lu Heng wrote for Wu Gu as it took flight. 
he casually asked the great sage of Fu Foam where he found the sword. Li Pe interjected and only then did Lu Heng learn that the Roaring Goose Sword was found in the former capital of Wuchi country. The ruins were located in a remote area at the border of the East Sea and the South Sea, and the great sage of Fu Feng only discovered the site by chance. Wuchi Country Hearing Li Po's rumors about this country, Lu Heng was surprised. Wuchi Country, is it a vassal state of Candle Dragon? Do they worship Candle Dragon for generations? This is truly a peculiar rumor. Li Pe nodded, indeed, Wuchi Country is mysterious and unpredictable, always hidden from the outside world, and has always been devoted to the Candle Dragon, being part of the Dragon's clan. I don't know why they have come to the Mermaid Kingdom this time, perhaps they are also after the Maluo Evil Sword. Li Po's words made Lu Heng slightly silent. He thought of a possibility. Could it be that Wuchi Country came to the Mermaid Kingdom because of him, Lu Heng? However, this thought was immediately dismissed by Lu Heng. He had only known the Candle Dragon for a few months, and the two had not formed a deep relationship. How could he have the audacity to ask the Candle Dragon to send his clan to assist him? Of course, the most important thing is that if Candle Dragon learns of this, Lu Heng believes that Guy would definitely come over in person to join in the fun, rather than sending a family member to help out. Therefore, the arrival of Wuchi Country should have nothing to do with Lu Heng. Li Pe said, it's a pity that Wuchi Country is mysterious and even we know very little about it. All we know is that the people of Wuchi Country are immortal, which is somewhat similar to the Immortal Kingdom. Li Po's words left Lu Heng very surprised, immortal. Is it really that powerful? Xiao Ai, who was standing next to them, hesitated to speak. Lu Heng saw her and couldn't help but ask with a smile, has Xiao Ai heard of this Wuchi country? Lu Heng's words immediately drew the attention of the great sage of Fu Feng and Li Pe to the little girl standing beside them. The gaze of the three individuals made the little girl with silver beast ears slightly uncomfortable. However, after hesitating for a moment, she still spoke, when my mother was alive, she told Xiao Ai about some strange races beyond the mountain. One of them is Wuchi Country. My mother said that although the people of Wuchi Country don't die, they don't live forever. They have no distinction between male and female, don't give birth to offspring, and have a lifespan of only 120 years. When they live to be this age, they will die naturally. After death, the body is buried underground. After another 120 years, the body can be reborn, and the cycle continues endlessly. Therefore, although the people of Wuchi country don't differentiate between male and female and cannot give birth, their population thrives. The little girl's words left the great sage of Fu Feng stunned, almost wanting to ask who her mother was, and how she knew such a secret. Meanwhile, Lu Heng exchanged a gaze with Li Pe, seeing the surprise in his eyes. Clearly, the secrets mentioned by Xiao Ai are unknown even to the Li tribe. Before Lu Heng left Hanyu Mountain, he encountered rare birds and beasts along the way, which Xiao Ai was able to identify based on their physical characteristics. Lu Heng had not paid attention, thinking that Xiao Ai's mother was just knowledgeable. After all, even Hua Feng, who traveled far and wide, could recognize those strange beasts. But now, Xiao Ai is able to reveal the secrets of Wuchi country in a single sentence. This cannot be explained by mere knowledge. Xiao Ai's mother undoubtedly has an impressive background. And Xiao Ai is clearly aware of this, as her expression became complicated after speaking. She originally thought that her mom had a good education and a decent family background, but she ended up in the remote corner of Hanyu Mountain. However, as she accompanied the wolf god down south, she encountered many strange and exotic creatures along the way, and she could find corresponding descriptions in the stories her mother had told her. Now even the incredibly secretive Candle Dragon family in Wuchi country, her mother had described in great detail. Lu Heng sighed and said, when we return to the mountain, I will accompany you to visit your mother's tombstone and pay our respects. Lu Heng's words brought Xiao Ai back from her trance. She quickly regained her focus and nodded in agreement. Regarding the interaction between the girl and the wolf, Li Pe and the great sage of Fu Feng could only watch silently without interrupting. In the courtyard, 
due to the consecutive anomalies, the atmosphere was no longer as harmonious as it was at the beginning. A slightly melancholic atmosphere flowed around Luhang and Xiao Ai. Li Pe and the great sage of Fu Feng stopped bothering them and left crisply, bidding farewell, and were later escorted out of the yard by Lu Hang. However, before leaving, Li Pe pointed to the two strong men from the Han Hai department guarding the gate. These two are my brothers from the clan, Wu Ji and Wu Mia. They may not have high cultivation, but their sincerity of heart is admirable. They will stay with the wolf god to run errands for you. Li Pe chuckled and said, if the wolf god has any orders, just tell them directly and they will make sure to handle it properly. When Li Po was introduced, Lu Heng didn't feel much, but the mermaid battle solitaires who were watching nearby all turned pale with fear. Wu Ji and Wu Mie. These two are well-known warriors of the Han Hai department. Among all the people of the Li tribe with innate divine abilities, the talent of these two brothers is among the very best. Wu Ji's divine ability, blood battle robe, can make him stronger and stronger as he fights. In theory, as long as he starts fighting, his combat power will continue to climb until the battle ends and he returns to his normal level. There are only two possibilities when facing him, either to kill him directly with super strength, or to be constantly overwhelmed and killed by his rising combat power. Although Wu Mie's divine ability, indestructible golden bone, is not as explosive as his brother's blood battle robe, it is even more mysterious and difficult to defend against. With this divine ability, Wu Mie can create a bone avatar to fight alongside him. The strength and appearance of this bone avatar completely imitated the enemy, including their skills and techniques, all of which were mimicked exactly. Fighting against Wu Mie was equivalent to fighting against oneself, while also being outnumbered with a strong Han Hai clansman as backup. Are these two warriors here to guard the wolf god's gate? Han Hai Department, are you serious? Chapter, 217 Despite being aware of the awe-inspiring presence of the mermaid battle soldiers, Lu Heng paid them no heed. After all, he knew little about the situation in the South Sea, let alone the notorious reputation of the two burly men Li Pe left behind to guard the gate. Despite his vigorous objections, Li Pe insisted on leaving Wu Ji and Wu Mie to guard the gate. Even when Lu Heng invited them to enter the courtyard, the brothers politely declined and glared at the nearby mermaid battle soldiers. If we don't keep an eye on those untrustworthy fairies, who knows what sorts of sly tricks they might pull behind our backs. Compared to the two muscular brothers, the mermaid with a delicate figure and small hands was indeed effeminate. However, the two brothers said so in front of hundreds of mermaid battle soldiers, their arrogant behavior made Lu Heng somewhat amused. These brothers are really straightforward. Do they not fear being dragged out to become a signature dish or fresh sashimi in the mermaid kingdom after speaking such words? However, with the brothers being so persistent in guarding the gate, Lu Heng could not force it and had to follow them back to the courtyard with Xiao Ai. Lu Heng desired to talk with Xiao Ai about her mother's affair. It can be perceived that, after finishing talking about the Wuchi country matter, the young girl became somewhat uneasy. Initially, she merely regarded her mother as a wealthy girl who had been forced to wander through the wilderness due to some circumstances and thus paid no attention to it. However, now realizing her mother's extraordinary status, Xiao Ai also apprehends that her father's disappearance and mother's death were not that simple. At the very least, her father may still be alive somewhere in this world. However, soon after Lu Heng and Xiao Ai returned to the courtyard and had just finished talking, the voice of the Wu family brothers could be heard outside the door. Senior Wolf God, Luo Yujun from the Immortal Kingdom wishes to see you do you want to see him? Although these two brothers are quite straightforward in character, they are quite respectful in front of Lu Heng. And their report also made Lu Heng curious. Luo Yujun. The Immortal Kingdom's Lord. How did this guy come here? After thinking for a moment, Lu Heng said, please let Lord Luo Yujun come in. Soon, in the watchful eyes of the Wu family brothers, Luo Yujun, who had been sitting in the carriage all the time without revealing his identity, entered the small courtyard where Lu Heng was located. The strange voice, mixed with male and female voices as before, but Luo Yujun's true appearance was beyond Lu Heng's expectations. It turned out to be a young boy with red lips and white teeth. 
Lu Hung was somewhat surprised while the fair and youthful Luo Yujun smiled politely. Although his voice was unusual, his demeanor was extraordinary, elegant and aristocratic. The immortal kingdom's Luo Yujun, I have met the senior wolf god. Meanwhile, the news of the immortal kingdom's lord's visit to the wolf god had reached the chief minister's hands as Luo Yujun and Lu Heng came face to face. Just as Yu Huifeng had received news of Hanhai Department's priest bringing the Wu brothers and the great sage of Fu Feng to meet the wolf god and was pondering over the relationship between Hanhai Department and the wolf god. Fresh news arrived. He was suddenly taken aback. Luo Yujun. Did he also go to pay a visit to the wolf god? After perusing the message in his hand, Yu Huifeng was somewhat bewildered. Luo Yujun not only paid homage to the wolf god but also brought along Praetorian guards as his escorts. Not only did he bring Praetorian guards as his escorts, but he also brought all forty of them. Nowadays Luo Yujun is chatting with the wolf god in the courtyard, and besides the Wu family brothers from the Hanhai department guarding the gate, there are forty Praetorian guards scattered outside the courtyard for patrol. As for the several hundred mermaid battle soldiers he arranged, who were originally there, they are now pushed to the fringes and can't even get close to the small courtyard where the wolf god is located. Although several hundred mermaid battle soldiers can overthrow a country, compared to the forty Praetorian guards in the Immortal Kingdom's arsenal, they fall short. Yu Huifeng's brow furrowed tightly as he immediately issued an urgent secret order. Recall all the patrolling soldiers and generals from the north. Stand by at the capital city at all times. After issuing this urgent secret order, Yu Huifeng had the mood to ponder on the new intelligence he had just received. Luo Yujun from the Immortal Kingdom led forty Praetorian guards to visit the Wolf God, leaving behind some Praetorian guards to guard the Wolf God's courtyard this is a great show of support from the Immortal Kingdom for the Wolf God. When the Han Hai department came to visit the Wolf God, Yu Huifeng was still skeptical. But with Luo Yujun's appearance, he was completely convinced. Both of these groups of people have come for the sake of the wolf god. No wonder the Han Hai Department and the Immortal Kingdom, who never participate in the Treasure Conference, have both come this year. It turns out that they have a hidden agenda. It's just that they are helping the wolf god in this way the face of this wolf god is really prominent. Yu Huifeng felt a bit of a headache. The mere mention of the enigmatic wolf god had already put the mermaid kingdom on edge. Now, there are more troublesome characters causing chaos. Can the Mermaid Kingdom not know the details of Luo Yujun from the Immortal Kingdom, that others don't know? He is an immortal evil demon who crawled out of an ancient battlefield and, relying on that mysterious battlefield, pieced together the fortune of the Immortal Kingdom through various means. Its Praetorian guards, which were vigorously cultivated, are also an undeniable force on the South Sea. The combined forty Praetorian guards are equivalent to an ancient devil. Then, in addition to the Immortal Kingdom, there was the Han Hai Department. Compared to the ferocious ancient evil demon Luo Yujun, the Han Hai Department is not as terrifying. Although the Li tribe people are awe-inspiring, Li Pe is the most talented priest in the tribe for tens of thousands of years and the Wu family brothers are also famous. But the Han Hai Department is just one of the nine Li tribe. It only makes people tremble slightly that the Han Hai department has come alone. What gave Yu Huifeng a headache was that the Li tribe's nine branches have always been of one mind. Offending one branch equals offending all nine branches. The nine branches of the Li tribe, including the old man who once killed people in large numbers of the Raiding Wind department, Priestly Tan of the Driving Mountain department, who boasts about his extraordinary skills and the holy maiden of the mysterious and unfathomable sacred mountain of the Li tribe they never intervene in the cultivating world's affairs, only drifting in the human world. But once they choose to interfere, it always brings great disaster and bloodshed. Who would dare to ignore the nine branches of the Li tribe? The immortal kingdom forbids mortals from entering, Luo Yujun holds the ancient battle armor, and the Praetorian guards are peerless all over the world. But when the Han Hai department of the Li tribe was previously set within the territory of the Immortal Kingdom and they wanted to migrate to the Immortal Kingdom for several years. Luo Yujun still opened the door and let these mortals enter his forbidden Immortal Kingdom. Although the heritage of the Mermaid Kingdom is stronger than that of a mere Immortal Kingdom, the nine branches of the Li tribe still cannot intimidate the Mermaid Kingdom. 
However, the pressure brought by the Immortal Kingdom, Han Hai Department, and the Wolf God at the same time, has also grown to the point of being impossible to ignore. Yu Huifeng considered for a long time and finally gave another command. The grandiosity of the Wolf God stance leaves the Mermaid Kingdom with no choice but to take it seriously. Chapter 218 After dealing with the matters of the Wolf God, Yu Huifeng's mood slightly stabilized. Afterwards, he continued to handle the affairs of the Treasure Conference. For the current Mermaid Kingdom, the Treasure Conference still ranked as the most important event. The Treasure Conference, held once every twelve years, cannot afford to have any mistakes. Coming in second place is the matter of the Maluo Sword Master. Lord went to the Ancestral Temple for worship. Nowadays, Yu Huifeng is responsible for organizing the arrangements for the Treasure Conference, which can be said to be extremely busy. However, just as the night fell, Yu Huifeng raised his head from various trivial matters of the Treasure Conference and planned to take a walk in the courtyard, when the sound of water outside the door surged again. Someone had come. Yu Huifeng looked up and found that it was the subordinate responsible for delivering the message of the Wolf God. Seeing this subordinate in a hurry, Yu Huifeng's heart suddenly sank was there another problem. Despite this, Yu Huifeng remained calm on the surface. He walked up to the door nonchalantly and asked, what's the matter? The mermaid didn't dare to delay and handed over the new jade scroll quickly. Yu Huifeng took the jade scroll and his face immediately changed. The message in the jade scroll wasn't complicated, but it struck Yu Huifeng like a bolt from the blue. After Luo Yujun's departure, Wu Qi Country's lord personally led the group to visit the wolf god in his temple. A simple message, but it revealed incredibly dreadful intelligence. The sudden arrival of Wuchi Country, was it also aimed at the Wolf God? However, Wuchi Country is a dependent tribe of Candle Dragon, and has always refrained from interfering in external affairs. Therefore, whenever Wuchi Country moves outside, its actions can represent Candle Dragon. Now that Wuchi Country has come for the Wolf God, doesn't it imply that even the ancient monster Candle Dragon has come to help the Wolf God? Furthermore, considering that both of them are ancient existences from the past. The Wolf God, surprisingly, is a close friend of Candle Dragon. Did they know each other during ancient times? Hmm. Yu Huifeng was completely bewildered. This news is so shocking that he couldn't maintain his composure. Besides the notorious name of Candle Dragon, the peculiar temper of the old demon is also well known. No one has ever heard of someone who can enter his magic eyes or qualify to be his friend. The only qualified one fell and died in the ancient times, and turned into a mountain range. But this candle dragon, who has such an infamous temper, is actually a good friend of the wolf god. This information is more terrifying than anything Han Hai Department or Luo Yujun supporting the wolf god. Although Han Hai Department and Luo Yujun are powerful, they may not necessarily be in conflict with the Mermaid Kingdom even if there is a conflict, it will not be to the point of no return. However, the ancient monster Candle Dragon always does as he pleases and seeks revenge for even the slightest offense. If he is truly provoked, it will be a never-ending trouble. With the pressure from all four sides, the Wolf God, Candle Dragon, the Li Tribe, and the Immortal Kingdom, Yu Huifeng suddenly lost his composure. He immediately walked outside with a serious expression. Hurry and invite the Prime Minister to come here to oversee the affairs of the Treasure Conference. I am going to the Ancestral Temple to see the Lord. I won't be able to come back for now. Yu Huifeng looked anxious, and because of his command, the Mermaid Kingdom once again shook. The sudden change in personnel authority was enough to affect the already eerie atmosphere of the underwater city. However, these things have nothing to do with Lu Heng at the moment. As Yu Huifeng hurriedly rushed to the ancestral temple, Lu Heng bid farewell to the Lord of Wuchi Country. At first, Lu Heng was surprised by the visit of the Lord of Wuchi Country. After the conversation ended, he was somewhat amused and bemused. The conversation with the Lord of Wuchi Country wasn't particularly long, but Lu Heng understood the karma quite well. After the conclusion of the Dragon Falling Mountains debate, Candle Dragon Zhu Jiuin took a jog around the estate, spreading the word to all the subordinates of the clan that he had formed an acquaintance with two dearest friends. One is Lu Heng, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, who cultivates the heavenly thunder and possesses a divine power. 
The other is Jiu Mia, a wandering old ascetic cultivator who has gone through the hardships of the mortal world and possesses profound cultivation. Candle Dragon has conveyed the message that everyone must treat these two close friends with respect and cannot be negligent when meeting them. Therefore, after Wuchi Country learned about the news of the Wolf God's arrival in the South Sea, they kept a close eye on any information related to Lu Heng. Before Lu Heng searched for the Urba God Man, not only did the South Sea countries help to search under Luo Yujun's leadership, but Wuchi Country also devoted national efforts to search for the 16 old monsters in secret. Later, the news that Lu Heng had rescued his friend and exterminated the Urba God Man was spread, and Wuchi Country ceased its search. However, shortly thereafter, there was intelligence from the Mermaid Kingdom that the Wolf God might be in conflict with them. When Lu Heng left Fan Jie Mountain, the Mermaid Kingdom became aware of his arrival and Wuchi Country received intelligence, and promptly rushed towards the Mermaid Kingdom. Their purpose was to serve the Wolf God when a conflict arose between Lu Heng and the Mermaid Kingdom. The Wuchi Country's lord was extremely respectful, while Lu Heng sighed slightly. It turned out that Wuchi Country really was after him. However, since the Candle Dragon didn't come, this should be considered good news. Based on Lu Heng's understanding of the Candle Dragon, it was better that it didn't come. If it did come, it might have ended up in a fight with the Mermaid Kingdom. When a real fight breaks out, it is hard to tell whether it is a blessing or a curse. Lu Heng still leans towards a peaceful resolution to this matter, but if peace is impossible, he will consider other means. After bidding farewell to the Lord of Wuchi Country, Wen Ren Bumi, Lu Heng's small courtyard returned to tranquility. However, Lu Heng knew that with the arrival and departure of the Lord of Wuchi Country, within the Mermaid Kingdom, it is likely that the opposite of peace and quiet of his small courtyard will prevail tonight. But for Lu Heng, this is a good thing. Smilingly, Lu Heng said to Xiao Ai, Xiao Ai, your worries are unfounded. I bet we will definitely be able to meet the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom tomorrow. Lu Heng's words made Xiao Ai purse her lips. The little girl glanced at the Mermaid Kingdom's court not far away and said, At this point, if we still can't see Miss Hua, either everyone in the Mermaid Kingdom is stupid or they're really powerful, powerful enough to be invincible. Unfortunately, from what we can see now, they are neither stupid nor powerful enough to be invincible. So, apart from fulfilling their promise, they have no other choice. The little girl's straightforward comment made Lu Heng laugh and say, Yes, it's this merciless speaking style. When I'm not suitable to speak next, Xiao Ai, you can remember this and timely step forward to mediate for me. Lu Heng's words made Xiao Ai blush. It's it's not merciless. The little girl murmured softly with a tinge of resentment. Lu Heng chuckled heartily, remarking, I never said that you were unkind I simply find it necessary to express the occasional bit of sardonic humor. One cannot always be benevolent in this world. Sometimes, excessive kindness can prove to be a hindrance. The notion of, deceiving the sage and the worthy, is such a cultivate. Therefore, we ought to demonstrate a certain ferocity on select occasions. Chapter, 219 The Early Morning of December 6 there are still two days left before the treasure conference of the Mermaid Kingdom. The atmosphere inside the Mermaid Kingdom is completely different from previous treasure conferences. The news of both the Han Hai Department and the Immortal Kingdom paying their respects to the Wolf God has already spread throughout the city overnight. And now, out of the forty Praetorian guards brought by Luo Yujun, thirty are stationed outside the campus where the Wolf God resides. Luo Yujun only brought ten people back to his residence. Such a posture startled the cultivators in the city. Moreover, the news about the Maluo Sword Master has gradually spread throughout the city with the approaching of the treasure conference. People know that the Wolf God's visit to the Mermaid Kingdom was for the sake of a friend who was controlled by the Maluo Evil Sword and killed someone in the Mermaid Kingdom. Also, Han Hai Department Priest Li Pe and Immortal Kingdom Lord Luo Yujun have come for this matter, and only the Wolf God is highly regarded. With such a situation and the pressure from three sides, even the Mermaid Kingdom has felt the pressure. The fact that all the nearby patrol fleets were recalled that night is a clear indication. Moreover, in some circles, the news of Wuchi Country's Lord's visit to worship the Wolf God has revealed a terrifying secret. 
If this situation is not handled properly, it may even attract the notorious ancient monster. In this way, the mermaid kingdom is facing pressure from all sides. People are marveling at how terrifying the wolf god is, realizing it is not an ordinary ancient beast. In this situation, even the mermaid kingdom must be vigilant. However, as the news spread, some discussions were also taking place throughout the city. The wolf god of Hanya Mountain is too domineering. Are his friends worthy of life, while other lives are not? Therefore, when the Moluol evil sword kills someone, the mermaid kingdom punishes and administers justice, exterminating the Moluol evil spirit for the benefit of the world. What fault is there in this? However, he arrogantly relies on his martial prowess and comes to our door to demand an explanation, even forcing the mermaid kingdom to release prisoners' humph. He is so full of himself. Exactly. This action is too domineering. Demons like this should be eradicated by everyone. The Moluo evil sword has caused chaos in the world, and yet the wolf god not only doesn't make an effort to strangle it, but also wants to protect it. Can this kind of behavior be done by the predecessors of the righteous path? Stepping into the evil path, wielding a devil sword, killing people and still having someone to protect you humph. It's good to have senior cultivators as friends, even if we do evil deeds and commit arson, we won't die. If only I had a senior cultivator friend too. Who could be a good person when mixing with the candle dragon? Bah! They are nothing but bullying others by relying on their strong power. Ridiculous gods. It's almost like being a demon. Being friends with Maluo sword master, isn't that being a demon? Ha ha ha. Similar discussions appeared in some places in the city. However, most people still choose to be bystanders. For the cultivators who are invited to participate in the treasure conference, they are not sure whether the wolf god is domineering or not, but as for the mermaid kingdom they have always been tough in their methods. Upon entering the mermaid kingdom, one must abide by the laws of the mermaid kingdom. Once violated, the mermaids can directly catch and kill the violators in accordance with the law. The laws of the mermaid kingdom have always been strict. Therefore, although there were verbal attacks against Lu Heng, more people remained neutral and curious to see how the mermaid kingdom would respond to the wolf god. Shortly thereafter, Lu Heng and Xiao Ai found out about the rumors and gossip surrounding the attacks on Lu Heng. In the courtyard, the little girl with silver animal ears who heard the news had a gloomy face, and her anger was almost out of control. She looked at Lu Heng with extreme anger and said, The wolf god, those rodents spreading rumors outside. In the courtyard, after listening to Praetorian Guard's report, Lu Heng shook his head and said, Although their words are extreme, they are not entirely wrong. What are we here for? Isn't it to protect our friends? And our friend is none other than Maluo sword master who killed a man. Lu Heng laughed and said, So let them say what they want. What can you do with your anger? Can you rush out and kill them all? Wouldn't that just confirm that we are using our power to bully the weak? Lu Heng's words made the little girl flinch slightly, then feel extremely wronged. But but we never sheltered any demons. Xiao Ai was incredibly upset, with a face about to cry. The wolf god clearly came to care about Miss Hua. He only saves people when they are not fully controlled by the demonic sword. If Miss Hua really falls into the demonic path, the wolf god will be the one to kill her the rumors that those people outside spread are completely unfounded. The little girl was left feeling wronged, while Lu Heng smiled and said. Living under the scrutiny of others can be tiresome. Xiao Ai, you care too much about what others think. Lu Heng's words made Xiao Ai even more upset. But but the little girl pouted with grievances. Those people were slandering you maliciously you are not what they said. The little girl was so heartbroken in her distress that even if she was the one being scolded, she wouldn't feel as sad. Lu Heng laughed heartily and ruffled her hair, don't be too concerned. Some people just see the situation change and feel jealous, that's why they cause trouble. If we confront them, we will fall into the trap set by those sneaky rats in the dark. Keep a calm and level-headed attitude, and nothing can bring you down. Lu Heng's words caused Xiao Ai to widen her eyes in astonishment. Are people causing trouble? Is it possible? 
the young girl instinctively looked towards the nearby palace. However, Lu Hang shook his head and said, It's not the Mermaid Kingdom. The Mermaid Kingdom has a high opinion of itself. Although they may feel pressure due to yesterday's events, they would not resort to such despicable tricks there is someone else behind this mischief-making. Lu Hang said, You surely remember the seven people Brother Hu killed after he fell into darkness all seven were accomplished cultivators, with many disciples, friends, relatives, and acquaintances. If they were to band together, they could be considered a small force in the South Sea. Before, when the Mermaid Kingdom wanted to kill Brother Hua, they didn't object and therefore didn't take action. But now that I have arrived, they feel pressured. They worry that because of me, the Mermaid Kingdom may change its mind and release its enemies. So, they have to take action. Lu Heng smiled and said, through their actions, the ones being roasted over the fire are not me, Lu Heng, but the Mermaid Kingdom. These people are trying to influence public opinion, to make us completely stand against the Mermaid Kingdom. If this opinion they are guiding continues to fester, then if the Mermaid Kingdom really does release Brother Hua in the future, wouldn't they lose face? An ancient great power, afraid of the threat of a wolf demon, releasing a prisoner if such rumors spread, the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom may become murderously angry. If their scheme succeeds, it could indeed block any possibility of reconciliation between us and the Mermaid Kingdom. However, the Mermaid Kingdom definitely doesn't wish to see such a confrontational situation. Lu Heng chuckled and said, So you need not be angry, for there is someone who is even more enraged than you ha ha ha. Chapter 220 Lu Heng's words were incomprehensible to the little girl. Although the young girl was exceptionally intelligent, Matters involving public opinion manipulation and conspiracies made her feel unfamiliar. Lu Heng, having experienced similar situations in his past life, immediately noticed the irregularities and remained unmoved, waiting for a response from the Mermaid Kingdom. Compared to the chaos caused by the villains manipulating public opinion and stirring up trouble on the internet for money in his past life, the rumors and slanders found within the Mermaid Kingdom were child's play. Lu Heng believed that the Mermaid Kingdom would also be unwilling to easily initiate a war, otherwise they would not have welcomed him into the city using slow tactics. While Lu Heng was comforting Xiao Ai in the courtyard, Yu Heiling, the lord of the Mermaid Kingdom who had just come out of the ancestral temple in the palace, also listened to the report of the chief imperial secretary. Suddenly filled with anger. How dare they act recklessly in the Mermaid Kingdom? Have these people grown tired of living? Yu Heiling's face instantly turned cold, that madman Mu Yeping led people to disturb women and cause chaos in my mermaid kingdom. I haven't had a chance to settle accounts with their friends and family if not for that Mu Yeping's bastard behavior, would things escalate to this point? Now this group of people still have the audacity. Do they take my mermaid kingdom for granted? Yu Heiling's gaze was icy. Since they like to make a fuss, let them make as much fuss as they want. Immediately arrest all these people and send them to the city gate to be sliced into sashimi. And then feed them to the sea monster. Let them cause a commotion in the belly of the sea monster. The daunting command of you hailing left the chief imperial secretary helpless and bitter. My lord. Ponder upon this, pleaded the chief imperial secretary with helplessness, although these people may have ulterior motives, if their speech is not punishable by law, it is not in line with the legal system of our country. There is no provision in the law that these people cannot curse the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Continuing his plea, the chief imperial secretary lamented, the mermaid kingdom has always had strict laws, so we must act in accordance with the law, and not disregard its credibility due to momentary impulse. Once the credibility is destroyed, the consequences would be unimaginable. The chief imperial secretary persisted in his persuasion, but Yu Heiling raised her eyebrows, and looked at him coldly. You mean these people cannot be arrested? The chief imperial secretary hastily nodded, cannot be, absolutely cannot be. Faced with the lord's cold gaze, the chief imperial secretary showed no sign of backing down. Yu Heiling pursed her lips and snorted, if you can't catch them, you can't catch them. I just need to vent and I don't really expect you to obediently listen fine, you can go now and do whatever you need to do. Yu Heiling said, as for that group of troublemakers, let them go for now. But send someone to keep an eye on them. 
If they dare to break the law, arrest them immediately. I can't deal with them now, but I'll have a chance sooner or later. Yu Haling complained angrily, am I just a pawn to them? If we don't eliminate these bastards, they'll keep thinking the Mermaid Kingdom is an easy target. Yu Haling walked and vented her anger at the same time. However, the chief imperial secretary has long since departed, following Lord's orders to handle his own affairs. The only one who is currently by Yu Haling's side is Chief Minister Yu Huifeng, who entered the palace last night to pay his respects. Following behind Lord and feeling slightly relieved after Lord had scolded him for a while, Yu Huifeng finally spoke up and asked, Lord, now that things have come to this when will we pay our respects to the wolf god? In the palace, Yu Haling's footsteps faltered slightly. Then, she snorted and said, Disappear. Just take him directly to the extreme hell prison for a visit, I don't have time to see him. Yu Haling's response left Yu Huifeng shocked and dismayed. But, my lord, didn't we agree earlier to go and pay respect to the wolf god today and discuss how to deal with Miss Huifeng's matter? How could you change your mind like this? Yu Haling glared at him and said, are you trying to teach me how to do things? Am I a lord or are you? I will meet if I want to and won't if I don't want to. As the lord of the mermaid kingdom, do I not even have this freedom? Besides, doesn't the wolf god only want to see his friends? Then why don't you just take him directly? Do you really think this kind of old monster who knows how many years of life would be interested in a little girl like me? Maybe my ancestors have already met him, why would he care to see me? If I go up to him anxiously, maybe he will be disgusted and feel that I am wasting his time. So just take him to see his friend, it will fulfill his request, save everyone's time, and everyone will benefit. Isn't that great? Yu Huifeng chuckled repeatedly after hearing Yu Haling's speech. My lord, this matter is of great importance. We cannot act rashly. Yu Huifeng advised, if you are concerned about public opinion, I can invite the wolf god to meet you in a different courtyard. In this way, it will not seem like you are seeking an audience with the wolf god, but rather it will seem like the wolf god is seeking an audience with you how about that? Yu Huifeng knew that the lord had changed her mind because of the rumors spread by those rats. It is now widely believed that the mermaid kingdom fears and worships the wolf god. If the news were to come out that the lord of the mermaid kingdom went to pay respect to the wolf god, it would certainly give those rumor mongers a new reason to celebrate. How can a national affair be changed just because of a dispute of temperament? Yu Huifeng tried to persuade, but Yu Haling just glanced at him and retorted, Master Yu, as a grown man, why do you make everything so complicated? You act like an old woman can you just be straightforward? If I say I won't see him, then I won't. The wolf god is here to save someone, while we are here to kill someone. If we were to fight, would it matter whether or not I went to see him? If we wouldn't fight anyway, does it matter whether or not I go see him? Then why waste time? I have no interest in dealing with this old monster who has been living for who knows how many years. You can take him to the extreme hell prison yourself. You hailing instructed, and when you take him to the extreme hell prison, be careful. Although the wolf god has a good reputation and is not like Candle Dragon, who is an old rascal, you still need to be cautious and watch out for him trying to escape when visiting other prisoners. After speaking, Yu Haling directly disappeared in the palace without looking back, leaving Chief Minister behind. Standing on the long corridor under the sea, where seawater surged and fishes swam, Yu Huai watched Lord's departure with a helpless smile. Their Lord was truly unpredictable, which was a headache. However, upon careful consideration, it appears that the matter is indeed as Lord said. Whether or not the mermaid kingdom and the wolf god will break apart depends not on whether or not Lord sees the wolf god, but on the wolf god's attitude toward his friend. With that in mind, Yu Huifeng couldn't help but let out a sigh and said. It seems that this matter will ultimately fall on me. Yu Huifeng sighed with no other options and left the corridor, walking toward outside the palace. He intended to visit the wolf god once again. Chapter 221 when Chief Minister Yu Huifeng visited, Lu Heng was sitting at the doorway discussing the Hanhai Department's path of cultivation with the Wu family brothers. It turned out that the nine branches of the Li tribe have a different path of cultivation than the commonly known one. They neither open the door of heaven nor transform the internal energy, 
but instead only cultivate supernatural powers. Each person of the Lee tribe has a natural-born talent for supernatural powers awakened at birth. Their path of cultivating is to cultivate supernatural powers and refine their physical bodies. The fleshly body, which cultivators don't value, is refined by them to be like steel and iron, incredibly robust. Each person of the Lee tribe is like a human-shaped fierce beast, and their physical strength alone is terrifying. Not to mention the unique talents and mysterious abilities possessed by the Lee tribe people, which often manifest as an unfathomable power. There are those who possess the divinatory ability to see through an enemy's next move, those who have the insight to accurately sense the thoughts of their targets. And those who can execute swift and unpredictable movements covering thousands of meters with their godly movement techniques. However, according to the Wu brothers' account, these seemingly impressive abilities are merely commonplace amongst the nine branches of the Li tribe. The truly terrifying abilities are those that are shrouded in mystery, such as Wu Ji's blood-stained battle armor and Wu Mie's indestructible golden bones. It wasn't until Lu Hang's conversation with the two brothers that he realized the true power behind the several thousand people living outside of Hanyu Mountain. No wonder the population of Li tribe, a tribe that's strong and powerful, has been declining. If each branch could have tens of thousands of people, they would probably become invincible. And so, when Yu Huifeng arrived at the other courtyard, the wolf god, who had now become a pressure on the whole mermaid kingdom, was casually sitting on the doorstep, chatting with two muscular men from the Hanhai department who were standing by the door. His relaxed smile didn't show any ferocity. If it weren't for their previous acquaintance, anyone who saw this scene wouldn't have connected this easygoing elegant man in white with the rumored wolf god. Seeing Yu Huifeng approach, Lu Heng smiled and stood up, Master Yu, has the Lord finally agreed to see me? Yu Huifeng smiled awkwardly, the Lord has important matters to deal with and cannot be present. But she has instructed me to greet the wolf god and take you to visit your friend at the extreme hell prison on her behalf. Yu Huifeng spoke nonsense with his eyes open, I beg forgiveness from the wolf god for words that were not intentionally spoken by me. The treasure conference is approaching and there are many important matters to attend to, which prevents Lord from being able to leave. Yu Huifeng attempted to defend Lord, while Lu Heng smiled and said, I understand, I understand. After all, national affairs are important. I am grateful that Lord allowed me to visit the extreme hell prison, and I don't expect anything more. When can we depart for the extreme hell prison? Lu Heng directly inquired without any delay. Yu Huifeng laughed and said, We can go now does the wolf god need to prepare anything? Lu Heng shook his head, No, let's go. Saying so, Lu Heng called out in the courtyard, Xiao Ai, let's go. In the courtyard, the silver-haired girl with beastly ears hurriedly carried the heavenly thunder sword on her back and followed Lu Heng. At the same time, Lu Heng's massive white wolf body also emerged. Lu Heng's primordial spirit transformed into a flash of white light and returned to his physical body. The huge white wolf spoke a few words to the Wu brothers and the arriving Praetorian guards, leaving them to wait there, before leading Xiao Ai to accompany Yu Huifeng. The massive ray once again lifted off the ground, carrying Lu Heng, Xiao Ai, and Yu Huifeng into the air and over the city. Behind the ray were 300 mermaid battle soldiers and 10 mermaid generals, presenting an even grander scene than when Lu Heng entered the city on that day. This scene quickly caught the attention of the cultivators in the city. The news quickly spread that the wolf god, under the leadership of the chief minister, had crossed the mermaid kingdom and the great underwater wall to head further south. The chief minister has gone south with the wolf god. Could it be true that the mermaid kingdom is really going to release the prisoner? It's unlikely the mermaid kingdom is deeply rooted and had even killed the old demon by Fong in the past, so why would they be afraid of the wolf god? Speaking of which, have you realized that the lord of the mermaid kingdom hasn't shown up yet? Isn't that unusual? According to reason, she should have met with the wolf god today, shouldn't she? Could it be that the lord of the mermaid kingdom has already reached a secret agreement with the wolf god? It's also possible that they are planning for war according to an ancient legend, to determine whether the mermaid kingdom is genuinely moving their forces, it all depends on the lord. If the lord of the mermaid kingdom is still visible before the enemy arrives, it proves that the mermaid kingdom has not used its full strength yet. 
Only when the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom disappears before the enemy arrives, will the real terror come. Why do you say that? Has the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom disappeared, preparing for some great weapon? That is not clear. Only heard that before the old demon by Fong came to kill, the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom also disappeared for several days. When the Lord appeared again, with the power of thunder, completely killed the ancient monster by Fong in the South Sea. Hmm so if that's the case, the current Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom has been missing for three days does that mean that something exciting is about to happen? Well it's hard to say. Let's just keep watching. This year's treasure conference is more lively than any other year. The cultivators in the city discussed eagerly, as the wolf god left the city and subtle changes occurred among the various parties. But for now, Lu Heng doesn't need to worry about all of this. Standing on the back of the gigantic ray, he has already crossed the magnificent Great Wall under the sea towering 100 meters high, and is heading towards the deeper and more mysterious southern waters. The further south he goes, the deeper and more profound the seawater becomes. The ocean floor beneath him continues to extend downward as if it will never end, leading to the sinister and dark abyssal depths. Beyond the Great Wall under the sea, the seawater becomes increasingly cold. As he travels further south, the chill in the water becomes more intense. Lu Heng can feel that the coldness in the seawater is not a physical sensation. Due to the temperature of the seawater, there is not much difference compared to the north. However, as one goes further south, it becomes colder, and this eerie chill unexpectedly comes from the heart. Even cultivators who have achieved success in their training cannot help but feel the chill while in the seawater of the south. However, one cannot feel this kind of chill on the other side of the vast and magnificent great undersea wall. The huge and magnificent wall seems to completely isolate this eerie chill in the south. To the north of the great wall, the water is filled with sparkling corals and fish. Even in the mermaid kingdom, common fish can be seen everywhere in streets and alleys. But in the southern waters, it is gloomy and lifeless, with no trace of vitality. Lu Heng and his companions traveled south and could not even see a single swimming fish or seaweed. On the southern side of the Great Wall under the sea, there is an entirely desolate and lifeless wasteland, barren and vast. Chapter, 222 On the back of the ray, Lu Heng witnessed a scenery that was completely different from the vibrant one on the north side of the underwater Great Wall. It should be noted that in the deep sea, unless unexpected circumstances arise, one can find various strange creatures even at a depth of 10,000 meters. Life is incredibly tenacious. However, on the south side of the underwater Great Wall, even though the sea is not actually very deep and there is not much difference from the north side, the area where vitality was extinct, is many times more gloomy than the north side. Being in this inexplicably cold seawater, Lu Heng felt a little oppressed. Is this desolate sea area related to the legendary South Sea Deep Trench? After all, once they arrive at the Mermaid Kingdom, they won't be far from the rumored South Sea Deep Trench if we head further south. Lu Heng couldn't help but turn around to glance at the 300 mermaid battle soldiers behind him. In the sea, these soldiers all rode on the backs of the South Sea Sea Monsters. In the outside world, these sea monsters were ferocious, but under the control of the mermaids, they were extremely tame. 300 mermaid battle soldiers, each riding on a South Sea Sea Monster, such a large formation, but it seemed that it wasn't meant to defend against Lu Heng. Because along the way, what Lu Heng observed was that this group of mermaid battle soldiers seemed to be more vigilant about the surrounding waters than they were about him, Lu Heng. The coastal patrol soldiers shuttled back and forth like scouts, constantly reporting the maritime situation from all directions to the military leaders. That solemn and guarded situation is indeed not to guard against Lu Heng. But this seems to be within the borders of the Mermaid Kingdom it is said that there are also several cities of the Mermaid Kingdom to the south, but they are not as prosperous as those in the north. Why do these mermaids look like they are in an enemy territory, rather than cruising in their own borders? Lu Heng was puzzled, but he didn't dare to ask. Perhaps this is a top secret of the Mermaid Kingdom? However, Yu Huifeng explained when he saw the curiosity of the wolf god. Currently, on the southern side of the capital, there has been a significant change compared to before. For the time being, the sea on the southern side of the capital is not suitable for living. 
the inhabitants of several cities on the south have already been relocated to the north. Yu Huifeng said, other than the extreme hell prison guarded by soldiers, there are no living creatures in the waters south of the entire country, except for us. Yu Huifeng's explanation left Lu Heng slightly astonished. What happened? Yu Huifeng let out a sigh, looked towards the south, and said, when Ma Yuo's sword master committed murder in the capital. The evil Ma Yuo energy seemed to have triggered the long dormant South Sea Deep Trench, causing the Death Chi to surge out and sweep across the sea on the southern side of the capital. In fact, if it weren't for the seawall of the Mermaid Kingdom that has been guarding for generations. This outbreak of evil energy would have swept through at least half of the South Sea and caused more than 70% casualties to the aquatic tribes of the South Sea. Lu Heng was greatly astonished by Yu Huifeng's narration. So powerful. Yu Huifeng then gave a bitter smile and said, the outbreak of evil energy in the South Sea Deep Trench is so terrifying. Fortunately, if there is no external stimulus, the extreme hell black water will not erupt with evil energy for thousands of years. Yu Huifeng's words made Lu Heng laugh, but he didn't say anything. The little girl with silver hair and animal ears pouted and hummed softly. The reactions of the little girl and the white wolf made Yu Huifeng smile awkwardly and say, everything that I said is true. It is not an exaggeration it is precisely because of the Ma Yuo sword's uniqueness that the Ma Yuo sword master must be eliminated. The unknown origins of this ancient demonic sword seem to have some unknown connection with the South Sea Deep Trench. Over the long years, the Ma Yuo evil sword has only appeared in the South Sea and never on land or in any other sea area. It is as if it is waiting for an opportunity by guarding the South Sea. The Maluo evil spirit within the sword is not a mere sword spirit, but a special entity with intelligence. Although its hidden evil intentions have not yet been realized, it is evident that it is planning to use the South Sea deep trench to harm the creatures of the South Sea. Xiao Ai let out a light hum as Yu Huifeng spoke, and ruthlessly rebutted him. If the Maluo sword is so dangerous, why keep Miss Hua imprisoned so close to the abyss? Isn't that even more risky? Yu Huifeng spoke seriously and said, Miss Xiao Ai, you are not aware that the extreme hell prison, although located near the abyss, is a demon prison constructed by my mermaid ancestors. Any evil entity trapped here cannot escape. The Maluo sword master was confined within the extreme hell prison, so as to completely cut off his connection with the South Sea Deep Trench which could prevent the Maluo sword from once again unleashing wickedness and misfortune upon the South Sea. Yu Huifeng explained in detail, and Lu Heng nodded to show his understanding. I see. Looking at the sudden appearance of a huge underwater portal in the sea ahead of them, Lu Heng said, could it be that large stone portal ahead is the extreme hell prison? In the frigid and bone-chilling seawater of the sea before them, there was actually a huge stone portal suspended hundreds of feet high. From a distance, it was even more magnificent and grand than the underwater Great Wall of the Mermaid Kingdom. A colossal stone gate stood silently in the midst of the water. It neither reached the sky nor touched the ground, hanging motionless in the turbulent sea. On the stone gate, various mysterious textual designs were intricately engraved. The time-worn stone carvings had aged beyond reckoning. The moment one catches a glimpse of the stone gate, an immense and desolate atmosphere overpowers the senses. Lu Hang's pupils contract slightly. Within the center of that massive stone gate, a colossal design draws his eyes, for it seems all too familiar. This design splits into two halves, each on one of the two door centers. When the doors come together, they piece together a tremendous eight trigrams figure. Despite the mysterious hieroglyphs and patterns adorning the stone gate, this massive eight trigrams diagram is the largest, most prominent, and centrally located one. The Inyang fish in the center alone has a diameter of dozens of meters. Compared to this gigantic eight trigrams diagram, the numerous engravings on the stone gate are mere embellishments in the corners and not the main focus at all. Lu Heng looked towards Yu Huifeng beside him and asked, are the engravings on this stone gate left by your country's ancestors? Lu Hen pointed to the enormous eight trigrams diagram. Hearing this, Yu Huifeng was somewhat surprised and didn't understand why the wolf god would ask this question. Nevertheless, he replied, according to records, our ancestors built this stone gate together. 
however, we don't know the meaning behind the patterns on it. At this point, Yu Huifeng thought of a possibility. Does the wolf god recognize this door? Yu Huifeng was stunned. Has the wolf god, who has lived for countless years, really known the ancestors of the mermaid kingdom? Yu Huifeng was extremely astonished, while Lu Hang stood on the back of the huge ray, looking up at the gradually approaching stone door and the enlarging eight trigrams diagram in his sight. This was the first time he had seen the eight trigrams diagram in this world. For some reason, facing this huge eight trigrams diagram at this moment, he had a slightly familiar feeling in his heart. It seems that he has returned to the end of that mysterious and inscrutable stone forest, standing under the huge statue of Nuwa, looking at the small and ordinary tombstone. The tomb of my brother Fu Shi. Could it be that the portal of the extreme hell prison is also related to the deity Fu Shi? Chapter 223 The eight trigrams are the most mystical and ancient profound thing in this world. Among the excavated cultural relics, people discovered that the pattern of the eight trigrams had already existed during the Stone Age when knotting was used for recording. It is difficult to imagine that the eight trigrams had already appeared in that ancient time when people's wisdom had not yet blossomed. The most ancient inherited eight trigrams, according to legends, was created by the great god Fu Shi, also known as Fu Shi Eight Trigrams. However, Lu Hing didn't have any research on the way of the Book of Changes in his previous life, and had a lack of cognitive about the eight trigrams. Even after achieving enlightenment, the cultivator's spiritual wisdom will greatly awaken and he will be able to recall every memory that is buried deep in his mind from childhood, including the feeling of leaving the amniotic fluid as a baby. The first poop and urine after being born, the breath of sleeping in his mother's arms during full moon, and the laughter when riding on his father's neck at the age of one these memories that ordinary people can never recall are all clear in the cultivator's mind. Not to mention the pages of books he has read, and the strangers he has passed by even though Lu Heng didn't deliberately try to remember, his current level of cultivation allows him to effortlessly remember these memories. However, such a vast store of knowledge doesn't allow one to create things that have not been experienced. Therefore, Lu Heng, who had not studied the art of I Jing in his past life, could only barely recognize that the eight trigrams on this stone gate were the pre-heavenly trigrams, rumored to be related to Fu Shi. However, he could not judge what the specific pattern of the trigram represented. The only thing that can be certain is that this ancient stone gate must be related to that ancient deity. On the back of the ray, Lu Hang's eyes fixed on the enormous eight trigram symbol. After staring at it for a while, he felt as though the symbol had come alive and was staring back at him. At this moment, they had already arrived in front of a massive stone gate. The mermaid general who led them had arrived earlier and tapped a groove beneath the stone gate with a piece of jade. The voice of the mermaid inside the gate could be heard, speaking in mermaid language, which Lu Hang and Xiao Ai couldn't understand. After communicating with the mermaid inside the gate for a while, the mermaid general stepped back and returned to where Yu Huifeng and Lu Heng stood. Slowly, the massive stone gate opened up before Lu Heng and his companions. After the colossal stone gates opened, a stunning scene was revealed beyond them, a huge stage like the real night sky, glittering with twinkling stars. Standing beneath this vast starry sky, Lu Heng and the mermaids were overwhelmed by a sense of insignificance, as if they were truly facing a real star-filled expanse. Yu Huifeng gave a slight smile and gestured, Please, follow me. After speaking, as if afraid that the wolf god would not dare to enter, he took a step into the starry sky without hesitation. Lu Heng didn't hesitate and followed Yu Huifeng into the stellar expanse. A sensation of icy softness hit him immediately, as if Lu Heng had plunged into a pool of soft gelatin, making his whole body feel light and chilly. In the next moment, as he regained his sight, he realized that he was no longer under the sea, but standing amidst a sparkling galaxy. Bright and lifelike stars seemed to twinkle beside him, only reduced in size and lacking the scorching heat of true stars. Standing in the void, Lu Heng saw no directions, no above or below, as if he had truly arrived in the vacuum of the universe. The silver-haired girl with animal ears clung close to him, staring at the scene before them in amazement and slight shock. After all, the feeling of being in the galaxy was truly magnificent. Meanwhile, Yu Huifeng stood at the side, smiling and saying, This is the extreme hell prison, a realm beyond the world, not within the South Sea. 
The friend of the wolf god resides here temporarily. After Xiao Ai came in, no one else came in behind Lu Heng. The 300 mermaid battle soldiers were all left outside, it seems they were not really used to guard against Lu Heng. However, there should also be mermaid battle soldiers stationed in the extreme hell prison, but it is unclear where they are. At least Lu Heng doesn't feel their presence now. Yu Huifeng obviously has no intention of showing Lu Heng the garrison here, he plans to take Lu Heng directly to see his friends. However, Lu Heng is not anxious now. He stood in the midst of the starry sea, looking with amazement and astonishment at the slowly rotating whirlpool nebula before him, his heart sinking slightly. If the eight trigrams pattern on the stone gate could still be dismissed as a coincidence, then the whirlpool nebula he was now in front of couldn't possibly be explained away by coincidence. The Milky Way Could this brilliant and genuine starry sky be a completely realistic representation of the Milky Way? Although Lu Hang's knowledge of astronomy was limited, he had previously watched many popular science videos of the Milky Way online. Compared to the shape and characteristics of the Milky Way in his memory, the starry sky before he seemed to be the Milky Way. Moreover, on the spiral arm they were now on, there seemed to be familiar stars. The giant white wolf passed directly over Yu Huifeng, heading towards the sea of stars up ahead. Xiao Ai followed closely behind him, unwilling to be separated from the wolf god. Yu Huifeng, however, wore a look of surprise. That's not the right direction. But since the wolf god had gone that way, he had no choice but to follow, knowing that there were no important criminals detained in that direction. The wolf god's strange reaction upon entering the starry sky also piqued Yu Huifeng's curiosity, wondering what exactly the wolf god was looking for. Could it be that there is some kind of treasure left behind by ancient ancestors in this sea of stars that they haven't found yet? With this curiosity and trust in the wolf god's ability to maintain order in the extreme hell prison, Yu Huifeng didn't stop the wolf god, but followed closely behind him. The two, along with the wolf, hurried through the starry sea. This reduced realistic starry sea didn't perfectly restore the proportions in the actual sea of stars. Otherwise, vast empty areas would have been daunting. Although the distance between the stars was considerable, it was still incomparable to the real universe. Soon, Lu Heng arrived on the outskirts of this spiral arm and found a prominent and familiar coordinate. Centaur Triple Star These three stars, which have become famous and popular because of science fiction, are now appearing in front of Lu Heng. Each star has a diameter of several meters and emits a faint, scorching light. Not far from these three stars, there is a seemingly ordinary star floating in the starry night, surrounded by several planets of varying sizes, each no bigger than a marble. From the distance in this sea of stars, Lu Heng can clearly see the ordinary star nearby and the small planets that surround it. In this sparkling sea of stars, this particular star has no distinguishing characteristics and can be considered quite ordinary. However, when Lu Heng actually found this star, he became genuinely excited. He instinctively flew towards the star, even though he knew it was only a false sandbox model. But the familiar scene of his hometown still stirred up his desire to get closer and he could not resist it. Then, Lu Heng froze. Chapter, 224 At the moment the giant white wolf approached the star, it seemed to be solidified and directly frozen in the void, maintaining its flying posture, even its fur was solidified and didn't fall off. This extremely eerie scene made Xiao Ai anxious in an instant. The Wolf God As she shouted loudly, she looked suddenly at Yu Huifeng beside her, You are scheming against the Wolf God. As soon as the voice fell, the dark blue ancient sword behind the little girl emitted a clear sword sound. Clang! At the moment when the sound of swords rang out, the terrifying sword intent instantly swayed in the sea of stars, and in an instant, it shattered thousands of stars around it. Amidst the crackling sounds, Xiao Ai in the sparkling starry sky turned black in an instant. Only the ordinary star in front of the wolf god was not affected by the sword aura and still silently revolved around the center of the galaxy. However, when Yu Huifeng was affected by the sword aura, he was chilled all over, and a sense of horror of an impending disaster arose from the depths of his soul. Clearly, the little girl in front of him was incomparable to his own cultivation base. In the midst of the starry sea, Yu Huifeng swiftly fled a thousand feet away in the blink of an eye, 
feeling both anxious and helpless as he loudly protested. This is where the wolf god actively came. How could we set traps and ambush the wolf god? Miss Xiao AI, please calm down. How can the little girl beside the wolf god be so terrifying? Although the sword has not left its sheath, it instantly shattered thousands of surrounding stars you must know, these stars are extremely solid cages. Since the construction of the extreme hell prison, many demonic giants have been imprisoned within the stars, yet no one has ever been able to destroy them. But now, the stars that have not been destroyed for tens of thousands of years were shattered in the blink of an eye. Yu Huifeng couldn't believe his eyes as he looked at the little girl carrying the bronze ancient sword, once again refreshing his perception of her. Even a low cultivated maid who stood beside the wolf god made a terrifying move one could only imagine what dreadful scene would unfold if the wolf god himself were to take action. However, what was most fearsome was not the little girl before them, but the wolf god's body completely frozen in the void, a bizarre sight that shook Yu Huifeng more than the little wolf girl's sword shattered countless false stars. Could it be that there really were some secrets left by the ancestors within the extreme hell prison? Even an existence like the wolf god was affected. Yu Huifeng urgently persuaded the little wolf girl in the star sea, saying, Miss Xiao Ai, calm down. I will immediately summon the prison warden to come and investigate the situation. The extreme hell prison was left by our ancestors, and its various wonders are not fully known to us either. The wolf god might have accidentally triggered some kind of magic array, we should quickly understand the situation instead of rushing into a confrontation. Yu Huifeng's voice fell, and Xiao Ai looked at him coldly. She was about to speak when a tired voice suddenly sounded from behind. It's okay, Xiao Ai. I'm fine. Please don't get too agitated. A figure in white appeared silently behind the silver-haired girl with animal ears. He gently patted her shoulder, calming her emotions, and sheathed the heavenly thunder sword that had already been unsheathed by an inch. Facing Xiao Ai's astonished eyes, Lu Heng in white smiled slightly and said, Although I am moved by your concern, you can't move the heavenly thunder sword. Just now, your impulsive action has caused the explosion of thousands of stars, and we might have to spend hundreds of years as laborers in the mermaid kingdom to compensate for that. Xiao Ai was slightly taken aback by Lu Heng's joke, feeling a bit nervous. Hundreds of years. Meanwhile, not far away, Yu Huifeng was sweating profusely and quickly said with a forced smile, the wolf god is just kidding. There are too many stars in the sky, and a thousand or two exploding won't make a difference and no need to compensate. What a joke. If it weren't for the intervention of the wolf god who persuaded the hot-tempered she-wolf in time and stopped her from causing the destruction of the entire galaxy, the result might have been catastrophic. Moreover, the scene of the wolf god's sudden solidification was too scary. If it weren't for Yu Huifeng's confirmation that he didn't trap the wolf god, he would have thought that the wolf god had been harmed after seeing that scene just now. However, the fact that the wolf god returned to normal so quickly may indicate that he had already freed himself from that strange magic formation. Seeing the wolf god return and the sword on the little girl's back sheathed, Yu Huifeng carefully approached and asked, what was happening with the wolf god just now? Yu Huifeng looked at the slowly rotating star behind Lu Heng, hesitant to speak. Lu Heng sighed and also looked back at the star, saying, This is a divine thought left behind by the great deity who founded this star field with one hand. If someone who is fated to do so enters this star field, they will inherit the mantle of that great deity. Although I am not a destined one, I am somewhat involved with that deity. So, coming here triggered the deity's divine consciousness left behind. Lu Heng intended to say there might be some blood relation, but considering it would be too boastful. Moreover, he is currently a wolf demon in flesh, and only his soul belongs to himself, so he changed his words. Lu Heng explained, but, I am not a destined one. I couldn't obtain this starry sea, so I came back. Lu Heng chuckled, Master Yu, you can go back to the kingdom and select some trustworthy mermaids to come here. Maybe the destined one is in your kingdom. If the destined one is truly in the mermaid kingdom, then you can truly control this starry sea instead of using it as a prison for prisoners. Lu Heng's half-joking, half-serious remark caused Yu Huifeng to slightly startle, and he quickly bowed down to pay his respects. 
I humbly request the wolf god to enlighten us in detail. However, Lu Hang sighed and said, I have nothing to teach. The divine consciousness of that great deity only glanced at me and then left with a flick of his sleeve, saying that I was not the destined one he was waiting for. As for who this great deity is, perhaps you will know when you find the destined one. And as for the true divine power of this starry sea, I am unaware. But one thing is certain, it is definitely not used simply to imprison criminals. That deity was a highly esteemed being from ancient times. His actions will not be mere trivialities. Lu Heng sincerely explained, without any falsehood in his words. He indeed only saw a vague figure inside that star's interior. When Lu Heng appeared, the figure sighed and said, The Xianyuan bloodline it's fortunate that the Xianyuan bloodline still exists in the world. Unfortunately, you are not the one I am waiting for go back, there is nothing here that can give you what you seek. After speaking, the blurry figure disappeared directly. Meanwhile, Lu Heng returned to the Star Sea and saw Xiao Ai, who was about to draw the Heavenly Thunder Sword in anger. He quickly intervened. This starry sea was left by the great deity Fu Shi. If you blow up the entire place with one sword, what will you do if his relatives and friends come looking for trouble? From all the situations, it seems like the goddess Niwa hasn't perished yet. Chapter 225 In the Sea of Stars, Lu Heng earnestly explained the situation to Yu Huifeng. Yu Huifeng, however, didn't suspect that the wolf god was holding back. At the very least, the wolf god has always treated people with sincerity and would not deceive them in such matters. The inheritance of ancient gods may be very attractive to others, but for the wolf god, whose Taoist cultivate has already been established, it is nothing special. We are all ancient gods, and you want me to inherit your legacy. If I inherit it, won't I be inferior to you? Where would that leave my dignity? Yu Huifeng, who is unaware of the owner's identity in this starry sea, speculates on the wolf god's thoughts. He even suspects that the wolf god is not incapable of inheriting this starry sea, but rather unwilling, which is why he came out so quickly. Judging from the wolf god's familiarity with this place, it doesn't seem like the first time he has entered this starry sky. Perhaps the ancient god who created this star system is an old acquaintance of his. While Yu Huifeng speculated in his heart, he maintained a smile on his face. In that case, I am grateful for the guidance of the wolf god. We always thought this starry sea was left by our ancestors to contain demons. We didn't expect that we were passing over a precious treasure. If it weren't for the wolf god's guidance, we would have truly wasted it. Yu Huifeng calculated in his mind that he must inform Lord about this matter as soon as he returns and select a suitable mermaid for the extreme hell prison as soon as possible. If a destined person could truly be found to completely control this galaxy, the national power of the mermaid kingdom would become even stronger. Even if they encountered demonic turmoil in the extreme abyss again, they will be able to handle it more easily. Lu Heng nodded and said, Then, please let Master Yu take me to meet Miss Huifeng. The mysteries of this place are left to all of you. Although the inheritance of Fu Shi was tempting, Lu Heng was not very interested. The thunder technique that Lu Heng cultivated was different from that of the cultivators in the world below. If he wanted to inherit this galaxy, he might have to abandon his thunder cultivation. This might not be a good thing for Lu Heng. Although inheriting the great god's legacy was powerful, was it necessarily stronger than cultivating thunder? This may not be the case. Now, Lu Heng's study of the Taoist classics has gained some insight. If he continues to cultivate his heavenly thunder way, it may not be inferior in the future. Perhaps the great god also saw this, so he reluctantly sent Lu Heng away. Otherwise, it is unlikely that Lu Heng's identity as a descendant of Xianyuan alone could trigger the starry sea formation specially reserved for those who are predestined. At least that divine thought, if it was really triggered by the bloodline of Xianyuan, it could not have spoken out the phrase Xuanyuan's bloodline only after Lu Heng appeared, and it would not have let Lu Heng leave with disappointment. If he was called in because of his Xianyuan bloodline, he should at least say a few words and catch up, right? The disappointed tone isn't at all like meeting a long-lost relative with the same bloodline. Lu Heng suspected that he was qualified to inherit this starry sky as per the requirements of the deity. However, the deity was disappointed as he saw no need for Lu Heng to inherit his legacy and gave up. 
Furthermore, although the vague figure claimed to have nothing to offer Lu Heng, a faint eight trigrams pattern appeared in the palm of Lu Heng's hand when he left. Under the spiritual connection, there seems to be a mystery within the eight trigrams pattern that is even more suitable for Lu Heng than the inheritance of this starry sea. However, now that Lu Heng is in the starry sea and in the presence of Yu Huifeng, he is temporarily unable to trigger the mysteries hidden within the eight trigrams pattern. Having left this starry sea together with Yu Huifeng, they continued their journey deeper into the starry sea. The area where Huifeng is being held is far away, deep in the vast galaxy. Meanwhile, Lu Heng and his group are only at the edge of the starry sky. To put it in figurative terms, they have just entered the prison gates. On the other hand, the location where Huifeng is being held is at the center of this vast galaxy, a massive star emitting a faint blue glow. With a diameter of nearly a hundred yards, it can be considered a colossal object. It should be noted that in this ocean of stars, most stars have a diameter of only about three meters. Upon arriving at this star emitting a faint blue light, Yu Huifeng took out a seal and said to Lu Heng. With the seal in hand, the wolf god can visit your friend inside this star. But be sure not to linger for too long, as the seal only exists for half an hour, after which the wolf god will have to remain within the star. Saying this, Yu Huifeng looked somewhat worriedly at the little girl beside him. He wasn't afraid of the wolf god being trapped inside, considering that it wouldn't take too long to create another seal. But if the wolf god were to be imprisoned inside it, that silver-haired wolf-eared girl might get angry and destroy the stars with a single sword strike though the stars in this vast and numerous starry sky cannot be reproduced and would be gone once destroyed. No matter how numerous the stars are, they cannot withstand such turmoil. Lu Heng saw the concern in Yu Huifeng's eyes and felt somewhat helpless yet amused. He patted Xiao Ai on the shoulder and said, I'll go in later. If I can't come out in time due to delay, please don't destroy the stars here. Lu Heng's advice made Xiao Ai blush and feel embarrassed. With a hearty laugh, Lu Heng took the seal handed over by Yu Huifeng, and went straight to the hundred meter diameter blue star ahead. As he approached, Lu Heng felt a slight burning sensation, but it was not serious. When he was ten meters away from the star, a portal appeared in the void ahead. Lu Heng stepped in and found himself inside the star. Unlike what Lu Heng had imagined, the inside of this star was not a gloomy and terrifying prison, nor was it a raging sea of magma, but a vast grassland. Above the grassland stands a towering, ancient tree without leaves, only with withered branches and aged bark, appearing lifeless and seemingly dead. And in the form of a woman, Hua Feng now sits cross-legged under this huge withered tree, without shackles or chains, yet afraid to leave the area covered by the tree roots, obediently sitting still under the tree. Lu Heng's appearance surprised Hua Feng for a moment, then filled her with great joy. Senior Wolf God Despite his excitement, he merely stood up and dared not take a step outside. This scene made Lu Heng realize that this strange withered tree was definitely not as simple as it appeared on the surface. Hua Feng appears to not be wearing shackles, but it's only because they're not visible. As he approached the withered tree, Lu Heng smiled and spoke to the woman below from several meters away. Brother Hua seems to be quite interested, as you came to play in such a secluded place. It made it quite difficult for me to find you. Chapter, 226 Lu Heng's words caused a bitter smile to appear on the elegantly dressed woman. She let out a long sigh and said, Since you have come, I presume you know about Hua Feng's condition. Now, I have been possessed by the Maoyuo sword and merged with the Maoyuo evil sword. The mermaid kingdom wants to kill me, but I have no resentment. However, Tsai is innocent and I am worried about her. The woman's plaintive sigh gave off a feeling of a tragic heroine in a play. Lu Heng laughed heartily and said, Brother Hua, do you intend to entrust your wife to us? You're calling Tsai Yi so affectionately it seems that sharing a home and meals for some time has indeed fostered some feelings. Do tell, have you fallen for her now? Lu Heng's teasing made the woman's face instantly reddened, and the melancholic atmosphere of the female protagonist in a tragic drama collapsed in an instant. Senior. Hua Feng looked embarrassed. Lu Heng chuckled, then became serious, his expression became solemn. Well, since I'm here, 
I can't allow the Mermaid Kingdom to determine your life and death. The murderer is Maluo Evil Spirit, not you, Huafong. If you still have a chance, I, Lu Hang, will protect you no matter what of course, if you are really completely controlled by Maluo Evil Spirit, don't blame me. After finishing his words, Lu Hang went straight to the woman under the withered tree, let me see your situation. Upon seeing this scene, Huafong was immediately shocked and exclaimed, Senior, please don't approach. This withered tree. Boom. A piercing thunder suddenly sounded, and Lu Hang's white spirit body directly revealed the foundation of the heavenly thunder. This spirit body was composed entirely of heavenly thunder, but usually restrained its ferocity, so it didn't differ much from ordinary spirit bodies. However, now Lu Hang gave up suppressing the heavenly thunder and directly manifested it as its most essential power. In an instant, the light of the heavenly thunder surged, and the aura of thunder was magnificent. When the lightning bright white spirit approached a foam, numerous roots spread out from the ground, attempting to strangle and drive away Lu Hang. However, the white spirit strolled leisurely and didn't even glance at the roots that emerged from the ground. The roots trembled violently upon touching the sky thunder and finally fell to the ground helplessly with no strength to retract back. White clothed Lu Hang came directly in front of Hua Feng's face with a smile. The withered tree that had tortured Hua Feng many times was now completely still. Behind Lu Hang, the snake like, lifeless roots lying on the ground weakly and cautiously retracted back to the earth after Lu Hang passed, never daring to show themselves again. This eerie and powerful withered tree had lost all its arrogance in the face of the wolf god. Under the withered tree, Lu Hang extended his right hand to Hua Feng with a smile, saying, Brother Hua, let me examine your condition while you sit cross-legged and close your eyes. Looking at the white-robed wolf god before him, Hua Feng felt a flood of words in his stomach, but obediently followed the wolf god's order, sitting cross-legged and focusing his mind. In the next moment, the wolf god's hand gently rested on her shoulder, beginning to examine her physical condition. However, just as Lu Hang started, Hua Feng suddenly opened her eyes, with both eyes turning red in an instant. Some dark and evil energy surged within the woman in front of him. In the face of Lu Hang's arrival, the Maluo evil spirit didn't hide at all, directly taking control of Hua Feng's body and revealing its demon shadow. Under Lu Hang's astonished gaze, the woman before him, full of demonic energy, looked at him coldly and spoke. The wolf god, if you want to save your friend, I can make a deal with you. Lu Hang was greatly surprised by Maluo evil spirit's words. You can still speak. You are indeed not an ordinary sword spirit. Lu Hang withdrew his hand with a smile and said, Tell me, what kind of deal do you want to make with me? The evil woman, full of evil demon, looked a little wary at Lu Hang's heavenly thunder body and moved back cautiously before speaking, The mermaid kingdom and I have an endless connection. Now that I have fallen into the hands of these mermaids, I am doomed. But if I am executed by the mermaids, your friend will not survive either. However, if the wolf god is willing to guarantee and save your friend, not letting the mermaids kill her, and take us out of the South Sea, I will leave the body of this disciple of the Yun sect and set her free after leaving the South Sea. Afterwards, the wolf god, you can pursue and try to kill me. It will all depend on our abilities how about it. This should be the only solution that can achieve both goals. Maluo evil spirit's proposal left Lu Hang quite surprised. Achieving both goals. Under the withered tree, Lu Hang in white shook his head and said, This is by no means a solution to achieve both goals if I were to follow your proposal and let you, a demonic creature, escape, wouldn't I be aiding and abetting wrongdoing? Every innocent life you take in the future will have its consequences pinned on me. Lu Hang rejected it by shaking his head and said, This is not the answer I want, so I cannot agree to your proposal. Without waiting for the woman to ask, Lu Hang smiled and said, What Lu Hang wants is actually very simple, which is to save my friend while eliminating you. That is the outcome I desire. As for your proposal Hao Lu Hang never negotiates with demons. I will try to save Brother Hua, but if he cannot be saved, then I will have to kill you first. I believe Brother Hua will understand me. Lu Hang's words sounded callous, causing the woman's expression to stiffen slightly. She looked coldly at the wolf god in front of her, her eyes disdainful. So you are a hypocrite for the sake of your reputation, 
you can sacrifice even your friend's life. Indeed, it is the style of an ancient monster. It's a pity that this young man mistook you and believed you would save him, but he didn't know he had been wrong from the very beginning. Moyuo's tone was contemptuous, but Lu Hang laughed and said, Do you think I cannot deal with you being so full of confidence? The woman gave a cold smile and said, I am connected with this young man's soul, unable to be separated. Unless I choose to leave on my own, even if the emperor himself descended, there would be no hope. I am now intertwined with this young man, even until death cannot separate us if Lord Wolf God doubts it, you may try and see if I am deceiving you. Moyuo evil spirit is confident about his close connection with Huafeng. Lu Heng smiled slightly and said, if that's the case, then I'll give it a try. After speaking, the white-robed soul directly reached out and grabbed the woman full of evil demons in front of him. While smiling, the fierce heavenly thunder immediately merged into the woman's body. When the thunder that urgently killed the evil demons rushed in, the woman full of evil demons screamed and instinctively tried to break free. Are you crazy? Moyuo evil spirit exclaimed in horror, if you act like this, both I and the young man of the Yun sect will be dead. Under the withered tree, the woman full of evil demons tried to struggle. However, the mighty power of the heavenly thunder was overwhelming, and now she didn't even dare to resist in the slightest, afraid that her evil demons would attract even more violent heavenly thunder. She could only sit there stiffly with horror and pain, letting the man in white catch her and scream miserably. In the flashing of the pale thunder, the woman's frightened eyes saw the slight smile of white-clothed Lu Heng. Lu Heng smiled, don't worry, you won't lose your soul. I am confident in my control of the heavenly thunder. I won't lose control. Moyuo evil spirit looked terrified at this. Even if she wouldn't lose control and lose her soul, she would have unbearable pain. This white-clothed wolf god was clearly intentionally tormenting her. Chapter 227 Under the withered tree, lightning flickered while the woman's miserable screams continued to echo. Lu Heng continuously injected heavenly thunder into the woman's body, trying to separate the Mayuo evil demon from Huafeng's soul. However, the dazzling lightning was unable to achieve its goal. Apparently, the Mayuo evil demon had truly merged with Huafeng's soul. Although Lu Heng used heavenly thunder to pull and drag it, the woman could only scream miserably, soon losing her voice. Stop! 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 The woman hoarsely pleaded, if you don't let go, you will hurt this young man's essence. Upon hearing these pleas, Lu Heng withdrew his hand and the heavenly thunder dissipated. Under the withered tree, the woman lay limp on the ground, her face pale, and her clothes damp with cold sweat, while her limbs twitched involuntarily. Lu Heng, dressed in white, stood beside her, observing her state and nodded in agreement. It seems like the heavenly thunder can still control you after all I thought you were truly fearless. Lu Heng's words caused the woman on the ground to shudder, then lift her head to glare at him with hatred. She said, if it weren't for the heavenly thunder holding me back, how dare you act so arrogantly. If you have the ability, don't just rely on the heavenly thunder. Moyuo evil spirit's provocation made Lu Heng nod and say, you make a valid point. Since the heavenly thunder can't stop you for now, I plan to use another method. A yellow and black seal flew out from behind Lu Heng. Smiling, he looked toward the woman at his feet and said. Since you say only death can separate you let's try it out. Lu Heng's words made the woman widen her eyes and ask, what do you want to do? She had originally just been talking back out of habit. But she never imagined that the wolf god in front of her would really change tactics just one heavenly thunder had made her feel like she was dying, and this guy actually had other tricks up his sleeve. The dark yellow seal floating behind Lu Heng gave her an extremely uneasy feeling. And Lu Heng didn't let her wait long. Under the withered tree, Lu Heng in white waved his sleeves lightly. A cold light swept across and directly shot the woman's soul out of her body. Before Lu Heng appeared a stunningly beautiful woman, with a slender figure, but her eyes were tightly closed, and she was in a state of unconsciousness. The woman was entwined with a strange and evil beast. The monster, with red hair all over, seemed boneless now, clinging tightly to the woman's soul, completely fused with it. Seeing this scene, Lu Heng was completely shocked. 
This not only was Hua Feng's body turned into that of a woman, but even his soul. The pill Wu Gu concocted is too strong, isn't it? It can distort the gender of one's soul. No wonder Wu Gu dares to claim that the pill she refined is unparalleled in the world. After taking the pill, Hua Feng truly transformed into a woman inside and out. Compared to the soul that has completely transformed into a female appearance, the red-haired monster attached to the soul seemed less frightening. Lu Hang watched silently for a while before slowly speaking. Indeed, merged together it seems that as long as you don't take the initiative to leave, I really can't do anything to you. Said Lu Hang so. And the red-haired monster stared in disbelief at Lu Hang and the black and yellow seal behind him, asking, what kind of magic is this? Can it really capture the soul of a person? At this moment, Maoyuo evil spirit felt a stronger sense of fear and shock than when he first saw Heavenly Thunder. Practicing Heavenly Thunder was already terrifying, but this wolf god in front of him actually had such mysterious and eerie tricks directly sweeping out the soul of a person. Is this really the method of the righteous cultivator? What is the origin of this wolf in front of him? His name had never been heard of in ancient times, and he seemed to have emerged out of nowhere, without any trace or background. It looked righteous to cultivate heavenly thunder. However, beneath that elegant and smiling face dressed in white, lies a cunning and malicious personality, who has been continuously using heavenly thunder for so long, that its amiability is merely superficial. Now, he has exhibited ghostly tricks which are unsuitable for orthodox cultivators directly extracting a person's soul. This kind of evil magic is a terrifying and malevolent technique, even among the evil cultivators. If a cultivator's cultivation has reached a certain level, their primordial spirit can survive independently. Even if their physical body is destroyed, as long as their primordial spirit doesn't perish, they can easily resurrect their physical body. However, the means displayed by this white wolf before us is not to beat a person's primordial spirit out of their body, but to beat out their most fundamental soul. The foundational primordial spirit and unique magic power they have cultivated remains in their physical body. Although the thin soul that was beaten out has some magic power, compared with the genuine primordial spirit, it is as weak and fragile as a soap bubble that can burst upon the slightest touch. Even just a ray of sunlight or a strong gust of wind might scatter the soul of the young man of the Yun sect. Although it was due to the young man of the Yun sect's low cultivation level, even a highly experienced cultivator would be weak if their soul was scattered like this. Can this supposedly righteous white wolf really use such a vicious technique? Could it be that the appearance of a righteous cultivator is just a false mask used to deceive the public, and its true identity is that of an evil cultivator? The strange creature with its red fur looked at Lu Hang in great fear and said, White wolf. Since you are not a true righteous cultivator, why do you have to force me? It was indeed my fault for harming your friend. However, I am willing to settle this matter. As long as you are willing to let me go, the moment I depart, not only will I not harm your friend, but I will also leave behind pure energy without any demon aura to assist him in his cultivation. We are all cultivators of the demonic path. We have already suffered exclusion from those righteous individuals and struggled to survive. Why must we engage in infighting and harm each other? By doing so, aren't you causing pain to your loved ones and delighting your enemies? Maoyuo the evil spirit pleaded bitterly and explained the pros and cons. However, Lu Heng laughed heartily and said, Who told you I am a practitioner of the demonic path? Your Excellency has a huge misunderstanding. Lu Heng defended himself casually, but Maoyuo the evil spirit looked at him with alarm and disgust, saying, There are only the two of us here. There's no need to put on a show. It's better to speak plainly. You may deceive others, but you can't hide the truth from me. Your wicked technique of capturing souls is the most malicious and sinister among even the cultivators of the demonic path. To master this skill, at least a hundred thousand living souls have died and been tortured by you or even more. Committing such heinous acts, and yet you claim not to be a practitioner of the dark path? I don't dare believe it, do you dare to say it? Maoyuo evil spirit questioned coldly. Lu Heng laughed heartily and said, What's there to be afraid of? I, Lu Heng, walk a righteous path and stand tall. I have never cultivated the dark arts. As soon as his voice fell, 
an ancient book suddenly fell out of Lu Hang's sleeve. The two large, ominous characters on the cover exuded a strong aura of evil. Demon Sutra Under the withered tree, the atmosphere suddenly froze. Chapter, 228 Air Um Even Lu Hang was a little confused when he saw Demon Sutra fall out. This tattered book actually fell out at a time like this? Was it intentional chaos? He looked at the manual on magic arts at his feet, then at the eerie Maluo evil spirit in front of him. Despite his initially righteous and imposing demeanor, he suddenly felt weak. Um I must say, this book was just something I accidentally picked up. Even though I have read the contents, I have never actually cultivated it though you believe me? Lu Heng said with a dry smile as he picked up the demon sutra at his feet. Under the withered tree, the red-haired monster clinging to Hua Feng's unconscious soul rolled its eyes and looked with disdain at the white-clad Lu Heng before it, humming from its nostrils but speaking not a word. Nevertheless, its contemptuous attitude made its meaning very clear. Lu Heng couldn't help feeling helpless, why is it that no one believes the truth these days? Lu Heng was very weary of heart. Carefully stowing away the demon sutra, Lu Heng took extra precautions this time to prevent the troublesome book from causing any trouble at a critical moment. It wouldn't be a big deal for it to accidentally fall out in front of the Maluo evil spirit, but if it fell out in front of the people in the mermaid kingdom Lu Heng's reputation would be utterly ruined. After putting away Demon Sutra, Lu Heng looked at the Maluo evil spirit in front of him, who already regarded him as one of their own, and felt somewhat speechless. He had intended to use threats and inducements, but now that the situation had suddenly changed, he was completely at a loss and unable to speak at all. This Maluo evil spirit had already identified him as a hypocritical gentleman wearing the mask of righteousness and a practitioner of the evil path. So even if Lu Heng were to use the heavenly thunder of the righteous path to suppress him, he feared that he would not be able to move this devil. Thinking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh and say, forget it. Since that's the case, I won't waste any more time with you. Let's just use the final means. After speaking, Lu Heng swept his sleeves and directly swept the Maluo evil spirit and Huafeng's soul back into the original body. This Maluo evil spirit is truly integrated with Huafeng's soul, even the Requiem seal cannot separate the two souls. Lu Heng can only think of another way. After watching the woman, who was full of evil demons, return to her soul, Lu Heng opened his mouth. Two days from now will be the day of the trial and execution on December 8th. You have two days to consider of course, I will also consider during these two days. Lu Heng smiled and said, before that, let's both take a rest. Lu Heng showed his intention to leave, but the woman didn't breathe a sigh of relief. Instead, she felt the danger approaching and looked vigilant. What what do you want to do? The woman cried out in a panic. As a practitioner of the dark arts, she was well aware of how malicious the methods of torture could be in the realm of magic. Furthermore, the white wolf in front of her not only belonged to the dark faction, but also possessed the ability to disguise itself as an honorable gentleman these deceitful demons, who are experts at concealing their true nature, are often the cruelest and most malicious of the dark world. They may have a gentle smile on their face, but their actions can be extremely cruel. If it weren't for being trapped under the withered tree and unable to escape, Maluo evil spirit would have fled in panic long ago. In front of her, Lu Heng in white smiled slightly and raised his right hand, saying, when I was studying the magic array of barriers. I discovered a divine power that can imprison demons using heavenly thunder as the pillar and drawing the ground as the cage. And after meeting you today, I was inspired once again and suddenly realized that this heavenly thunder prison not only imprisons but can also be used to kill of course, since you are currently occupying the body of my friend, I won't kill you. Since the effect of the heavenly thunder on you is so obvious, please undergo some electric therapy. I believe when we meet again in two days, you will have a change of heart. After speaking, Lu Heng didn't wait for the woman to respond, but immediately formed a magic array. Amidst a deafening roar, three blazing white heavenly thunders appeared out of thin air and viciously struck the woman. They transformed into three lightning columns that interlinked with each other, forming a heavenly thunder prison that trapped the woman within. 
Clad in white, Lu Hang stood outside the Thunder Prison, smiling as he touched the fearsome lightning column that made all beings tremble. Sparks of lightning overflowed from his fingertips. Afterwards. Sizzle. Amidst the piercing sound, the white lightning flickered. Within the prison of thunder, three columns of thunder released flickering electricity at the same time, and the surging lightning flooded the thunder cage. The woman's piercing screams were heart-wrenching and echoed. In the dazzling lightning, a figure could be vaguely seen convulsing and wailing in agony. Lu Hung. The woman's silhouette in the lightning screamed in pain and emitted a cry of resentment and hatred, you deserve to die. Outside the cage, Lu Hung laughed and said, don't worry, I will definitely outlive you. Also, don't worry about the heavenly thunder hurting my brother Hua's core. The heavenly thunder prison intermittently stops emitting lightning, giving you time to recover. When you can no longer bear it and want to leave brother Hua's body, tell me, and I will let you out for a good fight. If you refuse to leave, then you can stay in this thunder prison and enjoy the electrotherapy. Being able to constantly and almost uninterrupted be subjected to the heavenly thunder you're the first among all the evil demons from the past to the present. Anyway, I have plenty of patience to spend time with you. I hope you can hold on for a few more days and not surrender so quickly ha ha ha. Laughing loudly, Lu Hang in his white attire turned and walked outside. Under the withered tree in the sky prison, lightning flashed and the woman's figure was no longer visible. Only the mournful and agonizing cries continued to sound. Lu Hang the old demon. I am at odds with you ah. Among the stars, the malicious and mournful howl was heard even by Yu Huifeng and Xiao Ai beyond the stars. In the sea of stars, Yu Huifeng saw a portal appear in the void and the wolf god emerged. Although everything seemed normal on the surface, his heart skipped a beat. That Maluo evil spirit is an ancient demon sword, known for its ferocity, ruthlessness, with no tears or blood shed. Such a demonic entity, even when faced with death, will never whimper for mercy. Even if its soul is damaged, subjected to thousands of tortures, it still won't furrow its brow. It's truly a tough nut to crack. Yet, this bloodless, cruel, and vicious demon was now being tortured by the wolf god, wailing and screaming miserably. Although its screams didn't carry any pleas for mercy. But for such a demonic entity, being tortured to the point of wailing and screaming is practically no different from begging for mercy. What had the wolf god done to the demon inside? How could it have caused such a mournful howl to be heard from the demon? Yu Huifeng's heart was filled with shock, as well as a hint of fear. At that moment, he suddenly realized that he didn't seem to have a deep enough understanding of the wolf god. Chapter, 229 In the midst of the starry sea, Yu Huifeng's feelings were tense. Upon seeing the wolf god come out, he quickly smiled and went to greet him. Then, he subtly inquired about why the evil demon inside was howling. Lu Heng also didn't conceal his plan, and with a smile, he told them about his creation, the Heavenly Thunder Prison. After hearing this, Yu Huifeng was utterly flabbergasted. Using the most dreaded celestial thunder to torment the Maluo evil demon with continuous electrical shocks, despite the wolf god's assurance that the thunder in the Thunder Prison is not lethal and will not end the Maluo's life. For these evil demons, thunder is undoubtedly the most detested, feared, and frightening force. Using thunder to continuously electrocute evil demons how cruel. Thinking of the torture inflicted upon those evil demons and hearing the agonizing screams echoing in the starry sky, Yu Huifeng couldn't help but shudder. Generally, upright cultivators don't deliberately torture evil demons when exterminating demons and evil they rather aim to end their opponents quickly and without unnecessary pain. Torturing one's enemies is a tactic employed by those who follow the path of wickedness. Those who cultivate the right path have no thoughts of cruelty towards others. Those who have such thoughts cannot cultivate the right path. But the wolf god. As he listened to the distant wails and screams behind him, Yu Huifeng's heart was tense. He could only say that it was no wonder the wolf god was a powerful cultivator of heavenly thunder, different from the average practitioner. Heavenly thunder may be a grand and righteous force, but it is undoubtedly the power of retribution. Every time it appears, it brings the might of thunder to slaughter demons. Although the wolf god's actions are ferocious and frightening, 
they do indeed align with the thunder path he cultivates. Looking back now, the wolf god's kindness towards humans is only towards those who follow the righteous path. When facing demons, the wolf god reveals a true intent to kill, perhaps even more cruel and terrifying than the demons themselves. With these thoughts in mind, Yu Huifeng holds an ever greater respect for the wolf god. He asks, is the wolf god leaving now? Lu Heng nodded, the Maluo evil spirit has already linked with the host soul, so even I cannot separate them. Now, the only thing I can do is torture it with thunder and force it to leave voluntarily. But as for how long it will take for it to relent, that is beyond my control. Lu Heng sighed, you may go back and tell the Lord about this matter, and see if she is willing to hand over the Maluo Sword Master to me. I can take Maluo Sword Master back to Hanyu Mountain and set up a thunderous array in the mountains, using continuous electric shocks day and night to drive away the demon, forcing it to leave the host's body. Even if it can endure the pain of thunder and lightning and refuse to leave the host's body, it still cannot escape from the thunderous array. I think this may be a non-lethal way to deal with it, which can ensure that it will not rampage in the South Sea. After speaking, Lu Hang looked at Yu Huifeng beside him, smiling and said, Of course, this is just my suggestion. Whether to adopt it or not, it still depends on the Lord's thoughts. I am just a little selfish, and don't want my friend to die easily, so I just want to struggle a bit. Lu Hang's words made Yu Huifeng sigh and nod, It is human nature that Wolf God cares about his friend, and it is not wrong. Moreover, Senior Wolf God didn't take advantage of your strength to snatch people. I think Lord will also consider this. After that, the two of them didn't continue the conversation on this matter. Yu Huifeng left this region of the Starry Sea with Lu Hang and Xiao Ai, along the way they conversed about the customs and traditions of the Mermaid Kingdom in the South Sea. In the harmonious atmosphere, neither side mentioned the matter of Huifeng again. Outside the Stone Gate, the mermaid battle soldiers guarding outside escorted Lu Hang once again through the gloomy and lifeless sea, back to the mermaid kingdom. Subsequently, the news of the wolf god's return quickly spread throughout the city. People are curious, wondering where the chief minister has taken the wolf god to. In one of the courtyards, a guest from the Yoshion country in the north let out a low hum after hearing the report. Yu Huifeng has clearly taken the wolf god to the extreme hell prison Ha the South Sea deep trench that is forbidden for outsiders to enter, has now opened its doors wide for the wolf god. How grand for the wolf god's face! The middle-aged man's sarcasm made the young man next to him feel nervous. Father, are you saying that the mermaid kingdom is willing to back down? Will they really hand over the killer of our elder brother to the wolf god? Without investigating the matter? The middle-aged man looked towards the direction of the palace with a gloomy gaze. Don't worry, those who can't be released won't be, the middle-aged man said coldly. Perhaps they may have released them before, but now the city is full of rumors. Everyone is waiting to see the show and whether the typically domineering mermaid kingdom will back down. With the mermaid's stubborn temperament, under such circumstances, they will never let anyone go. A mermaid without dignity is not a real mermaid. The middle-aged man's evaluation made the young man laugh and say, it's still father's cunning plan to set the trap ahead of time. Otherwise, if we really have to negotiate for peace with the mermaid kingdom and the wolf god, the perpetrator who killed my elder brother might be released. The young man's flattery made the middle-aged man shake his head and say, it's only a move made at my discretion. The mermaid kingdom and the wolf god must have already noticed it. But even if they have noticed, it's useless, the middle-aged man said with a cold smile, this is a clever plan. Once the situation develops, even if both the mermaid kingdom and the wolf god on land realize it, they cannot change it. We only need to keep an eye on the mermaids, to prevent them from finding a scapegoat to die. The rest let's wait until the day after tomorrow to enjoy the show. The middle-aged man whispered darkly while the young man beside him nodded repeatedly. Meanwhile, inside the court of the mermaid kingdom, Yu Haling received the chief minister's report and learned everything that had happened to the wolf god in the extreme hell prison. After hearing it, Yu Haling's eyebrows furrowed slightly. There are actually such secrets in the extreme hell prison it seems that we owe the wolf god a debt of gratitude. Yu Huifeng stood by, silent and attentive. Yu Haling thought for a moment and said, the wolf god's proposal is indeed a good one. 
if he could really take control of the heavenly thunder prison and constantly electrocute the Maluo evil spirit, even if he can't force it to leave, he can restrain this demon. Just. Yu Haling shook her head and said, this method is still not reliable. If the demon escapes, even if it's a remote possibility, we will miss this rare opportunity to eliminate the devil in 10,000 years I cannot agree to the wolf god's proposal. But we can repay the wolf god's guidance elsewhere. Yu Haling said, didn't the wolf god want to go to the extreme hell prison to find the deep ice white lotus? I happen to have one in my collection. You can take this one and offer it to the wolf god as a token of our gratitude. Hearing Lord's decision, Yu Huifeng smiled and said, Actually, Lord doesn't need to worry about the Maluo evil sword escaping. Under Yu Haling's surprised gaze, Yu Huifeng smiled and said, If we hand over the Maluo sword master to the wolf god, which not only shows respect to the wolf god but also repays his guidance. If the wolf god can handle the Maluo evil sword perfectly afterwards, then this matter will be perfectly resolved. To take a step back, even if the Maluo evil sword truly escaped from the wolf god Ha in fact, it would be a good thing for us. Chapter, 230 Yu Huifeng's words made Yu Haling stunned for a moment, then she suddenly realized. Make sense haha Yu Haling slapped her forehead, laughing and saying, the importance of the Maluo evil sword to me and the mermaid kingdom is now known to the wolf god. If the Maluo evil spirit really escapes from his hands, then he will owe a huge favor to our mermaid kingdom even if the Maluo evil spirit escapes, it will be difficult to threaten us in a short time. Even if there is a threat to us, logically and morally, the wolf god will surely come to help well, if something really happens, not only the wolf god, but also his group of friends will come to help. Even though facing such a scenario, the Maluo evil spirit will hardly harm my beloved mermaid kingdom. However, we have made friends with the wolf god through this, and in the future, if the mermaid kingdom encounters danger, the wolf god will surely not sit idly by. Yu Haling said, in that case, selling a favor to the wolf god and letting him take away his friend would have a hundred benefits and no harm to my mermaid kingdom. After realizing this, Yu Haling nodded repeatedly, and her thoughts instantly expanded. Although we can release him, how to release him requires careful consideration. Yu Haling's brow furrowed again, nowadays, the public opinion in the city is strange, and people from all over the world are waiting to see our show. If I release Maluo Swordmaster too easily, the entire mermaid kingdom's face will be lost. As she spoke, Yu Haling's anger surged again, and her eyes turned icy cold. It's always those group of rats who are causing trouble in secret humph. King Jinbei of the Yoshiong country. I will remember that. With a cold look in her eyes, Yu Haling paused and turned to the chief minister standing beside her, and said, let's do this. You go and ask the wolf god later to see if he is willing to accept our proposal. Yu Haling said, Miss Huafeng killed someone in the mermaid kingdom. Morally and ethically, we cannot sit idly by. But if we simply execute her, it would be too cruel. However, if we directly release her, we cannot explain ourselves to the families of those victims. In such a dilemma, the only thing I, the leader of the mermaid kingdom, can do is to hold a public trial in the future. Inviting the relatives and friends of both parties, as well as the celebrities above the South Sea, to participate in the judgment. As long as the wolf god can convince the public to accept his proposal, then I, the mermaid kingdom, will release the person immediately, without any further discussion. Lord's plan made Yu Huifeng slightly astonished. Um he looked at the Lord in front of him somewhat speechless, completely unexpected that the Lord would come up with such an idea, isn't this just putting all the pressure on the wolf god? Yu Haling clicked her tongue and said, don't worry, the wolf god understands my intentions. I have no reason to deal with those troublesome mice lurking in the shadows, but now that I have brought them to light and put them against the wolf god, the wolf god will naturally take care of them. Speaking of this, Yu Haling sneered, a mere royal family from Yoshion country dares to be presumptuous in Mermaid Kingdom this time they must suffer a lot. At the very least, they must lose face for me. They want to use scheming and trickery to plot against my mermaid clan. They should weigh their own capabilities first. Yu Haling openly seeks revenge and abuses power for personal gain, leaving the chief minister somewhat speechless. However, he had to admit that Lord's plan, 
while seeming deliberately retaliatory, was an excellent solution. By doing so, the pressure was shifted to the group of mischievous mice. If the wolf god really took away Maluo's sword master, others would not say that the mermaid kingdom was afraid of the wolf god, but would curse the ineffective family and friends of the dead who dare not even avenge their own loved ones. As a result, both the mermaid kingdom and the wolf god were excluded. Thinking of this, Yu Huifeng nodded and said, I will go to pay respects to the wolf god. After settling on the plan of action, Yu Huifeng could finally breathe a sigh of relief. Although the mermaid kingdom boasts a profound foundation, it is not weak when fighting against the wolf god. However, it may harm the foundation of the country. Therefore, if this matter can be resolved peacefully, it would be excellent. With a relaxed mood, Yu Huifeng left Lord's side and went to Lord's inner library to take the deep ice white lotus that Lord had collected. Just as Yu Huifeng stepped into Lord's inner library, a woman known to Lu Heng pushed open the door and walked into the villa where he was located. Miss Tsai, Yu. Looking at the weak woman in front of him, Lu Heng was slightly surprised. Although he knew that Lian Tsai was injured during the rampage of the Maluo evil spirit, he didn't expect the injury to be so serious. Although it appeared that there was nothing wrong on the surface, in reality, her soul was severely damaged. The demon woman in front of him now had a pale complexion and lacked the radiance of their first meeting. Lu Heng quickly stood up to greet her, but as soon as Lian Tsai entered the courtyard, she knelt down and kowtowed deeply to Lu Heng. I hereby express my gratitude to the wolf god's care. Seeing this scene, Lu Heng was speechless and quickly had Xiao Ai help the woman who was staggering even while walking. He said, What are you doing? If it's for Brother Hua, there's no need to do this. Lu Heng said, Brother Hua is not only your lover, but also my good friend. As he is in trouble, and I cannot just sit back and do nothing. You don't have to go through all this trouble. With Xiao Ai's help, Lian Tsai squeezed a bitter smile and said, I know, but still grateful to you. It is Hua Feng's fortune that he is taken care of by the senior. As she spoke, Lian Tsai sighed deeply and said, I heard that you went to the extreme hell prison, so I hurried over. Lu Heng nodded and said, I can tell Xiao Ai, quickly help Miss Tsai sit down and rest. Looking at the woman who came dragging her half-dead body, Lu Heng had a headache. Lian Tsai's appearance was indeed on the verge of death at any time. With such serious injuries, she still wouldn't rest. However, Lu Heng also knew that Lian Tsai was concerned about Hua Feng's situation, so he detailed his encounter with Hua Feng in the extreme hell prison before Lian Tsai could ask. Make Lian Tsai understand the current situation. And Lian Tsai didn't interrupt, weakly sitting on a stone bench, leaning on Xiao Ai, and only when Lu Heng finished speaking did the demon woman speak slowly. I see Tsai must once again thank the wolf god for his great kindness, but... Lian Tsai hesitated for a moment, struggling with her expression. But in the end, she said the words in her heart, since it has come to this, Tsai wants to ask the wolf god to stop and let Hua Feng go on his own. Saying these words almost depleted all of Lian Tsai's strength. After speaking, she closed her eyes in pain and whispered, The wolf god has already done enough for him. If we can't do anything, let it go. If you get into a conflict with the mermaid kingdom, no matter what the outcome is, I think Hua Feng will never be at peace in his heart. Lian Tsai's tone was filled with painful struggle as she said, The mermaid kingdom has an ancient legacy. The wolf god, even if you were to triumph over it, the cost would be immense. Chapter 231 In the courtyard, Lian Tsai's words caused Lu Heng to directly pause for a moment. Um, he had thought that Lian Tsai came to ask him to save someone. But the result is the opposite. The woman before her sincerely wanted to ask Lu Heng to stop not wanting him to get into a real conflict with the infamous mermaid kingdom of the South Sea. Lian Tsai knew that the wolf god was a powerful figure in ancient times. However, she was aware that the mermaid kingdom was an ancient inheritance with various mysterious and terrifying aspects, far from an ordinary small country. Not to mention the ancient demon by Fong that once perished within the mermaid kingdom. Even the notorious and fearsome Candle Dragon never dared to cause chaos in the South Sea and hesitated to venture near the extreme depths of the Mermaid Kingdom. 
If the wolf god were to truly oppose the mermaid kingdom, even if victorious, they would most likely pay a great price. Moreover, according to the various secret information collected from one Xian Gu, the mermaid kingdom is located in the South Sea and possesses various mystical formations, weapons, and ancient powers. If all of these were to be used, the wolf god would likely not be able to escape. Xi and Huafeng had already received great favor and kindness from the wolf god before. How could she possibly let the wolf god risk his life for Huafeng again? Huafeng in the extreme hell prison is unaware of the situation in the mermaid kingdom, which makes her hope for help from the wolf god. If she knew how terrible the mermaid kingdom was, she would certainly persuade the wolf god to stop. Lien Tsai's mood is bitter, but her heart is unwavering in wanting to persuade the wolf god to stop. Seeing the woman's determined appearance before him, Lu Heng knew that she was not playing hard to get, but sincerely wanted Lu Heng to stop. But. In the courtyard, Lu Heng remained silent for a moment, then finally shook his head helplessly and said. That I cannot promise. Lu Heng said, I understand Miss Tsai's intentions, but how can I give up when there is still a glimmer of hope for Brother Hu Feng's survival? If I were to give up now, Lu Heng would be plagued with everlasting regret. Nonetheless, attempting what needs to be done is always essential. Even if I am limited in power and cannot rescue Brother Hua, at the very least, I tried my best today and won't have any regrets in the future. Lu Heng's words indicated that he was already resolved to save Hua Feng. Lien Tsai was both moved and frightened as she heard his words, but the mermaid kingdom. Lu Heng interrupted her with a smile and said, Rest assured, although the mermaid kingdom is formidable, no one can stop me, Lu Heng, if I am determined to go. Holding the requiem seal, Lu Heng had the confidence to proceed. As long as he wished to depart, no one in this world could keep him back. Moreover, with the requiem seal and the heavenly thunder sword, the result of the fight is still unknown if planned properly. Lu Heng is very confident in the destructive power of the heavenly thunder sword. He smiled and said, Moreover, Miss Tsai is now pregnant with Brother Hua's blood. If her child loses his father just after birth, how sad it would be for the sake of the child in Tsai's womb, Lu Heng must take a chance and can't just sit and watch Brother Hua being executed by the mermaid. Lu Heng's words caused Lian Tsai's face to blush slightly. Previously, she could still conceal the fetus in her abdomen with her cultivation, but now, severely injured and on the brink of death, she can no longer hide it. The little life in her womb can be easily detected by any cultivator with a single glance. Confronted with the wolf god's ridicule, she was slightly embarrassed. After all, it was the wolf god who witnessed her saying to Huafeng, I'll get rid of what you left in my body. Now that she's pregnant, isn't she exposing the fact that she didn't keep her word? Seeing Lien Tsai being taken aback by the word fetus so embarrassed that she couldn't even speak, Lu Heng was about to change the subject when suddenly the voices of the Wu family brothers were heard outside the door. Reporting to the wolf god, Master Yu Huifeng is here. The Wu family brothers' loud announcement surprised Lu Heng, why is this master you here again? Weren't you just separated? Curiously, Lu Heng said, Please let Master Yu come in. Then, the gate of the small courtyard was opened again, and Chief Minister Yu Huifeng appeared in Lu Heng's sight with a narrow gift box. I have met the wolf god Oh. Miss Lien Tsai is also here. Ha huh, that just saved me a trip. Yu Huifeng walked in with a kind smile that made Lien Tsai slightly surprised. This chief minister is so respectful to the wolf god. This is quite different from the rumors circulating in the city. Wasn't it said that the wolf god and the mermaid kingdom are at loggerheads with each other, mutually hostile? How come chief minister Master Yu has such an amicable attitude? Lien Tsai was shocked in her heart, but didn't show it on the surface, instead weakly smiling and saying, please forgive Tsai for not being able to get up, Master Yu. Yu Huifeng quickly waved his hand and said, you are being too polite, you are a patient now, you should rest properly, no need for formalities. After speaking, Yu Huifeng turned to the wolf god. He knew that the wolf god was straightforward and disliked formalities, so he smiled and went straight to the point. I, Yu Huifeng, have come here on behalf of our lord to present the deep ice white lotus from our lord's collection as a token of gratitude for the guidance given by the wolf god. 
Saying so, Yu Huifeng opened the gift box and showed everyone the deep ice white lotus inside. Lu Heng was somewhat surprised, but still smiled and accepted the gift. Thank you for this generous gift from your lord, for I am in need of this treasure at present. After accepting the gift, Lu Heng looked toward Yu Huifeng, waiting for what was to come next. The chief minister's swift return undoubtedly suggests that there must be other messages to convey, rather than just presenting a single deep ice white lotus. Yu Huifeng didn't keep Lu Heng waiting for long, but spoke with a smile. Before coming here, the Lord asked me to convey a message to the wolf god that the proposal is feasible. However, the mermaid kingdom is currently under intense scrutiny and cannot release the captives directly without accounting for the victims' families. Thus, the Lord has devised a new plan of action and hopes the wolf god is aware of it. Afterwards, Yu Huifeng provided a detailed description of the Lord's plan to the wolf god and Lian Sai in the courtyard. Lu Heng was impressed with the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom's decisive actions. Upon hearing Yi Huifeng's report, the Lord quickly formulated a plan to deal with the issue. While Lian Sai stood by listening to Yu Huifeng's account, she couldn't help but become increasingly shocked as she listened. Finally, her eyes grew so wide with disbelief that she stared in amazement at the wolf god. She found it almost impossible to trust her own eyes and ears. The mermaid kingdom, which was always known for their overbearing and face-saving behavior, was now willing to pay the price of a direct attack against the ancient demon because of face-saving purposes. How can it be that they would willingly step back in deference to the wolf god? Are these still the same mermaids who would rather die than lose face? Is the wolf god's face really so great that even the mermaid kingdom is willing to compromise and make concessions? This. If this matter is spoken out, I'm afraid no one in the world will believe it. Moreover, this master you even said thank you for the guidance of the wolf god did the wolf god guide them in any way. That this group of mermaids would offer such precious treasures as the deep ice white lotus and make concessions to express their gratitude. Lu Heng didn't mention the reason for the star sea inheritance, and Lian Sai, who didn't know the karma, was directly stunned. In a state of unbelievable shock. To be able to give guidance to this group of face-saving mermaids and still make them willing to compromise and make concessions how great a gesture of goodwill that must be. The guidance of the wolf god is definitely not an ordinary matter. Unfortunately, with such a significant matter, it is unlikely that outsiders will ever know. Chapter, 232 In the courtyard, Lien Tsai was overwhelmed with a deep sense of shock and confusion. The mermaid kingdom had unexpectedly taken the initiative to retreat and even offered to release their prisoner. This good news came too suddenly and strangely, causing Lien Tsai to feel dizzy and disoriented. It felt like a dream. Beside her, Lu Heng and Yu Huifeng had a detailed discussion on how to handle this matter. When Yu Huifeng left, the chief minister thought for a moment and decided to remind them of something. Among this group of people, apart from King Jinbei Su Lai from the Yoshiung country in the north, the rest are not worth mentioning. However, even this King Jinbei Su Lai cannot be considered a major threat. The only one to be worried about is a rumored senior elder. Yu Huifeng sighed and said, among the six people killed by Ma Yuo sword master together with Mu Yepeng, there was a person named Su Lin, who was the eldest son of King Jinbei Su Lai. As the eldest son, Su Lin had a great reputation at a young age. He was a renowned young hero and a genius in cultivation in the north. At the age of seven, he opened the heavenly door, at the age of thirteen, he refined the five chi in his chest, and at the age of seventeen, he fought against demons, and was forced to fall into the demon valley. When he was on the verge of death, he met a senior elder. The senior elder, moved by his talent and ability, took Su Lin in and imparted to him all of his lifelong teachings. Since then, Su Lin's cultivation progressed rapidly. At the age of less than twenty, he had refined the five energies in his chest and condensed the three flowers on top, stepping into the realm of true cultivation on the wonderful path. Even the elder cultivator Mu Yepeng, who was known as a ruffian, was on equal footing with him and his future was limitless. However, this time, he died tragically at the hands of Ma Yuo's sword master, died young. His father, King Jinbei, has now come to the mermaid kingdom and vowed to avenge his eldest son. 
And the old senior who was rumored to have accepted Su Lin as his disciple may now be in the city as well. Yu Huifeng sighed and said, For the wolf god, this legendary old senior may be a wary enemy. According to legend, although this old senior doesn't reveal his holiness in public, his cultivation is profound and his various secret techniques are as mysterious as those of the ancient great masters. When Su Lin conversed with others, he candidly declared without hesitation that his mentor was a pinnacle existence in the world, nearly invincible. Yu Huifeng spoke with a sigh, while Lu Heng nodded in surprise. Moreover, if this old ascetic cultivator is truly so formidable, perhaps I can ask for his assistance and together we can force out the Maoyuo evil spirit. After all, the Maoyuo evil spirit is his slain disciple's enemy, and if I ask for his help, he will surely accept it gladly. Lu Heng laughed and spoke optimistically, appearing very cheerful. Yu Huifeng neither agreed nor disagreed, and after bidding farewell, he went to inform the other parties involved. Soon, the Mermaid Kingdom was going to hold a public trial on December 8. Inviting famous elders from the South Sea as well as relatives and friends of the parties involved to judge the news of the murder case rapidly spread within the capital. The cultivators who received this news were all delighted. Everyone had seen the changes in public opinion in the city before. And which cultivator who was qualified to participate in the treasure conference was not a shrewd person. People noticed all the little actions of King Zhenbei's family and were all waiting to see Mermaid's joke. Unexpectedly, the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom didn't play by the rules and, with a flick of his hand, transferred all the pressure to King Zhenbei, who had been constantly fidgeting. The Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom shifted effortlessly and not only removed themselves but also took advantage to trick King Zhenbei Su Lai. What an incredible being Hanyu Mountain's wolf god is. The being who can stir up the intervention of immortal kingdoms Lord Luo Yujun and Han Hai Department's priestly Pa. And is said to have slain the ancient demon Urba god man who had rampaged in the South Sea for years can a mere King Zhenbei provoke such a being? It is obvious that this trial is making things difficult for Su Lai. If Su Lai were to rise up in rebellion, he would have to face three parties, the Wolf God, the Li tribe's Han Hai Department, and the Immortal Kingdom, which might not be in his favor. After the details of the Maoyuo Sword Master incident were fully disclosed, everyone knew that the killer was the Maoyuo evil spirit, not the body controlled by Maoyuo. Logically speaking, there is no reason to involve Miss Huifeng, who is controlled by Maoyuo. After all, Miss Huifeng, who is a beauty of the South Sea, is also a victim. But Su Lai vowed before to slew the vile servant who killed his son and make Miss Huifeng bleed to death for his son's demise. If he surrenders and runs away, King Zhenbei of the Yoshiong country will become a complete joke, after such a high-profile declaration of revenge. Within the city, public opinion has changed again due to the new information released by the Mermaid Kingdom. The cultivators who were initially waiting to see the mermaid's joke are now all curious about how King Zhenbei Su Lai will respond. The courtyard where King Zhenbei Su Lai reside has also welcomed groups of visitors. These visitors all have one identity, their loved ones are one of Mu Yeping's six companions. Previously, when King Zhenbei acted, he contacted and invited these fellow Taoists for help. Now that the situation has suddenly changed, everyone has come to seek King Jinbei's assistance once again. After all, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is so imposing that no one wants to confront him face to face especially when they are in the wrong. Originally, they planned to instigate a conflict between the mermaid kingdom and the wolf god, and assist their own side in the process. However, they didn't expect that the mermaid kingdom would change its stubborn ways and voluntarily withdraw from the situation. Thus, the group of people who were rushing forward suddenly realized in astonishment that they were now face to face with the wolf god. On this afternoon, King Zhenbei's courtyards were lively with a countless number of visitors. It was not until nightfall that numerous shining jellyfishes floated above the city, illuminating the roads of the city with their eerie blue light. King Zhenbei finally saw off the last visitor. He returned to the small courtyard with a gloomy expression on his face. At this moment, Soa Luo, the second son who had been following him all along, couldn't help but speak up, Father, do we really have to confront the wolf god face to face? Soa Luo's face was full of concern. Upon hearing his youngest son's words, Su Lai, who had been in a depressed mood all day, glared at him fiercely and scolded, 
do you want your older brother to die in vain? Do you want me to watch as the culprit who killed him gets away with it? That woman called Huafong, and that demon woman from the Luan Xi in Gumf. This whole thing was caused by those two demon women. Your older brother was killed by them. Su Lai angrily scolded, as Linner's younger brother, you don't even want to avenge your elder brother. You only care about preserving yourself. Are you afraid of offending the god of Hanyu Mountain? Do you, a soft bone like you, dare to call yourself Su Lai's son? Chapter, 233 Su Lai launched into a vehement verbal attack, leaving Su Luo dumbfounded. Uh, he wanted to explain, but seeing his father's enraged expression, he dared not speak. He was not the eldest brother, didn't possess exceptional talent, nor was he a well-known young talent in the area. He had never brought glory to his father. Faced with his father's anger, the only thing he could do was hang his head and obediently listen to the scolding. After Su Lai scolded him, his emotions slightly eased. Gazing towards the direction of the Mermaid Kingdom's court, Su Lai sneered coldly, that Hanyu Mountain Wolf God is only acting so arrogant because he knows this is not the territory of our Yoshion country. If he were in our country, would we allow him to behave recklessly? This matter is entirely unjustifiable, even if they talk about it until the end of time. It was his friend who caused the death of my son, yet now he wants to take away the demon woman possessed by the evil demon with just a few casual words. He doesn't plan to bring the killer to justice. What a joke! Other people may fear him, but not I, Su Lai. If he has the ability, let him kill me in front of the whole world, so that everyone can see the true selfish and tyrannical face of this so-called noble wolf god, who is willing to sacrifice everything for his friend. Su Lai said fiercely, If I die, our ancestors will never sit idly by. The wolf god is arrogant and domineering, but our Su family is not inferior either. Su Lai's words made Su Luo stunned for a moment, thinking of a legend in the family. Could it bet had our Su family really has an ancient ancestor who lived through the ages? Su Luo was somewhat excited. Su Lai glanced at him, about to speak, but the door of the small courtyard suddenly opened. The faint scent of peach blossoms drifted into the courtyard. Unusually, peach blossoms fell into the water illuminated by jellyfish in the sea, and fell by the father and son. Meanwhile, the laughter of an old man was heard outside the door. That rotten old man from your Sioux family? Ha 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 his old bones are almost halfway into the soil, and you still expect him to come out of retirement to avenge you. He probably won't even reach the Hanyu mountain before his bones fall apart ha ha ha. At the instant the old man's voice sounded, Su Luo was startled and quickly protected himself in front of his father, looking at the old man outside in horror. Who are you? Su Luo asked in a stern voice. How dare you break into King Jinbei's residence? However, Su Luo's words were cut short as his father behind him slapped him in the face, sending him three meters away. Su Luo, covering his swollen face, stood up dazedly and heard his father's angry reproach. This is Elder Tao. Your brother's master Ebel. How dare you act recklessly? Su Lai's furious rebuke left Su Luo stunned. He hurriedly knocked heavily on the door, apologizing loudly I didn't know that the senior was visiting. Please forgive me. Su Luo knocked his head heavily, but didn't dare to look at the senior's face. The old man walking outside the door laughed, saying, It's all right, no need to apologize. I am not petty-minded. Su Lai, you old boy, you really didn't take care of your son. You slapped him and sent him flying three meters away, didn't you feel sorry? The old man's laughter relieved Su Lai, and he hurriedly said, I was afraid that this rebel had offended the senior, so he was momentarily agitated. Elder Tao smiled as he approached the father and son, sitting down without hesitation, as if he were lounging in his own backyard, relaxed and at ease. He said, all right, I didn't come here to watch you beat your son. If you like to beat him, wait until I leave before you do it again. This time I came to inform you of something important, so listen carefully. Su Lai quickly stood up straight and respectfully saluted when he heard Elder Tao's words. Whatever you command, senior. Seeing Su Lai's respectful demeanor, Elder Tao nodded in satisfaction and said, It's good that you understand so I didn't make the trip in vain for my recently deceased disciple. 
Elder Tao said, I believe you have guessed why I am here. Su Lin was my only disciple, also the proudest one. Now, he died under the hands of Maoyuo evil spirit without any clear reason. How can I let this go easily? The wolf god, arrogantly believing in his advanced cultivation, attempted to use his power to oppress others and protect his friends. He is truly domineering and despicable. Now that the mermaid kingdom doesn't intervene in this matter, it is up to me, an old man, to handle it. You can speak directly at the public trial two days later, and don't be afraid of that old wolf. If he is willing to debate properly, then you can discuss the matter with him. If he is desperate and attempts to use violence when he cannot refute your argument, don't be afraid, for I, an old monster, am here. There is no need for you to trouble that old man of yours. Even with me here, I guarantee that you won't be bullied by that old wolf. Elder Tao said resolutely and determinately, making Su Lai overjoyed. If there were senior cultivators to help, then we juniors would not fear the god of Hanyu Mountain. It's just that. After hesitating for a moment, Su Lai asked again, Do you know the origins and details of the Hanyu Mountain Wolf God, Senior? If you do, we can prepare in advance. Elder Tao shook her head and said, As for the origins and details of this old wolf, I don't know. But with the vastness of the world, it's not surprising that some ancient powers who survived the earthly catastrophe still exist. I have encountered some of these ancient powers myself. Although they do have extraordinary abilities, it doesn't mean that they are all powerful. The only concern is that this old wolf seems to have some relationship with the Candle Dragon. The Wuchi country that came to help him is a vassal of the Candle Dragon and has always been running errands for him. But now they are helping this old wolf ha. Huh? Elder Tao laughed and, seeing the fear in Su Lai's eyes when he heard the name of the Candle Dragon, said, What are you afraid of? Just one Candle Dragon and you're scared. Elder Tao shook her head and said, The Candle Dragon has also fought me before. We fought to a draw and it was not as terrible as the rumors say. You have all demonized the Candle Dragon and everyone is frightened at its mention. It is truly ridiculous. Don't even mention that Old Wolf is not the Candle Dragon. Even if he truly were, I would still be able to protect you. Confidently promised Elder Tao. The information he revealed immediately pleased Su Lai. The elderly senior before his eyes was his eldest son's master, but he had only seen him a few times. Although Su Lin always said that his master was a peak cultivator with an invincible appearance, Su Lai had never had a deep understanding, and this always puzzled him. Now he only just found out that Su Lin's master is not even afraid of Candle Dragon, an elder of the highest level of demon with such great help, how can the wolf god still be arrogant? He will definitely seek revenge for his oldest son's grudge this time. Su Lai clenched his fist, his eyes filled with excitement. Su Lin, watch closely, I will definitely avenge you. With your master's help now, the wolf god can no longer act arrogantly. The two demon women who caused your death, I must kill them. I will never let the culprit who killed you escape freely. Chapter, 234 December 8, clear, with bright sunshine. At the southernmost edge of the world, on the only island in the extreme hell black water, the extreme hell island, is now hosting a grand event that occurs once in twelve years. The treasure conference which was held by the mermaid kingdom. During the previous treasure conferences, this place was always bustling with prominent figures from various places who were invited to attend, and display their treasures to each other. If there is a top-level treasure, the mermaid kingdom is often willing to pay a high price to buy it. Later on, with the expansion of scale and fame, not only the South Sea cultivators but also many cultivators from all corners of the world would come from far and wide to attend this grand event. By now, the treasure conference had already become a stage for making oneself renowned. Countless ambitious cultivators would come to participate, not only to broaden their horizons, but also to make a name for themselves and spread their reputation far and wide. On the eighth day of December, those who were eligible to come to the extreme Hell Island and participate in this event were definitely not small roles, and must have some fame. Even many young cultivators with low cultivation levels would surely have their senior masters by their side. On this day, the South Sea Deep Trench Island was bustling with cultivators of various identities and skill levels. Including young talents, charming beauties, 
wise sages, and renowned masters, making it the top cultivator gathering in the South Sea. However, the atmosphere of this year's treasure conference was different from previous years. Since a sudden and vicious murder case occurred a few days before the treasure conference, the normally bustling mermaid kingdom had a strange atmosphere. Subsequently, the arrival of the killer's relatives and the deceased's relatives made the already complicated situation even more oppressive and gloomy. Nowadays, with the fermentation of public opinion, the focus of the cultivators has already shifted. The young talents who had previously made some reputation are now lying low. Recently, the beautiful and famous woman, who outshone her peers, followed her mentor closely and was reluctant to show up frequently. All gazes and looks were directed towards the public trial held today, and the follow-up of this matter. Each of the three parties involved in the incident is formidable when taken individually. However, now that all three parties have gathered together and are facing off against each other, the excitement and liveliness far surpass what can be found at the treasure conference. Therefore, even though this year's treasure conference is no less splendid than previous years, the atmosphere is not as lively as it used to be. The cultivators on the island exchange pleasantries, participate in various games hosted by the mermaids, and appreciate treasures from all corners of the world, but everyone seems absent-minded. All are waiting for the end of the trial on the sharp peak of the island's rear, eager to see how the situation will develop. And on the southern side of extreme Hell Island, which everyone was silently paying attention to, a bald and huge rocky mountain stood by the sea. This rocky mountain was made entirely of gigantic stones, without a speck of soil visible on it. The mountain looked less like a mountain and more like a terrifying pillar that rose straight up and down, equal in width from top to bottom. The pillar reached a height closer to a thousand zhang, and the view was vast, with a roaring gale. In the past, it was the venue for the treasure conference's final secret treasure showcase. But now, this place has become the execution ground for criminals. At the top of the towering pillar, there is a very broad platform. Mermaids have built a magnificent palace here, with a sweeping view. While in the palace, one can overlook the junction of the South Sea water and the extreme hell black water. It allows one to better empathize with the cold and evil atmosphere of the extreme hell black water that is right in front of them. In the center of the magnificent palace lies an open air square. The South Sea's notorious Maluo sword master, Miss Huifeng, who has recently caused a stir, is currently being held captive here. However, outsiders are unable to see his true appearance. This is because a translucent glowing sphere is suspended nine meters above the ground. Ms. Hua Feng is inside the sphere. Ms. Hua Feng's figure cannot be seen. Instead, what appears in the sphere before everyone is a prison made up of three heavenly thunder constructs. Within the heavenly thunder prison, lightning flashes incessantly and a woman's painfully mournful screams can be heard. As if she were enduring the cruelest punishment known to mankind, the piercing screams make one's scalp tingle. All those who entered the palace and witnessed this scene were struck dumb. The Han Hai department priest, the two brothers from the Wu family, the immortal kingdom's leader Luo Yujun, the two Praetorian guards accompanying Luo Yujun, and even King Xinbei Su Lai. And the rest of the entourage traveling with King Xinbei, all look stunned for a moment upon seeing the lightning within the ball of light and hearing the woman's desperate cries. Because the content the woman was screaming in agony. Lu Hung, you old devil. I vow to oppose you. Lu Hung, you old scoundrel. Let me out and face me in combat. Ah! The demon with the surname Lu. You have completely lost your conscience. The desperate and mournful cry of Maluo Swordmaster leads to a disturbing fact, is the Thunder Prison, which tortures the prisoner, established by the Wolf God, who is rumored to be gentle and modest like Jade. Can a righteous cultivator employ such brutal methods? While listening to the pitiful screams of the women inside the prison and sensing their despair, King Jinbei cannot help but feel a chill in his heart, even though he came with resentment. Even though he only wants to kill the two demon women who killed his child and give them a taste of their own medicine, he never thought of torturing them. Despite being the friend of the demon woman, the wolf god came from far away to seek justice for his deceased friend. But still employs such ruthless methods even though the one being tortured right now is the Maluo evil spirit instead of his friend, it is still the body of that demon woman that is being tortured. Behind King Jinbei, 
the accompanying group of people looked at each other and listened to the screams coming from the nearby light bulb. The people who came in angrily and wanted to seek justice were now stunned by the sudden change in atmosphere. The screams of the demon woman are so terrifying. For cultivators, it is easy to sense the emotions and thoughts of others. The demon woman is now tormented, with no energy to conceal her inner feelings. Therefore, the desperate pain the woman inside the light sphere feels when tortured is felt by cultivators without any cover-up. The sense of empathy is very strong. Adding to that is the fear-inspiring power of thunder that comes through the light sphere and makes cultivators afraid and in awe. They also think about facing the mysterious wolf god who has set up such a prison, and how the wolf god could show no mercy even to old friends, let alone his opponents. With all these factors combined, the screams of the demon woman gave everyone a chilling feeling of empathy, like a funeral bell constantly reminding them. The next person you are about to provoke is none other than the immensely fearsome deity known as the Wolf God. Chapter, 235 Within the magnificent and colossal palace, there were incessant wails that made one's scalp tingle. Meanwhile, inside the Grand Palace, the Mermaid Kingdom had already arranged everything in preparation for the guests' arrival. Apart from the parties concerned, some renowned cultivators from the South Sea were also present for the public trial. For example, the white mist hermit who had been cultivating for 600 years and had a youthful appearance despite his white hair. There was also the South Sea demon, Hua Jiuxiao, who had a cultivation of 2000 years and was somewhat famous among the demon race. The little-known Wuchi country lord, Wenren Bumi, had great reputation. The legendary demon the great sage of Fu Fong, who had an ancient divine sword. Fire-hating country's lord, Wu Ergong, whose fire manipulation skills surpass all others in the South Sea. Priest Li Pu from the Li tribe's Hanhai department and the famous Wu family brothers. The arrival of many experienced predecessors was both a witness and a demonstration of the Mermaid Kingdom's stance. This trial is impartial for the Mermaid Kingdom. Soon, everyone took their seats as Yu Hailing, the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom, emerged. The Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom was a beautiful woman. Although all mermaids were extremely graceful regardless of gender, Yu Hailing's beauty surpassed that of ordinary mermaids. Moreover, her aura and posture were awe-inspiring with every move she made. As the Lord, she had to personally preside over this public trial to show respect. However, when Yu Hailing sat down, her gaze swept around the palace and she was slightly taken aback where was the wolf god? Why was he absent? Yu Hailing looked towards the chief minister on the side. Yu Huifeng was also surprised by this and he walked over to the Hanhai department to exchange a few whispered words before returning to Yu Hailing's side and speaking softly. Before setting out, the wolf god's old acquaintance suddenly came to visit, so he had to be absent temporarily and would arrive later. The chief minister's response piqued Yu Hailing's curiosity. In such a critical moment, to be absent because of a friend's visit? The wolf god's friend must have quite a reputation. Moreover, what kind of existence could be worthy of being called a friend by the wolf god? Yu Hailing sighed in her heart, looked at the King Jinbei group again, a coldness flickered in her eyes, and then signaled the chief minister to begin. Although the wolf god's absence was shocking, today's public trial was not a martial arts arena where strength prevails, and the wolf god's absence has little effect. Uwan Xinge's Lian Tsai is the most indispensable relative of Miss Huafeng's side, so Lian Tsai's presence is enough. With the announcement of the chief minister, the atmosphere in the palace, which was previously talking in a low voice, suddenly became solemn, and people stopped talking and looked up at the chief minister. The foremost aspect of the public trial, beyond the mere formality of presenting evidence and detailing the karma of this matter, is to convict the murderer. Above the South Sea lies a solitary island surrounded by extreme depths. Even in the thriving and bustling extreme hell island of today, there exist secluded and peaceful corners. Positioned atop a precipice, Lu Hang and a grey-robed old ascetic cultivator faced each other, situated on an island amidst a bustling city, yet detached from worldly clamor. In this remote corner, seldom visited by humans, there is no one to disturb. Below the cliff lies the pitch-black and cold extreme hell black water. Unlike the turbulent and surging waters of the South Sea, the extreme hell black water is calm and waveless, 
as if it were a transparent mirror without a ripple on its surface. Inside the black water, the aura of gloom is thick. Even those standing above the cliff can feel the chilling coldness that shakes the soul. Thus, although this place has a broad view, no one is willing to come here. People with low cultivation levels may faint even before they reach the edge of the cliff. The Tongtian Pillar, which serves as the venue for public trials, stands not far from the cliff on the side, close to the sheer cliff of the extreme hell black water. Lu Hang and the old cultivator sat here, able to clearly see the mermaid guarding below that stone pillar. Old ascetic cultivator Jiu Mia laughed and said with a smile after looking at the bustling scene over there from afar, Friend Lu Hang, you have caused quite a stir on this trip south it's quite contrary to your usual style. Lu Hang sighed helplessly and said, The tree desires tranquility but the wind will not subside I initially wanted to bring my little friend Huafong to the South Sea to seek medical treatment. As well as to observe the local customs of the South Sea, relax and enjoy the leisurely days of swimming in the mountains and lakes. But as soon as we arrived at the South Sea, troubles arose one after another. First it was the Urba God Man, and then the Maluo Evil Spirit Sai I am exhausted from running around, let alone enjoy a leisurely holiday. It's really helpless. Lu Heng poured out his troubles to the old ascetic cultivator. Jiu Mia listened and laughed heartily, saying, My friend, don't be distressed. If we're talking about being pitiful, your little friend Huafong is the real pitiful one. As you journey southward, you are merely traveling, while he has struggled many times on the brink of death. Now he is possessed by demons, with an imminent risk of death and a change in even gender ha ha ha. Jiu Mia shook his head and said, though the hidden sword possesses unparalleled invincibility, it must endure numerous hardships and sufferings in order to ascend against the wind and achieve enlightenment. For young Huafong, the sufferings he endures now are but the first step of a long and arduous journey. There will be more trials and tribulations to come in the future. Jiu Mie's account left Lu Heng rather surprised. Oh. Is that how it is? Does Hidden Sword truly have to endure such hardships to attain greatness? I thought that with such determination, he would soar to success and have a smooth path ahead why has his luck turned sour instead? Jiu Mie chuckled and said, My friend, surely there is no one in this world who can attain enlightenment without enduring trials and tribulations? Throughout history, which practitioner of the Tao has not experienced torment and hardships before attaining enlightenment? The wider the path of cultivation, the rockier one's fate and the more calamities one will face. If one can endure, each tribulation will be a transformative trial. If one cannot endure, one's soul will disintegrate into dust. Compared to that, being a demon cultivator is much easier though cultivation is long and lonely, they need not suffer myriad calamities and endless suffering only to adhere to their heart and get away from the evil path. Eventually, they will achieve the Grand Tao. Jiu Mie's exclamation greatly surprised Lu Heng. So there is such a saying. No wonder why human cultivators can easily increase their cultivation level, but highly accomplished individuals are so rare they have all fallen under the calamities of cultivation. But according to Jiu Mie's theory, the higher the talent and potential of a cultivator, the more terrifying their sufferings than what about myself. Lu Heng frowned, my dear friend, your words have frightened me. If Huafong only cultivates the hidden sword, and yet has suffered so much, then as a cultivator of the heavenly thunder, won't I also have to endure torment? Lu Heng's lamentations caused Jiu Mia to pause, then he looked at Lu Heng with a peculiar expression and said. What are you saying, my friend with your profound and mysterious technique that allows you to use death to gain new life, you have already sacrificed your life once. Haven't you already overcome misfortune and tribulations? Chapter, 236 Jiu Mie's words startled Lu Heng. My friend, you. Lu Heng widened his eyes. He was really frightened after hearing that. Has his deepest secret been discovered? Did Jiu Mie realize he had died once? This is too horrifying. Seeing him like this, Jiu Mie chuckled, devoid of the airs and image of a skilled cultivator, but rather like a mischievous child who had successfully pulled off a prank. He chuckled and said, to see the frightened expression of friend Lu Heng, I didn't make this effort in vain ha ha ha. Lu Heng looked at him in silence and said, so my friend, you intentionally came to scare me but how did you calculate that I had died once? 
As far as Lu Heng knew, although the world had the great path of cultivation, there was no such thing as fortune-telling. No matter how high a cultivator's cultivation level was, they could not achieve the ability to count on one's fingers and know everything. Therefore, Lu Heng was quite curious about how the old ascetic cultivator calculated that he had died once. Jiu Mia also had no intention of hiding it and smiled, saying, When I first met you, I was curious for a long time. As a demon cultivator, having a human-shaped soul is simply contrary to reason. Later at the Dragon Falling Mountain, while discussing the Tao with you, I learned more about it. After I returned, I painstakingly deduced for more than three months before realizing that you were already a dead man. This method of turning death into life, transforming a mortal body, and creating a new soul, can indeed eliminate many difficulties, but it also relies on the courage of you are you not afraid of one wrong move and losing your soul. Saying this, Jiu Mie couldn't help but shake his head repeatedly, with an expression of you are a madman. Regarding this, all Lu Heng could do was to smile helplessly. However, it's not like he willingly wanted to die once. However, according to Jiu Mie's theory, because he had already died once, his bad luck and calamities have been nullified? From now on, when cultivating, he won't suffer from calamities like what happened to Huafeng, right? This is actually a good news. Lu Heng sighed and said, My friend has a sharp eye, you're the first one who has seen through me. I admire you. However, my friend, you came all the way to the South Sea to find me, I hope it isn't just to give me a scare, Lu Heng chuckled and asked, Is there any other plan that you have? Jiu Mie pointed to the sky-reaching pillar not far away and said, apart from scaring my friend, the rest of the purpose is to watch the excitement. Oh. Lu Heng was very surprised and asked, do you like to watch the excitement? Jiu Mie laughed out loud and said, watching other people's excitement is not something I feel interested in, but I am quite interested in watching your excitement, my friend. Moreover, the Mermaid Kingdom has various mysterious places and is not an ordinary place. This trip of mine is also to take care of you at least, if you are urgently killed by the mermaids, I can timely snatch away your corpse. I have never tasted the taste of the meat of a werewolf. I cannot let these mermaids take advantage. Upon hearing Jiu Mie's words, Lu Heng stared in amazement. If you are interested, my friend, I can roast a front paw for you to taste but alas, my friend, you have no meat on you, only bones. I'm afraid you won't be able to return me the same amount of meat. Jiu Mie laughed heartily and said, although I have no meat, bone soup made from ribs would taste sensational. I'm afraid your body fat cannot compare to my bones. After speaking, the old man and the wolf looked at each other and burst into laughter. The sound of laughter kept echoing out into the distance, making Xiao Ai, who was standing nearby, look up curiously. And as the old man and the wolf sat laughing at the cliff's edge, the atmosphere at the top of the heavenly stone pillar, inside the palace, had reached a fever pitch. Leaning on the platform with a displeased expression, Lien Tsai addressed the audience below. The killer is Ma Yuo evil spirit, not Huafeng. Why do you insist that Huafeng should die? What is your motive? The wolf god has already provided a solution for this matter. By forcing Ma Yuo evil spirit out of Hua Feng's body, we can then eliminate the demon. Can't this be the revenge for your loved ones? Do you have to let innocent Hua Feng die with them? Fuming with anger, Lien Tsai questioned them furiously. However, the people she scolded didn't budge, but instead sneered. The wolf god is Miss Hua Feng's friend, and it is natural for him to protect his friend. Do you believe that he can solve the Ma Yuo evil spirit just because he said so? Exactly. The Maluo evil spirit has been wreaking havoc for many years. Everyone knows that those controlled by the evil demons cannot be freed unless the evil demons voluntarily leave what makes the wolf god think that he can force the Maluo evil spirit out. Just because even if we all fight together, we cannot defeat him because of his great strength? I think the wolf god is clearly protecting the evil demon because he doesn't want his friend to die. He has no way of forcing the Maluo evil spirit out. If he did, he would have already forced it out and given it to everyone to deal with. You're right. Since you said that the wolf god can force the Maluo evil spirit out, let him do it now and force the Maluo evil spirit out of this woman's body. 
Then we will only go after the Maoyuo evil spirit and not harm Miss Huafeng. Humph. Even the Mermaid Kingdom cannot deal with this Maoyuo evil spirit and can only execute and kill those possessed by the demon. Can the wolf god of the Hanyu Mountain really compete with the ancient and legendary Mermaid Kingdom? In the crowd, the equally furious relatives of the deceased shouted loudly. However, on the throne nearby, Yu Haling narrowed her eyes and directly slapped the old man who mentioned the Mermaid Kingdom from afar, sending him flying several meters away. The Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom's icy voice resounded in the hall. As I have said before, today's matter is a public trial and has nothing to do with the Mermaid Kingdom. Whoever speaks ambiguously again, I will throw them into the extreme hell black water to cool down. The voice of the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom rang out, and the palace instantly quietened down. King Junbei looked on with terror as the old man was slapped and sent flying several meters away, his head almost completely missing. His heart shuddered. Although the old man quickly got up and his missing half-head slowly regenerated, it didn't harm his essence. However, the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom, with her extremely ruthless move, managed to restrain these increasingly agitated people. After the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom finished speaking, there was a full half-minute of dead silence in the palace, and King Jinbei dared not provoke Lien Tsai any further. Seeing this, the mermaid spirit Yu Hai frowned slightly and said coldly. Since you have no more words to say, let us proceed to the final task voting. The vote is whether to execute Miss Hua Fong on the spot, or to follow the proposal given by the wolf god and hand the Maoyuo evil spirit over to him for disposal voting begins. Looking down at the many renowned exponents of the South Sea and the parties involved, Yu Haling said, the South Sea audience is present for this vote. How to handle Miss Huafong will depend on the opinion of the South Sea. The Mermaid Kingdom will not interfere. Afterwards, whatever the reason, it will be the collective opinion of everyone present. If I find out later that someone has tarnished the reputation of the Mermaid Kingdom behind my backumph. With a cold glance in King Jinbei's direction, Yu Haling didn't conceal her disgust. Chapter 237 The decree of the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom proclaimed that this matter was about to come to a close. The many venerable South Sea elders within the palace nodded their heads in agreement, indicating that this farce should indeed come to an end. During the previous public trial, after submitting various evidence and clarifying the causes and consequences of the matter, there was a disagreement between King Jinbei and Lien Tsai regarding how to handle the issue of Miss Huafeng. Both parties held on to their own opinions and the debate continued without ceasing. The biggest point of disagreement was that King Jinbei's side didn't believe that the wolf god was able to deal with Maoyuo evil spirit, and insisted on executing Huafeng here to directly eliminate that Maoyuo evil spirit. And Lien Tsai claimed that the wolf god had a way to deal with the Maoyuo evil spirit. Even if it could not be forced out of the body of Huafeng in the short term, it would be captured and imprisoned day and night, so that it could not cause trouble outside. The argument between both parties lasted for a long time. At first, it made some sense, but as it went on, it became a simple quarrel. There were various repetitive arguments going back and forth endlessly, which made many elders from the South Sea who came to watch extremely bored. Now that the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom has spoken, the voting stage has commenced and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. At last, there is no need to endure such a boisterous and uncivilized scene resembling a quarrelsome woman insulting others on the street. And in order to prove themselves and show that the Mermaid Kingdom was not biased, quite a few renowned figures from the South Sea were invited to attend this public hearing. Basically, all the famous Taoist masters of the South Sea have been invited. The votes cast by supporters of both parties in this massive group of people were not decisive in determining the outcome. In the end, everything still depends on the opinion of the masses. And the voting, with the assistance of the Mermaid Kingdom, began swiftly. Under the personal direction of the chief minister Yu Huifeng, Every opinion from the renowned South Sea sages was carefully considered and ultimately incorporated into the final announcement. After the public trial, it was collectively determined that Maoyuo should not harm the innocent. Therefore, once the trial concluded, Miss Huafeng will be transferred to the wolf god to deal with the Maoyuo evil spirit within her body. Yu Huifeng looked towards the group of Lien Tsai not far away, about to speak, but at this moment, a disdainful laughter suddenly echoed in the palace. 
The raging airstream, coming from afar, instantly brought a sky full of peach blossoms, as well as a faint floral fragrance. Ha 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 such a mess. Oppressing the righteous, sheltering murderers, is this the fair law of the mermaid kingdom? It really makes me laugh out loud. At the moment when that boisterous laughter sound erupted, a figure appeared outside the palace gate without anyone noticing, looking youthful despite his gray hair, holding a peach wood staff, and strolling leisurely. Wherever he went, there were bursts of peach blossoms, and the mermaid battle soldiers who blocked his way were just about to intercept him when they were scattered by an invisible force. In the face of this strange old man, the soldiers of the mermaid kingdom were unable to resist. The astonishing scene caused everyone present to stand up instantly, incredulously looking toward the direction of the entrance. Yu Haling, who was sitting on the throne, shot a cold glance and spoke in a frigid tone, where did this old man come from? How dare you act recklessly in the mermaid kingdom? Amidst the palace, a shower of peach blossoms had begun, and the petals twirled and drifted through the air. The elderly man holding a peach wood staff walked over with a smile, unafraid of the power of the lord of the mermaid kingdom. He laughed and said, My disciple was harmed by this demon woman, and yet you, the mermaid kingdom, are sheltering a murderer and about to release the demon woman as the injured party, can I not vent my grievances? The words of the elder immediately stirred up a commotion among the crowd. People were all amazed as they looked at this strange old man, then they turned their gaze towards the elated King Jinbei, and guessed the identity of this old man. Rumors have it that Su Lin, a talented young man from the Yoshion country, once studied under a master could it be the person in front of us now? Yu Haling looked coldly at the old man who barged in and waved her hand to signal the mermaid battle soldiers who had surrounded him to temporarily step back, then spoke up. Are you the master of Su Lin, the legendary recluse who is said to be unbeatable and peerless in the world? The old man chuckled and said, there is no one in this world who dares to compete with me, but it is true that I have not walked in this mortal world for many years. Nowadays, there may only be a few people who even know my name. So it is, that is why my unfortunate disciple had to suffer such humiliation. Even in death, justice cannot be served he. With a smile devoid of any amusement, the old man walked up to the semi-transparent floating sphere in the void and gazed upon the pitiful figure of the woman wailing in agony within the heavenly thunder prison, saying, dot. Since the distinguished South Sea cultivators have already passed judgment and determined that this demon woman should not be held responsible for the death of my disciple, I am willing to spare her and grant face to all of you. I will abide by your trial and judgment, and not pursue the wrongdoing of this woman. But I cannot let the Maluo evil spirit within her go. I must take away the Maluo sword master, to imprison and guard her until I force out the Maluo evil spirit from her body and seek revenge for my disciple. Then, I will release this demon woman. Does anyone object? After speaking, the old man cast a sidelong glance at the people present. The brazen and arrogant attitude made many of the South Sea elders present there furrow their brows. Even the people who previously supported King Jinbei and thought it was better to execute Maluo sword master on the spot, now all have an unchanged complexion. Amidst the crowd, suddenly there was a loud noise and a frenzied figure roared as it leapt out. Lo and behold, it was none other than the prominent demon known as the Great Sage of Fu Fong, who has risen to fame in recent years in the South Sea. Where did this old rascal come from, leaning on his age and selling his experience here? Wearing his scholarly robes, the great sage of Fu Fong now displays his tiger-like ferocity, with rampant demonic energy raging throughout his body. His enraged expression is akin to that of an evil deity descending to the mortal realm. He cursed the old man with anger, just your word can overrule the judgment when many South Sea elders have confirmed the result together. Why should we believe you? Who do you think you are? In the face of the fierce momentum of the great sage of Fu Fong, the old man showed no fear, but laughed heartily instead. Why do you not believe me? Am I capable of harming the life of this demon woman? I said I would only take her away and guarantee to imprison and guard her without endangering her life. I have spoken of taking someone away, you don't believe me. Yet why do you trust the old wolf of Hanyu Mountain? That old wolf is a friend of demon woman. If he takes away demon woman, who can guarantee that he will not release this demon woman to cause disaster in the future. The elderly man smiled and paused with his peachwood cane. 
He turned to the great sage of Fu Fong and said, Is it not because the old wolf has the Han Hai department, the immortal kingdom, and the Wuchi country as his backers that you dare not offend him with such double standards? If it is so, then all these famous South Sea elders are nothing but spineless jellyfish ha ha ha. The laughter of the old man echoed constantly inside and outside the palace, even reaching far away, spreading throughout the extreme Hell Island, and drawing the attention of countless people. At that moment, the cultivators on the island, near or far, all gazed upwards in astonishment towards the direction of that soaring stone pillar, curious as to what might have occurred. Among them was a man and a wolf on a cliff by the seaside. Chapter 238 Amidst the magnificent and grandiose colossal temple, the laughter of the old man resonated with wild abandon. Such blatant provocation and merciless mockery instantly caused everyone present to change their expression. The great sage of Fu Fong, dressed in scholarly robes, was even more furious and violent, unable to tolerate it any longer, and roared in anger. Roaring Goose Sword, Annihilate! At the moment when the great sage of Fu Fong beckoned, a blazing red light shimmered from his hand and transformed into a tremendously fierce divine sword, which he immediately swung at the elderly person ahead of him. Inside the sacred palace, a wild storm raged. Above the high heaven, the pernicious chi swirled in reverse. In an instant, the clear sky over the extreme hell island was replaced with a shroud of dark clouds and a suffocating aura. Merely the momentum of drawing the sword has altered the weather and influenced the spiritual energy of the land. The terrifying scene of the roaring goose sword being unsheathed has broadened the horizons of many South Sea cultivators who had only heard of it but never witnessed it with their own eyes. With such a sword, there are few people present who could easily take it on. All eyes turned towards the old man with a peachwood staff, curious to see how the rumored invincible hermit would respond. Then. Ta. With a muffled sound, the elderly man lightly tapped his peachwood cane, causing the swirling peach blossom petals in the air to instantly stop and freeze as if completely captured in this moment. Also frozen in time was the angry great sage of Fu Fong, with hair and beard bristling, and the ancient divine sword held in his hand both the man and the sword were frozen in the same pose as the moment the sword was drawn, motionless. Even the split sword light has completely solidified and frozen, hovering in front of the old man. The eerie scene made you hailing, who was sitting on the throne, abruptly stand up. Peach blossoms pass through, yet not a single blade of grass grows. You must be Elder Tao. Yu Hailing exclaimed in shock as she uncovered the identity of the old man. The elderly person chuckled and said, to actually guess the identity of Mahindeed worthy of the ancient heritage, quite insightful. After speaking, the old man lightly waved his sleeve, and a cold wind blew by, causing the countless peach blossoms which had previously frozen and stopped in mid-air to fall once again. The great sage of Fu Fong, who was wielding the roaring goose sword, let out a miserable cry as he was enveloped by the peach blossoms in the sky. He flew backwards heavily, and broke several pillars of the divine palace upon impact. And the roaring goose sword flew into the old man's hand. He held on to this ancient divine sword, which struggled and emitted a fierce and violent aura, and exclaimed. Is this the so-called ancient divine sword it does have a somewhat fierce air? But unfortunately, the sword is excellent, but the owner is not. With a wave of his hand, the continuously trembling roaring goose sword was thrown aside like a piece of junk. The old man said, Little tiger demon, if you want to compete with me, go back and cultivate for a few thousand years. With your current level of cultivation hee hee. The elderly person didn't say anything further, but his disdainful and contemptuous attitude was evident. The great sage of Fu Fong, with half of his body covered in blood, struggled to climb up. Upon hearing these words, his eyes turned bloodshot and he was about to engage in battle, but was intercepted by the brothers of the Wu family. The silent priestly Pe, who had not spoken much, slowly stood up now and faced the old man in the center of the temple, saying. Peach blossoms pass by, leaving no inch of grass behind. The wooden staff remains eternal, suppressing for ten thousand years. Elder Tao, it has been almost three thousand years since you last appeared. Everyone thought that your lifespan had come to an end and you had passed away. But today, you suddenly intervene in this South Sea issue, ah. 
Lipa said, the result of the vote we cast was the opinion jointly given by the famous figures from all parts of the South Sea. You didn't show up or speak beforehand, but suddenly appeared afterwards and said you want to take Miss Huafeng away even if you are indeed a senior with extraordinary abilities, you shouldn't be so overbearing, right? If you have any objections to the outcome of how we handle things, please speak your mind. Out of respect for your seniority, we can always vote again what do you think? Li Pe gave his suggestion, but the old man dismissed it with a sneer and a contemptuous laugh. Are you the priest from the Han Hai department? You come out now and pretend to be innocent? Who on the extreme hell island doesn't know that you and that old wolf are birds of a feather? Now that old wolf is too scared to show his face, he has sent you to fool me, right? My words, as an old demon, will be left here. Today, either hand over this demon woman, Hua Fong, to me for processing, or you shall execute her on the spot as a deterrent to others. As for other proposals, I neither listen nor believe them. If there are objections, they may come and debate with me. Although I have been in seclusion for three thousand years, I am not a frail and feeble old creature to be bullied by others. Today, as the master of my disciple, I shall come forth to seek justice for him. In the palace, as the old man finished his sentence, the atmosphere suddenly became somewhat tense. Many famous figures in the South Sea looked at each other in confusion, and some even remembered the notorious Elder Tao under the guidance of Li Pe and Yu Haling. Although he was a cultivator in the human realm, he followed a different path, comprehended profound and mysterious truths, called himself Elder Tao, and acted both positively and negatively. With a wooden cane and a pair of straw sandals, he has traveled across the four seas and eight wildernesses, defeating numerous powerful cultivators and making a great name for himself. But little did anyone expect that, at the height of his power, Elder Tao suddenly vanished without a trace, and since then there has been no sight of Elder Tao or his peachwood staff. People thought that he had exhausted his lifespan and had already died in an unknown corner, but they never imagined that he would reappear in the world again, now descending with the identity of the master of Su Lin of Yoshiung country. Feeling the pressure, Yu Huifeng couldn't help but whisper a message. My lord, are we not going to intervene? Elder Tao is incredibly powerful, no weaker than the ancient demons if we don't act, he may defeat everyone and take Miss Huifeng. The situation could quickly spiral out of control. With the strength of Elder Tao, he indeed qualifies to disdain all the famous figures present in the South Sea. If the Mermaid Kingdom doesn't take action, all the people present together cannot stop this old monster. After all, Luo Yujun only brought two Praetorian guards with him, and Li Pu only brought two brothers from the Wu family to accompany him. Yu Haling hummed lightly and said, It's okay, let's watch him perform again. This old monster came to me pretending to be an elder and tried to take advantage of me does he really think the mermaid kingdom is a pushover? Let him go crazy for a while, and we'll prepare to deal with him slowly. Yu Haling's words left Yu Huifeng speechless. And within the Divine Palace, Elder Tao's excessively domineering declaration has already stirred up anger among the crowd. However, Elder Tao seems to ignore everyone, wielding his peachwood staff to hook the glowing sphere that hangs in mid-air, completely indifferent to the opinions of others and intending to capture it without regard for anyone else. At that very moment, a hoary voice sounded, interrupting Elder Tao's movement. Fellow Daoist, are you truly unwilling to sit down for a serious negotiation? It is not desirable to just forcefully snatch people without proper discussion. As soon as the hoarse voice sounded, Elder Tao trembled and pointed his peachwood staff directly at the void, snorting coldly. What kind of demon are you? Playing tricks and acting like a god. Get out of here, before I cast you away. Chapter 239 the direction pointed by Elder Tao's wooden staff is where the voice is coming from. With his cultivation, he can clearly perceive the power of the person in the dark humph. Has that old wolf finally arrived? Elder Tao snorted coldly and said, Since you've come, why not show yourself? Hiding and revealing only your head, what kind of wolf god are you? The icy snort of Elder Tao stunned everyone present could it be that the rumored wolf god had finally arrived? And Li Pe and the others who knew Lu Hung were stunned because it wasn't the voice of the wolf god at all. In the emptiness, that ancient voice resounded once more. Haha indeed a true cultivator, with one breath you have exposed my disguise. 
Yes, that's me, Hanya Mountain's wolf god, Lu Hang, who has been ordered by the heavens to eliminate all evil with the heavenly thunder and shake the world with the ancient sword. Amidst the boisterous and self-assured laughter, there was a sound of astonishment. My friend, you. The direction pointed by Elder Tao's wooden staff saw the gradual descent of two silhouettes. A white-clad, ethereal man with an exceptional temperament the other, an emaciated ascetic cultivator. The appearance of these two individuals with completely opposite temperaments, one after the other, made Elder Tao furrow his brows slightly. That man in white is the legendary wolf god, he knows it, but this seemingly ordinary ascetic cultivator. Elder Tao interrogated, Who are you? How dare you play around with me? Everyone saw that the thin old ascetic cultivator who spoke and claimed to be Lu Hang. Regarding this, Elder Tao's expression showed a slight anger, sensing the provocation this old wandering cultivator was blatantly playing with him. When faced with Elder Tao's interrogation, Jiu Mia smiled faintly and said, I am a being of the mortal world. But as soon as Jiu Mia opened his mouth, Lu Hang, who was standing nearby, coughed and said, this is my good friend, a peerless immortal in the world, Jiu Mia, a renowned cultivator of heaven. There is a poem praising him, which is, at the peak of immortality, standing proudly among the world, with me, Jiu Mia, even the heavens shall tremble. The brief introduction of Lu Hang caused a momentary furrowing of brows among the people present. At the peak of immortality, standing proudly among the world, with me, Jiu Mia, even the heavens shall tremble what an arrogant tone. Isn't this wolf god's friend too arrogant? Even among those who have attained the Tao of true cultivation, there are not many who are as arrogant as him. Elder Tao sneered and said, You think having you, Jiu Mia, means having the heavens? Ha 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 what a shameless claim. It's like a toad yawning with such a big mouth. I only thought the old wolf was domineering in his actions, but I didn't expect his friend to be of the same ilk. Truly, birds of a feather flock together and like attracts like. Now that you two have come together, are you planning to have a showdown with me, and protect your friend Huifeng, the demon woman who harms human life? Self-proclaimed deity, yet fails to annihilate demons and instead selfishly gives protection humph. The so-called wolf god is nothing but a mere joke. Elder Tao sneered and said, Today, with me here, will you attack together or one by one? The elderly person's scolding voice, laid out a direct stance, indicating a desire for a battle of skills. Regarding this matter, Lu Hang was quite helpless. You insist on competing for a victory but even if you win, will it avenge your disciple? The one who truly took the life of your disciple is Maoyuo Evil Spirit. As long as we force out the Maoyuo Evil Spirit and then slay it, that is truly how we avenge your discipleship, your excellency. Lu Hang urged this highly skilled old ascetic cultivator to sheath his sword. After all, the palace of the mermaid kingdom is majestic and splendid. If it were to be damaged by a sword, Lu Hang would not be able to afford the compensation. As soon as Lu Hang finished speaking, Jiu Mia, who was standing next to him, nodded and said, My friend, you have a kind heart and don't want to resort to violence. This is indeed a good deed. As he spoke, he looked towards Elder Tao at the center of the divine palace and said with a smile, Friend Tao. Your reluctance to accept the judgment of the South Seas group is nothing but the fear that my friend Lu Hang may act unjustly, releasing or concealing the woman possessed by the evil demon for personal reasons. But in terms of exterminating this Maoyuo evil spirit, eliminating harm in the world, and seeking revenge for the dead, your thoughts are actually the same as Lu Hang's. Since your ideas are similar, why must you engage in deadly combat? Jiu Mia said, if you really don't trust Lu Hang, you can go to Hanyu Mountain with him and witness for yourself his confinement of demons and production of evil demons. Under your supervision and witness, Lu Hang cannot possibly continue to shield these evil demons, can he? Upon hearing the words of Jiu Mia, everyone present nodded in agreement. Not bad, not bad. If Elder Tao doesn't trust the wolf god, he can always supervise him on the same journey. The Maoyuo evil spirit has always been cunning, and only the wolf god's heavenly thunder prison can concoct an attack and harm it. Being inside the heavenly thunder prison is the cruelest punishment for any evil demon other than the wolf god, there is probably nobody who can force the Maoyuo evil spirit out. Within the palace, people have expressed their own opinions. 
This view is the opinion of the majority and also the reason why they are willing to vote to keep Huafong. Apart from the Wolf God's excellent reputation and trustworthiness, the Wolf God's heavenly thunder prison is also indeed capable of forcing out the Maluo evil spirit. Otherwise, if someone else were to come and would only speak empty words and claim that they could force out the Maluo evil spirit and take away the Huafong, the voting results of the people present would be different. However, the people's discussion made Elder Tao coldly snicker and say. Follow him. Fa. On what grounds? I, Elder Tao, shall go wherever I please without the need for someone to guide me. Moreover, to expect me to follow this old wolf like a sycophant what a joke. And who knows how many years he will need to force out the Maluo evil spirit. If it takes thousands or tens of thousands of years to force out that evil demon, do I have to stay in his poor and shabby Hanyu mountain for thousands or tens of thousands of years? My opinion is only one, either let me take away the demon female Huafong today, or execute her on the spot. It makes no difference who comes. No one's words will be effective. Elder Tao firmly tapped the wooden staff in her hand and said, If you're not convinced, then let's have a fight. As for the so-called ancient wolf god, I also want to see what kind of abilities it really has. The fierce and unyielding attitude of Elder Tao caused a slight furrow of Lu Heng's brow, prompting him to summon a powerful yellow seal behind him. Gloomy and lifeless atmosphere instantly pervaded within the Divine Palace. Upon seeing this profound and vivid seal, Jiu Mie was somewhat surprised and asked, Friend, why not draw your sword? Lu Heng sighed and said, Didn't you say it? One should always leave room for maneuvering and avoid being too extreme otherwise, it may bring harm to oneself and others. Blowing up thousands of stars is already enough to make it up to the mermaid kingdom, so how can you still have the nerve to ask them to repair the palace? However, Lu Heng's exclamation was extremely grating to Elder Tao's ears. He snorted coldly and said, pretending to be mysterious. If you have any means, just use them. Don't you claim to be the owner of the ancient sword that can control the world with a half-swing? Why don't you show your ancient sword now? Trying to deceive and intimidate me? This is ridiculous. Elder Tao's malicious insults caused a slight furrow in Xiao Ai's brow, prompting her to take a step forward and step out from the crowd. The ancient sword with a dark blue hue instantly caught the attention of the crowd. Elder Tao sneered even more coldly and said, Oh so the sword is here. You made a little girl carry it on her back. Aren't you going to draw your sword now? Elder Tao's provocation left Lu Heng somewhat speechless. He sighed helplessly as he looked at Xiao Ai, who was furious because of the humiliation she suffered, and Elder Tao who kept insulting with words non-stop in front of him. He said, since the day I forged this sword, no one has been able to draw it from its sheath. With a light wave of his sleeve, Lu Heng dissipated the requiem seal and directly stirred his mind. In an instant, a green light flew out from Xiao Ai's back, soaring up against the heavens and transforming into a dark blue longsword suspended in the void. The scabbard of the sword trembled slightly, as if stirring and rousing something within. And when Priest Li Pe inside the Divine Palace saw this scene, his eyes lit up, and he became so excited that his body trembled slightly. Is the wolf god going to finally unsheath heavenly thunder sword that he personally forged? Chapter, 240 Within the divine palace, the atmosphere is tense. Above the high altitude, the fierce winds gust and rage. The dark blue ancient sword that pierced through the sky and soared into the air, instantly captivated the attention of everyone present. The sword has not been drawn, yet the scabbard made of Fusong tree is a rare masterpiece in the world. All eyes turned to the Hanyu mountain wolf god in his white garb, their hearts filled with speculation. The wolf god is known to have the decree of heavenly thunder to vanquish all evil, with his ancient sword that dominates the world such an arrogant tone implies that this dim blue ancient sword must be his strongest skill. Therefore, at the sight of the green sword ascending, people were mildly stirred, sharing a common sentiment. Finally, are we able to witness the legendary wolf god make a move? Moreover, the opponent also has a notorious reputation for being wild, he is Elder Tao who shone brilliantly 3000 years ago. Such a top-level showdown, how can it not be exciting? However, upon the throne, Yu Haling couldn't sit still when she saw the dark green ancient sword soaring up into the sky. 
Chief Minister. Yu Hailing hurriedly asked, was it this sword that shattered thousands of stars with just a hint of its breath? Yu Huifeng nodded in response. This answer made Yu Hailing lose her composure. She immediately stood up and, regardless of the reactions of those present, loudly exclaimed. This is the sacred palace of mermaids. How dare you turn it into a place for your petty fights? If you want to fight take it outside. Yu Hailing's sudden speech caused a slight pause in the atmosphere inside the venue. Lu Heng, who was already ready to draw his sword, as well as Elder Tao, who was holding a peach wood staff, both looked over. On the throne, the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom, with raised eyebrows and a stern expression, was clearly very angry. Regarding this, Elder Tao sneered and said, Do you think it's appropriate for a little girl like you to point fingers at me when I, Elder Tao, am in charge? If you are worried about damaging your palace, let me kill this arrogant old wolf first. Then I, Elder Tao, will take full responsibility for your losses. After speaking, regardless of how the Lord of the Mermaid Kingdom would respond, Elder Tao slammed his peach with staff and shouted loudly. Myriad reflections of dazzling light. Thunk. With a muffled thud, the heavy wooden staff landed forcefully on the floor of the mermaid shrine. The Yin fire brick, which requires 3,000 days and nights of solidification with water from the extremely cold source after being extracted from deep within the lava, instantly shattered and crumbled into countless pieces. Centered around the point where the peach wood staff struck the ground, all of the floor tiles within a radius of 100 feet shattered and cracked. The dense spiderweb cracks, as clean and neat as the mermaid kingdom lord's broken heart. Yu Hailing's eyes narrowed in an instant. However, at this moment, no one cared about how the lord of the mermaid kingdom is suffering in her heart. Even the chief minister by the lord's side could only be astonished as they watched the elderly figure amidst the drifting peach blossoms, feeling the awe-inspiring spectacle. The old man with snow-white hair and a youthful appearance, upon a single tap of his wooden cane, seemed to conjure a multitude of intricate and overlapping shadows that enveloped his slender figure. However, upon closer inspection, there was only one elderly man standing there the entire time, and not many figures appeared. However, the old man's momentum reached its peak at this moment. Although not particularly tall, the elderly person at this moment was as imposing as a giant and towering like the heavens, causing everyone to instinctively take a step back and feel a sense of insignificance. Lu Heng's eyebrows furrowed slightly as Jiu Mie behind him recognized the legendary divine art. Myriad reflections of dazzling light. Beware, my friend. Jiu Mie reminded, this is an ancient secret divine technique. When the technique is unleashed, one person is equivalent to 10,000 armies, and 10,000 armies are but one person. The power of a strike, gathering the shadows of 10,000 paths, is capable of destroying the heavens and the earth. The expression of Jiu Mie appeared relatively calm, albeit with a hint of gravity. And everyone else in the temple was baffled by what they saw. Myriad reflections of dazzling light can it be true that someone actually mastered this ancient divine art that only exists in legends? Li Po's face became slightly unpleasant, and he said, No wonder Elder Tao disappeared mysteriously three. Zero 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 years ago it must have been because he accidentally obtained the secret technique of myriad reflections of dazzling light, and then hid himself to cultivate it, fearing that others would steal his technique. Now that he has successfully cultivated it, he dares to show himself. Li Po's words made the old man among the ten thousand blooming peach blossoms burst into laughter. Beside the old person, peach blossoms are drifting and the fragrance of flowers is permeating. He laughed proudly and said, Youngster, you speak nonsense. Even if I acquired the secret technique of myriad reflections of dazzling light, as a venerable demon, I would not fear others' attempts to steal it. Three thousand years ago, I had already traveled far and wide, crossing swords with the mightiest of men of that time. Even the legendary ancient demon Candle Dragon, who is rumored to be invincible, fought with me for only three moves and it was a tie do you think I would be afraid of someone stealing my books? Ha 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 what a joke! Oh, I am just simply tired of the chaos in this world and have no interest in getting involved in fame and fortune anymore. This time, if not for my beloved disciple being harmed by someone, I wouldn't have come out of seclusion. For three thousand years, I have been diligently cultivating in the mountain, 
yet I never expected that there would be some fake scholars in this world who seek fame and act high and mighty. Elder Tao looked at Lu Heng and said, Old Wolf Lu, since your friend can recognize the myriad reflections of dazzling light, you should know that you have no chance of winning. If you retreat upon realizing the difficulty, I will spare your life. Otherwise, with one strike, I will make sure your soul disperses. There will be no chance to be reborn. The enraged shout of Elder Tao resounded over the extreme Hell Island like thunder in the sky. The countless cultivators on the island all looked up in astonishment and amazement at the top of the towering stone pillar. At the top of that thousand-foot-high city pillar, it seems like there stands a colossal god towering tens of thousands of feet high. Dominant and fierce, standing tall against the sky. Like a fierce deity from ancient myths, with one step, it would shatter the heavens and the earth. The cultivators on the island were suddenly thrown into turmoil. The terrifying aura that shook the heavens and the earth, like a colossal mountain pressing down on the hearts of the people, as if it could crush them at any moment. However, this is not yet directed towards everyone. One cannot imagine the immense pressure faced when confronting such immense power. Even some of the extraordinary cultivators in the eyes of ordinary people, when faced with such terrifying power, may directly shatter their righteous hearts and render them unable to stand in battle. The frantic murmurs incessantly erupted on the island. What happened? Did a fight break out inside the Divine Palace? What a terrifying aura who could it be? I heard that the master of Su Lin from Yoshion country has angrily taken action to avenge his disciple. Hiss the unbeatable figure of legend in the world. Isn't he the one facing him now? Correct. It is indeed the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Too frightening is this the battle between peak cultivators with just one strike, will the entire extreme hell island be sunk? On the extreme hell island, there were discussions abound. Let alone ordinary cultivators whose hearts are frightened, even the mermaids on the island. Now as they look up at the top of the towering stone pillar and feel the frightening momentum that shakes the heavens and the earth, their hearts can't help but turn cold. The only ones who don't fear this are the four eerie shadows that silently emerge from all sides of the extreme hell island. Myriad Reflections of Dazzling Light